Fans of the game and fans of the future of the game. Good morning, folks, and greetings from St. Petersburg, Florida, just the other side of Tampa. Tropicana Field, the regular office for the Tampa Rays. And, of course, it's exciting to be the home today for Perfect Games National Showcase, not only today but all the way through Sunday. Such a historic event, an event that was born back in 2001 and then an event that has produced so many college players, major league players, first round draft picks and draft picks overall. Our day is going to be a fun one today and we're gonna be here stem to stern all days, all the way through Sunday. We're gonna have workouts all morning long and we'll get a chance to introduce the athletes to you. We'll have batting practice, which really has an opportunity to scout these athletes while they take BP. Then we got a couple of games this afternoon and this evening. David Ronsley is the Vice President of Player Personnel and a veteran of this event. My name is Darren Sutton. Thanks for hanging out with us. And now, David, we've moved past the draft, which just wrapped up yesterday. And here we go now into the next, the class of 2023. It's almost like Christmas is followed by Christmas, <laughs> if you will. You know, it's so exciting to see the future of the game. And uh, here we are again with these athletes. Yeah, and, and it has been weird in the baseball industry this year. And I'm just not talking for perfect game. I'm talking about the entire scouting industry with the draft pushed back, with the PG National pushed back. Um, you know, it, it's just different. This The Perfect Game National used to be the first event of the year, early June, right after the draft, when the draft was in early June, and it set the tone for this class. But we've already seen these kids a ton this summer. Right. It's given us a chance to really hone down who belongs here and who doesn't. The goal is to get the top 300 class of 2023 seniors to be at this event. And, and having gone through the 17 under national championships two weeks ago, for instance, and having all the, the tournaments and in May late May and June has given us a chance to really get the right players here I'm very excited to see this talented class perform a lot of these athletes especially if you're within the top 50 or so have had very busy summers they've been a part of Major League Baseball's development program some have played in other events outside of perfect game as well some have been to the PDP event trying to join Team USA for the worlds that are coming up in Florida in September but I think what excites me beyond those athletes, I want to make it clear how excited I am for those athletes, is kind of that number 51 all the way to 300. In other words, a chance. This is a larger event than, let's say, PDP, which is such an amazing event on its own right. Um, but this gives a chance for a young man who's you know, maybe ranked 280 to jump to 150. This gives a, a big opportunity for a player to come of age. How important is this summer for a player like that as we get started with the 60? Right away, we'll introduce you to these athletes. Rock Chalowski is out of Arizona. Running next to him is Gavin Gallagher, who is out of North Carolina. And we will get you some of the highlight times as we go uh, on here. But each runner will run the 60 twice. We'll take the best time. Owen Martin, number 10, Long Beach State commit. Cameron Nelson, number 12, a Wake Forest commit. Christian Rodriguez, Stoneman Douglas, the Florida commit. Mateo Serna is out of Doral, Florida, wearing number 15. Brock Chalowski running a 6-6-8, by the way, earlier, David. I know you'll pass along some of those numbers as we go. Owen Martin running a 6-7. Landon Stripling. Number 16, number 17, Josh Tiedemann from TCU. Tiedemann from Chandler, Arizona. I want to point out, first of all, you see the 10. We also uh, record the 10-yard split, but this is straight on uh, on the laser, so it doesn't matter who actually wins the race, so, so to speak. They're running independently. Braden Buchanan, Sammy Mumau running there side by side. There's Braden Buchanan, number 23. Sammy Mumau was number 18 a moment ago. Buchanan, a Baylor commit, catcher from Austin, Texas. Trent Carraway from Dana Point, California, number 24, from Oregon State. Johnny Farmello wears number 25. He is from Virginia. He's a Virginia commit. Evan Hager, number 26, an Alabama commit from Michigan. Detroit Central Catholic is where he goes to school. Trent Carraway with a 6.60 on his first run. 
Number 28 is Miguel Huggis out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And number 31 is Tommy Rolden. He's a Virginia commit from Maryland. Our top time of the day so far, Johnny Farmello from Virginia with a 637. And that's followed right, right uh, back there with Evan Hager with a 633. Macon Winslow, Black 34, is a Duke commit. Jaron Purify, we enjoy his work. An uncommitted athlete from Detroit. Little League World Series hero, select festival athlete as well. Eric Becker wears number five. He's a Virginia commit from New York. Jack Bell, number six on that jersey, is committed to go play for Willie Bloomquist at ASU. And Purify with a 6-4-1 on his 60. Jackson Brasseau from Paris, Texas, a non-commit. Maxwell Clark, the number one player in this class, wears number eight. He's a Vanderbilt commit. Jordan Crossland wears number nine, a Maryland commit from Virginia. Kendall George runs as well. He's an Arkansas commit from Humble, Texas. Maxwell Clark with a 6-3-9 in his first of two runs. Seth Farney from Long Beach, Mississippi. He's an old Miss commit. Next to him is a Kyle Henley from Cumming, Georgia, north of Atlanta, Georgia Tech commit. Tyler Minnick is screen right, Georgia Tech commit number 15. Davis Rivers, screen left. He is headed to Texas Tech. He's out of Waller, Texas. We have a new low time. Kendall George, number 12 gold with a 6-2-3. Ooh, David. You think we're going to get to that Michael Guyton time from last year? He was sub-6, correct? 5-9-5. Uh, five, five. Come and on. And he did it twice. Come on. Andrew Wiggins, number 18. Going to Indiana. Ryder Robinson going to TCU. Number 19. Kyle Hanley. Number 13 in the gold. Ran a 6-3-4. Francesco Capocci is from Cumming, Georgia. He's headed to North Carolina. Aiden Miller is flying. Aiden headed to Arkansas. Talented middle infielder. Andrew Wiggins, 18 gold, who you're going to hear a lot about because he's really been hitting well this summer with a 6-6-2 in his first 60. Blake Mitchell headed to LSU, one of the top players in this class. Parker Pico headed to Alabama from Rochester Hills, Michigan, number 27. Rock Chalowski will run again. Zach Plashart next to him. Plashart out of Saugus, California, number 31 there, headed to Arizona. And they're running the black team and the Vegas gold teams together back to back. And then we will see the green team and the Columbia blue team run as, as in tandem for their two runs. So this is the second run for these young men. Parker Pico, by the way, Vegas gold ran a 6-3-4. Gavin Gallagher and Owen Martin. Martin number 10, Gallagher number eight. Cameron Nelson number 12 on that black jersey from Baltimore, Maryland headed to Wake Forest. We see Josh Tiedemann again. Number 17. One thing I'm definitely noting so far, Darren, is that the pitchers, the primary pitchers, are not running. The black has like 25 players on their roster and they're a lot of them are pitchers, and they're not running for the most part. Christian Rodriguez, the Florida commit. Mateo Cerna next to him, number 15. Rodriguez, number 14. Landon Stripling, left-handed hitter, middle infielder, committed to go to Mercer, number 16. And next to him running, Sammy Mumau from Florida. Palm Harbor, middle infielder, a Florida commit. Cameron Nelson with a 6-4-7 in his second run. Raiden Buchanan going to Baylor, wears number 23. And Oliver Service from Detroit, a Texas commit. 
and got Oliver assigned. Now I couldn't find him initially. He's from Detroit, Oliver Service, by the way. Trent Carraway, number 24. Johnny Farmello, number 25. Evan Hager, number 26, screen left. Next to him, screen right, Michael Hugas from Pittsburgh. Looks like we have Farmello with a 6-3-4 in his second run. Johnny Rolden wears number 31. Number 34 is Macon Winslow. Rolden of Virginia commit. Winslow from North Carolina heading to Duke. Here's Jaron Purify again. Was initially committed to go to Michigan. Has withdrawn that commitment, figuring out where he wants to go with that coaching change. And Eric Becker of Virginia commit. Yeah, virtually every player at this national showcase has a commitment so far, but with the whole, all the coaching changes we've seen this year, sometimes keeping up with the commitments can be difficult because they will, they do change. Jackson Brasso wears number six. Check that number seven. And running next to him is Jack Bell, ASU commit, wearing number six. Here's Clark again, Maxwell Clark, along with Kendall George. Pretty good burners here. Jaron Purify with a 6-4-1 on his second run. Look at that smile on the face of Max Clark. That was a wonderful challenge for him. Both of those men were flying. I think they designed that race. Yeah. Jordan Crossland, where's number nine? Route of Virginia, he's a Maryland commit. Well, Kendall George ran a 6-1-6 on oh boy. his run. I think Maxwell Clark was smiling because he knew he was being torched on that. But he was torched running a 6-4-0. Oh, man. Seth Farney, by the way, number 11 in Ole Miss commit a moment ago. Kyle Henley, number 13. Tyler Minnick, Georgia Tech commit, Mount Perrin Christian. Davis Rivers is a Texas Tech commit, left-handed hitting catcher, number 17. Ryder Robinson, TCU, switch hitter and infielder, number 19. Jordan Crossland, number nine, Vegas Gold, with a 6-5-4. Uh, 23 is Capochi, North Carolina commit. Aiden Miller, one of the top players in the class. J.W. Mitchell High School going to Arkansas, number 25. Kyle Henley with a 6-3-0 in his second run. Blake Mitchell wears number 26. Parker Pico out front flying, wearing number 27. Pico 6-2, but really big wheels. Zach Plashart, number 31, Arizona commit. He'll play for Chip Hale. A.J. Ewing, number one green from Ohio, and Alabama commit. Parker Picot. 27 gold with a 6-3-3. Couple of talented players here. Dylan Head is running. He is wearing number six. Dylan Cup is running as well. He's wearing number five. Cup of Mississippi State commit. Head a Clemson commit. Trenton Lappy, a LSU commit number eight. Tate McKee. Georgia Tech commit number nine. Dylan Head with a 6-2-2 in his first run. Heads up on Ty Pete, we've been told, from Tyrone, Georgia, number 10. Number 11, Cooper Pratt from Mississippi, an Ole Miss commit. Brady Smith wears number 13. He's from Tennessee. He's a Virginia Tech commit. John Cooper Williams, number 15, a Georgia Tech commit. Left-handed hitting outfielder. Ty Pete with a 6.64, but that young man's bat is what's going to be loudest, I think, at this event. Nicholas Sanders, number 16 from Waco, Texas. A Texas commit, La Vega High School. Alex Sosa, NC State commit out of Vieira, Florida, number 17. Luke Dotson from Ackworth, Georgia, number 23, Florida State pitcher. And an outfielder, number 23, and Makai Grant wears number 24, Mississippi State commit. John Cooper Williams with a 6-5-4 in his first run. Oh, 
Michael Graziano is a Georgia Tech commit. Right handed hitting outfielder Jackson McKenzie. We've been watching him for quite some time. First baseman, left handed pitcher, number 26, Mississippi State commit. We've seen Jackson for years. Sister, a very talented softball player. Lataris Murray, Oklahoma commit. Select Festival alumni. Running next to him is Abo Ruddy, non committed athlete from Georgia. Michael Graziano, Naples, Florida. A 6-3-2. Eli Smalls, number 30, Omaha, Nebraska. Your neck of the woods, D. He is a Kentucky commit. Nolan Susan, number 31, from Hawaii, an Arkansas commit. My former neck of the woods. <laughs> Luke Lavin from Laguna Beach, California, is heading to Stanford with his verbal, number 33, Green. Dean Curley from Laverne, California, wears blue, team number four. Owen Egan, number six, Ukaipa High School, UCLA commit. Roman Martin is from Whittier, California, also headed to Coach Savage at UCLA with his verbal. Number eight. Carson McIntyre from Peoria, Arizona. Where's number nine? He's committed to go to Oregon State. And Brady Reynolds, Stanford commit from Bakersfield, California, number 11. Going back to green 31, Nolan Souza, one of the best players from the state of Hawaii in recent years with a, oh, what was it, a, a 6.65 in his run. I'll make that a 6.59, my, my bad. Carl Schmidt wears number 12. He's from Petaluma, California, Texas A&M commit. And Dean West, Notre Dame High School in Woodland Hills, California, UCLA commit as Dean flies out front. Carson McIntyre with a 6-3-6. Ethan Belk, number 16, Wofford commit from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Colton Wombles, number 18, runs as well. Dean West with only a 6.49. <laughs> Speedster from California. Gavin Grohovic, Texas A&M commit from Orange, California, number 26. Casey Borba, number 23, a Texas commit from Orange Lutheran. Plays for his dad, who's the head coach there. Well respected. Ryder Helfrick, Arkansas commit from Discovery Bay, California, number 27. Number 28 is Cameron Kim, a UCLA commit. Got the shades on indoors here at Tropicana. Luke Shear from Ukaipa, California, is committed to go to Cal Poly. He's wearing number 30. Nolan Stevens, number 31, from Elk Grove, California, a Mississippi State commit. Toby Twist, an Oregon commit, number 32. Left handed pitcher and a corner infielder. Brandon Winoker. Number 33, UCLA commit from Huntington Beach, California. The Columbia Blue team is made up almost entirely of players from, from California, Darren. And you know, of course, the, the word on California players is they can't really run. And, uh, virtually every one of those was 6'8", 6'9", 7'1", but sh they can sure play baseball. Hudson Maddox, number 34, is an Ole Miss commit. And out there with him was A.J. Ewing, number one in green. Dylan Cup, Dylan Head run again, number five, number six. Let's see if Head can improve on his 6-2-2 two, two from his first run. We'll get that to you in a second. Trent Lappy, number eight. Tate McKee, number nine. Well, Head with a 6-3-5 in his second run. So wow. he'll take that 6-2-2 two, two from the first run. Ty Pete again. Pete, by the way, shortstop, pitcher, third baseman, Cooper Pratt, middle infielder as well. We'll hop up on the mound, 10 and 11. Pratt, 11, Pete, 10. John Cooper Williams, number 15. Nicholas Sanders, number 16. Alex Sosa. NC State, he's a great story, the work he has put in. Luke Dotson, Florida State commit. 
Left-handed pitcher, outfielder, number 23. Graziano wears 25, Michael. Jackson McKenzie, 26. Bo Ruddy wears number 28, Chickamauga, Georgia. Eli Small, the Kentucky commit. Left-handed hitting catcher. I like those. Nolan Souza, the Hawaiian, the Arkansas commit. There's a couple of talented athletes from Hawaii here. And Luke Lavin, Stanford commit from beautiful Laguna Beach. Michael Graziano with a 6-4-6 in his second run. Dean Curley, 5. Owen Egan, 6. After watching tens of thousands of these 60s over the years, I can tell you that most runners run their best time in their first run, okay. not in their second run. Roman Martin from Servite in Southern California, number eight. Carson McIntyre, just outside of Phoenix, number nine. Nolan Souza with a 6-5-1 in his second run. I think that did improve on his first run. Brady Reynolds, left-handed, hitting outfielder, Stanford commit, number 11, Carl Schmidt, number 12, Texas A&M. Dean West again. All right, Dean, run out of 6-3 up for us here. Dean, number 14, Ethan Belk, number 16. West, West, though, is one of these players who his speed is completely different on the bases. His first step is so good. Excited to see him play in the games over the next two days. Villa Park High School for Gavin Grahovic, number 26, Cameron Kim, Norco High School in California. Nope. West just right on his first mark with a 6-5-1 after a 6-4-9 in his first. So very consistent there. Sheer number 30 lies out front there. Ooh, that was Colton Wobbles with him. Ryder Helfrick from Discovery Bay, California, Clayton Valley High School. Brandon Winoker, Edison High School out in Cali, UCLA commit, number 33. Nolan Stevens, left-handed hitting first baseman, pitcher as well, Mississippi State commit, number 31. Toby Twist from Bakersfield Christian, number 32. Hudson Maddox wears 34 in blue. Ole Miss commit. Luke Lavin, 33 in green. Stanford commit. There, and I believe that will wrap up the 60. Well done, D. Well done. Again, visit perfectgame.org for all the workout results. We, uh, our team on the on the ground down there, Tori Olivo, Jim Jenks doing a great job feeding as many times on the fly as we can, and David shared those with you. But go to the uh, perfectgame.org, the national showcase page, and you'll be surprised how quickly those workout results are up. So if you're a coach, a college coach, wanting to take a peek on how your players are doing, make sure to visit there a lot. Most of you know how to do that already, family members that are, that are watching, and just good old-fashioned baseball fans. I think we've... On Perfect Game TV, we've grown this platform to where we, we have some fans of the future of the game. So, David, next outfield, what do you look for as a scout? Oh, you look, at, look for athleticism uh, most of all. Um, really, really three levels. A athleticism, how, how, how the young man uh, comes to the ball, his transition and his footwork. Um, and, of course, you look at arm strength. You know, the, the kids are all fascinated by the arm strength that all the different positions because that's the number. That's the number that they can post that they can see it on the on their Twitter, on their social media stuff. But for the scouts watching, it's far more than just the arm strength. It's the all the elements from the arm action to the footwork and the overall athleticism that go into generating that that uh, that throw time. The eyeballs need to match the metrics. It's interesting because I think the metrics are important and those are the results you'll see should you visit you know, Perfect Games website. But 
as David says, it's putting the eyeballs together with, with what you see. And, and uh, you know, it's not, you know, a strong arm is a strong arm, David. If, if you see a number, what, what's a number that without seeing the player in person, what's a number that will turn your head? Well, and anything in, in the 90s is, is going to be an arm that can compete at the highest level, certainly. And that doesn't preclude a, a player who doesn't have arm strength from being a good defensive outfielder. We've all seen, you know, big league outfielders who it's like, oh, they got on a pro scale, a, 20, a 25, a 35 arm and all. But, but, the, but the arm strength is important. But I want to add one more thing about the arm strength, and that's the accuracy. Right. And, it, and it's probably more important even for an infielder and the catchers. But as scout, scout watching the drills, you want to see accurate throws. Because if you're scattering the ball all over, that's not uh, uh, arm strength that you can duplicate in a game. And it's a, usually a sign that your footwork is off, you're putting too much effort into it. You don't care about accuracy. But when you see a kid just throwing the, that one hop tag throws or from shortstop making chest high throws every time, that, that really resonates as a big positive in the overall evaluation that scouts and college coaches will make on the player. So it's interesting as we take a peek back at just some, some visuals of the 60. You know, I'll ask you the same question, right? The results will be there. But as a scout, David, it, I'm not going to take your stopwatch away. But if I kind of did, what are other things you're looking at for athletes? Is it first step? Is it athleticism? Is it the style of run? What is it you're looking at? Um, I think it, it, that just the athleticism is looking at the 60, and, and of course you have a run time, but you know the, the 60 time, and I use this with Dean West, isn't always your baseball time. Right. And for, for a number of years, pro scouts use the home to first time okay. as as the speed measure, but that's, that's not a very realistic uh, number either because people get out of the box differently. Um, so when you're watching uh, in evaluating speed, it's just not the 60 time. It's not a 10 time. It's not a home to first time. You have to have baseball speed. In the outfield, that, that equates to range. You know, Jim Edmonds was a how many time gold glove winner, and he was not a very fast sprinter. Right. Because he, he had such great range and everything. You have guys who steal bases like crazy who are not the best runners in baseball um, because of the instincts. You've got guys who run home to first far better than guys who are faster because they get out of the box. You really want to look at that game speed, and Dean West is one guy here. I think he ran a 6.50 last year. He ran a 6.49, a 6.51 today. But Dean West, when we get to the games, will be one of the faster players on the field, I can guarantee it. Yeah, so insightful as the outfielders ready themselves to, to throw, and we, we keep an eye on those numbers that David is talking about. By the way, some of the records, Michael Geddes, back in 2013 who was then a Georgia commit and Jared Jones back in 2019 at Chase Field who was then a Texas commit both reached 100 miles an hour from the outfield those are the event records along with Jane Knowles who last year the Kennesaw State commit from Georgia premier he reached 100 as well so three 100s have been registered in the history of this event so we keep an eye on accuracy, too. And, and functionally, the difference between throwing 91 and 93 is, is just numbers. You know, you want to see the whole package. But, you know, moving, moving your number up by one or two doesn't affect what anybody really thinks of you as, as far as your arm strength. There are different, you know, the different levels. That's, you know, if, if you're throwing 95 to 100, that kind of resonates. 90 to 95 just to use round numbers would be a next tier down, 85 to you know 90, there's a tier. And it, it's moving from tier to tier that probably changes your evaluation more than putting one more number up. Some of the elite outfielders in this group that we will see, Owen Martin, who is a commit to Long Beach State, he wears number 10 in black. Cameron Nelson from Pro 5 Baseball Academy from Baltimore. He's a Wake Forest commit, ranked within the top 300. We talked about Johnny Farmello, who showed really good speed, ranked 152nd. He wears number 25 in black. We'll see him. He's a Virginia commit. Evan Hager from Detroit, New Hudson, Michigan, ranked 62nd, an outfielder and an Alabama commit. Those are a couple of the names we will see right out of the gates. And we'll share the metrics with you. Yeah, one player I'm looking forward to seeing, as I mentioned in the 60, Andrew Wiggins from Indianapolis, Indiana. 
uh, number 18 gold. He's been hitting so well this year. He's, already, he's ranked 94th in the country, but it's all based on his bat, really, because he's always been a high-level hitter. But he ran a 6.64, I believe, in the 60. Now we get a, get a chance to see him throw, and he's a guy you were talking about who's not in the top 50 now, right. but could really make that leap. We've always known he's a good hitter, but now he's showing us athleticism that's really moved forward, uh, you know, over the last year. So, and we should mention, we haven't mentioned it yet, one of the real most important parts of this event is it's basically where we select the 2020, uh, <laughs> I'm getting my years wrong, class 223, <laughs> class of the, the, two, the All -American Cla 2022 All-American Classic roster. Yeah. The top 50, realistically, maybe 54, 56 players in the country that will be playing at, uh, in Phoenix this year, your home, Yes. on uh, August 28th. We'll have that game. We, uh, we're excited about having it on Perfect Game TV as, as well as, I think we can share this. Let's go ahead and make this a, a secret announcement if you're watching the stream on ESPNU. So we're very excited about that. David will be with me expecting to have Hunter Pence back. We know he's very busy with his Apple TV commitments, but expecting David and, and me and Hunter to be together in the booth with Danny Wexelman on the field. Danny's down there right now producing great stories for us. Hey, by the way, Mike Farron is going to be doing some play-by-play. -play. If you listen to Sirius XM, MLB Network Radio, one of the great hosts on a daily basis, one of the passionate fans of baseball and voices of the game, Mike will be one of the prime voices not only of the All-American Classic on radio on Sirius XM, but also this event. So Mike's traveling down. We're excited to have him part of the team along with Danny and, and your colleagues on the scouting side, Brian Sikowski and Vinny Servino as well. I've always thought Mike's, Mike might have missed his real calling, although what you say about his announcing ability stands on its own. But I think in his, in his secret dream world, he wants to be a scout. I know. Because uh, we've sat with him for hours just talking pure baseball and in the way that scouts talk it. And, uh, and he really, really gets into the, the baseball at this level and the whole evaluation and the prospects, that type of stuff. Yeah, I'm very lucky that he was available. He's so busy with so many things. But excited that Mike is part of our analytical team here, helping to break down what we see introducing these athletes to you. Hey, you know what that means for you athletes? You're going to get a lot more coverage because he <laughs> takes his word out to the people on satellite radio. All-star break, certainly, but the Rays continue away after the all-star break. That allows perfect game to work with the Rays in this setup. Behind the scenes, underneath, there are batting cages, and the players go through the PG Tech cage uh, out of our sight. And uh, certainly that's part of the metrics that are gathered down underneath. And then gameplay, really, which we will have all afternoon for you. There are two games this afternoon. Mike will be on the call with those games. But that, that David, is for the pitchers, right? I mean, it's not that, not that it's not for the hitters. It is for the hitters, too, but this is the, the games are really built for the pitchers. The games are built for the pitchers, and that's their area to be evaluated in. But uh, to say that it's only the pitchers, as, as, as you backtracked on a bit, you know, would be incorrect. Because when you see hitters, you can see the hitters in BP, and you can get a good idea of them. But seeing them against these, this level pitching puts a whole different uh, shine on things. Owen Martin fires the first one loose. Owen Martin, Long Beach State commit from Lomita, California. Martin, the son of Jamie and Holly, sister Caitlin playing junior college basketball. Good student, 3.5 in the classroom. Each of these players will get five balls. First two of them go to third base. The last three are thrown home. And I think Martin will get an extra ball after that last one was mishit a bit. Seven miles an hour, his top throw. Cameron Nelson, 
Baltimore, Maryland, Wake Forest commit, ranked inside the top 300. Nelson is at Pro 5 Baseball Academy. Number five overall player in the state of Maryland. Left-handed hitter. Zone hard, David. Yes, he is. It's a loose arm. He's thrown from a lower slot than you normally would see the ideal, because when you throw from that lower slot, your, your throws tend to tail. But when you're throwing Oh, 95 miles an hour or so from the outfield. You can overlook one or two things. And yeah, we see 91 there. We actually had a 95 reported as well. So he had a couple of 91s and a 95. Christian Rodriguez, Stoneman Douglas, one of the top players in the country. This is a pitcher who will throw from the outfield as well. Probably play just about anywhere you want from Coral Springs, Florida. But you look at that build that says power power pitcher build there with those strong hips. And obviously a very strong arm. Son of Beatrice and Rafael Rodriguez. Competitive aggressive pitcher on the mound. And he's a Yankees fan. His dad grew up in New York. That's his team. I saw a 94 along the way. Not sure if that was his highest number, but we did see a 94. Boy, David, he was over 94 times. Josh Tiedemann, Hamilton High School in Chandler, Arizona, TCU commit. And what you're seeing here, we see Tiedemann, who's a primary third baseman, Rodriguez, a primary pitcher. So players do have the opportunity to throw from different positions. We, we would prefer pitchers not to throw. And this is this applies whether it's a national showcase or a smaller regional showcase that pitchers not throw. If they're a primary pitcher, like Christian Rodriguez, just an example, you know, don't throw here because you might be throwing later today. And you don't want to get your all, arm all hot, bothered, and warmed up, and then go sit for a few hours and then go pitch. It's just not the, the ideal way to do it. But these kids want to go and show off their tools, and and uh, this is certainly the venue to do it. Tina in a couple over 90, touching 92 early on, the son of Chris and Tony, and the sibling of Mitch and Nick. Matter of fact, all five throws over 90 with the high of 93. Oliver Service. Service has put, been putting on a show that just in the last couple weeks. I don't think he was two or three weeks ago. He was on the national, on the invite for this national showcase. But he has played so well at the tournaments over the last month that he, he just forced himself into this national showcase, a primary catcher, but obviously very athletic as well. Service, by the way, University Liggett, Little Caesars, his travel team. He's 16 years old still. He's a catcher, but an outfielder as well from Detroit, Michigan. University Liggett, Oliver Service. He has at perfect games in the past thrown 90 miles an hour. <laughs> He's also hitting 491 with two homers and 21 RBIs in 25 games this summer. So he's been tearing it up with the bat. Trent Carraway is a talented athlete that plays for Brett K, a J. Sarah Catholic. Trent makes his home in Dana Point, California. He's an Oregon State commit, 47th ranked player in the country. He's already thrown 93. And he's a, a primary shortstop, 6'2", 205, and looks like a third baseman, but also obviously with some outfield skills as well. Son of Tyler and Bobby, and the brother, the younger brother to Tate. Brother played locally at Saddleback College. Calls his brother Tate as inspiration. Tate in the, in the coaching business now. 
Mater Dei and then at Newport Harbor. Those are all spots out west where he lives. Got a chance to fly in actually with he and his family. Really good folks, enjoyed getting to know them. 93 miles an hour, his high mark. Johnny Farmello, Virginia commit, ranked 152 in the nation. He's from Centerville, Virginia. Son of Jenny and John. Had a D1 athlete when he was a younger man playing soccer at Yale. We'll have more time during BP, David, or the games. I asked these guys some unique questions this year. What, what, what were some of the unique questions? One of us, uh, what is your absolute Favorite meal to eat as we see Johnny touch 91. And uh, the follow up is who makes that meal? And then the other one is if you were commissioner for a day, what would you change to improve the game you love? Okay. We'll share those, some of those with you. Of course, you know, what, you, you know what my favorite question remains. What is it? What's, what's who's your favorite player? Yeah. Because some, some of the answers are just fascinating. Evan Hager, outfielder. New Hudson, Michigan. He's Kane's national team guy, Detroit Central Catholic, or Detroit Catholic Central, I should say. And Alabama commit, the son of Gene and Greg. Hager from Michigan. That's a kind of a theme this year, last year, is I think of all 50 states, if I had to pick one state in the last three or four years that has really oh blossomed God. as far as the talent, I think it would be Michigan with a number of high-level players, not, just not from Orchard Lake St. Mary's, which was the number one team in the country this year, but across the spectrum in Michigan has just ex really exploded. Hager, by the way, a big Tigers fan. Mike Trout, David, to your point, his favorite player who he loves to watch play. Miguel Hugas is from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a primary pitcher, but also a man who will show his arm from the outfield. Hugus has been up to uh, 92 at perfect game events on the mound, so you know there's a big arm there. Six three, 200 pounds, switch hitter. First talented draft prospect who was selected the other night, Cole Young from just outside of Pittsburgh. I'm sure they know each other very, very well. Traveling in that circle of elite Pennsylvania athlete. That's a pretty throw. 102. Could that be correct? That is what we were just shared. <laughs> Wait, that's a new record. That is a new record. I I'm sorry, we have a pair of 102s minimum. Multiple 102 mile an hour throws for Hugus. Multiple. I'm hoping he's not scheduled to pitch until tomorrow. I want to let his arm cool off a bit. But he's a young, young, young man who we haven't seen this year in the summer. He, last when we saw him throwing 92 off the mound, it was in 2021. So if he's throwing, and he was throwing easy. That wasn't a full effort, and he was throwing accurately. Wow. Okay. Tommy rolled in. <laughs> is from Poolsville, Maryland, Georgetown Prep, ranked right at number 100. I'm a big Tommy Rolden fan. He's a primary left-handed pitcher, but one of these guys who could go out at the college level and definitely play both positions, you know, pretty much from, from the start. He's living in the 90s with his throws. We've seen him over 90. We've seen him at 91. Up to 93 as well. 91, 92, 93, some big numbers. Zach Wattis, Hamilton High School powerhouse in the Phoenix area. Zach, tall, lanky, 6'4", 200, a TCU commit. 
you know, Wattis, a, a primary first baseman, and that's pretty much where we've seen him play, but very athletic, you know, runs a sub seven, 60, has good arms. Young man, you can see, okay, he's athletic enough to play corner outfield. Maybe that's what he'll do at the next level. Excellent student, and I mean excellent. A 4.7 GPA, 4.0 unweighted, 98th percentile in his school for ACT, SAT, National Honor Society man. Just really strong in the classroom. And hey, by the way, he's kind of built like him. His favorite player, David, you always like to know that. Loves to watch hit, Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman. Who you scouted, I'm sure, through the years. Oh, yes. Perfect Freddie, game, All-American. Freddie, Freddie Freeman was at this national showcase in, oh, I couldn't remember exactly what year, but it was the uh, Arkansas showcase. Yes. Yes, it was in Arkansas. Jackson Brasso. Jackson, an uncommitted athlete, ranked inside the top 150 at 135 from Paris, Texas. Plays for Texas 12, his travel team. Son of Eric and Erica. Well, this is good athlete, up to 94 on the mound. Has run a 675 before today. Don't have today's time yet. Has thrown 96 in the outfield in the past and just a lot of tools there. Good looking athlete. Huge Astros fan, his favorite player that he learns from the most, loves to watch play, George Springer, another PG alum. Wait, left, left handed hitting pitch, left handed throwing pitchers should not have George Springer as their favorite <laughs> player. He touched 95, D. You predicted it with that strong arm. Well done. Seth Farney. Long Beach, Mississippi. Switch hitter. Left-handed thrower. Also a left-handed pitcher. An old Miss commit. Heading to play for the national champs. Interesting. Max Clark did not. Uh, number eight gold, our top-ranked player, did not throw. Okay. If these if these players are going in numerical order, which is what they're supposed to do. And that's certainly your option, right? Oh, if, yes. For whatever the reason is. And I'm sure the people down on the field, Greg Sabres, Jared Goodwin, and the scouting staff know why he's not throwing. As Farney reps his time. It was up to 89, and then I see a 92 as well, so he topped that. He got up to 92 as well. Kendall George, Arkansas commit from Humble, Texas. Left-handed hitter, left-handed thrower. of Angela and Chris. His brother played college baseball, so he's learned a little bit about that journey. Played at Lamar. George was one of our faster runners in the 60. I don't remember his time exactly, but it was certainly amongst the top two or three times. Kendall, a big fan of the Houston Astros, but he loves to watch Jazz Chisholm play. Playing for the Marlins. Yes, Chisholm <coughs> took time to stop by Perfect Games event in Jupiter last year to meet a lot of these young athletes. Kind of a cool move to see a guy who is not a PG alum come by a PG event and kind of spread his joy of the game with young athletes. I'm going to send a memo to the, the players who are not here yet on the last eight teams. We're playing inside at Tropicana. You don't need to have their sunglasses <laughs> on top of your hat, especially when you're doing drills. You just don't need that piece of equipment in here. Kyle Henley, by the way, we have uh, an unofficial 85 as one of the high water marks for Kendall George. Kyle's from Cumming, Georgia. Georgia Bombers, his travel team, Denmark High School, and a Georgia Tech commit. Marika's mom, Marcus's dad.
Big Braves fan. Ronald Acuna. Watched him work in the All-Star game last night. He was an underclass All-American last year out in San Diego. Went to PG's Junior National Showcase, did Kyle. to 92 miles an hour as the high water mark. Parker Pico. Parker, Rochester Hills, just outside of Detroit, an Alabama commit. There's a lot of strong players here on these first couple teams. Everybody I look at looks like they're listed at 6'2", 200 pounds, 6'2", 205. You know, these people have been players not only have done their work on the field to reach this talent level, they're doing their work off the field in the weight room and with their nutrition and all, because these are some big players. I'm looking forward to being down on the field with them this afternoon and, and seeing them up close. Parker, by the way, two-time Select Festival athlete, the inaugural 13U, and then the 14U as well. And another player from Michigan. Yeah, that son of Allison and Tom. We see 88 on the graphic. We also see an 89 that's been sent down from below. So a couple of high water marks there at just about touching 90 miles an hour. Zach Plashart. Arizona commits, Saugus, California. Going to play for Chip Hale. Tall, lean athlete, 6'4", 180, David. And a primary first baseman, secondary third baseman. So a versatile player. In fact, this one of his secondary positions simply is utility, and he's showing it here. Dylan Head, Clemson commit. Glenwood, Illinois. <laughs> Dylan, the 51st ranked player in the land. Harry and Sonia, his parents. I was talking to. Brian Sikowski and Vinny Servino will be on the broadcast later to find veteran PG scouts who were at the 17U National Championships last week and was asking them about who the most impressive players were. And Dylan Head's name was mentioned a number of times. So definitely a player I'm going to focus on. He touched 91 a couple of times. Luca Reyes now. Bergen Catholic in Teaneck, New Jersey. He is a Miami commit, ranked at that 158 mark. had USA Baseball experience, East Cobb Astros recently playing for them. Tiptoeing around 90 miles an hour. John Cooper Williams, Georgia Tech commit. Ranked 83rd in the country, John Cooper. Left-handed hitter, but a right-handed thrower. And Cooper scattered him in the third base dugout. <laughs> He's thrown 95 from the outfield in the past and 92 from the infield, so the arm strength is there. 
Looks like he's trying to throw 105 this time. <laughs> Hey, by the way, quick reminder, Miguel Hugas from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, unofficially threw 102 miles an hour earlier. John Cooper did throw 95, wow. Michael Graciano, Georgia Tech commit. From Naples, Florida. I've always been a big Graziano fan. He ran really well in the 60, but 6'3", 200 pounds. You know, has the body, has the athleticism. Starting center fielder and leadoff hitter for Naples High School for three years. A, a 4-1-6 in the classroom. Strong, athletic, as you said. Bob and Cindy. 90 with his was his top throw. Lataris Murray. Been watching him for several years and been enjoying watching him. And he is going by Taurus now. The roster he reminds us says Lataris, but he is when he signs his checks now, he is, uh, if anyone does that anymore, he's going by the name of Taurus. So Taurus Murray, T. Murray, as his teammates call him. This last year, his school won state. Prestonwood Christian Academy, what an incredible experience and a two-time select festival athlete. And I can almost assure you, Darren, that he has never signed a check before. <laughs> His dad is Taurus Sr., his mom is Shawnee Murray, a talented player. Eli Small, Omaha, Nebraska, catcher and an outfielder, Kentucky commit. East Cobb Astros plays for Coach Baldwin. <laughs> John and Jamie, his parents. That is interesting that a young man from, from just west of Omaha in the Omaha suburbs is playing for the East Cobb Astros, one of the most storied and successful programs, but one that is 800 miles or so away from Nebraska. It shows you what what's going on at the highest levels of, of travel ball at this time where players will will travel even cross country to play for for their team. Two times all state in Nebraska. He dabbled at 95 D that was a big arm yeah, and it's it, he he would be a guy he could if he had any outfield footwork he could probably throw 100 right now because he had no no footwork whatsoever. He'll be fun to watch behind the plate throw. Dean Curley ranked 48th, intriguing because he is uncommitted at this point out of Northview High School in Laverne, California. Alpha Prime, his travel team, and he's the son of Natalie and Steve. Curley mentored a lot by the late Jeremy Giambi. He calls it one of the more challenging times. The recent loss of Jeremy he said it was hard for me to grasp the sum, the concept of the mental and physical pain he went through. And a young man in Curly who unfortunately had to grow up pretty quickly after going through that with his friend. Touching 92 miles an hour, 93 as a matter of fact, you can add one more to it, a 93 there. This is Owen Egan. 6'1", 190, UCLA commit. Alpha Prime as well, his travel team. He can list, I'm, in, I'm interested, he's listed as a primary outfielder now. He's been a guy who's really been a true two-way player. Very strong arm on the mound, has been up to 93 pitching, but uh, now considers himself a primary outfielder.
89, Egan's top throw. Carson McIntyre, Oregon State Command, Mountain Ridge High School in Peoria, Arizona. He's also part of that Alpha Prime travel team. Ryan and Stephanie are his parents. His favorite player, Bryce Harper. He ate the top throw for McIntyre. Well, we get I get used to the you know the Harpers and the Cunhas and the and the, the Mike Trouts. I'm looking for the for the, the really unusual guys as okay. favorite players. But but every, every year we say okay who's the most by very unscientifically saying okay who gets the most votes here amongst the players. But those three would probably be the top vote getters. Jazz Chisholm coming up strong there though. Yes, he's on the move. There's no doubt over the last couple of years. Stanford commit Brady Reynolds, Bakersfield, Liberty High School. CBA Marucci plays for John Pano and Matt Jervis. He is the son of Chris and Melissa. All league, all state team captain for his baseball team. 4.5 GPA Brady, hence the Stanford. High 80s for that arm. Son of a firefighter. Carl Schmidt is from Petaluma, California, and he is a Texas A&M commit. Marin Catholic is where he goes to school. Any young man who is really a, a utility guy kind of reminds me of, uh, um, I'm afraid his first name, Doty, who was just uh, drafted a couple days ago out of LSU, former PG All-American. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same type of athlete, hitter, same type of body, but a primary middle infielder. Schmidt, his favorite player to watch play, who he's pulling for the hardest, Spencer Torkelson. Spencer Torkelson. So he's from my hometown. That's my guy. I'm keeping an eye on him. That's a unique name for you. That's that first thing I thought was, oh, I bet you they know each other from the same part of Southern California. Or actually, Schmidt from uh, Northern California. Dazzling Dean West, it's your turn, or do dirty, as his teammates call him. Woodland Hills, California, San Diego show, Notre Dame High School, where he plays for Tom Dill. Mom is Terry, dad is Marcus. Dean West. And Dean, a big Mookie Betts fan. Do you know whose name I don't think I have ever heard as a favorite player Aaron Judge interesting I'm hoping we get you one of those yeah and I think you know West bets at, at Southern California same type of athlete body everything I think Aaron Judge has to be hard to relate to yeah maybe that's it that's who knows maybe we'll find one later if you see one bring I will up. I will absolutely Ethan Belk throws by the way West actually topped that 83 and touched 86 miles an hour just to pay that off Ethan Belka Wofford commit from Legion Collegiate Academy in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Infielders will throw next from shortstop. And then the catchers will throw from behind the plate. Colton Wombles wears number 18. He's a young man we've been watching for quite some time. Catcher, Auburn commit. Select Festival in 2019.
Yeah, he'll be an interesting one to watch in, in the catcher pop times because he can legitimately in drills put up some pretty low numbers. A 175 is, is his best. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he throws out runners in games as well, but uh, out here in the outfield as well. But look at that body. That isn't a catcher's body. <laughs> I've never seen one. He looks like he could bench press my home. Strong. 89 miles an hour. Actually a 91, he got above that. We'll give him a 91 a couple of times. Gavin Grohovac, Villa Park High School in Orange, California, not too far from where the Angels play. And he's a Texas A&M commit. And this is a true utility guy. I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't do infield and catching and throw in a game. He's, he, he's listed as an outfielder, first baseman, second baseman, third baseman, catcher, shortstop utility on uh, the form that he fills out. And he does all that. Yeah. I mean, he really is a true utility guy. In fact, he doesn't pitch. It's the only position he doesn't play. really been training getting stronger over the last couple of months talked about trying to add muscle has Gavin this guy's Mike Trout obviously being out there in California will tell you more about Gavin there's a unique background for him as well big Nolan Stevens 63 215 Elk Grove California Franklin High School Mississippi State commit Stevens is a young man who, when he was running the 60, I went, okay, somebody's been hitting the weight room and is stronger. <laughs> As I'm just looking back, 2019 listed at 6'1", 180. 2019 for 2020, 6'3", 205. So, yes, he's, he's, he's a, a dedicated weight room guy and has really gotten stronger. Says during baseball season, he, these are his words, he works out two to three times a week. He said, my busiest time in the weight room is in the fall, and I put in a ton of time last year. Toby Twist from Bakersfield, California. Oregon commit. Toby had a wonderful opportunity to go down and play part of the MLB Develops in Vero Beach, Florida at the Jackie Robinson Training Complex in 2019. He said, not many people realize that I am Cherokee, Native American. And he said that experience was incredible to get that invite. And he's also on the lead on your list of alliterative names so far. Favorite, favorite name. You nailed it, David. We've done enough things together. Toby Twist, how do you not love that name? Rack him up for a 91, the son of Krista and Jeff. Dad played pro ball, by the way, in the Rockies and Giants organization. Mom, a college volleyball player. Brandon Winoker out of Edison High School. 6'5". Tall, athletic. Winoker. Let's see if he gives you an Aaron Judge. Because he's so tall. No, he, he gave you Mike Trout. That's his guy. <laughs> he gave you Mike Trout. Cardinals fan, though. SoCal guy who's a Cardinals fan. <laughs> Been a part of the USA baseball scene, the perfect game scene. Christine and Keith, his parents, they had a decathlete at San Francisco State. 91. A decathlete. As a matter of fact, make it a 95. We just had a late out of a 95 for Brandon. So you see the 91, that's there, but an official 95 as well. So you talked about it, David. You look at arm strength, you look at accuracy. You certainly will take a peek at those velo readings where 90 is what catches your eye. We saw a 102, which we'll show you at the end, but the outfielders are done with their work. Yeah, and, and additions, some of these players, the, the ones who who 
are second at uh, Wenocker and Eli Small earlier and some others. The players who are secondary outfielders haven't gone through a lot of repetitions. You just see their footwork is so much less advanced. And uh, it's obviously they haven't really worked on the fundamentals at, at the position very much. That's John Cooper Williams. That's Luca Reyes, the New Jersey man who's a Miami commit. Taurus Murray. He's going to start writing his own story in a bold way again. I'm excited about him. Really excited, interestingly enough. Carl Schmidt. Ethan Belk. And here it is, David. A, a, a kind of a kind of a massive surprise. Miguel Hugas from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. 102, a record, an all-time national showcase record. And he's not selling out for that at all either. He's doing, it's a quick release. It's it's actually an outfield type uh, play. There's not a big crow hop. There's not extra, extra steps. He's looking at that right now. I think that you know, he's like, oh, I did that. Oh my gosh. 102. <laughs> there he, <laughs> that's good stuff. He was peeking around. We have the feed in house on the scoreboard here too at Tropicana Field. I wonder if that's his brother all excited down there with him or someone who traveled with him. 102 miles an hour, that, that's it. It's, this is a historical event. You and I have done a lot. You've done way more than, than I have, but uh, these records, some of them stand for quite some time and no one's ever thrown over 100. We have had three 100s, never 102. Now, lat two years ago in Hoover at the Junior National yes. Showcase, Cooper Doss at 100. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's another 100. Yep, Cooper I, Doss at 100. I remember for a long time the, the hardest throw was by Jackie Bradley. Oh, and wow. And he threw 99. And uh, with full max effort, and obviously Bradley's gone on to become one of the top defensive outfielders in Major League Baseball. Right. Uh, but, yeah, he threw a 99, I think, at the, uh, the pre-draft workout in uh, Cedar Rapids his senior year. The infielders. We watch these infielders with their actions here. Obviously, we'll have velocity numbers. This is Rock Chalowski. He's a shortstop out of Chandler, Arizona. Hamilton High School, the power where he plays for coach Mike Woods. And Rock, because of his locale being an Arizonan and the game being at Chase Field, is the very first perfect game All-American this year. I know his father is proud. His father played at Cal Berkeley was, I believe, a, a top 50 pick coming out of Berkeley and is now a scout with the Cincinnati Reds. So a prideful baseball moment there. His dad, Dan, and his mom, Tika, who we got to know very well, a cancer survivor, courageous, strong woman. Is he? And you said The Rock, from what you hear, is having a heck of a summer. He's having a heck of a summer, and, and I saw him last year at the... Uh, underclass All-Americans and such a smooth, polished athlete. Right now, I think his defense is ahead of his bat, but that's just a matter of the strength catching up, but an extremely polished defensive player. 89 miles an hour, unofficially his high water mark. Rock Chalowski, a perfect game All-American. Gavin Gallagher, Apex, North Carolina. Plays for the Canes national team, Jeff Petty. Pro 5 Baseball Academy, where Mike Griffin is his leader there, North Carolina commit. During this infield drill, each each player gets five ground balls. The first first one's right at you. Get the nerves out. Second two or, or the second and the third are to the backhand. The fourth one's up the middle, like right there. And then the fifth is a slow roller. So each one designed to, to show a different tool, basically, a different different action. His favorite player, O'Neill Cruz, the Uber prospect for the Pittsburgh Pirates. At least an Aaron Judge sized player. <laughs> there you go. Number 17, Josh Tiedemann. Another Hamilton guy. Teammates with Rock Chalowski. And Zach Wattis as well. That's such we've, a great program. Yeah, we've, we've got at least three Hamilton players here. Such a great program. A large public school. Tiedemann's done a lot, and he's done a lot well. Hamilton, the 6A champions this year. 2021 reached the semifinal game with Hamilton. Chris and Tony, his parents. Dad, grandpa played at Creighton, played college baseball at Creighton. There's a lot on the resume for this young man. 
And it is great to see players from high schools, whether it's Hamilton or, or high schools, I should say, like Douglas High School in Florida or, or Hamilton that are public schools and not academies, not private schools that are, are much more involved in recruiting and stuff. Just a true public school that ranks among the top pro, you know, programs in the country every year, just like Parkview does. Landon Stripling goes now. Parkview is that program that we're talking about, a good one. He's a Mercer commit. We'll play in the outfield if you need him to, but a second baseman by trade. Tiedemann, by the way, registering a 92 mile an hour throw earlier. Stripling hanging around the high 80s. Sammy Mumau is a Florida commit. He goes to Dunedin High School in Palm Harbor, Florida. Yeah, good call, D, on the sunglasses because I see them fall off. The parent to me gets very scared. I can picture my son being out there stepping on his sunglasses. <laughs> Athletic. Yeah. What, what tends to happen, at least in the outfield, um, and I won't name any names, <laughs> but the, the fungo hitters tend to aim at them too. Because they, they get, we, we get kind of annoyed when you're out there and you're not, you're not wearing the sunglasses. You have no need for them. <laughs> um, and they fall off and it's like, just like right here is happening. You know, there go the sunglasses tossed back there. And one thing that, that kids this age are not very good at, and we were both parents, we can understand, is seeing what's happening in front of them and adjusting. It's like you just saw five straight guys lose their sunglasses. Why are you going out there to be the sixth? What Trent's talented, he's a top 50 player. I think the, I think the key is this size. I mean, there's a lot of yeah. present size, but yet still very athletic. Yeah. And you want to think right away, okay, this is a third baseman in the future. But I've learned through enough Corey Seager type mistakes okay. not, not to put people at third base, especially if they can hit too quickly. His team, the Dodgers, I say got a chance to travel in with his family, his mom, Bobby, who, by the way, according to Trent, makes his favorite meal nachos with steak, chicken, and guacamole. Mom makes that for me. <laughs> sounds good right he's now. On, he's on mom's good side. I'm past breakfast. That's that sounds good right now. Ryan Haros is from Cranford, New Jersey. And if the Jays a strong J, it's Ryan Jaros. Georgia Tech commit. He's played for the Diamond Jacks, you know, Kevin Cust in that program for the Cranford travel program up there as well. Kane's national coaches. He had a lot of good experiences. And another big kid, 6'4", 220, playing out in the middle of the field. Caraway, by the way, a 94 from the infield, a 94 earlier. JP, Jerem Purify, Little League World Series hero. Thirteen U Select Festival twice. The son of Betty Moore. We've enjoyed getting to know him through the years. 3.8 GPA, Detroit guy. Tigers fan, Tim Anderson fan. Jaron Purify wraps up his time. Yeah, he's a fun player to watch play. He kind of goes out in the games and is just as smooth at shortstop as he is in drills. Eric Becker is at Don Bosco Prep. Virginia commit from New York. Left-handed hitting shortstop. 6'3", 185 pounds. What you game with? You game with James Becker. Oh. 
See an 86 on the graphic. We saw an 88 as well. 88. Jack Bell's from Corpus Christi, Texas. Jack Bell is an Arizona State commit. Son of Patricia and Buddy. National Honor Society member of 4.2 GPA. He calls himself a late bloomer. Also just had an outstanding round looking up front <laughs> up here. Lots of actions, game actions, they're in drills. I always like to see that as a scout. He was not, he's not out there just throwing for the gun. He was playing baseball out there. That was a fun round. We saw an early 89 on the graphic. He actually touched 91 as well. So up to 91 miles an hour. That was smooth. Well, the two throws that you're going to get the big numbers generally are the first ball that's hit right at you that you can come to and then the ball up the middle because your momentum's going into your throw. So those are the two throws to look at if you're a player. Like, okay, I'm going to get my number either on the first or the fourth ball. Jordan Crossland, Suffolk, Virginia. He is a Maryland commit. for the Richmond Braves squad. Jordan wraps his time. Past has touched 88 on the infield. Ryder Robinson. Ryder Robinson finishes his round. 6'2", 175-pound TCU commit. Francesco Capocci from Cumming, Georgia. North Carolina commit. Really a true two-way player. Has been up to 94 on the mound. He's hit 556 this summer with a homer and 12 RBIs in 15 games. So one of the better two-way, true two-way players. Plays outfield, plays infield. 6.6 .6 runner. Has all the physical tools. Here is Aiden Miller. This is someone I've been excited to see play. We've seen him for a couple of years as a select festival athlete. Excited to see where he stands now, number four player in the country. What do you like about him, D? He's always been so mature with the bat. I mean, he's a hitter first, and you think of him as a hitter, and they think, oh, wait a minute, he, he runs plenty well enough. He throws 94 off the mound. He's athletic. Even though you know he, he's big, you know six two two ten, he doesn't look in any muscle bound big way. So he has athleticism, but at the end of the day, he's a bat first guy, and that bat has always performed so high. Miller got to ninety one, and by the way, Capulci a moment ago, number twenty three, gold ninety three. Yeah. And one thing I really like about this group of infielders as a group so far is that they are bringing game actions to these drills. Sometimes you see players, um, and I discourage anybody from doing it because it makes it harder to value. We're just out there looking for that that number. Right. They're, they're, they're not using game actions. They're wild all over the place. They're taking multiple steps that would, you couldn't do in a game. And all these have been game action drills. So you may not see you know, the huge, huge numbers on the throw times, but you're seeing what they can really do on the field. And I know the scouts all very much appreciate that. And I'm not talking about the perfect game scouts. I'm talking about the hun hundreds of pro scouts in here right now. Parker Pico wraps his time. 
And A.J. Ewing, number one in green out of Springboro, Ohio, Alabama commit. And we haven't panned the stands or anything like that. Of course, we have tons of parents here and family members, but I have no doubt that there are hundreds of, of uh, scouts here. I just got a text from a, a friend of mine who's a, a cross checker, and he says, this, hey, I'm missing my first PG National, and I don't know how long, but we have six other guys there. Nice. So that's just one team has six guys here, and that would be perfectly normal for most organizations. Ewing, the son of Joe Ewing and Cindy Hawkinson. Is that the Joe Ewing who played in the big leagues? I'm not sure. He doesn't talk about dad that way. He, by the way, touched 92 miles an hour. Here's Dylan Cup. We've been watching him for many years, and as you've watched him evolve, what have you seen? Just, it, it's been a very gradual maturing process. You know, physically, he's he looks like a shortstop. He plays like a shortstop, another glove first guy right now, but he probably plays as much, if not more, baseball than any other player at this level. It's just the amount of games he plays, um, spring, summer, fall. He, he's, a, he's a yard rat. This is this is what he is as a baseball player. Eighty five his high water mark. Trenton Lape or Trenton Lappy. LSU commit from Louisiana. He's an LSU man for Jay Johnson. He'll also play a couple of other spots. Play third if you need him. Play middle infield. 6-1, 175. Here's Ty Pete now. Georgia Tech from Trinity Christian, Tyrone, Georgia. Young man who not only has put on a show through this summer, right, 39th in the country, so he's done it before. Also, also one of the younger players in this class still is 16 years old. I can play just about anywhere on the field you want, including in the outfield if it's needed. Next up is number 11, Ty Pete registers 90 miles an hour. And Cooper Pratt is up now. EPA, his travel team, will miss his commitment, Magnolia Heights High School. He gets rid of the ball quickly. Talking about game actions, his glove to hand skills are very advanced. Uh, that's the one he went and got, try, got his, tried to get his number on that, which is really the one that you should if you're going to do it. But before that, on the back hands, the, the, the glove to hands is, is outstanding. His dad played baseball at Utah. His mom, softball at Nova Southeastern. Cooper Pratt, 91 miles an hour. And he got it on that fourth throw. John Cooper Williams. I saw Williams throw 95 from the outfield. He's trying to trying to reach that from the infield as well. This is a there we go. Game actions there. Sousa, Hawaiian, Honolulu, an Arkansas commit. Ninety-two, by the way, for John Cooper Williams. 
I wonder how much time he's actually spent in Hawaii this summer. <laughs> he's playing 24 PG uh, games, with three and two sticks baseball. And I'm sure he's been in other events and other stuff. So probably not seeing much much of Hawaii this summer. Switch over to roster number four. Six three two zero five, really strong in the classroom. Corey Seager, his favorite player. Big, tall, athletic shortstop like he is. Nolan, we saw an 89 mile an hour throw. His high water mark, 89. Dean Curley. Dean Curley's favorite player is Aaron Judge. All right, we got it. He didn't even, he didn't even have to wait long for it. He's a Yankees fan. He said he's such a unique player with his size and his strength. That's so much fun to watch. Dean Curley with a 90 mile an hour throw. That's for you, D. Roman Martin. Got to chat with him recently on our Sunday night Sirius XM radio show. Really enjoyed the conversation with Roman Martin. When you're in California, Rebecca and Roman, his parents, Stella, his younger sibling. He was part of that MLB high school all-star game at Dodger Stadium. That had to be fun for him. Four point three GPA Roman in the classroom. Sean Gilbert loves him at Servite. 91. Carl Schmidt. in the Indians organization. Schmidt ranked right there at number 80 in the country. Ninety one miles an hour. Casey Borba. Gifted Trinity League with all those talented schools in Southern California. He was the co MVP. Son of a coach can hit. One of the best right handed bats in California. And his guy he loves to watch is Justin Turner. Eric is his dad, Cindy is mom, Sis is McKenna at Orange Lutheran. That's his. Program as you're talking about, son of a coach. Gavin Grohovic. He's in that same neck of the woods out there at Villa Park High School in Orange, California. Texas AM has been scouting the West Coast and recruiting the West Coast with Schmidt and now Grohovac. Headed to College Station unless they find their way into Pro Ball first. Coach Lossnagel. Rovac's <laughs> dad, by the way, played at Chapman out there in Orange County. 87 miles an hour for Gavin. Cameron Kim. Plays for John Panel with CBA as a UCLA commit. Brian and Leslie, his parents. He's one of four at home, one of four siblings. He says about his mom, Leslie, she inspires me a lot. He said she holds down our family. Next thought, it's not easy doing that with four boys, he said. We 
You saw Winnick, Brandon Winnaker in the outfield earlier. Through 95, I believe, during his round in the outfield. Now we get to see the 6'5 athlete in the infield. He's another guy that plays for CPA, CBA, I should say, Winoker, and he is a UCLA commit. <laughs> called 2020 the year that so much was shut down in California his biggest year of growth and development mentally and physically we heard a lot of that back in mm. 2020 with kids who finally who'd been athlete 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 maybe multiple sports and it was the first time we heard over and over that they had a chance to work on their games work on their bodies you know even though their weightlifting may have been in the garage or the barn or, or wherever, you know, to, to really think about things other than, hey, when's my next game? When's my next practice? Sort of take a step back. Now, maybe not a voluntary step back. Right. But we, we heard that over and over as we were coming out of the pandemic and getting back on baseball fields. Fun actions on the infield, seeing the athletes work out there from – the work of Josh Tiedemann, who showed off a big arm, the TCU commit out of Arizona. Trent Caraway, who is also a 90-plus arm, a Californian and an Oregon State commit, big physical athlete. Ryan Yaros, Georgia Tech commit out of New Jersey. Aiden Miller, one of the top players in the country in this class. Jack Bell going to ASU, playing for a former infielder, and Willie Bloomquist. Ty Pete, big bat, left-handed hitter, Georgia Tech commit. Carl Schmidt, Californian, going to coach Los Nagels, Texas A&M. That's who flexed. And now, D, we go to the first base side, first baseman. So we watch them field, we watch the footwork, and we see the arm, correct? We, we see the athleticism there, there. There are at this level, you're going to see some very athletic first basemen. Um, you know, a lot of a lot. There are a lot of uh, at, at smaller showcases, regional showcases. Uh, a, a lot of the athletes who are primary first basemen are there because, you know, they, there isn't another position on the field they can play. But most of these young men are going to be high level athletes. Whether they be primary pitchers who also play first or just primary first baseman in general. In fact, we had a number of first basemen take the drills in the outfield already. Yeah, Josh Tiedemann's been just about everywhere. He puts that first baseman's glove on and goes to work. Well, I wouldn't doubt that we see, like, Gavin Grahovic over at first base because he's played that in, in, in plenty of PG events as well. There will be other players who it's like, oh, he's playing first base too. When you think about first baseman and you think about this event, there have been a lot of really good ones come through here, but Anthony Rizzo, one of them, Joey Votto, another one. They played at this event, Tiedemann, 89 miles an hour. <laughs> I always I always laugh when, when Rizzo's name comes up with the national because we, he Rizzo was playing in the Sunshine East, which was, was one of the Sunshine events or feeders to this national, and he was – we, we needed one more first baseman for the national and I had scouted Sunshine East and uh, I got the call okay one more first but we need a first baseman I said you know Rizzo Rizzo can hit a little bit blah 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 he, you know needs to lose some weight he's not real athletic yet because he wasn't at that point um, but he was literally the last guy picked for the national that year and amazing in the career he's gone on to have. Oh, he, he, he's he, back then. He he was a kind of a, a chunky, soft body kid. He didn't have that athletic quickness, but the bat's always been there, and that's what got him a spot in the national. And then he made himself into a better athlete, and with better athleticism, he became a better hitter. And you know, and what a great career he's had. We'll watch the work now of Georgetown Preparatory's Tommy Rolden from Poolsville, Maryland, a Virginia commit. 
Hey, by the way, the record, throwing record, if you're looking for Velo, if you're interested, Bobby Miller, the now Uber prospect pitcher for the Dodgers organization. He, in 2016, threw 95 as a first baseman. He now throws harder than that <laughs> as he journeys to the big leagues with the Dodgers, then went on to Louisville and did great things. Has he been up like 102 reportedly so. in the minors this year? Yeah, he pitched at the Futures game the other day. Zach Wattis is taking some time at first base. First baseman and an outfielder, Big Zach. Golden, 86 miles an hour. Tiedemann, 89. That fourth ball in, the first baseman get get five balls as well, a variety of coming off the base, staying back, charging, just like the infielders. But that fourth ball where they're coming off the base and throwing to second is that play that you see first baseman make all the time and really separates the best fielding first baseman from guys who are have some work to do. Zach Plashart. This is just about every position, very versatile. Saugus High School, Arizona commit. Here's Jackson McKenzie. Jackson getting to know his family for years. Bigger, stronger now has moved with those rankings inside the top 100. He's been a Mississippi State commit for quite some time. Also a left-handed pitcher. Laguna Beach, California is home for Luke Lavin. Santa Margarita Catholic is where he goes to school. That school's in the Trinity League as well. Stanford, Coach Esker awaits his arrival. He's a verbal. Catcher, first baseman, outfielder, Luke Lavin. Laguna Beach is beautiful this time of year. Crowded, but beautiful. Casey's over to first. Orba going to Texas. Mentioned a few Californians going to Texas A&M. I would say 10 years ago, you almost never heard of a California player going to a Texas or a a Florida or a SEC, ACC school. I mean, it was the exception. There might be one or two a year of, from the top players. And now it's a true national recruiting map. The California players, because of all the exposure and and the, I think also the just increase in popularity in college baseball. They're seeing more of these programs as college baseball is covered better in the media. And that's uh, kind of makes things tough for those California colleges. So, right, they can go get the kids from the Midwest and the Deep South and say, hey, want to come by the ocean? I see both sides. It's fun. Well, I guess 10 years ago, David, as Nolan Stevens works from Elk Grove, California, Mississippi State commit, I guess 10 years ago, you never would have seen two schools that are based in Los Angeles playing in the Big Ten either. Yeah. Well, but we're, we're <laughs> going to see that in the next couple that's of years whole, as well. A whole other story. So the first baseman, wrap it up. And now it's time for the catchers to shine. I'm going to preempt the catcher's drill by a plea to all the young catchers out there who I will see in the future. 
please use game actions behind the plate. Okay. It's, if you set up half standing, side saddle, you know, reaching out forward, it makes it almost impossible to evaluate you. And yes, you you might get a little you know a little better number on your 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 you know pop time or something, but you're going to get a worse number in your evaluation because you just can't evaluate what you want to. One of the probably the, the most important thing to evaluate in a catcher in drills like this is how he comes out of his crouch. And if you're not crouched to begin with, you just cut the thing in half. You want to see the lower half athleticism as a scout of these catchers, and the best way to do that is in a game how you shift and block, but also how you come out of your crouch throwing. And if you're not in a crouch or it's not a, a game situation, it just makes it very difficult to evaluate. And so we evaluate first Mateo Serna, American Heritage High School, a switch hitting catcher from Doral, Florida, a non-commit. There's difference in an electric car. He's being put on the gun, and he also is being pop timed. David's grabbing his stopwatch. <laughs> Forgot to take that out, but scouting instincts kick back in. As long as you're not accelerating, I can go from 44 and left. I will tell you the truth, I'm always taking notes in this drill and ne never have a stopwatch in, in my hand. And here's Oliver Service. He was added late. And we saw him throw from the outfield Oliver Service. University Liggett. His high school, Detroit, Michigan. He's a Texas commit, a primary catcher, Oliver Service. 194 pop time, Mateo Cerna, 194. Service has a career on base at PG events of 497. That's in more than 300 plate appearances. And actually, I will not share pop times that I'm getting, getting, getting up here because if they were different, especially lower than the, what they're getting down on the field close up, I would be misleading you, so One, probably best that I don't do that. One nine three, that time for him. Braden Buchanan, Baylor commit from Austin, Texas, Vandergriff High School. Son of Ann and Merchant, big brother to Ainsley. And now Macon Winslow. We heard for North Carolina, Canes National, his travel team. Is a Duke commit, Allison and Leary, his parents. And a cousin to Trot Nixon, if you remember his time. Oh, Trot Nixon, yes I do. This is gonna be a very low pop time, by the way. I am guessing. 1.84, making Winslow. <laughs> Tyler Minnick, a Georgia Tech commit from Marietta, Georgia, goes to Mount Perrin Christian. Tall catcher, 6'4", David, 195. That's just about at the top of the scale on the height meter for catchers. But as athletes keep getting bigger and bigger, you wonder, what was the, is the whole formula going to change on that? 
Self-scattering report, D. I'm a tall athletic catcher who can catch, block, throw, and frame well. Well, he just hit all the basics. <laughs> How about Daniel Susak, Arizona? Kind of reminds me of that height. Former PG All-American. See the 183 there from Minnick. And now Davis Rivers. He's from Waller, Texas. Davis, a left-handed hitting catcher and a Texas Tech commit. Coach Tadlock has earned his verbal. A little zip and accuracy there on that first throw. That 182 a few minutes ago. 188 for Davis Rivers. Uh, this will be fun. Blake Mitchell, who's the top ranked catcher in the country, ranked number six overall. And this might be his third best position. He actually plays shortstop for the Sinton High School team because their regular catcher is a is a, was a senior going to University of Texas. He also throws upper 90s off the mound, but just an incredible athlete and someone I'm looking forward to seeing his play as much as anybody over the next uh, few days. Moves out from behind the plate, plays short, and is the Texas Gatorade Player of the Year this year. 4.4 student in the classroom. State championship in 2022, 186. I'm guessing you'll tell me he can hit a little bit, huh? I'm sure he, that will come up at some point. <laughs> Stars of tomorrow play in this game, whether it be for the 2023 draft or the 2028 All-Star game. And I think nice. Mitchell is one of those players that, that you're going to hear a lot more about in both those contexts. Alex Sosa is committed to go to North Carolina State. Vieira High School in Vieira, Florida. One eight seven for Alex Sosa. Nebraskan Eli Small. We saw throw 95 from the outfield with young footwork. Primary catcher, though. He managed a 4.0 his entire junior year in the classroom. One nine zero for Small. We're seeing the pop time. We're not seeing the velocity number, but I bet you Small's was somewhere in the mid eighties at least, because the young man's got got a rifle. How much do you look at that? The velo from the arm. It's it's much the same as 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 the outfield. You're looking at it in different levels. There's nothing fundamentally different between a seventy seven and a seventy nine, but if you're throwing eighty six. 88, 88 like Ike Irish did last year at, at the National. That resonates. Um, so it, it's more just like a, a number thing. There's no, but there's no difference. These kids are, get excited. Oh, I threw, I went from 78 to 79. It's like, that's pretty irrelevant, actually. You can do that with just good footwork. Pretty actions, by the way, for Lavin there. Touched to 190, but they were game actions. Think of Malcolm Moore, who's now going to make it to campus at Stanford, then Lavin the next year. That's a couple good catchers going to Stanford. <laughs> oh, no doubt about it. This looks like Noah Miller here, number 10.
Michigan man, Cincinnati commit. We'll pitch, we'll play in the corner of the infield as well. Oops. <laughs> All you can do is smile when it slips through your fingertips, and he did smile. You see that in, in big league games too. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. No, always remember. Oh, that was Colton. My apologies. Yeah. That was Colton Wombles. Yeah. Yeah, I always remember Wombles from the, uh, the, under the uh, underclass. Was it? No, it was the uh, junior national last year, where he threw out like five runners in three innings because the runners were going and they were told to go, and Wombles just keep throwing them out. Ryder Helfrich from Clayton Valley High School, an Arkansas commit, another Californian going out to the SEC. 28th ranked player in the country. Just a dynamic all around player. Luke Shearer, Cal Poly commit, Ukaipa, California. I think we had a Wombles with a 181. Not bad. No, nope, not surprising either. He was added to the additional roster, though we've known him for years. And Shearer wraps his time. Very unusual release point for catcher. Really low, mid, low three quarters, but 180, he gets it down there. That concludes our catchers, Darren. BP is next, E. And you know that BP is my favorite part of any showcase. Why is that? I there there is a, a I it's my favorite part of any game actually. There's okay. such a there's such a a rhythm to it, um, and it's such an important part of the the evaluation process in a showcase environment. Yeah, you want to see game swings, but but batting practice, you know, and sitting and just watching batting practice, our big events where we have 15, 20 teams, the idea of, of watching 15 to 20 teams take batting practice scares the stopwatch off most scouts, and I just love it. And especially at events like this where you have some of the best VP throwers in the country, throwing batting practice it's really a, a great opportunity for for the kids who who put so much effort into hitting and have hitting tools to shine and and what a better backdrop to have batting practice in in a major league ballpark yeah excited about that the catchers did a nice job by the way i need to point out the final luke shearer had a 1.80 so excellent job by luke shearer to log that time 188 there for making Winslow one eight seven for Alex Sosa there's Colton Wombles he was getting it done at a one eight one Colton except for his fly ball to center field work being done in the end by Helfrick and as we said Shearer with a 1-8-0. Good numbers top to bottom really. And it looked like for the most part most of your catchers heeded your advice and put in those game actions. Hey David if you're if you're intimate at a at a smaller showcase right and you're sitting down in that setting you'd have been under a, in the sunshine anyway if we were outdoors under a tent and you'd be chat. Would you encourage an athlete to pass us by? Hey, but let me see you with your game actions. Would you oh, encourage I, him? I, I've been. I catch. I talk to catchers more often than. Yeah, they're right there with it, you. It, we we had a catcher. This true story. While they get set up for BP, um, we had an event in Gastonia about a month and a half ago, smaller event, and it was one of the top prospects there. Was a catcher, and he went first, 
and he was very non-game actions. And this is a guy I wanted to evaluate to get to this event. I mean, he was that level of player. And he went his first two throws and just completely standing up. And I said, stop. And in front of everybody, he said, no. And I called him by name. I want you to show game actions. I don't want to see this. I'm trying to evaluate you. And everybody heard it. And he went and did it, had a great. Through great. Through great. Yeah. But every other catcher in that event, after I called out the best guy, had game actions. And I was like, okay, this works. I need to tell all the catchers that all the time. Yeah, and that makes but, sense. But that, that's why they're there. And, and, and as we go into batting practice, I'll, I'll merge that right into a, I was reading an article on Pete Alonzo before the Home Run Derby. And Alonzo says the mo was saying the most important part of his approach to the Home Run Derby, and it's something people talk about, oh, people are going to change their swings, go into slumps after a Home Run Derby. He says my, the most important thing I do is ha bring my game swing into batting practice because that's what it's for. And that's my message to all these, these players as they go into batting practice and the future and stuff. I see so many players try to change their swings for batting practice, which is the worst thing you can do. If you say, oh, I'm going to impress them, I'm going to put some more lift on my swing, and I'm going to hit three home runs and everything like that. And you, what you end up doing is hitting six foul balls right back because you're, you're not using a swing that you're comfortable with, and, and, and it's not your real swing. Go into batting practice, young players, and with the same approach you have in a game, use your game swing. Huh? We're putting some technology out on the field there, too. <laughs> national showcases and stuff we kick it up a few notches you know to get that the the, ex, the extra information the the launch angles the impact speeds the, there's so many analytical measurements that didn't exist in baseball five or ten years ago and bringing the PG Tech cage out onto the field. I always ask athletes what it's like for, to do just this. And, you know, it's almost like the home run derby the other night. It's taking BP without a turtle over you, a cage, if you will. And by now, most have done showcases, so they get used to it. But it's it, it can be daunting. Oh, this is a major league stadium, too. Yeah. Oh, yes, and, and th that, that not having a turtle isn't just intimidating for the hitters. We've had any number, I've watched any number of people over the year, years who are college coaches, they throw BP 200 days a year at least, and they go out there without that turtle and they can't throw. Um, I've seen so many guy, guys who I know are better BP pitchers than that basically go out and fail. And, oh, we gotta get another pitcher in there. Well, I guess the good news is for the BP pitchers, they're the best, period. And then the other part of it is, in this case, they do have a catcher. <laughs> that's part of the that's part of the sign up. It was interesting. Part part of the uh, companion article, the one I read on Alonzo's approach, was they went through and actually for the eight contestants and said who the batting who their pitchers were going to be and what the background was, and, and that that was fun to read too because with doing so much with batting practice, you know Rico Billups is on the mound now, and and he could throw to any of those hitters at that that stage if if Rico knew the player well enough to have his confidence and the familiarity. Heck, Rico could go out and throw all eight players. He could throw in the whole derby, I think. But I thought about Rico when they talked about the rules of last night's All-Star game, that it would, if in fact a tie like they had in 2002 in Milwaukee, that they would have three designated players and three designated players would have a home run derby. I think it's a great <laughs> idea. Sorry, folks, I'm going to scare a lot of you away, even though my father played and I played. I was supposed to be a traditionalist. I'd love the idea in the regular season. I think it'd be great. I think it'd be great. Now, now that you're mad at me, understand this. Here's my point. Rico, I thought about him yesterday because I thought Rico could hop out there and throw that BP for that home run derby in yep. front of 50,000 people. Yep. That's where I thought of him. I know I shocked a lot of you with the other <laughs> thoughts, but that's where, that's where I thought, you don't I thought of him. You don't like the current Ghost Runner system? I love it. I love anything that, that speeds up the extra part of the game. I, I like all nine. You don't like, that's fine, but play the nine, but then let's go home. 
the Derby. Why not? Why not do do 60s? Do two 60-yard dash runs, D, out there. <laughs> the best your time fastest, wins. Pick yeah. your fastest player. <laughs> Rock Chalowski will swing first. We're excited to see Rock hit. We've seen the actions of these players, and I think this is fun. Now we, you know, we've done so many athletic things, David, and this is, with all due respect to the things they've done well, we've had a 102 from the outfield, a high 90s from the infield, a 180 pop time. We've seen great things. These guys love to hit. Oh, yes. That's all well and good. When I, they <laughs> love to hit. It doesn't change. I was out back in Omaha visiting my kids and grandson. We we're talking about my seven-year-old grandson. It's like, Mason, what you like to do in baseball field? Hit. <laughs> and that's from, from the very, very time you pick up a bat, it's going to be hit. The very first member of the PG All-American roster, Rock Chalowski from Chandler, Arizona. A UCLA commit. I'm going to leave a lot of space for David because I love to hear him just break down what he sees. Well, well Chalowski, I'm going to make a comp here to somebody we mentioned ear earlier off, off the air. But Chalowski is sort of a right-handed hitting Mikey Romero in this, year, this year's class. He, he's not big and physical yet, um, like some of these that we're looking at these 6'2", 205-pound guys, Aiden Millers all the time. Chalowski doesn't, just like Romero, doesn't have that physical development yet. But he's young for his class, just turned 17. He's not strong yet. He's got every baseball action imaginable. And when he gets stronger, that's when you're going to see, you know, the, the really impressive stuff. Avin Gallagher wears number eight. He's from Apex, North Carolina. A North Carolina commit. Four point three GPA, thirty ACT, outstanding. Okay. Hey, he's having a, n a nice summer hitting, hitting three ninety six in PG games. This in eighteen PG games. Homer and eight RBIs, a career 370 hitter. So that's a big part of his game. He's the son of Sean and Liz Gallagher. And the youngest of four. Owen Martin is from Lomita, California. He is a Long Beach State commit. Next up is number 10, Owen Martin. Jamie and Holly, his parents. Dylan, you missed the last one. Hit mobility and core. That has been his focus as far as working out over the last year. Hip mobility and core. Well, hips, hips are in core are so vitally athletic in any sport and in actions. But for a hitter, you know, your, your core drives a swing. You swing from the ground up or good hitters, guys who can hit, swing from the ground up. And it's all driven by your core, by your hips, by those big muscles, your thighs, your glutes. Okay, I got you. And Martin did a real good job, did a very good job of using his hips there. You know, what, what, what you don't want to see from young hitters are that, that upper body rotational swing where you're swinging from the top down, where your first movement to start the bat is pulling your front shoulder out. You know, your first movement is, is, is in your hips and core and your lower half. This is Cameron Nelson. Forest commit, outfielder, left-handed pitcher. Number one overall outfielder in the state of Maryland is ranked by perfect game. Four 
for 58 on base percentage in his PG career. That's 58 total games. Christian Rodriguez is going to do a little bit of everything today. The primary right-handed pitcher. Took drills in the outfield. Taking his BP now. PG veterans certainly. Well, if you're not used to watching batting practice at a showcase or something like that, you think, oh, we're in a big league stadium. We probably won't see many home runs. Remember Dominic Hellman last year? Sure. Now, there's your Aaron Judge guy. If he does his favorite player. <laughs> Hellman hit, what, seven, six or seven home runs in his round? He did. I, and they, the, he was hitting him in the upper deck. So it's, it, it, it's not something you can predict. But, uh, but the right hitter who's in a groove. I remember watching uh, Cameron Mabin here at a Perfect Game National Showcase go hit left-handed first, hit two or three out, turns around right-handed, hits one out, you know. We saw Mateo Cerna work at right about 1-9 pop time behind the plate. This is a switch hitter out of American Heritage High School, Doral, Florida. Uh-oh, we have a little... Uh, Broken bat issue right there. No one likes to hear that. No. Dad, dad the least. <laughs> no, this is going way back in the memory banks. I was here 20, over 20 years ago, this ballpark for a non-PG event. This even predates me working for, for a perfect game. And Josh Hamilton was there. And they were using aluminum bats back 20, however many years ago when aluminum bats were different. They were, and Josh Hamilton basically played pepper with that, that center, the, 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 uh, the batting background, 440 feet and 50, 50 feet high and 404 feet for home play. He must hit five balls off that in his batting practice, but with the aluminum bat. But it was still awfully impressive. Cerna, as we said, a switch hitter will flip flop to the right side. By the way, Cerna did a lot of work catching. First round pick Brandon Barriera in high school this year. Brandon, a PG alum. Really one of the first things you're looking for in a, a young switch hitter is basically whether he should be a switch hitter. And you, you would prefer any switch hitter to be stronger from the left side just because that's where they're going to get the majority of the at-bats. But, but you, that's the first thing you really evaluate is this kid have a chance to switch hit at the next level or does he have a, a definite weak side that is going to keep yeah. him from doing that? I was just catching on two feet for the most part. So, uh, oh, Landon Stripling from Parkview High School in Lawrenceville, Georgia. He is a Mercer commit. Stripling hitting a robust 429 in 36 games so far this summer. Plays with the Georgia Bombers organization. At 388 last year as well. So high contact guy, not a lot of power yet. But check that out. In his 228 plate appearances the last two years, he has struck out nine times. Well, that's crazy. Versus 37 walks. Stripling a 
cool little timing mechanism with that lead foot hovering in the air for just a moment. As long as he gets it down in time. Big, biggest pet peeve probably for young hitters is when they when they see people, Zach Nieto, the, the, the young shortstop from Campbell, who, who went in the first round, has that huge, huge leg raise. And young hitters see them go, I can do that too. Well, no, you can't basically, because <laughs> you're not going to get your foot down in time. That's something that's got to be built up through repetition and repetition, timing, athleticism. Josh Tiedemann ranked inside of 175 nationally from Chandler, Arizona. TCU commit. 6A champions his team this year at Hamilton. And the younger brother to Mitch and Nick. I'm with him on his favorite meal, by the way. I asked him, what's your favorite meal? Who makes it? He said, it's steak and oysters, and I make it. Oh. He said, I grill the steak, and then I wait till Fridays because it's $1 oyster per oyster at Whole Foods. That's my favorite meal. Oh. That, 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 Josh. <laughs> you're not going to be. You're not going to improve on that one. Josh. At all. I knew you'd like that. Sammy Moomout now for Florida Commit. Oh, I knew you'd like that. Smart man knows when it's... Uh, if you're getting it at Whole Foods, it'll be good. Even in Arizona, yep. don't be worried. It only came in somewhere pretty quickly. And then you're paying a buck. And you grill the steak yourself. That means if you want it pink, if you want it done completely, whatever. Self-made man, Josh T. <laughs> Sammy right around that 250 in ranking. Very little stride there, D. Yeah, but it's a, it's a simple, simple, you know, the, the, the trigger, the load, he's going to be on time all the time. It's a, it's a swing that really is, which is going to translate to games well. Detroit's Oliver Service. Texas commit. Little Caesars National, his travel team, University League at his school. an active PG player. This is more than 40 PG events we've seen him. Well, I mentioned earlier that he has just been tearing it up this summer, hitting 491 in 25 games, a couple home runs. You know, looking at the uh, 16 under national championships, which just concluded at East Cobb, actually are still ongoing. He came straight from there, hit 600. Wow, he's still 16 years old, huh? Yep. Hit 625 at the 17U National Championships with five doubles, five singles, knocked in eight runs. So he's just had a huge, huge summer so far. Really put himself on the map. And I think I think that just fell short going, leaving the yard on the last swing. Harold is his dad. Savarior is mom, mama to... Michigan State dad, Mr. Service, just to finish the thoughts on him, an excellent cricket and soccer player. Here's Braden Buchanan. Yeah, have you ever hit out of Sam Houston? Mm -hmm. You hit that through the ball. Yeah. Braden 1370 in that ACT with a 4.0 GPA. His mom. Ma oh, man played softball at Baylor. Well, we've seen the actions of Trent Caraway all over the field defensively. Now let's watch him hit. There's some bad speed there. Yeah, 
Yeah, he's, he's smoking some balls. Gap to gap, you saw the ball to right center field that carried just as well as the, the huh. balls he's pulled. Yeah. But we're watching hips. Watch his front hip just as he starts a swing. He turns it in just a little bit and then whips the hips. And it's not a big action. It's not a hovering load or a big curl, but he's getting that front hip turn and driving the swing with that front hip. Jay Sarah Guy out there in that trinity. Son of Tyler and Bobby and the younger brother to Tate. Trent Caraway, a strong round. Boy, he's powerful. Johnny Farmello out of Centerville, Virginia. All conference performer, baseball and basketball. He's a varsity basketball player, big high school as a freshman. Those appealing multi-sport guys, David. I love multi-sport guys. Farmello playing for the Canes national team at that just completed 17U national championship at 428 with eight RBIs for the Canes. Johnny gave such a hitter's answer. If I said if you could be commissioner for a day, he said I would make the plate smaller so I'd be able to hit more balls that were right down the middle. <laughs> oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny, Johnny. Oh, boy. <laughs> Elite basketball and baseball player, Johnny Farmello. I'm going to have to look up his ba basketball stuff. That's intriguing. And we're so used to the football athlete. Mm -hmm. Evan Hager is a Canes national player for Jeff Pettity. Detroit Catholic Central from New Hudson, Michigan. We saw him at the Select Festival, 14U Select Fest. He was at PG Junior National as well. Dad played in the Tigers organization for a bit. Brother played college baseball at Hillsdale. Dad, Greg, brother, Trey. He said his last six months, his focus has been really locked in on rotational work and speed conditioning. That's something you don't hear a lot of players talk about is speed conditioning. Because speed is obviously an integral part of the game and it affects so many different aspects of your game, especially if you're a middle of the field player like Hager who has the speed to play center field. But by getting your lower half stronger and it working right and having the right running mechanics, you're also giving your lower body so much more life and ability to express its athleticism. And he ran a 6-4-4 and he's okay. a big guy. All right. Ah, that tech stream was great. It took me a while to go back to that time, <laughs> David. 6-4-4 <laughs> four, four, though. Here's our strong-armed right-handed pitcher, strong-armed outfielder. Miguel Cubis, let's see what he does with the bat as he drives that hard to right field. He threw 102 miles an hour, folks. 102. We call everything unofficial until we think it's official, but it's official. <laughs> and it's not, as I said, it's not like he sold out to do it. And sometimes you see guys, and he's, I guess he's a switch hitter. Multi-talent, different talents on top of different talents here. But, and that's encouraging, because if you see a guy throw from the outfield and throw hard, and he also pitches, you say, okay, he has the momentum, he's selling out to throw hard from the outfield. But that wasn't, that That may translate really well to the mound. I'm not saying he's going to throw 102 from the mound. Right. But uh, but I think we're going to see something really impressive from the mound as well. And Play 
played in Jupiter last year. Huh? Pitched for an inning for yeah. the Warhawks team. If you have black and gold. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I guess. For the Shag Town Cream Travel Team, he's intriguing. One to keep an eye on for sure. Ryan Jaros from Cranford, New Jersey. This is kind of the Canes National Team here, Black. There's quite a few guys from that travel team. Jeff Petty's team, Georgia Tech commit. First team, all state of New Jersey, last couple of years. NHS, Business Honor Society, Science Honor Society, honor roll as well. We celebrate the, the courage of his mom, Nancy, overcoming and battling breast cancer. That seeing her drain so much. I had so much respect for her. Three years cancer free now, by the way. Outstanding. Tommy Rolden. <laughs> Left handed hitter, Virginia commit. Perfectgame.org and find the national showcase. Check out rosters, the full schedule. You can see the pitching rotation as well. If there's a pitcher you want to keep an eye on that you're intrigued by for any reason, that's all right there on perfectgame.org. There's Cooper Strong. Strong out of Farmersville, Texas. It's a Texas A&M commit. Primary right-handed pitcher who's been up to 91 on the mound. I haven't looked at those pitching rotations yet, Darren. I think I need to do that. Go check it out. See who we're going to see throw today. Everybody does need to remember that we will we have two games coming up immediately after batting practice. Games are usually scheduled for 10 innings at perfect game showcases, so a lot of baseball still ahead. Zach Wattis now. Chandler, Arizona man, TCU commit. Junior National Showcase in 20. As a matter of fact, he a year early went to that event with Elijah Green. He noted that, also went to the Junior National last year, was the top prospect. And he oh. just knocked one into the seats. I think he just knocked two into the seats. Zach. Big, strong, a lot of leverage, huh? Oh yeah, and I looked up the Hamilton High School statistics since we have our, our trio. And of course, that's a school that Gavin Turley hit 15 for, former PG All-American. But Zach Wattis had five home runs during Hamilton's 33 games. is the youngest of Daryl, Dr. Daryl Wattis and Tracy Wattis. Two homers, huh? Yeah. Really squared up the ball well. Back 
Mike's a big Taekwondo guy, too. He's a red belt. Making Winslow. Really strong catcher, solid receiver, blocker, thrower. Two times his team has won a state championship in high school. This guy's J.T. Riamuto. Loves to watch him catch, but he's a Red Sox fan. Macon says, bring back the old style of baseball if he were commissioner for a day. Gritty style, he says. The one full of unwritten Gold rules. Hitters over here. Gold hitters over here. That's what he's looking for, <laughs> and I quote, today's game has gotten soft, according to, uh, <laughs> to Macon Winslow. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> old school, I like it. I don't think Jazz Chisholm is his favorite player. <laughs> I thought you'd get a kick out of that. That's what's fun. I mean, it's... Gosh, I have, uh, she's a young lady, but I have a 21-year-old daughter who's, the game is her life and she loves it, but she may as well be 60, 70, 81. <laughs> she is old school, unwritten rules, my gosh, universal DH, and she's 21, a young lady. Well, she might have learned some of the game from you. Yes, <laughs> but she and I don't really agree. I've got a little more modern. It's, I guess my point is it's fun. It's yeah. fun to see how you can see, even guys who, these guys are kind of holding the future of the game in their hands. So I'm curious what their thoughts are, you know. And that what I just shared, there is the complete antithesis from the other kids, yeah. which won't surprise you. Yeah. So you get both sides. Yeah. No, I definitely like your new questions <laughs> this year. All right, Jaron, purify. Top 75 player. What makes him special, David? He's so athletic. We watched him. I thought he took one of the best infield rounds before, but we've seen that before. You know, he, he's young. He's athletic. He has tools in every area. You know, he has that combination of you You think he's going to be able to stay in the middle of the field, and you think he's going to hit, be able to hit in the middle of the lineup. Um, you know, it's such a well-balanced athleticism. Not really driving the ball yet in this round, but we've seen it. His workouts last six months have focused on cardio, agility, mobility, explosive movements, and strength building movements. Those are the words of JP. If he were commissioner for a day, change the extra innings rule, make bunting more often used. A game that is hard fought. The game has become, and I quote, boring to watch at times due to lack of execution and laziness. Jaron says, although I know MLB players are trying to win, they should spice the game up a little bit. Yeah, that's not a boring question. Eric Becker, Don Bosco Prep. Great athletic school, great academic school. Virginia commit. All Becker does is hit. He's hitting 514 this summer in PG events. He hit 386 last year. Had four home runs last year. Hasn't hit one this year, but this is a hitter. One of the top hitters in the class. And you always love seeing a middle infielder who's a left-handed hitter. He just took one to the base of the wall in right field. <laughs> a pretty swing there. Line drive into center field. Jack Bell's from Corpus Christi, Texas, Arizona State University commit. Corpus Christi Ray High School, where Orlando Ruiz is his head coach. Buddy and Patricia, his parents. I love Jack Bell's infield, infield drill. I don't think I've seen him before, but that was a fun drill to watch. 
And you said he's a late developer. That's what he says, yeah, self, self declared, right? I mean, yeah. very aware. He said the only way I overcame it was stubborn patience. Kind of guy who's probably gone from being the backup JV shortstop as a freshman to playing in the PG National at a big league ballpark. This guy's Bo Bichette. He loves watching Bo Bichette play. He's a Blue Jays fan. If you were commissioner for a day, I would eliminate the shifts, he says. for the Texas 12. Great program, the Texas 12. Another Texan, Jackson Brasso. Uncommitted athlete. Primary left-handed pitcher. What are your quick thoughts on the shift? I'm fine with it. Shift away. I agree with you completely. Shift away. Base, baseball's a game of adjustments. If hitters don't like the shift, they need to make an adjustment. Yes, shift away. It, it's like the equivalent of saying pitchers are throwing too many sliders nowadays. <laughs> <coughs> there should be a new rule that you can only throw 20% sliders. It's like, no, make an adjustment. Hey, by the way, Jackson wanted to make mention of Brick Steed, his high school coach, a strong Christian man, he says, who cares about his players. He's helped me grow as a man, as an athlete, and in my faith as well. He was a left-handed pitcher in pro baseball and spent some time at Paris Junior College in Texas. He said, I owe a lot to Coach Steed in my recent development in all facets of my life. It's cool when a young man's given a platform to honor someone, and he does, like he did. And by the way, if you ask Jackson, what would you change about the game you love? He says, nothing. I like it just the way it is. <laughs> Here's Max Clark, the number one player in the country. There's not enough cameras focused on uh, the players now. Let's get one more camera on there. Yes, sir. What makes him special? Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, the tempting thing is to say the tools and this and the way he performs. But when people talk about Max Clark, the first thing they talk about, like today, we were talk down there talking, and somebody had just come down from the uh, from up top where the the players come in. They say they, they said, "Who was the first? Who guess who the first player here was this morning? The first one in line to come into the ballpark was Max Clark." That's what I hear about him more and more than anything else. It's just the kind the kind of young man he is and the hunger that he has um, to play baseball. Oh, Rico threw a nice little cutter there. Explosive. One of those athletes can, can do just about anything. He knocks it into the fourth row. He's he's always impressed. He, I've always compared him to Jared Kelnick. Okay. As a general, as an athlete. Kelnick, Kelnick as he got this age, got really strong, especially in his lower half. And, and Clark's, I think, a looser athlete, which I think is going to be able him to, to be more explosive. But I think that the in the base profile talent level, that's what you're looking at. Jordan Crossland now. Maryland commit from Suffolk, Virginia. It's interesting when you find 
the invites for players. I love learning the backstories about a, a player that maybe is poised. I think the best way to say it is poised to move up in the rankings. I was just thinking that about about Crossland, who's ranked five, is in that 500 group, but I, I don't remember his his 60 time. But he's run a 6-4 in the past. He's obviously strong. He, he stung some balls here. But he looks like a, a more than a 500 player, and he's obviously, you know, by virtue of being invited, he's done things already this summer that, that have come, you know, gotten him up on this map. So. 6560 by the way today Seth is from Long Beach, Mississippi. He's an old Miss commit. In all likelihood, see him pitch as well. Eighty-ninth ranked player in the country. Listed as a switch hitter. Ninety-two from the outfield. Hitters get six swings from each side if they're a switch hitter. Ten overall from just one side. He looks like a switcher. He's he's a little noisier and from the left side in his approach, but it's a little bit looks to me like a little bit better bat speed. But looks like a guy who can go go to the next level and continue to switch hit. Now batting number twelve, Kendall George. That brings the plate, Kendall George. Who absolutely flew in the 60. Posted one of the top times. George, 5'11, 165 pounder from Atascacita High School in the Houston area. Plays for the Texas 12. I mentioned earlier, is one of the top programs in Texas. speedster Kyle Henley take his 10 cuts at the plate Henley 6'3 175 pounder Denmark High School in Cumming Georgia Henley is a speedster. Last summer, playing for the Georgia Bombers, stole 44 bases in 62 games. He's already picked up 13 more steals this summer in PG events. Career total of 80 stolen bases in 157 games. So 
This is a speedster. But in order to steal bases, you got to get on base, and Henley with a 418 on base percentage as well. So. Our next hitter is Tyler Minnick, who we saw put in a good round behind the plate in drills. Mentioned 6'4", 195-pound catcher. Minnick plays for Kyle Reese, the head coach at Mount Perrin Christian School. Amy and Brian, his parents, had playing collegiate golf at the Citadel, and he has a 4.2 GPA as Tyler. What we call a long and strong swing. When you're 6'4", 195 pounds. That's what's mo most likely to happen. Left-handed hitting catcher, Davis Rivers. Texas Tech commit from Waller, Texas. Speaking of player, I love looking and see what these guys are doing the summer and frequently mention the stats, but Check out this on Rivers. 26 games, 75 plate appearances, hitting 478 with four bombs and 29 RBIs. Throwing eight doubles for 1369 OPS. Such a true test of where you stand amongst your peers when, you know, not everyone's able to take on a busy, rigorous travel ball schedule, but when you're able to, such a wonderful test of where you stand amongst those that are the best. And that's just what you're talking about. His pop time was 188 during the catching drills. You can see where that power comes from. That's a strong, strong young man. Listed 6'1", 195. Crush that last one. Warning track and straight away center field. And he, and he didn't sell out for it. That was just man strength there hitting a baseball. And we're talking about rankings here. He was ranked 500 overall in our last rankings. So we haven't done a rankings for this class, I think, since May. So everything that he has done though, so far this summer, including hit almost 500 power here, has not been incorporated in yet. And that's obviously going to change that ranking. You're hearing good things about Andrew Wiggins. He ran a 6.62. This man from Indianapolis, who's an Indiana commit, and the same person that told me that Max Clark was the first person in line to get in the ballpark, also mentioned that Andrew Wiggins was second. Oh, that's great! A couple of Indianapolis guys chomping at the bit, huh? Maybe, maybe they had the same ride. Our, scout, our scouts think that Wiggins could, could end up as one of the premier hitters in this class. It's a pretty swing. It's so low effort. It's just natural and simple and A Utah native, Ryder Robinson. He's a TCU commit, American Fork High School in Cedar Hills, Utah. Top ranked player in the state of Utah in the 2023 class. Listed as a switch hitter.
Derek and Amy. Okay, played in the Cardinals organization. See some of the metrics after the swing is completed, the fly to the baseball. You can peek down bottom left corner. I was going to say that we might get information overload here wow. on every pitch. Impressive. Francesco Capocci, the North Carolina commit from Cumming, Georgia, Denmark High School. Fifth in the country. Six seven six sixty through ninety three across the infield. And we'll see him pitching later today. Scheduled to go third in the gold team's rotation this afternoon. Below at 95 there a moment ago, the son of Matt and Marisol Capocci, both Rutgers alums. Here's Aiden Miller now. Number four player in the country is ranked by a perfect game. Career 397 hitter with 18 home runs and 154 RBIs in 157 games. So he's played basically a major league season, 157 games. 154 RBIs, 140 runs, 67 extra base hits, 47 steals. He's just an off, he's certainly one of the top offensive players in the class. And I think I've heard some like Brady House comps mm. for Aiden Miller. Yeah. 99 miles an hour exit velocity on that last swing, Aiden Miller. Here's Blake Mitchell right behind him. Another high skill, high talent, highly ranked athlete. Mitchell LSU commit from Sinton, Texas, number six player in the country. Well, I forgot to mention when I was giving all the platitudes to Mitchell earlier, is that yes, he's a left-handed hitter. That's a pretty swing there, just but extension. It's so in sync when I, that's 98 off the barrel there. But in sync, I mean the, the lower half to the upper half to the hands, it's all flowing so well. Yeah. Jack, you 
Two wonderful rounds of BP back to back. Next up, number 27, Parker Pico. And another one, Parker Pico, who we have been knowing for quite some time, select festival athlete, two times Parker Pico. Pretty suburb of Detroit, Rochester Hills is where he hails from. His brother twin, his twin brother by the name of Tate, going through the recruiting process as well. He's for USA Prime American. That last ball, 395 feet, 100 miles an hour off the barrel. And it's deceptive because that's a low effort swing. It's a very short swing. It's not a, a power swing at all, but I think Parker's just so strong, he's overpowering the ball. Because you can tell he really emphasizes staying short, but that power was was loud and often. 101, moving to the seats. Nice. Yeah, that's not a... If I was taking notes on that swing, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't give give it a high grade for aesthetics, but I certainly would for what really counts, and that's bat speed and the ability to impact the ball. Zach Plashart, the Saugus, California native, the Arizona commit for Chip Hale. Get spoiled having this track man invitation <laughs> like right that. in front of me as as because you're you're tying it to a specific swing even I mean, it's probably fine just if instant guys feedback to, uh, I, I don't know where I know where to get it. and now the greed team gets ready to hit AJ Ewing Dylan Cup Dylan Head some of the names there. Yeah, we're going to change up on our BP throwers. Bobby Freeland. Uh, is it Bobby going to throw? Oh, we're going to see. I want to, want to give a sh shout out to Bobby and congratulate he and his wife on their son, Alex former PG All-American, third round draft choice in this week's draft, is heading out on s this Sunday to start his pro baseball career. With the Dodgers. The Dodgers. Yeah, but when I talked to him down on the field beforehand, the overwhelming feel coming from him was relief. It's over now. Yeah, I went to Central Florida. And switch hitter, he's still switch hitting, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very talented but it, switch hitter. But I, I wouldn't even want to guess the number of pit batting practice pitches that father has thrown to son. Because <laughs> you remember my, my, my nickname for, for Alex Freeland when he was a, an All-American. The nickname that we gave him, I believe that, that uh, PG National was in Arizona. Okay. He was barrel man. Oh, barreling bar the baseball. He barreled up, up everything. Yeah, 105th pick overall to the Dodgers. Dad can throw a mean BP. A.J. Ewing, 
Springsboro, Ohio, Alabama commit. AJ, an infielder. Six four six sixty, and from shortstop, top velocity reading was ninety two miles an hour. Football his freshman year, ran track quite a bit. Prior to that, all wanted to help his baseball. He said it has. Ohio, his favorite food, David Ronsley, Skyline Chili. Skyline On a chili. Coney dog. He said, sorry, it's a Cincinnati thing. But how many ways does he like it? Does he like it five yeah, ways, four Yeah, you're right, with the onions, That's the cheese, all that stuff. You're exactly right. Yeah, got to give us more information. Here's Dylan Cup, Mississippi State commit from Cedar Town, Georgia. Oh, you did? More than 100 perfect game events. He has been an active travel ball player. He's going to go play in the 17 U World Series. He ran a seven flat 60, 285 from the infield. But that's the thing about Dylan. He's ranked 10th in the country. But he's one of these players who doesn't have the huge tools. He's a 6'9, seven flat runner. Yeah, he throws 90 from the infield, and that's fine. but. But he's the sum of the parts guy who can just really, really play baseball. You know, you see it in the number of games he's played and the consistent high achievement that he's had, you know, just over a long span. A huge, you know, we talk about sample size for stats. Well, his sample size is as big as it gets. He's just a ball player. Glenwood, Illinois' very own Dylan Head, Gary and Sonia, his parents. They with the Breakthrough Series team down in Jupiter. Dad played at West Virginia State. Really can run. He hit a home run in Jupiter last year as an really? under underclassman. That's a big deal. That event is kind of a seniors only event. It's growing to include more and more, you know, younger players over the years. But when you can step out on the big stage and, you know, it's a 16 year old and go yard and you're playing with breakthrough series. So all your all your coaches are big league, former big leaguers. And, you know, it's a big deal. Hey, folks, he ran a 6 2 2 60. His outfield throws 91 miles an hour, his top number. Dylan Head. Special. <laughs> Jake Hembry now. Hiram, Georgia. UGA commit. Jake's primarily a left handed pitcher. I think it was his freshman year he threw against the Toronto Blue Jays scout team. That's where he received a college offer, his first college offer. He threw four innings against the Toronto Blue Jays scout team back in 2020 at that Jupiter event, which was actually in Fort Myers that year. Well, he's thrown 20 innings this summer in PG events and allowed four hits and struck out 32. So hitting may not be his best tool. Oh, it's a few balls pretty hard. A couple one hoppers into the right field stands, as a matter of fact.
Trenton Lape from Parkway High School. La Sierra City, Louisiana. Select Festival Athlete from 2019. Travis and Sarah, his parents. That one was about 15 rows up in the left field stands. And that one was much, much uh, shorter. Nice round of power from, from Lape. Date McKee, Mount Parent Christian, Georgia Tech commit. Tater, his nickname. He will be pitching later today for the green team. All the primary pitchers scheduled to throw two innings. And each game uh, scheduled for 10, or at least the first games are. Nate's favorite meal he shared is, as he calls it, pretzel chicken with honey spicy sauce. My mom makes that. Pretzel chicken. His mom makes that for him. Okay. His mom, Meredith. As we have Ty Pete swing the bat. Been looking forward to this. Yeah. 39th ranked player in the country, Ty Pete. That's a modern swing right there. It's a, a power swing. Pete's hit 13 career PG home runs. But you look at the, the launch angle there. He's getting his lower half. And he's just not, you know, leaning on his backside and lifting. He's getting into it. But that's a, a pull and lift approach. And he ends with a deep home run down the line. A nice round for Ty Pete. And now Cooper Pratt. Pete, by the way, ran a 6-6-4 earlier and threw 90 as an infielder. Cooper from Oxford, Ole Miss commit. There's this cool relationship between BPA, a travel organization in Orange County, California, and players in Mississippi. That they end up finding one another. Got the Cali kids and the Mississippi kids <laughs> playing together. Jared's done a nice job kind of merging a couple of different regions together. It's fun. Brother Ozzy plays baseball. Ozzy Pratt plays at BYU. Coop's parents did a good job. Cool names, cool boys' names. Ozzy, Quincy, Jet, and Cooper. Jet. Good job by mom and dad.
Luke Reyes, Teaneck, New Jersey, Miami commit, Bergen Catholic. Off the pole. He just knocked one quarter up the pole. Pretty line drive swings. Yeah. He's pretty much squared up every ball. It's very consistent timing. And that ball got right to the wall. A lot of carry on that as well. John Cooper Williams, right at 100 events in his perfect game career. And a ton of games. North Cobb Christian, Woodstock, Georgia, 653. 60, 95 outfield throw, Velo, 92 infield. Oh, there's some very loud tools there, that's for sure. He has stolen 173 bases in his PG career. 173. And walks a ton, 156 walks in 260 innings. And that kind of speed, that kind of ability to get on base. Screaming leadoff hitter for John Cooper Williams. Nicholas Sanders, catcher, Texas commit. From Waco, Texas. 2019 14 you select festival player. That's a big cut up there. That's a big power right yeah, there. That's too. about 10 rows deep. The first thing I think of if that's his game swing, how it's going to translate. Because there's so much going on there, but there sure is big power, big bat speed, big separation. Wow, Nicholas Sanders again crushes the ball to left field. Wow. Now these are no doubters. 6 8 4 60, right at two pop time. Impressive round of yep. batting practice. That will be one where we, everybody's going to say, okay, let's see how it plays in the games. If he can go out and take, not hit home runs like that. No, no. But just be on time, square up a couple balls. These players will probably get, you know, like five at-bats over the course of their two games. If he can be on time and square a few balls up, that's what you want to see. I think that can happen. I'm predicting a homer. History shows we'll, we'll see three or four home runs which considering the level of pitching they'll be facing is, is impressive just on the face of it. Alex Sosa just leaned on one to the base of the wall.
So some pretty strong and fast hands there. That's a more of a hands-driven swing, but he's got the quick, strong hands to do it. One eight seven pop time earlier. Six nine nine sixty for Alex Sosa. Through 78. David was talking about the velo through 78. I always say 78 from the crouch, which just seems crazy to me. Any number of that high. Luke Dotson is a pitcher, left-handed pitcher, but he'll swing the bat a bit. From Kennesaw, Georgia East Comp, his travel team, and he's a Florida State commit. Carol and Dennis. Our parents, and this is a good student, a 4.2 in the classroom. We'll see him pitch, excited for that. The Trop. Home to one of the best teams in baseball the last half decade. Unique, unique ballpark in a beautiful part of Florida in St. Petersburg. Makai Grant's going to swing a little bit. Kai's out of Stockbridge, Georgia. He's the Cobb Astros guy. Goes to IMG Academy. He's a Mississippi State commit. Michael and Tanya are parents. And dad, very successful, longtime heavyweight boxer. Has retired from the fight game now, but. Dad did it well. Well, his son does some things pretty well, too. <laughs> Like early in July, he was up to 98 Oof. miles an hour at the PG Firecracker finale at East Cobb. Struck, not surprisingly, that game through two innings, struck out six, all six hitters. But yeah, this is a, a special arm. He's been up to 98 a couple times this summer. So really looking forward to seeing him on the mound. And he will pitch. Let's see when will. He won't pitch till tomorrow. Okay. So we will look forward to it. Could be a mid to upper 90s arm, huh? Yep. It's kind of exciting. It's do every day. Michael Graziano. Georgia Tech commit from Naples, Florida. Six foot three inches tall. <laughs> and a 53, if you include some upcoming events this summer, perfect game events. We'll play in the 17U World Series here pretty soon in Arizona. Man, it's, that's a big young man to be running a 6'4", 60, but he did. 90 from the outfield. Yeah, to me, I've always liked Graziano because he has the size, but he has such easy athleticism. There isn't a, when he runs, he doesn't run like with effort and out of control. When he swings, he's under control. Everything he does is, is smooth and athletic, and no, those are the kind of players that, that that I think get better because they're not forcing the tools right now. And as they get stronger, more physically mature, those actions, those calm, under controlled actions, are just going to keep improving the raw tools. And if he hits, he plays. Jackson McKenzie. Mom and dad, Brooks and Amy, we've known them for quite some time and enjoy the McKenzie family. And sister Shelby can really play softball, can hit. I got a chance to call one of her home runs on national TV. And Jackson can hit too. 
Kind of a steady eddy at PG events, isn't he, David? Oh, yes. No, no doubt about it. And he's played a ton, two 220 career PG games. Is a 333 hitter. Isn't that about as steady as you can be? Yeah, you bet. 330 hitter, 13 home runs, 158 RBIs, 35 doubles. We might see him on the mound during the second day. You know, lefty with a 90 mile an hour fastball. He loves to watch Anthony Rizzo and Michael Brantley. Two left handed hitters. He said, I learn a lot watching them swing. Yeah, Rizzo, Rizzo would be a, a real appropriate guy for Jackson to uh, emulate. He said his favorite meal is sushi. And I said, who makes that meal? Meaning, like, is it yeah. mom? Is it a favorite restaurant? He simply put restaurants make that <laughs> meal. Well, I, I understand that, Jackson. We like Jackson. We like him a lot. We've known him for a long time. Taurus is going now. Taurus Murray. First team All-State, All-District, School Baseball, MVP, DeSoto, Texas. Prestonwood Christian Academy. Oklahoma commit. Thirteen U Select Festival, fourteen U Select Festival. Career four four oh five hitter. PG events. His mom Shawnee, a great runner. Several state records in high school. Dad was a great football player. Fast hands. Play Pepper with that warning track, boy. Fun opportunity for a player like Bo Rudy as he makes his college decision. He is a non commit. As David said earlier, there are very few uncommitted athletes. And for Rudy, who's primarily a pitcher, he'll go ahead and flex a little bit and hit some too. And don't take it when you see a player, whether he's ranked 47th or 341st or 500, being uncommitted as being an issue. A lot of these players, they have plenty of offers. It just might be a matter of waiting for the right offer. It's like, hey, we we're, you know, we just need to you know, get a little more, figure out what our scholarship situation is like. It might be a case where the school he wants to go to just had a coaching change. So while most of these players are committed, there's still going to be some decisions made, even changed, you know, between now and when they officially are able to commit in a, what's that, another 15 months or so. Generally, you know, 6'3", 220-pound right-handers who throw strikes and are up to 92 generally have their, most of their college education paid for. He says his dream college, desired college, he listed two, Ole Miss or Georgia Tech. Okay. Plays for the East Cobb Astros team. Angie and Casey are his parents. Oh, Rudy, excited to see where he goes. Dad played college football at Jacksonville State. You were mentioning throw velocity is out of out of crouches for catchers yeah and I, I Eli small who's hitting now we talked about him and his arm strength just looked it up he threw 85 during wow. 
and he was he was pretty much in his crouch. He threw 95 from the outfield with no footwork and 85 from behind the the plate. Crazy. I always think of just the physicality of the concept of throwing that hard, starting off in the crouch position. Well, I don't even know what how to evaluate catchers anymore with the upcoming changes with, you know, are we going to have at the big league level, you know, the automatic computer, the computer umpires calling pitches or, you know, whether frame, that's going to take away framing, which has become so important. Well, let's say it happens, David. There still are ways then you will, will, will evaluate, correct? Yeah. And I've always, you know, my, my main way in evaluating catchers, I always, you know, I think the, the art of blocking pitches, which is part art, part desire, but part physical ability. And you can't always evaluate heart. You can try and desire. But you can evaluate players' athleticisms and how quick they are shifting, how quick their hands are. And, uh, you know, I think that's something, no matter what the rules changes and the umpiring structure changes are going to be, you still always have to have that quickness to block pitches to give your catcher conf or your pitcher confidence that he can bury a slider and you're going to, you know, stop it with runners on base. Nolan Souza from Honolulu. Arkansas sticks his travel team and Arkansas commit and he is the son of Brian and Kelly. He was 2021's PG National Breakout Player of the Year. Number one baseball player in Hawaii. said if he were commissioner for a day, he would allow and encourage players to personalize themselves even more. He said, I love the players weekend with the jerseys, with the nicknames, and gives me an insight to who these men are as human beings. Sunshine, Alex Valentin. This is a, a fun story. This is a talented young man. A, Really good attitude and a guy who's kind of a, a riser as a pitcher, a left-handed pitcher. Went to the World Showcase and did really big things. Sunshine. That's yeah, his real that nickname. That's his nickname. Or is that a Darren Sutton nickname? No, that's his nickname. Okay. Sunshine. A lot of arm side run when he pitches. Heavy to the hitters. Really good slider. He's a lefty. Up to 93 on the fastball. Hey, one of his players, by the way, one of his favorite players, this is for you, David, is Aaron Judge. Okay. I'm getting shot all all sorts of holes in the. No, that's only two of about, what, 100 that we have early on yeah, here? Yeah, but you haven't looked at all 100, have you? Well, no. No, there's three. We actually have 219 answers to questionnaire. Okay. But he, he likes him. I can't wait to see him pitch because Sunshine is a, is a friend of our content. Luke Lavin. The Stanford commit. Santa Margarita Catholic. Talked about one of the rivals in that league at Santa Margarita is Orange Lutheran. And Casey Borba is here, who was the Trinity League MVP, co-MVP. <laughs> Want to say hello to dad, Eric Borba, Orange Lutheran head coach. He's checked in on text a couple of times already this morning. Still just uh, mid-morning out there in Southern California. Have you ever thought of sending those questionnaires around to, like, myself, yourself, Brian Sikowski, Vinny, Steve Banta, our producer, you know, it's have, a, have a, a production crew type of questionnaire? Mm, that's a good idea. I don't think anybody would be really interested in what we thought compared to the players, but 
I think the, the way those would be unveiled would be a couple of beverages of your choice, and we'll read the answers <laughs> we'll together. We'll read the answers in, in, not on air. Not on air. Nah, I, I, I haven't thought about that. But I think that's a good idea. You've always been a good ideas yeah. guy. Because if you asked me who my favorite player was. Who would you say? I don't know. I'd oh. have to think about it. Okay. And I'd have to be thorough about it because I wouldn't want to forget somebody. Fair enough. I think my current, current favorite player. I mean, I, 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 I slip to Mookie Betts a lot as Dean Curley hits Laverne, California, Alpha Prime, Northview High School. Because I'm a, I'm a big Dodgers fan, but I've, I've grown to not just like, but love watching Cody Bellinger play center field. I know he rides the roller coaster a little bit offensively, but I think he's my favorite player. Currently, currently, not through my life. Of course, Bellinger went to a different athlete, went to the a PG National Showcase. I remember seeing Bellinger as a 160-pounder and hitting at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. He talked about that with us a couple springs ago, David. He said, I was little. He said, I just tried to launch, were his words, just yeah. hit it as hard as I could. <laughs> Owen Egan at the plate from Ukaipa, California, a UCLA commit, two-way player. Of course, the unique thing about Bellinger is that he was the you know he was a primary first baseman. He was a first baseman at the PG National Showcase, and obviously still plays, has played a lot of big league first base. But you just never it's such a unique tool set where you're. You're a gold glove level center fielder and that you play first base. It's very unique. Uh, the only one that current, l at least modern day player that comes to mind that did both those very well was Darren Erstad at different phases in his career. But Erstad a different kind of player than, than Bellinger. Bellinger glides. Erstad was <laughs> as Great. he ran through things. Owen Egan, a nice job. 65th ranked player in the country. Mom swam in college and dad a college soccer player. Roman Martin Servite, he's in that same really strong conference out west. Whittier, California, UCLA commit. He just knocked one out of here. Heads up, Roman Martin. I'll tell you this right now, talking about ups and downs and favorite players, I don't miss a green day. That's what we call it in our house. Even though he's he's learning on the job, I don't miss a green day, a hunter green outing. It's you know hard throwing, learning as he goes. Uh, haven't missed one on TV this year. He may be on that list of favorite players. I've been intrigued, curious about how why, he has had a number of games where he's been in that 100 to 110 pitch range. Is Roman Martin putting on a show here? Yeah, high 90s, <laughs> blasting the baseball. Yeah. You're exactly right. But they're running his pitch count up a little higher than you'd think a 23-year-old with a TJ history would. And I, Mart, some of it might just because it's so easy. Yeah. Oh, I've got another name for you on the uh, Bellinger first base center field. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this might be a little old for some of our, our viewing audience, but Dale Murphy, two-time National League MVP, yeah. came up as a catcher first baseman, was a full-time first baseman his first two years, also caught some, and in his third year, they moved him to center field. Big, tall, rangy center fielder, Murph, built like Bellinger, even a little taller. Good comp. Carson McIntyre. Yeah, I'm circling that Roman Martin BP round. That was that was pretty impressive. Yeah, we enjoy. Like I told you, we got to know him. We connected with him while he was at PDP recently. He came on our 
Sirius XM Perfect Game Radio Show that airs every Sunday. Really enjoyed talking to Roman Martin. What he thinks about the game, thoughtful. Dean West was on that show too. I was a little selfish, it was all California guys. Pretty solid round there for Carson McIntyre. Ball, ball really comes off his barrel well too. So Brady Reynolds now, the son of Melissa and Chris Reynolds from Bakersfield, California. Liberty Hills High School, check that Liberty High School. And this is a 4.5 student, National Honor Societies as well. Son of a firefighter, taught him everything in his battle in order to succeed in life as he shares it. Brady's fun one to watch too. Let's see if B squared Brady from Bakersfield can finish solid. Oh, he did. One hops the wall, Brady from Bakersfield. Number 12, Carl Schmidt. Carl Schmidt, longtime general manager, great baseball guy, scout, now helping on the international side. Billy Bavese stopped by. Hard to believe that he looks so good for 74 years old. Schmitty from Petaluma, California. Texas A&M commit. He just knocked one out of here. He did. Oh, the ability to do that is definitely in Schmidt's uh, future part of Schmidt's game. That next one went like a warning track in center field. He's one of these hitters with the big wind up, but he's he's so well timed with it. He got in a nice groove that one, <laughs> deep left center field. That's a close to a 400 foot shot, about right above the 378 sign. Dean West, San Diego show. Marcelo Meyer, last year Red Sox first round pick, San Diego show. <coughs> Mikey Romero, Red Sox first round pick this year, San Diego show. Dean West, that's where he plays his travel ball. He also plays at Notre Dame High School, the son of Marcus and Terry. I've thought often in the past that, that West being, being a speedster, being a left-handed hitter, probably somebody who's hit leadoff in a lot of his career, sometimes isn't aggressive enough in, in using his twitch and strength to create bat speed. It's more a contact, oppo approach. So I like it that right now. I'm watching him just drive balls to the pole side and being, being aggressive <coughs> in creating bat speed. Like that one into the... <coughs> into the right field stands. Dean wraps up his time. Ethan Belk is from Rock Hill, South Carolina, Legion Collegiate Academy. Outfielder and a right-handed pitcher.
put a charge into that one. We're going to 6 5 60 through 92 from the outfield. Yeah, there's definitely some power there. He's creating backspin with almost every ball, and as he gets stronger, that is just going to create more and more carry. Colton Wombles. Auburn commit. From Salem, Alabama, 1914 U Select Festival athlete. Number eight catcher overall in this class. He's built like a brick house. Colton threw 91 from the outfield, 81 from the crouch, and had a 1-8-1 pop time today. He's probably disappointed by that 1-8-1 <laughs> pop time, too, knowing Colton. All right, let's watch KC Borba hit. Corner infielder. Outstanding year at Orange Lutheran and a Texas commit. Did KC fill out a form? He did. I'm curious what his improvement in the game. As a son of a coach, somebody who sits and talks baseball deep probably with his dad, what he thinks a change, good change for baseball would be if he was commissioner for a day. He passed. He passed on answering okay. that question. Okay. I will tell you, Mom's lasagna is second to none, though. <laughs> That's his favorite. Sorry, I put you on the spot, Casey. I was just no, I, was I love it because I'm sure. I, I mean, all these kids live, eat, and breathe baseball. But when you're when you're the son of a player, especially the son of a coach, yeah, you know, there's a lot of baseball talked in the Borba household. And I was just curious what the thought whether you'd be conservative because you know coaches can be a little conservative. Yeah, whether it be a conservative answer, whether it be a a, a young guy answer or. Just hits. You said it best. The hit, the hit tool is just so high for him, so strong for him. When you succeed in that league in which he succeeded, been a big part of the USA Baseball world as well, PDP, 14U, NTDP. He did say his hero, his inspiration is his grandfather. He said he's always doing the right thing, at the same time pushing me to be better. Casey wraps his time. Gavin Grohovic. TB SoCal, his travel team from Villa Park High School. Bert Call, his head coach there. Point three two student in the classroom. And his favorite baseball team, the Giants. SoCal guy who loves the Giants. And his favorite meal. It's the Arabic version of eggs and potatoes that his grandmother makes. Okay. That was an interesting round. About the first five swings were very professional, very simple. Then they said, okay, I got a feel for this. Now I'm going to open up my swing. And he drove some balls after that. Drove on to right center, left center, down the line. Oh, 
Ryder Helfrich. From Discovery Bay, California. It's that baseball hard. <laughs> well, last summer in PG events, he hit six home runs, but somehow managed to steal 24 bases, too. This is a d dynamic athlete for a catcher. Big tools, big athleticism, can play all over the field. Through 82 from behind the plate earlier today, ran a 6.77. And we talked a bit about catching skills. When I see a catcher, and if you look at the history of catchers, all, are all American catchers, and especially the ones, the Kevin Paredes, the Drew Romos and stuff to move on. They, that, that's a Ryder Helfrich profile. They run in the 6.7s. Wow. They, they throw in the low 80s. They 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 hit home they you know they hit with power and that was that his numbers are almost the same as like Paredes, in 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 high school and obviously, you know the the hit tool became so important for Paredes but the best catchers are the best athletes back there. Cameron Kim, all CIF performer, all league performer. Norco High School, Gary Purcell, his head coach, UCLA commit. High energy player, loves to play. It's obvious when you watch him. A good feel for the game. Got that one in the left field bleachers. Mm -hmm. Luke Shear. Of Grajeda's Ukaipa team, his high school team, Cal Poly commit. He'll play for Coach Lee. It was fun to see PG and Cal Poly alum Brooks Lee go so high in the draft. Just a baseball gym rat, if you will. But this isn't an infielder. This is a, a good catcher. Catcher showing a little bit of power uh -huh. here. His students about his, his class is about 650 students at Ukaipa. He's ranked sixth academically. His cumulative GPA is 467. That is impressive. Yeah, good for him, right? It's almost as impressive as the way the ball came <laughs> off the bat as in BP. There's a lot, Darren, there's lots of guys who can have a 4.5. <laughs> but how many of them hit the ball out of big league parks? Come on. What's more common? Oh, I the love it. The 4.5 is more. No, you know I'm not being serious. I love it. No, well, put the two together, then yeah. you're really doing something. Yeah. Then you've got things to be proud of. Let's see if all Nolan Stevens' strength yeah. comes into play. He here. just one hopped the wall, D. We've got a game after this. A couple of them. Yep. David and I don't plan on being here, but we're glad to if our reinforcements haven't made it. I'm kind of hungry to get back down on the field. But if it all works out, I believe we have uh, Mike Farron. And is it Brian Sikowski or Vinny Serfino? I'm not sure. I, I've looked at it five times, and I forgot right away all five times. I You're I, in good hands yeah. either way. Mike Farron, the great voice of baseball on Sirius XM. All oh, you guys clamor to work with Mike Farron, so I don't I forget who I gave <laughs> gave the opportunity to first. Oh, he's here all week, isn't he? He's here all week. Everyone gets their rotation. Nolan from Elk Grove, California, Mississippi State commit the son of Michael and Brooke. 
Let's see. Your 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 uh, broadcasting grid has, unless they've renegotiated. No. You know, Brian, well, they could they, on the side. Yeah. yeah. They have. It's Brian Sikowski going to be joining Mike. We're also going to get some Danny Wexelman up here, yes, I believe. Yes, he'll be up here. Yes, she will. She and Vinny are doing the first games tomorrow. Toby Twist launching it toward the foul pole out there. Toby uncoiling. Hello, five rows, six rows deep. A team of Farron and Sikowski that's coming up next. That is the radio voice on MLB Network Radio this year of the All-American Classic. Those are your guys. There is some twist with those hips of Toby as he uncoils on the baseball. The Oregon commit. Dad Jeff played in the Rockies in the Giants organization. Brother played at Fullerton College. Brother Tristan, he's 20 now. Another Bakersfield resident. The b baseball in Bakersfield seems to have been picking up. Last year's had a second rounder this year in Cutter Coffee. A couple other drafts out of the Bakersfield high school ranks. Brandon Winoker from Huntington Beach, California. And a UCLA commit. Talked about his growth when things were quiet in 2020. He said, we bought gym equipment for home. Hit as much as I could, as close to home as I could. Time management was everything. I learned that. And then I just gave myself no excuses. And I got better. He's big, too. At 6'5", about 210, he runs pretty well. him to be commissioner for a day and I asked him he said that's a tough job I can't imagine how difficult that is <laughs> <laughs> and an answer with empathy how about yeah. that Rob Manfred could probably appreciate that an answer with empathy can't keep everyone happy Hudson Maddox is a pitcher who we will see throw and he's an Ole Miss commit in Kirk Academy from Mississippi yeah. but, Imagine your jobs to keep 30 billionaires happy. Mm -hmm. I've managed to frustrate two along my <laughs> journey. <laughs> 10 minutes till 1 o'clock Eastern here in the great state of Florida. Darren, I think that wraps it up for batting practice. Good work, my friend. Thanks for spending the morning with me. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, we had some fun drills there, and we're just going to repeat it all the same way with two more groups. Yeah. We have the games, so we have two more sets of drills and 60s and BP as we bring in two different sets of four teams each over the next four days, four and a half days here in St. Petersburg, Florida. So we'll be back with the games. You'll get to know these athletes as they play in-game. Coming up next, Team Gold, Team Black, Teams 1 and 2, these talented athletes. And we anticipate Mike Farron hopping in here along with Brian Sikowski. I'm Darren. He's David. We're here all day, though, and don't really uh, close down that OTT, Perfect Games National Showcase. Thanks for hanging out with us here in St. Petersburg, Florida.
Do I got to touch anything? Not that I know. Nope, I can hear you. You're good. We are. Yes, sir. All right. It is easy to grin when your ship comes in and you've got the stock market beat. But the man is worth what? Amen.
Welcome back to the 2022 Perfect Game National Showcase at Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, Florida. The first game of this showcase tournament featuring Team Black and Team Gold. With Brian Sikowski, I'm Mike Farron, and Zach, we get a chance to look at Cal Randall right off the bat uh, to start for Team Black. Yeah, Randall's a guy that I, I just saw. It seems like last week uh, at the 17 UWBA Showcase. Uh, California guy, good-sized righty. He's ranked in the top 50 in the class already. Easy to see why. Um, there's a little bit of effort to the delivery, but it's a really, really unique fastball shape from that lower slot. Uh, we can, we'll see him running up into the mid-90s today, I'd expect. Uh, there's good feel for a change up there. Need to see how he spins it today. That's of importance to the look. Uh, but really good clay, really good mold of a power, power arm right-hander. Yeah, he will face a gold lineup that starts with Kendall George and then the number one ranked player in this class and Max Clark from Franklin, Indiana. Tag, let's, let's start with, the, we went through the workouts this morning for the four teams that are going to be competing today. Are there things that stood out to you from this morning session? Yeah, I, I mean, there always is. I, I, I mean, that's what the that's what they're designed for, right? Like, nobody's going to determine if you're going to be an above-average shortstop at the major league level from watching you take five throws. But we can usually tell who won't be an above-average shortstop at the major league level by watching you take five balls at shortstop. Similar in the outfield, just watching guys move, seeing the arms. Uh, and then BP, obviously, the get good looks at the swings, want to see how far guys can hit baseballs, want to judge the raw power, and the guy on deck hits the balls pretty hard. Kendall George leads off for the gold team and fouls the first pitch away from Cal Randall. It is nothing in one. George from Humble, Texas, an Arkansas commit, takes outside a ball at 92 in the count one and one. Randall definitely wants to challenge with fastball. Uh, that's how he started his most of his starts this summer so far, wanting to establish a fastball. Uh, a little bit different in a showcase setting, potentially, considering the, the limited time out there, but 92-93 with a fair bit of sync so far. The, the lower arm slot starter has become something of a thing in, in, over the last couple of years, and, and I'm kind of curious your take on that as we've watched that evolution. And he falls behind three and one here, but um, it seems that we are seeing more variety, I would say, out of that lower arm slot. Guys that are able to play their fastball at the top of the zone, although Randall seems a little bit more traditional in the sense that he's got that sinker. Yeah, and you see it, it, it just depends on the, the shape of the fastball, really, uh, as far as, like, where do you want to where do you want to attack from a slot like that? Because uh, for years, for so long, the, the thought was if you're a low slot guy and you pitch up in the zone, it's going to flatten out and get hit. But now we know, you know, the, thanks to low release height traits and the way that that aids in pitch deception and, and perceived velocity, uh, you can pitch up successfully, just depending on the shape of the fastball. Look at Randall there as here comes the full count offering to Kendall George, and that's fouled back. George got ahead three and one, fouled a couple back. Again, if you're not familiar with most of these showcase events, it's going to be a limit of about five batters per inning for the pitchers. If a batter walks, a runner will be placed at first. They'll continue the at-bat. Pitch fouled back to the screen again. And that's because, I mean, as much as we want to try and simulate game action, mm -hmm. scouts need to see what the tools are in these guys in game competition versus just batting practice and throwing in the outfield running. We absolutely are simulating game competition. We just don't care who wins. <laughs> it's kind of really the way to break it down. It's uh, want to see, all right, you, Randall walked a guy here. We're not. We're going to leave George in the box because we want to see him uh, take swings. We want to see how he ends at bats. But to simulate, hey, you just walked a guy. We're going to put a runner at first base. We're going to treat him like any other runner, uh, and the at bat will continue. Three and two, still the count to George, the leadoff man for the gold team in the first pitch. That one fouled away again. So good battle here for George. You can already see one of the things that makes George uh, such a higher level prospect, just the the ability to kind of get rid of tough pitches. Uh, 91, 93, 91, 94 is still very, very firm in high school baseball. Um, so the the ability to kind of handle that bad enough to get rid of pitchers' pitches and maybe get one in a zone you like uh, is definitely notable. Runner goes, the pitch swung out and missed, throw down to second is not in time. And so it's a stolen base for the uh, courtesy runner, that is Andrew Wiggins. George down on strikes to start the first one out man at second. And here is Maxwell Clark from Franklin, Indiana. He is the top ranked high school player in this class sack and a very exciting 
collection of tools and put on an impressive display at batting practice, not just with the pink bat. Yeah, and my colleague Vinny Servino and I were just during batting practice watching him hit, talking about the, the profile at large, talking about how he compares to some of the high school left-handed hitting outfielders who have gone high in the draft in recent years. And uh, We kind of struggled to find a spot where we didn't have a six on the card really at this point. I, I don't know if maybe he's going to have plus power long term, but aside from that, plus runner, plus arm, good glove and center. Uh, we think there's potentially the, a plus hit tool here. It's the makings of a top five overall. We talked about Randall earlier establishing his fastball early here. A couple of backdoor breaking balls to Clark to start the the at bat. So he's ahead 0-2 to the left-handed hitter. He knows who's in the box. Yeah, pitches the breaking <laughs> ball in the dirt and he'll get away and get to the screen. And that allows the runner Wiggins to move up to third. The defense will change frequently over the course of uh, these first couple of innings uh, behind the plate right now uh, for Team Black is Mateo Cerna. The defense will change so much so that it's probably not even worth trying to keep up with it. No, we'll try. I mean, I've got my chart here that <laughs> will. It's, yeah. there's too many screens. <laughs> Here's the one-two to Clark. Swing and a miss. Foul tip actually into the glove of Cerna. And that was the best breaking ball we saw from Randall there and out number two. And it's something I in particular wanted to see. I just saw Randall start, like I said, a week ago, mostly fastball changeup, didn't really spin any at all. Uh, so wanted to see the quality of that breaking ball and, and obviously to the number one player in the country and a left-handed hitter at that, pretty good way of deploying it. Left-handed hitting Blake Sinton bats from Louis, uh, the uh, Sinton, Texas, the LSU commit. First pitch away, it's 1-0. and Randall's not real fine with his command yet. He hasn't been. Uh, this is not unique, the, the way this is going so far. He's a strike thrower. Uh, it's just not real fine with the command yet, as, as we said. Bitch, swing a foul tip into the glove of Cerno. Sick running away. Great spot for that pitch there. Probably just go right back there. He has really worked the outer edge of the strike zone for the most part. I mean, it seems like the focus is mostly on the arm side for him as that one misses away. It's two and one. And you can see it. We got the, the track man data pulled up right here in front of us on the biggest screen in the building. Uh, so that's <laughs> nice. That's nice too. But uh, but the, the eye test is matching the data here. You can see that, that hard arm side run, that horizontal movement on the fastball. Pitch that one. He really slowed his arm down on that breaking ball. Missed high. It's three and one. Yeah, we, we're privy to horizontal break, vertical break. Um, and so we get an idea of which way pitches are moving regard, with regards to the hitter as well and, and how much it is. That one fouled into the glove, and the count is full. You see that again? That's just 91 with a, with a lot of run on it, uh, running away from the outer edge of the plate. You, that's a pitch you got to swing at. It looks like a strike coming out of the hand, and then just takes off that two-seam life. 3-2. Same pitch. Foul tip into the glove of Cerna, and the inning is over. So nicely done. But Randall, after walking the leadoff man, he strikes out the side. So Cal Randall's first inning of work is a good one. We head to the bottom of the first. Team Black coming to bat against Team Gold. It's the opener of the Perfect Game National Showcase from Tropicana Field. We'll look at some of the highlights from Cal Randall's first inning here. It's good, to, like we said, it's good to see that breaking ball. Uh, it's not like a, a plus snapdragon or anything yet, but still good to see that he has shape for it, he has feel for it. Uh, played well off the fastball like we talked about, but he just hammered that outer edge with the fastball to great effect. I would say the other thing is that it's fairly impressive command of it for, a, you know, he was able to, when he went to it, use it to be able to get a called strike. And we also saw the swing and miss pitch and that, that I think probably speaks to what you're talking about in terms of the feel for the pitch. Absolutely. I, you know, anybody will tell you there's kind of two ways to throw a breaking ball. There's way more than two, but you need to throw it for a strike and you need to throw it for a chase, right? So to be able to, to throw with those in both spots uh, with different shapes too, because we saw, we saw him throw more of just a sweeper, kind of more flat across the zone to land in the strike zone. Uh, and then that one to, to Clark that he got a swing and miss on was probably in the zone, but still more of a tilt on that pitch. Um, but either way, yeah, good to see from Randall, no doubt. Jacob Schultz will make the start for the gold team, ranked uh, 110 on the perfect game top 500 list. Vanderbilt commit out of Houston, Texas. He was originally going to go second in this game, but he will get the start today for the gold team. 
PG Select Fest alum. I am contractually obligated to mention that <laughs> due to my friendship with one Jeremy Brown. Uh, Schultz participated in the 2019-14 U Select Fest. Houston guy, committed to Vanderbilt. May seem unique, but as we know, Vandy will go wherever they want, whenever they want, for whoever they want. Uh, we've seen him a bunch. He's been to several events. Uh, been up to 90-91 in our events so far this year in PG events. He has given up zero runs. He has 10 strikeouts in four innings, which uh, last year didn't give up any runs either in PG events with 27 punches in 19 and a third. So currently riding a 23 and a third at least scoreless inning streak in perfect game events. We'll see if that holds. That we, we've been able to keep track of to this point. So it's um, got an impressive left-handed arm and as we mentioned, committed to to Vanderbilt here as he will uh, face the uh, Team Black uh, lineup, starting with uh, Rock Chalowski, who's from my neck of the woods at the Hamilton High School, Chandler, Arizona, um, the UCLA commit, and he, he had the unenviable task, sack of being the first guy to have to hit during batting practice. I think it's never easy when it's like 9 o'clock in the morning or 9.30 mm -hmm. in the morning, and you're the first guy out of the cage after all the workouts, and um, he's been a, a guy that has been on the showcase circuit for a long time and, and a, a very popular um, a popular right-handed bat. And it's easy to see why. I, w you're right. It's tough to be the first guy in BP. Everybody's paying close attention, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but Chalowski's game right now isn't so much about now power. So we didn't. he didn't have to hit four balls out of here or, you know, get 100 plus mile an hour exit velocity on a liner to center or anything like that just needed to continue to show the balanced swing uh the smoothness the path the stuff we've come to like because that dude can really play shortstop he is the son of a scout his dad a long time four corner scout for the cincinnati reds so rock Chalowski will lead off against the lefty jacob schultz scoreless in the bottom of the first Schultz is ready, and the first pitch on its way. Foul back, wasted no time. And a jump on that first pitch fastball. And that's kind of, in, in a showcase setting, you can't really go to the plate with the same plan you necessarily would in a game because pitchers aren't pitching you the same. This is a showcase. Um, so you can go up there hunting almost, and I think that's what he just did there, Chalowski, try and get a fastball elevated and, and, and take a big-ass swing at it, pardon my French. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, like the here's the problem is that we're so used to sitting yeah. down behind home plate where we can uh, I'm doing use a good colorful job so language. Far. Yeah, so far, it's you haven't gotten us fired yet. Yep, yep. But you're trying. We're, I mean, more than a half an inning in, Mike. I don't know what you want. <laughs> About to happen to what it do. I, I will say this is a really intriguing opening matchup here, too, because you've got two of the top 125 players in this prep class and uh, a couple of guys going to, to name brand programs. So this is a great way to start the bottom of the first. No doubt. Bitch. Down low. Came right back with the fastball there. Uh, you can see that Schultz wants to challenge him. That's the idea here. Um, he thinks he can beat Chalowski with velocity in the zone, and that's what he's going to continue to try and do. You know, these starters get two innings of work each, so kind of work your way into an outing, almost like a start a little bit. You don't have to show everything right away, the 2-2. Two -two. It's a really well-placed fastball. Uh, we're seeing Schultz have pretty good success hitting the glove here as far as where the catcher moves. He, he missed pretty badly on that pitch inside a couple pitches ago. But other than that, kind of following the glove, uh, spotting up that fastball, which is playing well. Davis Rivers is the catcher to start from Waller, Texas. Texas Tech commit. And Schultz is ready and the 2-2 on its way. That's in the dirt. First changeup we've seen from Schultz, and the count's full. Schultz sitting in that 89-90 range uh, with good ride on the fastball. You can see the numbers from the uh, the trackman unit in front of us. Good vertical life on it. Here's the Down low, and so it's a leadoff walk. That'll bring out the courtesy runner. Sammy Mumau is going to run it first. As Chalowski's at bat will continue. Schultz's delivery. Oh, yeah. Line down the left field line. It's a fair ball. It'll get its way into the corner. Mumau's on his way to third. He's going to be held there. It's a double for Rock Chalowski to start the bottom of the first inning. 
for Team Black. And that was just what we expected. Here comes Velocity. I think I can beat you with 90 in the zone. And Chalowski had seen enough of it to know that no, he couldn't. Uh, so got the barrel out, uh, did a good job hooking one down the line, keeping it fair and around the, around the first base bag in good time too. Very good athlete. We've talked about him already. Landon Stripling Bats from Lawrenceville, Georgia. He is a commit to Mercer. Left-handed hitter, six foot, 195 pounds. Runners at second and third. He takes down and in one and zero. Oh. Stripling had a good BP too. Uh, obviously, left-handed bat. You can see the physical strength to him. Um, was showing off the power to the pull side. Hits balls hard the other way too. Schultz ready and the pitch. Down low. It's two and nothing. Stripling. Ranked in the top 450 players. Mercer, uh, if you're not familiar with it, a pretty strong small conference program. Consistently in the NCAA tournament. There's a strike. It's 2 and 1. Consistently churning out players in the draft. Kyle Lewis, probably their most prominent one of the Seattle Mariners, a former rookie of the year. And here comes the 2 1 from Schultz. Upstairs. 3 and 1. Seen good patience from hitters so far, stripling here, and we saw it with Chalowski too, even though he took a rip on the first swing. Um, want to make Schultz come to him, period. They're not chasing pitchers' pitches right now. There's the delivery. Line to right, moving over the right fielder, makes the catch, coming home to score on the sacrifice to fly is Manuel, and it's 1 0 team fly. Or, yeah, 1 0 team fly. I had to make sure I knew what the score was. <laughs> <laughs> confirmed 1 to nothing, and confirmed that ball was hit pretty hard too. Uh, just a, a, another fastball and hittable spot. These guys are have the right approach. They're waiting for fastballs and drivable zones, and, and he didn't miss it. He just uh, happened to hit it right at somebody. Parker Pico, the right fielder for Team Gold, making the play on that. He had an impressive batting practice display earlier today as well. Really strong, really athletic kid. Um, getting some D1 football interest, uh, Pico is. This is a Michigan guy, so of course I have to talk about right, it. Yeah, right, yeah. In that, detail. That figures. There's a lot of Michigan that goes on. This is Trent Carraway from J. Sarah Catholic High School. Oregon State commit. Right-handed hitting third baseman. Takes a strike. And the count is one of one. It's the first game of our coverage. We'll have another one this afternoon. And then tomorrow, games in the morning. More workouts throughout the week. And all every team will play two games here. Pitch. Chopped to short, waiting back out of the shortstop will throw to first in time to get Caraway for out number two. That's the uh, shortstop uh, is Jordan Crossland for the gold team. Jordan Crossland, a good example of how these uh, this national showcase, these invites are handed out. There's not a predetermined, we know a year in advance who's going to be at the national. Crossland just came to a workout showcase before one of the WWBA tournaments not that long ago. Really impressed with the tools, played well. Uh, everything kind of checked out. We checked some boxes. He's performed. Bam, invited to national. Just that simple. So it's not so much, uh, you know, what you were beforehand. It can very much be what you are now. That happens all the time. Zach Wattis from Phoenix, a TCU commit stands in. He has big power potential from the left side. Takes a breaking ball outside one and one. I don't know that he homered in batting practice, but it certainly looked like he was a guy that had a chance to fill out and had it. He drove several balls to the warning track in right field. He's, uh, he's got some of the best power upside in the class, period. And uh, he might have some of the best now juice, too, really. And this is still a – I mean, look, at you can see it here. He's very long-legged, not totally filled out yet. You can totally see another 20-plus pounds on this frame. And he's already got above-average power. We saw it in BP, Mike. We talked about it. A guy was hitting some balls really, really high and really, really far, lofting balls well out. Um, so it's easy to see this – this type of profile potentially being like a 70 raw power guy eventually. And, you know, Mike, as you know, everybody else will throw those numbers around lightly. This guy might have 70 power by the time it's all said and done. Two and one the count. And the pitch. That one crushed a deep right field towards the corner. And the power showed up for Wattis there. A two-run home run gives 
Team Black a 3 nothing lead. And on cue, <laughs> Zach Wattis goes yard, pull side. Um, don't have the exit data in front of me. Launch angle on the board says 27.4. I'm going to say hard. Hard. I, I, like, I've already determined it's hard. Yeah. That was just, a, again, I, these guys are understanding that fastballs and hittable zones are, are what we need to attack. And, and Wattis got one up and was able to elevate it, and that ball was hit very hard. Just remember, sack cast better than stat cast. Sack and cast better than stat cast. That's right. You look at it again. I mean, that's that right. was an aggressive swing, and that's going to be the oohs and ahs there from his teammates as he kept it just inside the foul pole. And, you know, Left on left as well was Brian Jaros from Cranford, New Jersey, stands in the Georgia Tech commit. A Pitch misses low. Absolutely a notable thing, the left on left, and not so much even just in the vacuum of, oh, yeah, lefties are harder to hit than when you're left-handed bat, whatever. But that's something that's broken down and studied when it comes draft time. That's something that's analyzed, like, here's his numbers from last year, here's his numbers on the circuit, here's his numbers versus lefties, et cetera, et cetera. That goes into that. Uh, and so the more you can prove that you can do it, uh, the less questions people are going to have about you come decision-making time. Jarrett's listed at six foot four, right-handed hitter. Admitted to Georgia Tech, as we mentioned, one of the top 250 players in the class, fouled it back. It's two and one to the New Jersey product. Three nothing, Team Black in the first. Schultz's two one delivery. Upstairs, it's three and one. And to Schultz's credit, I, getting barreled a little bit here, uh, to say the least, but uh, kind of still maintaining his composure. I know we're in a three run count here, but he's close with these. He's still holding his velocity, multiple pitches in. Um, something that doesn't always happen at the high school level. It's tip into the gloves. He chased a high fastball that time. Now at 87 on the count is full. Yeah, you mentioned holding velocity, I and mean, that seems to be something that comes more with age, and especially mm -hmm. at a showcase like this, you're looking for the raw skills as much mm -hmm. as anything, right? Mm -hmm. As who you're going to follow for the draft season next year. Swing and a miss. Absolutely. You're absolutely right, but it is something when you see a guy in a showcase who is 90-93 in the first and then 86-87 in the second. That's something to write down and potentially be concerned about. But here, uh, Schultz, I, I think there's quite a bit of fastball quality there as he continues uh, maturing and adding some velocity. Mostly upper 80s, had a bunch of 90s. You can see the rise on it there. You can see how that's a pitch that should miss bats for him up in the zone. He showed some lateral command, a good pitch there. Um, but needs some, needs to do a better job of staying fine with his command to both edges. Can't be as middle-middle as he was, or he'll get hit like he did. Uh, and interested to see the secondary stuff in the second inning. Yeah, he, he uh, worked in what, one curveball, a couple of change-ups, but really excited to, to look at that, too, because I think what you what you pointed out there in the way his fastball is shaped is it's, you know, I think they're calling it a sinker. It's more of a two-seam motion. It doesn't seem like it really dives. But to your point, we were talking earlier about those lower slot guys. Not that Schultz's slot is that low, but if it plays at the top of the zone with that kind of run, it can make it very difficult on hitters. And sometimes you end up with those right-handers or left-handers that maybe have a little bit more success against a right-hander mm -hmm. than most others would with that kind of pitch because of the way they're able to, to I guess, get that carry mm -hmm. right on the fastball and be able to get it to run away from them. It full-on takes off against right-handed hitters. Like, lefties, you can kind of – you have a better chance of, no, like, understanding that the pitch is going to be a ball. For righties, it's it, – that pitch, and it, it, as a specific example, it's really, really tough because it literally does just take off. It takes off up and away from you. With lefties, you can kind of see it coming up and in on you, so easier to hold on to, but either way. Aiden Miller will lead off from Trinity, Florida, the – Big right-handed hitter takes inside a ball, 1-0. Miller, one of the top players in this class as well. Zach, and he was just named the MVP of the Prospect Development Pipeline All-Star Game on Friday in Los Angeles. Another one of those guys who had a really good BP earlier, uh, at least in flashes, but one of the more consistent power performers in this class over the years. Uh, been on the radar forever. Um, this is another one of our Select Fest participants. Uh, but either way, it... it Arkansas commit. You can see the, the bat speed there. He didn't exactly hit that one very hard, but easy to see the, the violence and the bat speed and the impact that uh, that he offers. Nice play there uh, by the first baseman for uh, Team Black. That's Ryan uh, Jaros, who we saw in the last half inning. Kind of a tricky spin on that, and for him to wait back, make the play. It's impressive. 
Andrew Wiggins bats now, the Indiana commit. This is another guy who's had a massive year uh, on the circuit. His WWBA was sensational. Uh, multiple home runs, multiple as hard as you'll see a high school hit a baseball type of things. Um, walked a fair bit, was good in, in clutch situations. Uh, he's got like, monstrous upside power. The top 100 prospect out of Indiana. Pitch down low. It's one one good year for Indiana next year with Wiggins and, Frank and uh, Maxwell Clark mm -hmm. as part of that. Brett Denby, another mm -hmm. guy we'll see this week. It's a good year in the state. Strike. Northern baseball is alive and well, Mike. Northern baseball is alive and well. It's the first time I've ever heard somebody from Michigan say something nice about Indiana. <laughs> well, no, Indiana's not who we have beef with. What's you in the dirt? <laughs> well, not where you're from. It's <laughs> right on the border there. That right. Michiana, there's a, that big battle between Michigan City and New Buffalo. You know, That's true. So. That's true. Yeah, I'd heard that. <laughs> two, two. Check swing, no swing, and the count's full now to Wiggins. The Battle of South Bend. <laughs> Three nothing, Team Black in the second, the payoff. Swing and a miss. That's a really good fastball at 90 under the hands of Wiggins for out number two. And we saw a couple change-ups there from Randall. Uh, it's a pitch I talked about earlier he's comfortable with. He likes it against left-handed hitters. Uh, that's what we saw there. But that was just straight velo. That was 90 miles an hour right down the middle. Uh, he's been 90-92 this inning so far, but kind of right down the middle, just here it is, hit it. You know, that that using that change-up to try and set up the fastball, maybe change the velocity a little bit. That one behind. Next to Ryder Robinson. What was, he setting up? what was he setting up there? <laughs> the the changeup away. The changeup away, right? Yeah. Robinson <laughs> from Cedar Hills, Utah, another TCU commit. Gonna play for the Fighting Kirk Sarluses. And who wouldn't want to? You know? Yep. Who wouldn't want to? I mean, Los is a great character, man. Yeah. I, I like Kirk Sarlus a lot. Former big league pitcher and longtime pitching coach at TCU. It's been last year as the first year head coach. Trying to hold up. So when it went around, it's one and two. We just added TJ Bruce to their staff as the recruiting coordinator, the former head coach at Nevada. Placing the great Bill Moziello, who got the Ohio State job. That one fouled away. That was a good hire for Ohio State. Absolutely. Bill, Bill Moziello versus Tracy Smith in the Ohio State Michigan rivalry is going to be a lot of fun. Kirk Sarlos, years and years ago, when I was first getting started with this once told me uh, there's no good scouting done before 9 a.m. or after 9 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Called strike three. <laughs> Couldn't agree more, Kirk. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> good pitch there to end it. <laughs> breaking nice. ball over the outer third. Well, we saw him backdoor that breaking ball a couple of times to lefties in the first inning. That time it gets him out of the inning. And, boy, after that leadoff walk a, a, in the first, a really impressive outing for Cal Randall as you get uh, a look at some of the velocity. Got a look at the breaking ball. We got a couple of good looks at his changeup today, too. And the fact that at 90, 91, 92, sec, that he's able to beat guys belt high and just above is a really encouraging side. It's just a tough fastball to square up, and I'm actually counting right now. He got, let's see here, Mike, seven or eight swings and misses on his fastball in two innings, which is pretty impressive, especially when you consider, and again, 90-92 is still very firm in high school, but 90-92 for the most part was just spotting it up and, and even got some swings and misses right down the middle. It speaks to a fastball quality, no doubt. You can see the championship banners here at Tropicana Field just a moment ago as we are at the home of the Tampa Bay Rays for this first game of the 2022 Perfect Game National Showcase. Jacob Schultz. Back to work for his second inning. So Schultz gave up a long home run down the right field line to Zach Wattis. Three runs allowed in the first, an RBI double for Rock Chalowski as well. So uh, we'll see if the left-hander can settle in. And as you mentioned, you know, Zach, one of the keys with him is to try and figure out how he is uh, maybe able to use his secondaries here. It was mostly fastballs for him in that first inning. It's a, a try pitching backwards, I think. You know, like let's see if we can land a, a breaking ball for a strike or, or maybe get an early ground ball on a well placed changeup, something like that. Settle back into yourself here. Uh, you know, you got the fastball, you know, there's fastball quality to it. Let's see what, what how, if we can get early strikes with other stuff. 
first pitch of the second inning is fouled away off to the left and out of play. Johnny Farmello hitting uh, from Virginia. Virginia commit, left-handed bat, obviously. Been one of the more consistent performers this summer with the stick. Uh, just kind of always hits. He always has. Uh, playing for Canes National, you can see the, the helmet there, obviously, on display. Um, Want to see a little bit more power from him, but uh, consistently on the barrel has hit a lot of hard singles, This as quantifiable as that might be. The exit velos are pretty solid. Just want to see him lift the ball a little bit more as he continues going along. But dude has the makings of being a guy who can really, really hit. Uh, Westfield High School, which is a really strong high school program in Northern Virginia. Bounces that one foul. It's one and two. Brandon Snyder, the former first round draft pick of the Orioles, was played high school ball at Westfield. It's a, actually a really good year next year, I think, for prep players in, in Northern Virginia. It's looking like a pretty good prep class in general. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have the, the depth of high end that we did in 22. Upstairs, but, but, uh, away. but either way. Uh, it looks pretty deep. It looks pretty strong overall. Uh, there's a lot of interesting bats. Uh, it looks like a great class. We're going to see them all this week. It's going to be a really interesting draft class for next year, too, with the college bats and a much deeper class, or a much higher end class than yeah. this one. This one was pretty deep. Called strike three. A nice breaking, breaking ball, ball there, there. for Schultz yep. to freeze Farmello. It's the first out. Got to two and two primarily with fastball, and we'll get a good look at it here on the replay. Um, probably helped out a little bit there by our, our friend in black behind the plate, but uh, either way, a good pitch. There's some, some late bite to it. Uh, he put it in a good spot. There really wasn't anything Formella could do with that, so good pitch. Here's Macon Winslow. Big right-handed hitter at six foot, 200 pounds. Winslow's a good player. Another Canes guy, seen him quite a bit this summer. Uh, it's good catch and throw behind the plate. He's got power in his right-handed swing. We saw that in BP. Uh, he's just a good player. A little late on that one, and the count now one of one. Schultz still kind of sitting upper 80. He's been a lot of 87, 89. Uh, we're seeing similar metrics come across the track man stuff in terms of the uh, uh, vertical and horizontal movement. Upstairs, the count two and one. Changeup and maybe a two seamer. Probably a little hard for his changeup, right? As it's listed on the board. It had a little bit more arm side movement to it. I think we just might be misidentifying movement up there. Here's the two one. Breaking ball in the dirt. Count three and one now. You can see him kind of, this, this happens somewhat with young pitchers. You can see him kind of change his arm stroke to throw the breaking ball. He shortens up a little bit. Easier to get leverage the shorter you are when you're trying to spin the ball out front. So really hard to, when we talk about repeating deliveries, it's not just, you know, what your lower half does pitch to pitch. It's also repeating your same arm stroke on breaking balls and change-ups, and that's what tunneling is, and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, not a, not a uncommon thing for a young pitcher to, to kind of still struggle with that. No, and that's one of those things that will get corrected the older mm -hmm. he gets. The, the stronger. The more advanced yep. hitters become, the easier it is for them to pick up those differences, too. Pain the hint down low, and there will be a courtesy runner put on at first as Winslow draws a walk here. The hint that uh, the, the big secret to getting better at baseball is just getting stronger. Like that, you know, there's there's obviously far more nuance to that, but uh, the baseline is you probably need to get stronger. Oliver's service is the runner at first here as Winslow's at bat continues. It wouldn't surprise me to see service. Um, trying to think of the last time you were here, who the most popular base runner was. E.P. Reese, maybe, <laughs> EG National 2015. It felt like he was pinch running every time somebody needed to run. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see Service do that. He's that kind of guy. He's like a ballpark rat. Just wants to be here, just wants to be playing. Uh, he's fun to watch. Guy can hit. So the ball rolled through. That was from the uh, one getting loose on the gold bullpen, the pitch <laughs> outside. If multiple of those come down, we might have a problem. One or two, that's okay. Yeah. yeah but, Multiple, then you know somebody's kicked over the ball bucket, right? So, <laughs> so when the count resets, it goes to 0-2. Keep the strikes. The wall. You keep the number of strikes, yep. right? The, the, the ball count resets. Winslow has worked the count back even. 2-2 two two is the strike zone. Jumping around a little bit here on Schultz. No doubt. Yeah, the idea is keep the strikes. Uh, the hitter doesn't get a full, fresh redo. That kind of shortens the time it takes to 
you know, re reach a resolution as far as the hitter goes. In the air to shallow center, backing up is the second baseman and making the grab. And shallow center is Landon Stripling for out number two. Excuse me, that's not Landon Stripling, that's Gavin Gallagher. Is that right? No, I've got the wrong roster in front of me. Hang on, Jared. Jared Perfect. I knew I'd get there eventually. That's a. That's another. This is Gavin Gallagher. That's another Detroiter to that you're just forgetting there, and Jared Perfect. Yeah, I know. I gotta keep the Detroit. He and Service are actually teammates, high school teammates. Are they on different teams here, but high school teammates? Both University Liggett guys. This is Gavin Gallagher, the shortstop from Apex, North Carolina. He takes low. Two outs, man. At first, team black batting, leading three to nothing. Another guy with quite a bit of pop here, Gallagher, a, a guy who we've seen perform for a number of years. Um, easy to see the size on TV, but there's quite a bit of power there too. Pretty good athlete in the infield. He's a good player. Nothing in two the count here. Swung through that high fastball. Yeah, this uh, Team Black has a number of the Canes performers mm -hmm. on it, right? I mean, there's most of those guys who were on that travel team, a terrific travel program. The yeah, generally speaking, and it's not a hard and fast rule, but generally speaking, like the the big power uh, power and travel teams who are going to have 10, 12, however many guys come to the national, we just keep on the same team. And did you give them team one because they were the best last year? Or? Uh, that's a that's an interesting question that I don't have the answer to, but I would be interested. The proper to response out. would have been, yeah, the guy, yeah, sure, Mike. The guy who just walked into the booth next to us is actually someone to ask. <laughs> Foul. <laughs> Nobody needs to be bothered with my ridiculous queries. I like your ridiculous queries. I'm about 30 minutes from going full best, on, best in show on you. Okay, so. all right, I'm ready. Snap throw to first, service is back. Oh, and two the count, two outs. Three nothing, Team Black, bottom of the second. Getting down to the end of Jacob Schultz's outing here. As he faces Gallagher. Probably fastball out to third is the plan here, if I had to guess. Pitch. All the right, that one fouled back. When hitters walk in this setting, that's another one of the rules I don't think we've touched on. But when you walk a guy, you're only allowed to throw fastballs from that point forward. Because the hitter staying in the box, he didn't get rewarded for taking four balls. So his sort of uh, advantage then becomes you're only throwing fastballs. The 0-2 again. Runner goes. Pitches a ball. Throw down to second is not in time. On the base. That's a stolen base. Had 2-2 on the pop there. Just a little, uh, yeah, I think that's Blake Mitchell behind the yep. plate. Uh, just a little bit tangled getting out of getting out of the glove is what it looked like. Yeah. Pretty good pitch to run on, too. Good jump from service there. Yep, that's a really good pitch to run on upon further review. There's the 1-2 on its way. That one to the screen. And service will make it to third. Now Schultz, who had to pitch through some trouble in the first inning, will try and keep this a 3 nothing deficit for Team Gold. Big, like, micro moment here, I think. Runner on third. He was on first. He's already over there now. Stolen base and then a pass ball or wild pitch, excuse me. Can you pitch out of this? Can you stop that run from scoring? Called strike three. Nail the fastball inside corner at the knees, and the inning is over. Jacob Schultz lost three runs in his two innings of work. Team Black with a 3 nothing lead There's through two innings. Some things to like with Schultz, uh, athletic body. Uh, there's some fastball quality there, lefties who throw 90, et cetera, et cetera. But we saw the good breaking ball. There was some sweep to it. Um, obviously not necessarily the results he wanted, but still quite a few things to like there in the young lefty. Yeah, it had a feel for a changeup too, so you got three pitches that look like they can be um, work with, and there's a lot to, I think, potential development to go there. It's, it's a 
good physical presence, too, and it looks like he can fill out a little bit. I wonder about, you know, he works from the third base side of the rubber. That, that probably doesn't help his angle against lefties, mm -hmm. but, but it will against righties. It'll create a, a better lane to try and work in under their hands. And it's also possible that's already an adjustment made because he has trouble commanding as much arm side mm -hmm. as he gets on the fastball. If you can really only keep it in the zone from pitching that far over, that's something to, to think about, too. I don't know that to be the case, but uh, but you're absolutely right on kind of taking away his angular advantage uh, versus lefties. Cooper Strawn is the new pitcher, as you saw on the screen, the Texas A&M commit from Farmersville, Texas, six foot four, 215 pounds. Plays a little corner infield as well. face Parker Pico, who had one of the more impressive batting practice displays earlier today. And he pops this one up, foul ground. It's going to be the pitcher Strawn who has a play on it, and he gets bumped into by his catcher. And it's going to fall helplessly. It'll be an error. Strawn was a guy who earned his invite to National at, at one of the regional showcases leading up to National. Uh, his was Sunshine, Texas, which is what we do, the, the Sunshine Showcase just outside of Dallas. Uh, was good there, fastball up to 90, uh, good spin in life on the, on the pitch, four-pitch mix, uh, threw a lot of strikes, tunneled the slider well. We're kind of seeing it already here as he's, as he's filling up the zone, uh, and you're getting good data there on the board now as well, velocity and spin rate. We will have exit velocities too from what I understand. The O2 up and in. So the count one and two. Braden Buchanan is the new catcher. Joe committed to Alabama. That one in the dirt. Count remains two and two. Well, he's not afraid to go to his breaking ball at all. We've already seen him mixing pitches a little bit more. Pretty good spin on it too, 24, 2500. Uh, on a curveball for a high school kids, well above average. Down low, and the count is full. That one ripped foul past third. Pico's got bat speed. You're probably not going to sneak 91 by him, even on the inner third with life like that one was. He's He's got bat speed. He's a big, strong, athletic, physical kid. Uh, his twin brother Tate's a good player as well, also a really good football player. Here comes the payoff. Yeah, line drive back through the middle for a base hit. Off the end of the bat, you know, staying on that curveball and serving it back through the middle for a leadoff single for Team Gold in the third. Did not hit it hard, but uh, and again, one of those examples with two strikes, uh, if you're able to buy yourself enough time to kind of hang your hands back long enough to be able to get something on it, especially breaking ball when you're sitting velocity, that's a pretty good job, single up the middle. That brings up Eric Becker. Eric Becker, Virginia commit from New York State, pops this one up, foul territory, long run. No play for the left fielder. Ooh, that's Kendall, is that a, let's see here, that is Owen Martin, I believe, in left field now. Again, the defense changes every two innings. That is Owen Martin, yes. And uh, and it's not always the defense that we are given in the booth, so there will be some hesitation on names. Runner goes, pitches the ball. If you can, it double clutches, and his throw is late. It's a stolen base for Pico. Tough to do anything there as a catcher. You're, uh, generally speaking, pitches to your glove side are easier to throw on than pitches to your arm side that you have to reach for just because that's the general way you want your body to move anyway when throwing down. Um, but either way, it, that was too far outside. Really tough to, to bring that back in and transfer it quickly and get it off, et cetera, et cetera. Pitch upstairs and now the count two and one is working from the stretch a little bit for Strong here just to, trying to get his delivery together. He was a breaking ball, and Becker saw it the whole way and laid off. It's three and one. Schultz's first inning was pretty much exclusively fastballs. Cal Randall's first inning was pretty much exclusively fastballs. Strawn here, absolutely unafraid to show it all early. Pitch upstairs. And that is a free pass, so we'll get a... Courtesy runner at first. 
That's Kendall George. He's going to run, you know, look at Becker there out of Don Bosco Prep in New York. The most famous player out of Don Bosco Prep, former first rounder and current Texas Rangers television analyst C.J. Nitkowski. Mm. It's a Don Bosco Prep product. I believe we just had a Don Bosco draftee. Caden Dana, mm -hmm. Don Bosco Prep, if I remember. There's another one a couple of years ago, too. It was a pretty good prospect, if I remember right. But <laughs> Should be a two-strike count here, I believe. Pitched Becker, foul back. Now it is. It's, it says on the screen here. I do know it'd help if I... You know, the problem being a radio guy is that you don't normally use the monitors. Right, right. So, Fair. Zach, just remind me to use the monitors. Okay. Yeah, I'm just, yeah I knew that. You do this a lot. My expertise. <laughs> You're the gourmet around here. Add the pitch upstairs. <laughs> I'm usually like, I usually have this angle to the plate at the ballpark. I'm just several hundred feet lower. Do you like it better from this angle? No. <laughs> <laughs> I like it up here. I like doing this, Mike. You know that. I know. No. You're good at it. As too. far as uh, um, getting be the best look at pitch movement, no, not from up here. The one thing, well, the monitor helps with that. Yes. From up here, you know, the thing that I think is the best is defense. Like, it's yeah. so much better and easier to see. It's such a wide-angle lens yep. to see. Yeah, absolutely. Becker pops it into shallow center and backing up and making the play is the shortstop. That's Rock Chalowski makes the play. And it's out number one. Rudder still at first in second for the Gold Squad. And here is... Jaron Purify, the Detroit area product. He is uh, our first uncommitted of the day. Was committed to Michigan for a long time. Opened up once the coaching change happened. Aaron Baggett's leaving for Clemson. Still uh, down low. Making his mind up, I would imagine. I don't know this to be a fact, but I would imagine that the old Michigan staff is currently trying to influence this decision uh, with a southward wind. And the current Michigan staff is trying to influence his decision uh, with a Western wind. So that would be my <laughs> guess. But uh, either way, he's a really good player, really, really athletic, hit leadoff for a very good Liggett team all year, um, can really play short. He's young for the grade. You know how that plays nowadays. Uh, still coming into some power, hit some home runs this spring. I saw him hit a couple. Just a, just a really good, well-rounded overall player. Takes a strike on the inside corner. Count is one and two. It's a right on right changeup. It looked like that time from Strawn. We talked about it from Strawn, man. He's absolutely unafraid to throw any pitch to any hitter at any time. We've seen it already. My man has not followed any uh, any sort of discernible pattern, which is to his advantage. Um, just uh, need to see a little bit tighter command. Yeah, the fastball is taken off on him a little bit. Two two. A piece of that is verified. That might have been a cross-up, too. Good thing there was a fouled off. Our catcher was a late reaching there. I think he might have been expecting fastball. Yeah, more, more of a slider look there. First couple of hitters, it was mostly fastball and curveball, fastball and curveball, and now it's starting to mix a little bit more. He got in his kitchen with that fastball. A good job by Purify to fight it off. Mm -hmm. Two and two. Really good hands at the plate, really good hands in the field. Um, he's the next in line. There's been a, a good run of high-end Detroit area kids in the last several years out of the state of Michigan. Uh, Warner Blakely, William English, both of those guys were near seven-figure signs. I, I thought Gregory Pace this year had a chance to be one of those guys, but he's opted to go to school, uh, purified in that in that mix next year to be that guy. But just a, a really good run for the city of Detroit. And, uh, Jaron's a great player. I feel like it started to open up maybe in 2017 or 2018. Was that Bryce Bush? Is that right? Yep. Oh, Bryce swing. Bush. Yep. Foul ball. Yeah. Bryce Bush. De La Salle Big High School. Guy. Yep. De La Salle High School. Yep. In the Catholic League. White Sox drafted him, I believe. Yep. yep. That's right. Bush had his junior season, his junior spring. So that would have been 16 maybe or 17. Mm -hmm. um, I think he he didn't set the state record for home runs, but he came close, and that's with BB Corps. So hit like 20 home runs or something ridiculous wow. in a high school spring. He was unbelievable. He was part of that high school home run derby at the All-Star game that year. Mm -hmm. As he should have been. Swing and a miss. 
That was a really good, tight breaking ball, it looked like. That's the second out. Probably the best one of the day from Strawn so far. He's thrown some good ones. That's not to say he's thrown bad ones, but that's the best one that, like, held fastball playing for the longest amount of time and had the most vertical break out of the zone. That was a good pitch. Tyler Minnick bats from Marietta, Georgia. The Georgia Tech commit, top 250 prospect, takes a strike. For those familiar to travel ball, they'll know Marietta quite well. Home of East Cobb. Spent a lot of time in Marietta, I believe. Me, I'm quite a bit of time in Marietta. Go to the Marietta Diner. <laughs> Wonderful. Inside, it's one of one. <laughs> Tell them Brian Zakowski sent you. 6'4", <laughs> 195, about Baron Christian High School. Check swing out a breaking ball. It's two and one. Here's something that's not talked about enough, Mike. The East Cobb, specifically the East Cobb Complex, the concession stand, when graded against ballpark concession stands mm -hmm. that aren't pro-level ballparks, like an eight. Really? Like an eight. Outstanding. It sounds like you're grading on a curve, though. Is that well, that to the, the screen. The curve was against amateur baseball. I mean, if it's an eight, I mean... Like, I appreciate you using the whole scale, but, like, where does that – you've got to translate that so people who go to non-amateur events understand that. What's Those like, of us who don't have children know, aren't spending a whole lot of time <laughs> amateur events unless <laughs> we're here. So your standard your standard ballpark concession at a high school baseball game is hot dog, hamburger, chips, Gatorade, right? East pay off to Medic. East Cobb, great pitch there up in the zone with the fastball. East Cobb will hand make a wrap. Oh, that's, oh, that's delightful. Nice. But anyways, moving back to the baseball, uh, good mix from Strawn. We saw them all. That breaking ball to Purify was excellent. He commanded the fastball here to get a swing and miss at the end. But, uh, yeah, I, I thought Strawn, good stuff. It was a good find by us down in Dallas. Um, we will. Here we go. Yeah, here's the replay of Strawn. See the more of the slider there with the horizontal break across the zone uh, to land a strike. There's the fastball with life on the outer edge that he commanded well. Got a swing and miss up there. There's the best curveball he threw of the day to purify down under the zone. It started with a fastball look right down the middle. That was his best breaker so far. Uh, and then he got an elevated swing and miss to end the inning. But uh, pretty good mix from Strong. Pretty good stuff overall. I have a new pitcher for the gold team here coming up. Luke McNeely from Milton, Georgia, the Florida commit. Six foot three hundred and sixty-five pounder is scheduled to throw. We still don't have a pitcher out there yet. Let's see, there he is. Get a good look at him. Waiting on his catcher. Head out to the mound to begin his warm-up tosses here before we start the bottom of the third inning with the Team Black leading three to nothing. Say, so let's talk a little bit about some of the data that, that folks have been seeing on the screen. Mm -hmm. and, you know, while I know we have a number of scouts that are watching that, that this might this is pretty rudimentary for, but um, for those who might be family or friends or or trying to take a look at it, you've, we've seen velocity, which I think is pretty self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. And we've seen some spin rate data. Mm -hmm. And so what are you looking for with the spin rate information and how are you using it to compare to say what major league averages are when you're trying to project what a guy could be? Sure. Uh, I think you're just in a setting like this, specific to spin rate, you're looking for outliers. You're looking for Jackson Job of a couple years ago. You're looking for what Thatcher Hearn did a couple years ago, stuff like that, where it's like so far above average for a high school or, or like well into major league plus territory that it makes you, okay, this is unique. There's something going on here. Maybe we don't understand it fully yet, but this kid can do something that's unique uh, with the baseball. And sometimes uh, there's high spin pitches that are not very good, uh, whether that's shape or efficiency or, or whatever the, the detriment is. Sometimes it, a high spin pitch does not necessarily equate a good pitch necessarily but uh, that's what we're looking for we're looking for outliers we're looking to understand how um, spin can better be developed we're looking to see what traits a kid has at a certain age where he can spin it way better than everybody else 
at why that sort of thing so we're trying to understand that but at the same time it's it's looking for loud is the way i put it we're looking for loud sammy boom out from dunedin florida takes a strike first pitch mcneely and mcneely good story was on the showcase circuit last summer as a rising junior and performed well at city field in the future series main event up the middle of the short and throw is low cannot be dug out but nice range jack bell play at shortstop by jack bell from corpus christi texas the asu commit good quick feed up the middle there we saw that from bell during his infield workouts earlier on he took a pretty solid bp too um but just uh, not quite enough on the throw there to get it all the way there not quite picked he might have been safe anyways just a good baseball player all around bring up evan hager another michiganer from new hudson Another Catholic strike. Leader. Detroit Catholic Central. Uh, first game of the season, I was there when Catholic Central played St. Mary's, obviously, to, to see Brock Porter. Um, first step out of the game, if I'm remembering it exactly right, Porter threw two straight change-ups to Hager that he might have missed by a combined 15 feet. And then Porter tried to go 97 away, and Hager slammed it into the gap. So notable right there. That's all I needed. Obviously knew whoever Evan Hager was prior to that, but uh, either way. All I needed to continue my interest being peaked. Pitch in the turret. That's back to back change ups. And boy, those are pretty good ones for McNeely. It's one and two. That's impressive. See, easy to see the athleticism on the mound here from McNeely. Not throwing all that hard yet. Uh, kind of sitting 88 with the fastball, but a super lean, projectable body. The way he moves, you can tell he's athletic. The arm is quick. Uh, easy to see velocity projection here. Time is called. Nelly dealt with a personal tragedy last summer with his mom passing away. Talked a little bit about how she and inspiration for him as that one filed back. She, parents were very committed to him. Dad's still taking him around to all of the, the events on the showcase circuit. Had to be very difficult last summer for him. The one two. That one fouled down the left field line and out of play. There's 90 from McNeely. That's his, uh, his top so far. Uh, but we've seen the whole arsenal already, Mike. We've seen the changeup. He doubled up on it already. We've seen the breaking ball. Uh, we'll see how he continues to, to show the whole mix the rest of the way. But we've seen it. Righty, ready with the runner dancing off first. The pitch down and in with a breaking ball. It's two and two. It's another guy who's who's spinning it at an above average level, at least relative to the high school age. Uh, breaking ball over 2,500 spin up into the 2,600s at times. It's something notable. Top 100 high school prospect. It's a swing and a miss on a great changeup. And then you see the dis, uh, differentiation in the spin from the, the breaking ball to the changeup. That's what we call killing spin when you hear that phrase. And it's usually more talked about fastball to change up killing spin but either way change up at 1400 coming off a breaking ball 2500 he's been spinning the fastball okay too it's uh it's definitely has feel for the pitch like we can check that box for sure a swing and a miss on a fastball that held its line to owen martin left-handed hitter from california who's a long beach state commit six three hundred and ninety pounds Still dancing off first, and that one misses low. It's one and one. I'll tell you what, that changeup from McNeely is about as good as you will ever see at this level. You understand, like, you, you, you watch him throw a couple of pitches, you see his athleticism, you see his, how physical he, he's got a chance to be. Is that one swung out and missed? Another changeup there, it's one and two. But that, that feel for the pitching, and, and you see that he's committed to Florida, and you go, okay, yeah, no, that absolutely fits the mold of what Florida's looking for. They'll, they like guys with change-ups because they think they could, Kevin O'Sullivan's confident he can teach you a slider. You know, it's kind of where we're at. Um, but, yeah, this is – and he's got some ability to kind of play with the change-up shape too. We've seen more true straight change-ups that the only real difference is the velocity, and then we've seen him diving away too a little bit. I think the thing that stands out is that it's very difficult to pick up his change-up from here, right? It, there's a breaking ball there. 
that's bounced foul. And so, you know, one of the things that I know scouts are looking for is the arm speed, right? How much can you replicate the fastball? And I think there's a natural inclination if you're just learning that pitch to slow it down, right? Which is you can perceive and it's, you might get, that might be one of the reasons why you get more shape on it is because you've slowed it so you really can get out front. But it, it's, it's pretty impressive what he's done so far. There have been a couple not every one of them, but there have been a couple of changeups he's thrown where I've had to wait for the data to pop up to make sure it was a changeup because of how convinced I was that it was a fastball. Yeah. Uh, interesting, interesting level of feel for it, no doubt. Eric Becker making the play on that chopper from Martin for the second out. The runner goes to second, and here is Cameron Nelson from Baltimore. Left handed hitting outfielder. St. Paul's High School, 5'11", 175 pounds. Turn of the Pro 5 Baseball Academy this year, which is a baseball academy in Virginia. He's committed to Wake Forest. Watch some video on Nelson before the event. He's pretty impressive. Left-handed hitter, mm -hmm. takes low. Really kind of innate feel for the barrel, whole field approach, not overly physical and he doesn't play like he is either. He's not trying to sell out for power or anything like that. He's comfortable spraying the gaps right now. His body projects. He'll come into more juice as that happens. But he's got the hard part figured out. It's good bat to ball skills. A 1-1. One, one, foul back. Mentioned committed to Wake Forest. He's a top 300 prospect. Near the top of the lineup for that Keynes team a fair amount. Double look at the runner, the one, two, up high into the screen. Oh, he got away. He only said, my bad. He had to reach the new top. That's 91. That's his new high for the middle of the <laughs> inning. Just had to rear back, show it off, and now we'll come back and presumably throw a change up here. It's been such an effective pitch for him, so. Certainly understand why. You know Nelson's thinking about it at the very least. It's in the back of his head. Pitch that one floated away from the catcher coming home and trying to score. He's a runner from third and he is tagged out as Buchanan gets there in time to get him. Well, is retired and the inning is over. So that takes the bat away from Nelson. This looked like a breaking ball that just wasn't able to finish. Cannon hustling after it, made a nice play to get the runner at the plate. How many times have you seen a pass ball where the catcher is able to recover it and tag the guy out coming home? I don't know if I've ever seen it. Wouldn't happen very often, that's for sure. Team Black with a 3 0 lead at the end of three. As you get a look into their dugout. It's having a good time this morning. They've been here since early, 8 o'clock this morning, started running the 60-yard dashes. Anybody stand out to you this morning in the 60s? Didn't see him. <laughs> Here's a couple pitches from uh, McNeely as we close, the, close down his first inning. We talked about the change-up feel. Uh, there's some good life to the fastball, too, some good vertical action to it. Um, along with the changeup of that arm speed, he sells it so well that easy to see why the changeup has so much success for him. And he spins a breaker okay too. It's above average spin, still somewhat inconsistent on the shape, inconsistent on the release, but uh, the makings of a pretty good pitch there as well. It looks like a projectable prep righty with a three pitch mix and, and an advanced changeup as the calling card. Yeah, those do not, uh, pitchers with that profile do not grow on trees. That's gonna be an interesting guy to follow next year, not just for University of Florida, but to see how he advances and, and I'm sure is on a couple of follow lists in the mm -hmm. as of right now. We're still a year Watch away that. from the next draft and dudes can put on velo in a hurry nowadays. Davis Rivers will lead off against Strawn and he fouls the first one off to the left. 0 and 1. Rivers 6'1, 195 pounds from Waller, Texas. Texas Tech commit. Got a little waggle in his bat takes upstairs. Be interesting to see how Strawn attacks this inning. Uh, we talked about it last inning, kind of through the kitchen sink it, guys. Unafraid to double up on change-ups, was multiple breaking balls. Uh, we'll be curious to see how he chooses to attack here, because that's already, I think we've already gone 
change up fastball curveball to right. start. <laughs> not afraid to, to, as you mentioned, use anything. It doesn't seem like he's afraid to use them at any count. That's a fastball that misses high. And they count three and one. And really, it seems like he's had best command of, of maybe that breaking ball. Mm -hmm. Three and one. Outside, it's a leadoff walk. So we'll get a runner at first, and the count will set to 0-1 for the left-handed hitting Rivers. It's always an interesting case study in guys who seem to command their secondary stuff better than their fastball. And I can remember, like, just way early on in my career, the, the biggest example of that on the amateur side was John Gray, who was mm -hmm. in Oklahoma, would lose his fastball command, like, all whenever, however, randomly, et cetera, but could always kind of dot up his slider. So unique in, in that sense, you think the, the one that moves more is going to be the one you'd have more trouble controlling, but not always the case. One out of the count. Runner Kendall George goes as that one's popped up into center field. Racing in is the center fielder and making the catch. For out number one is Evan Hager. George back to first. Rivers retired. George got a good jump there, too. Kind of wanted to see that one play out, but I'm sure he'll give us another chance. It's Jack Bell who made that nice play towards the middle in the last half inning. Infield single, showing some range. I've been interested to see him hit in game ever since we saw the BP earlier. It looks like a, a pretty compact, loose stroke that, that covers the plate well. He used the whole field well in BP. Want to see how it looks against live pitching. To go play for Willie Bloomquist at Arizona State. Foul tip into the glove. Nothing in one. Just under that fastball there. Took a big rip, though. I have nothing but respect for that. Party's out front, right? Absolutely. Mike Rooney's not here. We're not talking about punting. Runner goes. Pitch to the strike. Throw down to second is offline, and George steals second. Pretty quick release from Buchanan on a breaking ball there, but the throw was just not on line. I think if it had been on the bag, he may have had a chance at George there. And that's a heck of a sweep tag from Chalowski, too. That's unbelievable. Uh, he made it close. There. Yeah, absolutely. A man at scoring position with the gold team down 3 nothing in the fourth, and Bell swings and misses, and that's out number two. That's just fastball in the zone. Here you go, man. Uh, kind of where we're at with it, Strawn. Found a little bit better fastball command at that at bat. We saw him put a couple pitches above the belt where he wanted to. Uh, with Got some swings and misses as a result. Two outs, and here's Jordan Crossland from Suffolk, Virginia. Right-handed hitter takes outside, 1-0. and oh. Maryland commit had a, had a good BP. There's another one who took a good BP. Showed some power to the pole side. He's obviously a very strong uh, you can see there on the body, just a physical guy. There's a breaking ball strike. Count one and one. Now you mentioned he was one of those guys that just saw recently and mm -hmm. got the invite here, mm -hmm. correct? Absolutely, and that's what happens. Uh, this year with National being after most of the big 17U tourney stuff, which is unique in and of itself, um, we came into the year, came into the spring really, having only kind of invited like 100 or so guys. And then the spring, as as our whole staff saw players play in high school baseball, some people got invited from that. Uh, a lot of people earned invites at, at various showcases from February up until now, mm -hmm. uh, Crossland being one of those guys. And, and obviously we, we needed to save some invites for dudes who stood out at WWBA last week, and we did that too. Um, so definitely a, a more unique year in how we built the rosters for this event this year, given the, the schedule. But uh, either way, that's how you can do it. Uh, you, you can come to your first PG event. We've never heard of you before a week before national, and if you're good enough, we'll invite you. That's just how it goes. Yeah, George went to third there, and there was no throw because the ball got away. And then a 3-1 curveball to Crossland. It's a fastball there that's fouled away. That's some feel for the breaking ball if you're willing to toss it up there, 3-1. I mean, that really has been his best pitch today. Absolutely. And it speaks to the confidence he has in it. It speaks to the confidence he has in the command. And I haven't seen him shaking a ton either. It looks like he's actually kind of being led the way he wants to be led behind the plate here too, so that's been interesting. That's uh, ball four, and so the runner will be on, and now the tying run is Crossland as Jackson Brasso is going to run it first. 
Brasso, an interesting two-way guy, another one who earned an invite at a PG Showcase in May or June, whenever that was. We were in Houston, but you'll see him on the mound. He's very interesting there as a left-handed pitcher. Another swing and miss on a fastball at the top of the zone. Yep. Kinda, he kind of found the formula, it felt like, that inning. Mike Breakers, and then fastball up, which, hey, we talk about all the time, that up-down game, if you can play it. Um, but, yeah, you, another there's a good breaking ball there. We got a good look at it. Um, he showed the ability to throw it more for a strike in this inning. He, he got some chase on it last inning, but but this was definitely more a strike thrown type of breaking ball. And then you can see there the fastball getting a swing and miss above the belt. Got a couple of those in this inning. Got a couple of those last inning. Uh, it looks like it's a good mix. It's kind of a projectable body still. He's a good sized guy. We saw three pitches with some confidence in all three and talked about the breaking ball, but definitely a good uh, a good projection play for Texas a &M. Yeah, good look at a number of the scouts that are here in attendance at Tropicana Field for the Perfect Game National Showcase 2022. This is our first game of the showcase event featuring Team Black and Team Vegas Gold. And then coming up a little bit later on, we will have Team Green and Team Columbia Blue. That'll be our second game of the day. Pitching matchups for that one. To that right now. Let's see, it is. Uh, Drew Sofield's going to start for Team Green. Toby Twist made the start for Columbia Blue. Toby Twist said a good morning with the workouts, took a pretty good BP, showed some stuff from the outfield. Interesting two way guy. Cameron Nelson was at the plate when the runner was gunned down at the plate before, so he will get a fresh at bat here. Got a look at the Baltimore native who is committed to Wake. First pitch, swing and a miss. Fastball running away from him and from the right hander Luke McNeely, who is in his second inning of work. 6 3 right, he delivers on the foul away. And this is sort of a unique matchup. Nelson saw, you know, five or six pitches, whatever it was, from McNally last inning, had the play made at the, the plate for the last out, and now he gets to jump back in again. So usually you'd think advantage hitter in that scenario, but uh, McNally's got that changeup. He hasn't thrown yet in this version of this at bat. So I think we still got in the, that bat. Pardon me, still got that in the back pocket. Toss that ball out of play, gets a new one. PG Pearls, baby. <laughs> He's a little frustrated with himself. It looked like in that last pitch. Delivery. Called strike three. Just floated that changeup over the outside corner for out number one. Well, that was pretty impressive. That was a really, really good changeup. It was up a little bit, but it had so much movement running away from the hitter, Nelson. One out. Here's Josh Tiedemann from Hamilton High School, Chandler, Arizona. He is heading to TCU. Hitting. Tiedemann takes a ball high, the 169th ranked prospect in this class by perfect game. That one misses high, it's two and nothing. Tiedemann, six foot two, 190 pounds. And the pitch misses high, it's three and oh. Waits and takes ball four, and so we'll get a runner right away. With one out. And Team Black leading three to nothing. I think that's Gavin Gallagher who is going to run here for Team Black. Here's the pitch. That one misses low. So five straight out of the zone for McNeely. Tiedemann runs well. Has a strong arm. Has a good off field approach. What's the reports say on him? He's ahead in the count here 2 0 oh again. He's you know, missed with six in a row. Pitch. Swing and a miss. Boy, he tried to turn it loose on that fastball with the belt that's 2 and 1. He was not trying to just go the other way with that one. He was trying to do some serious damage. 
Love to see that in a good hitter's count. Runner goes. Pitches a strike. Throw down to second is in time. And a good throw from our catcher, Tyler Minnick, for Team Vegas Gold. It was a decent jump. The throw tailed a little bit to the first base side, but ended up on the bag, and Becker able to put the tag on the runner. That one fouled away. So the Caught stealing, erases the base runner. Tiedemann's fighting to stay alive. Nice job by Minnick. Putting that one on the base. And count's now full to Tiedemann. So Neely, who fell behind 2-0, and got back into the count. Now here's the payoff. That one driven down the right field line, slicing and going foul. They go out of play, and again, this is bad all fastballs because Tiedemann had drawn a four-pitch walk, so he's going to be on heaters here, nearly three, nearing the end of his outing today. The delivery inside. Ball four. And so now we'll get another courtesy runner here. This will be Johnny Formello is going to run it first. Team Black leading three to nothing in the bottom of the fourth. Here's the pitch. Down low. And one and two. So again, any walk, the hitter keeps the number of strikes, but they have a courtesy runner that goes for them. The delivery fouled away. To the right, finally got a fastball that was down a little bit and was just a little tardy on it. You see Tiedemann, strong kid. Runner goes, pitches the ball, throw down to second. He is not in time. In fact, it hits the runner and it kicks into left field. Formello's going to end up at third. Well, that's a little bit of a bad break for Team Gold there as the throw was. Late and one hopped in, and then it went right into the leg of the runner for Mello. Ended up in left field. We'll look at it again here. He's in pitch to throw. It had a lot of tailing action and bounced up and bounced away. So now the count again, two and two. Upstairs again, three and two. Tiedemann being very patient. He swings and misses that high fastball, and the inning is over. Well, all in all, pretty impressive two innings from the floor to commit Luke McNeely. Two scoreless frames, pitching around a couple of walks in this inning. Okay, good look at that change of moving away. And a little help from his defense and Tyler Minnick there. Caught looking on that changeup to Simpson. Right-hander, two strong innings of work in his perfect game national outing. It's 3-0 Team Black. As we get ready to head to the fifth inning. And a new pitcher for Team Black. This is... Jacob Gomberg is the new pitcher. Gomberg, five foot ten, hundred and sixty-eight pound lefty. Coral Springs, Florida, out of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Top of 160 prospect in this high school class. Another Florida commit. Runs fastball in the low 90s. He helped Marjorie Stoneman Douglas win back to back. Class 7A state championships in Florida. He will get his first inning of work here with his team up 3 0 in the fifth. Seth Farney leads off State Stanislaus, St. Stanislaus High School in. Long Beach, Mississippi, top 100 prospect, switch hitting outfielder. First pitch to him. 
upstairs. That was an off-speed pitch. <laughs> Nothing like opening with an off-speed pitch from Gomberg. It's 1-0. There's a fastball upstairs at 91. It's 2 and nothing. Get a good look at Seth Fanny here. And he swings and misses. Count two and one. Farney listed at six feet, 190 pounds. Upstairs, it's three and one. Farney's got a very good arm. Takes down low, and it's a leadoff walk. Gomberg walks the leadoff man. The uh, courtesy runner will be Jaron Purify here. As the gold team tries to put together a rally. They have the leadoff man on in the fifth. Gomberg will have to go back to work here against Farney batting right handed. 0 oh, 1 the count. Here's the pitch. That one to the screen. Purify will hustle down to second. So now the gold team with a man in scoring position. Gamberg struggling a little bit with his control so far as he'll go back to the rosin bag and now needs a new pearl. Is he funny? Broad chested. Not a big surprise that he would be committed to an SEC school. He looks the part for sure. Committed to the defending national champion, Ole Miss. Runner goes, pitches to the screen. The runner fell down, but Purify will make it to third as the ball ends up near the first base dugout. I think if Purify had not slipped and fallen, he may have had a chance to score on that because it took a while for uh, the catcher, Cerno, to be able to get to it. But Purify's at third. <laughs> Look here as he got halfway there and got sniped. <laughs> The ball got away. You can see he had a smile on his face. He's laughing a little bit about it. So now he's a third with nobody out. And the 2-1. That went to the screen. Coming home is Purify. And the, there will be no throw. And so the goal team on the board, thanks in part to a stolen base and a couple of wild pitches. It's 3-1. to one. And now the count 3-1 and one on Farney. He's a left-handed thrower. A switch hitter. As he waits, and the 3-1. Foul back. A little late on that one. He's up in the zone, and the count is full. First batter of this inning. He draws his second walk of the plate appearance. So now the count will reset to 0-2 and Kendall George is gonna run this time. Seeing George do plenty of running so far as he gets the lead. He's going, and the pitch swung out and missed. Throw down to second is on the money and in time to get him. Excellent throw from Mateo Cerna, the catcher, to gun down the speedy Kendall George. Runner going right away. Swing and a miss on a high fastball, and Cerna put that throw on the money. I mean, perfect head-high throw. Uh, Tiedemann had no trouble with and was able to get the tag down before George's foot hit the bag. Now here's Kyle Henley, the Georgia Tech commit. Takes outside a ball, 1-0. Oh. And there's a strike. Henley, 6'3", 175 pounds. Right handed hitter waits into the... And the delivery is swung out a miss. That was a good breaking ball that time. From Jacob Gomberg. 
count one and two, so he's starting to find it a little bit. And he swings and misses that breaking ball, and the inning is over. Gold gets on the board thanks to a walk, a stolen base, and a couple of very wild pitches. Gombert gets out of it with a strike him out, throw him out, double play. And we've played four and a half in the opening game of the 2022 Perfect Game National Tournament and Showcase. Chance to see good breaking ball there from Gombert after a fastball. There's a strike him out, throw him out. Certainly perfect throw to get George. And that was an ideal throw. Good job there. And I guess Gombert's going to get a chance to face Another hitter here in this half inning. This is Zach Plaskart, left-handed hitter, and there's a strike. Again, you know, this is a showcase event, so there's no rules. Now Bird back to work. That one bounced back to the mound. Pitcher has it, he'll try it halfway to first. Plaskart retired, and now we will turn the inning over. So he ends up facing three different batters in the inning. And get out of that frame. And Gumbert started to tighten things up, it seemed like, after that leadoff walk. Had a long battle. Got things moving in the right direction as he's getting a little instruction of the Team Black dugout on things he can work on in his next inning of work. 3-1, Team Black leading Team Gold. We have a new pitcher that's starting to get loose for the Vegas Gold squad. We'll tell you about him in just a moment here. This is Mac Hewer. Six foot four, 215 pound right hander. From Greensboro, Georgia, who's headed to Texas Tech. And as you can see, he's a top 125 prospect. He's got fastball in the low 90s and can really spin a breaking ball. Power pitcher, power stuff. And you can see he has that traditional power pitcher build. Reminds you a little bit of Brandon Birdsell who was just drafted out of Texas Tech. Big, strong right-hander. He finishes his warm-up tosses. And we are set to go for the bottom of the fifth with Team Black leading three to one. Braden Buchanan bats from Austin, Texas. He is scheduled to attend Baylor. Takes a little ball, 1-0. Oh. Buchanan ranked 345th on the perfect game, top 500, takes a strike. Count 1-1. One one. Vandegrift High School. Plays for that Kane squad as that one misses low in the count two and one. That one at 93. That's the best fastball we've seen from, at least velocity wise, from anyone today. Big Mac Hewer. Pitch. Breaking ball for a strike. Spinning up there. It's two and two. And the pitch. And rolled towards the middle to his left, the shortstop has it. Let's cross one to throw him out at first. Long way to go for the shortstop to get to that ball. A really nice play by Crossland. Strong throw to first. Get the leadoff man here in the fifth. It's already a very interesting fastball here just upon resitting down with you, Mike. At 93 with 2,500 spin, more than that, already a pretty unique outlier here. And it, you can see it there. It's, it's tough to get around on. That's a, it's a heavy pitch. Major League average usually around 2,300 on fastball, so it means it's it's getting on hitters quicker than the velocity even. That one fouled away. That one at 94. This is Tommy Rolden from Poolsville, Maryland. He 
is scheduled to attend Virginia. I really didn't even have to look to know that Hewer was committed to Texas Tech. But if there was ever, a, just, there was ever an archetype. Before you sat yeah. back down, I said it was the brand. He looked it reminded me a lot of Brandon Birdsell, who yeah. just yeah. went in the draft. <laughs> I think he was, what, a fourth or fifth rounder? Something like that, yeah. 1-1. One, one. Swing enough. Foul tip into the glove, and the count one and two. Hewer just kind of rearing back and dominating with heat right now. 93, 94, well above average spin. Foul back somehow. Bolden was able to get on top of that one. Get a piece of it. It's actually a pretty easy effort here, too, Mike. Don't you think? It's kind of. Yeah, it's. Um, this is a. I mean, he's a big guy, and he really comes at you and attacks. Another fastball popped up foul. I'd have to think after. Well, then starting to time it up maybe a little bit better, still late on it. I wouldn't be surprised to either see the fastball in a different spot or him dropping a breaking ball in here. Pitch. It's another fastball again. He just went about two inches further outside. Hit the spot, but uh, credit to Rolden. He keeps fouling him off. I like, I'll tell you what, I like the way Hewer goes about his business, right? He's ready to go, ready to work. His first name is Jeffrey, but he's called Mac. Pitch misses outside, went to the fastball again. That one at 94. He's hitting the spots too, Mike. That was, yeah. catcher called for that a foot off the plate to see you know, if we could get a chase there, and that's where he put it. It's an interesting combination of, of fastball quality and command here so far. There's breaking a breaking ball down low, yeah. That one just not close enough to the zone to tantalize Roland. Count is two and two. Lined into right field. Base hit for Tommy Roldan. And that pretty good job by him to yep. finally time up that fastball. He fouled off a couple. And that one at 94, able to get the head out and this drive a, it. It's an understanding, rolled an understanding what his zones were, right? Uh, Hewer was trying to pitch away, 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 and was doing so successfully. But uh, rather than try and do anything ridiculous with it, Roldan was content to take or follow those away, follow them away. And then he finally gets one a little bit more in on the plate, and that's the one we rack and tack pull side there. That ball was hit really hard. It's Mateo Cerna who threw out a base runner in the last inning from Doral, Florida. Uncommitted catcher out of American Heritage. That one to the screen. Roldan will go down to second. You know, that was the first time we really saw Hewer try and come inside, too, and that wasn't maybe not quite as precise with the command on the fastball, trying to work into a lefty. That was a fastball outside, and the count two and one. It's something to note because too often guys will say, like whether it's on Twitter or whatever, okay, he, he's commanding the fastball arm side. All right, he has side-to-side -side command. No, he doesn't. He has arm side command. Swing we don't this. know if he has glove side command yet. That's the best curveball we've seen from anybody today. No that doubt. was terrific. <laughs> I mean, that was a back foot. That's what Alec Manoa was trying to do to Jeff McNeil last <laughs> <It> night. was. <laughs> when, <laughs> when John Smoltz was calling pitches for him. That was so fun. That was terrific. That was so much yeah, fun. Yeah, it was really neat. That was. That. You know what else was neat? That curveball that, <laughs> that <Absolutely>. you <laughs> were just threw. Pitch. This is outside of the fastball. That one had a little more run on it. It counts full. A little bit too far outside as Davis Rivers was sent off way off the plate. I want to see another one of those breakers. Yeah, I think so too. Let's see what kind of confidence he has to throw it three and two. Yeah, he tried to backdoor that one and missed, and it's a walk. I appreciate the attempt. Yep. Evan Hager's going to be the runner at first. Three one. Team Black leading. And now the count resets to 0-2 against Cerna. Pitch. Swing and a miss. Boy, that fastball took off into the right-handed batter's box for out number one. Seeing some real unique fastball stuff here from Hewer. Like, like yeah. you said, Mike, that's a ton of arm side life, but not every fastball he's thrown has that. Some of the fastball is more 
true two seam, or pardon me, true four seam, uh, trying to, to get it to rise a little bit more to move arm side. And that one was, was every bit of plus life to the arm side. Oliver Service will bat. He is a recent addition to this team. We've seen him pinch run today for uh, the Texas commit from Detroit. Right-handed hitter takes a pitch. It's outside, low for ball one, one and oh. Service can hit. Uh, he's a consistent performer with the bat. Uh, mostly kind of doubles power right now, but, uh, but there's, I think, a fair bit of home run power projection there as well. Um, he's got the ability to hit the ball out of the yard now. It's just not as prevalent in his game, especially in a big yard like this. But I think he's, he's got the bat speed for it eventually. Uh, and he's kind of versatile defensively. We've seen him catch, we've seen him play the outfield. Uh, unsure as to what his future home will be, but uh, I am relatively confident that, that he's going to hit. Check swing there, and that's fouled back. It's one and two. Well, he has him set up for the breaking ball here. He's going back to the fastball. He's going to try and run one in on him. Pitch. Ooh. Call it strike three. Wow. Perfect pitch. Perfect I mean, job behind the plate, too. You know, I was kind of curious how he was going to handle a right handed hitter with his well as he's pitched glove side, but man, that was exceptional command from Mac Hewer in that inning. Perfect fastball spot there. Uh, two strikes. 92 is tough to get around on if you command it in there, and he did. But yeah, Mike, this was a, a really good inning of command and fastball stuff so far. Uh, we talked about the different variations of the fastball he's been able to throw, but uh, command to both sides of the plate, that's a swing and miss breaking ball there. Tons of sweep on that, tons of horizontal movement, uh, and then to pair with it, the two-seamer away. You know, it's such a simple delivery, too, and he's got that shorter arm stroke like the Giolito, mm -hmm. right, where he, he gets it out of the glove quickly. He seems like he can repeat it. He's a big guy. And so you wonder how much that aids in the deception and keeping the ball behind that body. But man, that is real life on that fastball. And that was a really good breaking ball. I am excited to see his second inning of work. That was very impressive. And just as easy as he made it. Yep. That was yep. of an, another notable thing. Usually you think big, physical, powerful guy, like he's going to throw hard and you're going to know he's going to throw hard. That was very, very simple, very simple, repeatable delivery, pretty easy effort. 92-94, right by, guys. Jacob Gomberg back for his second inning of work. As we get a chance to look at the Florida commit to his second frame, struggled a little bit early on in the last inning and then seemed to get things dialed back in. And he'll face... Jackson Brasso here from Paris, Texas. North Lamar High School, uncommitted switch hitter. Saw Brasso at uh, Sunshine South in Houston a uh, month and a half or so ago. Primarily a left-handed pitcher, was 90-93 with a good breaking ball, looked great, uh, but also a switch hitting outfielder who has some utility as a two-way guy. I believe he was committed to Rice at the time, uh, but has since opened up and I'd imagine has quite a few suitors around the state of Texas and otherwise. The pitch outside. Count one and one. How was Gomberg's first inning? Um, it started rough, but then he was able to get it back together. In the the zone a little bit more as he misses outside. It's two and high, two and one. So he had a leadoff walk and then a, a, A stolen base of two wild pitches led to the run, and then he got a little help. Cerna threw out Kendall George on a strike him out, throw him out, double play. Perfect throw. Had to face the extra batter there because I think he'd only faced two with the first two outs because sure. back to back walk. So there's a swing and a miss. It's three and two. Been told Gomberg is a data monster of sorts. So. Well, interested to see how that checks out. That's interesting because that is a really low spin rate on that sinker. Is that breaking ball? That has a high spin at 2,700. Missed low. It's one and two. So, you know, we, we, I think high spin rates get a lot more attention as the runner will be put at first. That's purify. But outlier low is just as. Right. You want to be on the extremes, yep. right? And so that what that means is that's got a ton of sink. Guys are going to hit the top of it over to first, purified back. Now, purified stolen base, and then a couple of 
wild pitches that allowed him to score. So. Here's the 0 2. Called strike three. Boy, that was great pitch. well located. Yep, great pitch in a great spot. Yeah, it's only what, 89 and a half, almost 90 miles an hour, but. You know, yeah. chance to see that there's a little bit of movement coming back to the corner there as he tried to come inside. Runner goes, picked off, throw down to second, and it gets away. And George is safe at second. I can still hear my high school baseball coach screaming at me on that play. <laughs> throw it. Give it to the athlete. Let the athlete do it. Okay, coach. Yeah. But that is the general vibe. Pick off, get it, get it to the shortstop as soon as humanly possible. Create yourself a lane, get it to the shortstop. Right. He didn't didn't have a great lane to throw through there. Here's uh, Francisco Capocci from Coming Georgia, the UNC commit. Just saw Capocci pitch last week at WWBA as well. Up to 94, really good breaking ball. Uh, I'd imagine we'll see him on the mound. He's actually primarily a right-handed pitcher, but is a, a very good athlete with some power. Uh, so there's some two-way potential there. Strength one and one. North Carolina obviously had a really nice finish to their season behind Scott Forbes. Swing and a miss. One and two. Well represented in the draft too. And mm -hmm. all had several guys taken. And they have one of the real stars for the next couple years, Vance Honeycutt, who was a as a freshman this year, 20 homers and 20 stolen bases. One, two. Breaking ball. Called strike three. Throw down to third is high. George steals second, but boy, that was a good backdoor breaking ball from Gomberg. Gomberg starting to get a little bit of feel for that curveball now here in the second inning. Seen him spin it up over 2,700. Uh, we talked about outliers. That's outlier spin for a high school kid, especially on a curveball. Um, good. Uh, he's he's hit his spots the last couple outs. He's gotten perfectly placed fastball and a perfectly placed uh, breaking ball there. Two outs for Kendall George. He was caught stealing in the last half inning. This is his second plate appearance. And he takes a breaking ball strike. I've seen Gomber several. Excuse me, several times over the years, he is at his best when that breaking ball is. When he can throw it strike one, and then he can throw it later in the count too, but when he has feel for that, when he's landing it, his fastball plays up. He's even more confident with his command of his fastball when he has the curveball going. It's kind of unique to watch, but uh, we're seeing it right now, the last 10 pitches or so. This is what he looks like when he's going well, and it's, it's pretty tough to hit. Yeah, he dotted up the corner uh, on the outside edge of that two-seamer, and the count nothing and two, the pitch. That one to the screen. Irvine's going to come home and score the second run for Team Gold. So both runs have been scored on wild pitches. Both by Purify as the courtesy runner. And now it's just a one-run game. So Black got three in the first. Team Gold starting to claw back into this one. Here comes the one-two. Up and in with a breaking ball. That one just didn't quite finish. It's two and two. And it's tough. We're still watching high school players. It's hard to throw a really good curveball a bunch of times in a row. And it's even more hard to do it at the high school level. Swing and a miss. That was a good one. And he had George bailing on it. And the inning is over. So the team Golden has just one hit in this game. Scored runs in the fifth and the sixth on wild pitches by Yambert. Overall, I have to be impressed with the stuff from the young left-hander. Absolutely. Uh, up to 90-91 with the fastball, kind of stuck right there. Uh, we talked about the, the traits on it. It's lower spin. It's heavy. Uh, but the curveball, very high spin, was able to vary the shape of it a little bit, kind of went between 2.8 and 1.7 as far as shapes. That's a really excellent fastball in a good spot with angle uh, commanded perfectly at the knees on the inner third. Uh, but, yeah, the fastball-curveball combination, it, it looks good. There's uniqueness there to the data. There, there's uniqueness there to the release. Uh, he's, he's one to follow. That's pretty, pretty good stuff that he's got working. Job by Gambert getting handshakes in the team black dugout. This team still has the lead three to two. He's able to show much better feel for that breaking ball, and now we get another look at 
Matt Hewer. All right, so we saw Hewer's fastball. We saw actually both of them, both the four seam and the two seam. We saw a really good breaking ball in the last half, last half inning. What would you like to see from him here in the sixth? Uh, he's so good at commanding that fastball arm side, especially to left-handed headers like we saw. I would love to see a change up in that same spot. See if he can do it. That's such a swing and miss, or at the very least, a weak contact pitch when you've been commanding the fastball in the same spot. So I'd like to see if he can do that. I, I know he's, he's thrown a changeup. It's firm. Uh, we'll see what it looks like. But more of the same. I, I would love to see him mix in a couple more breakers just to see what it looks like more. But, uh, yeah, I keep commanding the fastball. I'll keep being impossible to square up. First pitch has popped up. That's Miguel. Who gets from Pittsburgh, who pops it up in foul ground. And the catch is made by Robinson for out number one. So Hugas swings at the first pitch, fouls out. And here's Rock Chalowski, who doubled home a run in the first part of that three-run frame. So this should be a good matchup against the top of this Team Black order. Top 25 high school prospect takes outside 1 0. Uh, powerhouse program at Hamilton High School in Chandler, Arizona. I know you live in Arizona, mm -hmm. but I, I heard you, I believe, call call it where you're from earlier, and I took issue with that. I, I think <laughs> that rural Iowa needs more love. I'm not actually from rural Iowa. Yeah, but you went to college in rural Iowa. Dubuque is not rural. Neither is Mount Pleasant. The one one <laughs> in the dirt. It's two and one. Yeah, I mean, I went to school in Eastern Iowa. There we go. So and Perfect Game was founded where? In Eastern Iowa. That's, I'm just saying, you have to mention it. That's why they keep bringing me back every few years, <laughs> because they, they're required to by state law. You know it's we're, you know we're going to shout one. out Eastern Iowa when you're on the call. Somebody's oh. got to get somebody from the Rivers Conference involved here. <laughs> <laughs> Why doesn't Iowa have a MAC team? That's what I want to know. Because oh, they're in bigger conferences. The 3-1 inside. <laughs> so that'll be a walk. That's the first walk, I believe, that Hewer is allowed. I think so. Actually, I take back. He did walk somebody in the last half. Evan Hager will be the runner at first. The 0 1. Lasky takes a strike. He still Side has corner. the velo. 92 94 coming out uh, right here to start this inning. A uh, little iffy with the command so far, but uh, a well located pitch there for strike one. The two runner goes. That one chopped to third and foul. Hager on first will run. He wants to go. Uh, speed is a, a big part of his game. He's a plus runner. Generally, that when you see the courtesy runner put in, they're going yeah. at some point. I mean, How are you supposed to stand out if you don't? And, right. right? And like that's the whole point of a showcase. So if you, that's why I've never really understood the. Uh, sometimes we have hesitation of like we have to beg guys to go run, and it's like no, dude, go out there, run, steal a bag. Someone's gonna remember that. Chapter short. Crossland will shovel to second late. And everybody's safe. And that was probably, excuse me, that's Purify who's at short now. That was probably just not having a real good idea of the timing on that. That second hop took a long time to get to him and really felt like his only play was going to be at first. Yeah, bang, bang, play at second base there. I, I agree with you. That's tough to kind of judge when it's going to come down when it takes that big hop like that. But, uh, yeah, upon retrospect, probably just come get it and throw it to first and, and take the out. Landon Stripling bats. He fouls the first pitch back. Oh, and one. That was a changeup, and that was up. So we're seeing the changeup. It's firm. He's 92-93 mostly with the fastball. Changeup's been kind of 86-87. Uh, usually you see a little bit more of a velocity differentiation there, but he may be doing something like uh, throwing a variation of a changeup. Maybe it's some kind of split change where it's inherently going to be harder. Or a fosh or something like that. Yeah, it's all about the grip, right? So one and one the count. A little bit of trouble here with one out. Runners at first and second. The pitch swing and a miss. Now that looked like a good changeup to me. I mean, that was really, really good. 
89 nine, with nearly bottom, 90 yeah with some that bottom was. to it yeah it, that was low spin so that's it I, I, usually you can tell more from the spin rate than the velo uh, what the difference is in pitches pitch outside i mean there, there's about a 800 rpm difference between that and his fastball even the ones that had run were you know well over the average so the 2-2 two -two. outside I'm going to ask him after the game what kind of changeup he throws. I'm going to talk to him because that's it's a good unique. Idea. Yeah. 87, 89, still with changeup action and changeup spin. Uh, maybe I guess it's a little higher than, than your average changeup spin. Runner goes, pitches the ball, throw to second. Yeah, third to third, it's in time to get him. And that's a walk that's issued now. Will they put the runner back? They will because it's a, cause it was three and two. So no caught stealing. Second walk of the inning for Hewer is missed away. I guess the one thing that we haven't really seen from him, now that we've seen a good changeup at least, is we've not seen him really command into lefties away from righties. That's the one thing you'd like to see with that fastball still pitch way outside, 1-0. And, and that's something that uh, that could come with, you know, maybe getting, maybe getting a little bit more athletic in his lower half, uh, allowing him to be a little bit more downhill. Uh, not that he's necessarily extremely crossfire or anything, but it is still something of a closed land. Uh, getting over his front side better could aid in that command, especially to the glove side. But who knows? Uh, who, really, there's no, like, hard fact this is going to help that type of thing. Yeah. I think the other part of it is that that ball moves so much to the arm side that it's going to be tougher to command in there, pitch down low. And, you know, again, to your point before, I mean, these are guys that are going into their senior year in high school, right? You can't ask for everything in it. And so I have to think with as much movement as he gets on the fastball, that went tap foul and Stripling got a piece of Rivers, the catcher there. He's going to need a little assistance here for a moment. Ooh, that really got him good, I think, on the arm. To your point about fastball and arm side and commanding it that way, one of my best buddies in, in coaching um, had a sinker baller in college several years ago, a guy who could get it up to 95, 96 with a lot of sink, but – uh, not a great breaking ball, not a great changeup, not even great command. It was mostly the sinker, and he just put him as far over on the third base side of the rubber as he could, said you are throwing nothing but fastballs to right-handed hitters, and had a lot of success with yeah. it. So. Well, he's, he gets so much movement, though, but I, I would think that you know because he's all the way over on the first base side, right, that's an effort probably to let that run take over. Yep. It's got to be uncomfortable for anyone, especially a young pitcher, to have to think, okay, well, for my fastball to play into a lefty, I've got to start it yep. at his, his hip posterior, his yeah, basically, yep. to let it run back over because the last thing you want to do is lose one and hit him. Yep. 2-2, two -two misses away. You can definitely, at the very least, see where he's comfortable going, mm -hmm. and that is definitely arm side with the fastball. Bath. Outside, and it's going to walk in a run. have a run score with no one actually crossing. Yep, nobody's going to move, so it's 4-2. to two. Showcase baseball, baby. We can do whatever we want. Foul back. That was a fastball right down the chute. This is just going to be velo on velo here. It's a walk. He's got to throw fastballs. Uh, velo on strength, excuse me. Uh, obviously a, a fair bit of strength here in Stripling swing like we talked about already, but just going to be fastballs. This is a way. One and two, the pitch outside. It's two and two. It's starting to get away from here a little bit. Maybe working a touch fast here. And these hitters are paying attention, too. They know, like, hey, I, he's either got to throw it down the middle or, or away from me as a left-handed hitter right now. So I can take away the inner third. I can maybe even take away down the middle and really just focus on that outer third zone. And at the very least, we're able to foul pitches off there or if we can't we don't feel comfortable going the other way but you can take away a whole half of the plate uh, as a hitter if, if the pitcher has yet to command it there when he threw that fastball right by stripling in the middle of the zone for out number two the bases are still loaded here's trent caraway caraway scheduled to attend oregon state top 50 prospect out of jay sarah catholic takes low it's two and oh Gonna 
to take a little extra walk here is just to recollect. The pitch. Fouled away off to the right. Late on that fastball at 93. It's two and one. Two balls and a strike. The delivery. Outside. And got away from Rivers and a run's going to score. And on a wild pitch, the runners move up. Should make it five to two. I think the scoreboard says four to two. It's not that we're keeping score, but we're not keeping score, right? Yeah, technically there is score on the board, but I I don't remember a single showcase game score in my entire career. Tell me who won the matchup last year between <laughs> Gray and Royal Blue. Who won Three the one. Ohio Valley Prospect <laughs> Showcase? Inside. Black versus Columbia Blue game from 2019. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Mike, it was it was the blue team. Command starting to get away a little bit from Ewer here. Another runner. The base is reloaded. And there's a strike. Going to count now 0 and 2. To Trent Caraway. Here's the pitch. Line to right, going back a couple of steps. Right fielder makes the catch. That is Seth Farney who makes the grab, and the inning is over. He was struggling a little bit with his control there, but still a pretty impressive look from the big right-hander. Committed to Texas Tech. It, there's a lot to like here. A lot of a lot of unique traits to the profile here. It, it's big and physical. It's pretty easy. Uh, we saw a good amount of control in the first inning, so we know that it's in there. Um, the fastball quality is strong. He was up to 94 several times, and we saw a good breaking ball from him. We saw a pretty unique changeup, given how firmly it's thrown. But uh, uh, lost the control there in the second inning. But but in general, it's a big physical righty with a three pitch mix and a real fastball. You know, those walks kind of limited what he could do in that inning, too. I mean, it was all fastballs, really, for the last half of it. So we saw one really good changeup in that frame. We didn't really see the breaking ball, but we saw that in the first inning, and there's definitely a three-pitch mix there. But, boy, if they get him to campus, Tim Tadlock and his staff are going to be thrilled with Texas Tech. That is Texas Tech pitching coach Matt Gardner, uh, who's as good at, at building velocity and strength on guys as maybe anybody. Uh, that is his type. Big dudes, rear back, throw hard. Uh, get him a little bit more in control. Get him a little bit more firm, with, sharp with the breaking ball, and he will be a Red Raider. There's no doubt. Seventh inning. The new pitcher for Team Black is Dennis Duke McCarron. Ventnor, New Jersey, Ocean City High School. He's going to go play for Rob Vaughn at Maryland. Defending Big Ten champions. It's been like 10 years, and I'm still getting used to Maryland and Rutgers. Just wait. It's gonna, I, I don't know if you heard, but UCLA and USC are joining the that. Big Ten. Hey, SoCal has long been Big Ten territory. I've said this for many, many years. Everywhere is Big Ten country. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Anyone who's listening to us in the Southeast right now is ready to reach through the computer. <laughs> What's the conference down there? Just means more, oh, right? Yeah. It's the it just means more conference. First pitch to Maxwell Clark, the Vanderbilt committed outfielder, fouls it back. This is the top prospect on Perfect Games top 500 list. Left-handed hitter facing the righty McCarron. Mike, all I know is I haven't seen Alabama and Auburn play on a Tuesday night in a blizzard, so. <laughs> Once they do that, maybe I'll. <laughs> Four pitch mix for this righty. And I'll run it into the low 90s. He misses outside of the changeup. It's two and one to Clark. Already some pretty unique spin stuff here. Uh, just in the early going uh, from McCarron. Fastball was over 2,500. That was a relatively high spin changeup uh, that he just threw there. The breaking ball was above average spin. Already unique enough. Three and one the count. 6'1", 175. Take a look at Max Clark. He's been 
Famous player for a while, pitch fouled off the end of the map, the count is full. It's a quick arm here from McCarron, uh, clearly a, a projectable build. You can kind of see the, the athleticism through the body and how much college strength and conditioning can, can put on there to make him stronger. But the arm speed is definitely checking out. It's, a, it's very much a, an above average arm speed guy so far, and it, it looks like pretty firm, pretty crisp stuff as well. Payoff misses outside. And it's a leadoff free pass to Maxwell Clark, which means that Kendall George is going to get another chance to run here. He's been caught stealing a couple of times. Just keep going. Just keep going. Run, buddy. <laughs> now the count sets to 0-2 for Clark. Fouls that one back. Fastball's been 90-92 so far. Uh, obviously, this is still the first at bat of the inning, but fastball 90-92, above average spin. You're seeing it there on the broadcast. Well over 2,500 RPMs consistently so far. Uh, unique for a fastball, especially from a high school guy. 0-2, line down the right field line. That's got a chance to be extra bases and a little one hop over the fence for an automatic double. So Max Clark pulling the hands in on a fastball and lining it into the right field corner for a double. It's a really good piece of hitting. We'll see on, on, on the replay here. It's a fastball inside. He manages to keep it fair. That's 93 mile an hour exit velocity off the bat, thanks to the, the fine folks at TrackMan on the board here. Uh, but either way, I, that's Max Clark. That's the number one player in the country. So hooks a, a double down the line at 93 miles an hour on a, on a well-placed, firm fastball. Just a very good hitter. Now here's Blake Mitchell. That one bounces away from the catcher service and coming home to score is George. That's a 5-3 game. So all three runs have been scored on either a wild pitch or a pass ball for Team Golden. In fact, Clark's Double was just the second hit of the game for the gold squad, the biggest gold squad. And they are right here in the game, too. Clawing right back after another two spot in the bottom half. Swing and a miss by Mitchell. Count one ball and one strike. Mitchell, Texas High School Player of the Year. Takes outside and count two and one. He is the number six rated player. I think three of the top six offensive players in this class, right, are on this Vegas Gold squad. Mm -hmm. Mitchell is, is kind of the whole package as far as what you want a prep catcher to look like. He's, he's big, he's projectable, he's athletic, he's got a plus arm, he moves well behind the plate. Quite a bit of left-handed power at the plate. Uh, need to see, need to figure out the hit tool over the course of the next year, just in terms of the, what we think about it long term, what, what the the prognostication is. But big athletic catcher who can control a running game and has pop from the left side of the plate. Pretty good building blocks as far as I'm concerned. Tim Maxwell Clark and Aiden Miller on this roster are the guys that are in that top six. And then I guess Travis Sakura who. Mm -hmm. Hoping to see on the mound this week is also a top 10. 98, 99. Big six. Oh, good call. Strike three. Great pitch. That's ball to Mitchell. Called a strike, and that's out number one. And here is Aiden Miller. It's an athletic operation from McCarran. I, I know he's been a little uh, scattered in terms of the command, but uh, given the body projection and the arm speed and, and the athleticism in which he, he pitches with and moves, I think it's reasonable to, to project command on this. And uh, we've seen the, the full mix already. Fastball, curveball, changeup all look to be pretty good pitches with upside. Breaking ball misses low to start the bat for Miller. Mentioned he was the MVP of the PDP high school all star game in Los Angeles on Friday. He had four hits in that game. That was 50 players they had. That was, a, was that that affair? That was a little bit rough day defensively for most everybody involved. Mm -hmm. Miller showed good contact skills there. And I think you mentioned it during BP today. Just really big pull power. Pitch. It is substantial strength and bad speed combined to give him 
very, very impressive exit velocities, and, and as that translates, obviously, to power. But uh, he's got as much power upside as anybody in the class, potentially. Miller's committed to Arkansas. Takes inside. It's three and one. His dad played a little bit of pro ball and founded the uh, Kangaroo Court Baseball Club and then Top Tier Ruse Baseball. Obviously, a, a frequenter of PG events. Saw them play in Hoover uh, a couple weeks ago. Obviously, a, a really, really good team. We'll see a couple more of his Ruse teammates throughout the course of the week for sure. That was ball four, and so we'll get a runner at first. This will be Jordan Croslin. Well, the go ahead run at the plate and an 0 1 count here for Miller, and he certainly has the power to turn the scoreboard around. Mm -hmm. Here's the pitch. Up and in, throw down of the runner going is in time to get him. That was a really late slide by Crosland. That's the second out. Boy, that was a dangerously late slide. Had two Looks like one, he's okay. Had two, one, three on the pop from service there. Just a, a really quick release. Does a good job staying on top of it to make sure it doesn't have too much tail. He throws it downhill. Perfect spot. Perfect tag. Got it out. Both he and Cerna have made really good throws on the base for Team Black. 1-1, one, one, Miller takes a strike. It's one and two. Spinning that fastball up over 2,600, which is something to, to note for sure. Uh, these guys who, on the surface, the, the stuff might not all, see, all seem all that loud, pardon me, but the, the underlying data and the underlying metrics speak to not only how good the, the present stuff is, but how good it may be in the future. Miller serves it into right center field for a base hit. Maxwell Clark will score an RBI single for Eden Miller, and it's a 5-4 game. You know, that was what Miller did on Friday a lot, Sack, was use the middle of the field, take what was given to him. For a guy with power projection, it certainly seems like he is more hit over power than power over hit. Yeah, definitely. And we've seen that from him over the years. As jaw-dropping as his power truly is and has been for, for some time now, he was the most powerful guy at, at 14 and 15, too, mostly. But uh, uh, he is a hitter. It's a, it's a hitterish type of thing. I know that's not really a word, but uh, um, understanding of using the big part of the ballpark. That was an 81 mile per hour exit velocity single up the middle to score a run with two strikes. Like that is absolutely a, a totally fine outcome in that scenario. And it's only real guys who, who have those hittable tra traits who understand that, who are willing to do that. Uh, and like you said, you saw it last week uh, out west, and, and we've seen it for years. Uh, the guy can hit. And when he really gets one, though, it's it's pretty fun to behold. That one popped away from service, and the runner able to make it to second. And so now count one and one to Andrew Wiggins from Indianapolis. Now he's got a chance to even this game here in the seventh. That one lined down the right field line, hooking foul. 100 mile an hour off the bat there. Obviously just hooked foul, but uh, we talked about the power with Wiggins, uh, the bat speed, the ability to impact the baseball like so few can in this high school class. Uh, that, again, just a foul ball, but 100 miles an hour, you can see it, you can hear it, you can feel it here even, uh, the amount of power that, that he has in his, in his frame and his swing. It's, it's a pretty whippy swing, like it, it's... This is not just a big, strong dude. This yeah. guy's got, got that whippy bat speed that you like to see from the left side of the plate. He's done it in game. It's a, it's a really exciting overall tool set. And there's a little bit of length to him, and so he can get tied up some with velocity, but that's something you can certainly work on, and, and he's got the bat speed to be able to make it work from there. I think you can make adjustments. Swing and miss. A little late on that sinker. Foul tip into the glove, getting over. A couple runs for the Vegas Gold team here in the seventh, including an RBI double. Or a double the other way from Max Clark. Just get a look at some of McCarran's work. McCarran. Very high a, spin fastball for McCarran. We talked about it. The, the spin rates were up over 2,600 at times. Uh, pretty unique for a high school kid to spin a fastball like that. Uh, he showed some ability to control it uh, around the zone. The command wasn't real fine, but athletic arm speed. 
underlying traits that checks a whole bunch of boxes there to be excited about. He's got it. Ran into two of the hottest hitters in the class, too, in Maxwell Clark and Eaton Miller, who were able to make this a one-run game. Liam Peterson is the new pitcher. Calvary Christian High School, six foot five, hundred and ninety-five pound University of Florida commit. And this should be pretty good at Peterson's ranked as a top seventy-five player in the country. Talked about 6'5", 195. He's got the body type, looks like a pitcher. Uh, we've seen him a bunch, obviously, in PG events. It's, uh, you're, you're seeing flashes of what you'll see once game starts. Pretty good breaking ball. We've seen him up to 92, 93 a couple times. Um, kind of what it's supposed to look like as far as projection arms go. This should be pretty good. Yeah, fastball kind of takes off on him a little bit there. But Chandler Minnick doing the catching now for the the Vegas Gold Squad, so a little bit more about Peterson, a real athletic guy, I think, as you mentioned. And he's changing hats there, see if we can find one that fits a little bit better with his, you know, nope, we, likes that one better. <laughs> you know, we, we ask them when they check in, we say, hey, what size hat do you need? And they tell us, and then we give them that size hat, and if it doesn't work, we let them pick another size, and so I don't, I, I, it's it's amazing to me how many hats fall off. Well, I <laughs> mean, you don't know until you're active, right? So first pitch is up high to the screen. It's 1-0. Oh. Yeah, Peterson almost looked like he was grabbing right for his cap there, too. Zach Wattis has the big blow in this game, a two-run home run in the first. Inside the foul pole, power hitting Phoenix native, takes outside. It's 2-0. Six four, two hundred pounds. Look, ranked fifty fourth in the class. Swing and miss, two and one. It's it's like TCU has some sort of pipeline to the Phoenix area. They've uh, had some success there before. Kevin Crone was uh, the all time Arizona high school home run hitter. Went to TCU and swung out and missed. They're, uh, they're doing quite well now, TCU specifically. The uh, transfer class that they're bringing in, the, the recruiting class that they got through the draft, uh, it's trending in a good way to, to have them set up to be really, really strong for the next couple of years, as we expected, as we expected. Jacob Gonzalez was a commit there, too, before going pro. Pitch down low, 3-2. and two. I think his dad is around here somewhere, Luis Gonzalez. Noted friend of the PG program. Uh, he was, uh, yeah, it, well, the only reason I'm here is because I heard he was buying, so I, <laughs> I needed to see it to believe it. <laughs> Upstairs. <laughs> and it's a leadoff walk, so we got a courtesy runner at first. Pretty live stuff from Peterson already. I understand that was a walk, but 91-93 uh, uh, plus arm speed so far, it looks like. Uh, Fastball's taken off, as you commented on during warm-ups, but it looks like a, a really live arm so far. Sammy Muma from Dunedin, Florida, is the runner at first. A two-strike offering, swing and a miss. Boy, honestly, going out of the zone on that fastball that just jumped on him, one out. It's like, obviously not a pitch that you want to swing at. It's, it's probably not a strike, but uh, man, I still, I got a lot of love for a two-strike hack like that well I you know a fastball's more, coming right yeah, yeah, so yeah, like yeah. Yeah, i mean it's after the walk you know the fastball yep. is coming by rule so you might as well try and turn it loose i have nothing but respect for guys who try and hit balls 450 feet with two <laughs> strikes <laughs> grip and rip philosophy breaking ball in the dirt one and oh this is ryan jaros I long said that to the guys at St. Mary's, I don't care if we lead the state in strikeouts as long as we lead the state in doubles, bombs, and walks, too. And, hey, <laughs> do try and do damage. And it's not like they won, what, three straight state championships, right? Would have been four without COVID, but sure. I mean, ifs and buts. Were, candies and nuts would all have a Merry <laughs> Christmas, by the way. At 93. Yeah. 93, and the, and the spin's good, too. That's 93.8. Where I'm from, we can call that 94. We round up there. Um but yeah, the high spin, 24, 2500 on the spin rate on the fastball. We talk about the looseness and the whippiness of the arm, arm speed, projectable body. Uh, it has the makings of someone who's going to throw really, really hard. There's a strike. 
Count one and two. Good breaking ball there. You may call it 94, but I, I defer to our radar overlords. Peak of 93.8. That's right. My Just the accuracy. Grounder to second. That could be two to second for one. On to first, a 4-6-3 double play. Ends the inning. Some nice work in the middle of the diamond there. Try and get a look at this, the second look at this double play. Good stuff here. A good turn. It's accurate. It's chest high. It, it's it's Bell and Becker again. You don't have to, to do anything weird coming across the bag to simply take it out of the glove. Let your momentum carry you to first base. Make an accurate throw. That's how they draw it up. Jack Bell and, and Eric Becker had been flipped before, but so Bell is playing at second there, starting that, that double play to Becker. Another look at uh, Liam Peterson from the first inning. Mostly fastballs. We saw him land some sliders pretty well uh, later on in the inning, but uh, it's a really explosive fastball that takes off up in the zone, away, 93, up to 94 in my book. Uh, just uh, it looks, it's got the makings of a really explosive fastball. It's a reminder that Satcast is better than Statcast. <laughs> <laughs> Second inning of work coming for Duke McCarron. This is the first of two today here from Perfect Game National and the showcase event coming up a little bit later on this afternoon. Team Green and Team Columbia Blue will meet. Another inning from McCarron here. I uh, would like to see a little bit more consistency in terms of the command uh, to side to side with, with the fastball, but and would like to see some more breaking balls too, but uh, we know he's got things we like. Just want to see them uh, expanded upon. First pitch misses down low to Ryder Robinson. Left-handed inning, third baseman. Files that one back. Another TCU commit from the, the Four Corners region of the country. Looks like they got a stronghold there, Coach Farron. Well, it's going to be some work for Willie Bloomquist and Chip Hale to try and work into that. Obviously, Grand Canyon's had a great program, too, with Andy Stankowitz just leaving for USC. It's called strike. It's one and two. They were able to bring back Greg Wallace, yep. obviously, who was a, a local to me for about a, a day and a half <laughs> uh, when he had the job at Ohio State for yep. about a week. Bounce to first, nice backhanded grab there, and taken to the bag by uh, first baseman, Zach Wattis for round number one. Hit a bomb earlier, made a nice play there. Wattis having a nice day. Parker Pico will hit. Powerful right-handed hitter batting with his team down 5-4 in the top of the eighth. Does it pain you to live in Ohio? A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I really don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> well, you moved to Ohio for the right reason. I did. I did, yes. I uh, fell in love with a woman who makes Cleveland her home, so that was a, a pretty easy call, actually. So. <laughs> fell in love with the river there, I thought was what it was. <laughs> no, I'm from Downriver, Michigan. I'm, I got the river. Now I'm getting more of the lake. At lake Erie right there, you know. 1-1, one, one, swing and a miss. Good breaking ball there from uh, from McCarron. It's what we talked about just entering the inning. Wanted to see uh, a little bit more consistency of the secondary stuff, a little bit more willingness to throw it. Um, fastball velo is not quite what it was, kind of sitting 88, 89 right now, but he's got Ooh. that breaker going. Front doors him that time. That's out number two. We don't see that very often. I think that that looked like almost there was intent to it. <laughs> the, uh, those pitches that, that come from off much. the plate. Yeah, yeah boy, that's that a, was a really good job of receiving it by service. Breaking ball has been 76, 78 or so. Uh, obviously just saw the spin there. That one's 75. Um, have seen some good spin data from it. Eric Becker in the air to center. Right there to make the catch is the center fielder, Hager. And a perfect eighth inning for McCann.
Karen. Nicely done and rebounding after a rough seventh. Much more efficient here. Go to the bottom of the eighth with Team Black leading Team Vegas Gold. Five to four. We saw some good stuff from McCarron. Uh, he's athletic. He's projectable. He's got a fast arm. Um, the fastball has good spin on it. We saw the breaking ball a little bit better in that inning there as well. It uh, still needs to add some teeth to it, but it's got good shape. He's got the ability to, to throw it over either edge. Um, I think the uh, the upside there for McCarron is pretty strong. He's got a ways to go to fill out his frame, and, and once he does look out, it could be premium velocity along with a premium breaking ball. Liam Peterson back for his second inning of work here. Fastball was so explosive for Peterson uh, in his first outing, or first inning, excuse me. Uh, threw a breaker or two. Uh, would like to see a couple more. Would like to see what that looks like just to sort of complete the, the snapshot of the look here. But uh, easy to see. We've talked about it already. We'll talk about it again. Easy to see the arm speed and the body and the way the fastball plays and envisioning that being upper 90s with some ride on it uh, before too long. Last inning of Vegas Gold pitchers for today. We're going to get a couple of players off other rosters that we'll see for the ninth and tenth innings of this game. Usually the showcase games between eight and ten innings uh, in different events when uh, we may run out of pitching. Uh, the games get shorter, but at PG National, that doesn't really happen. We kind of know who's going to pitch and when and how and why. And not many guys come to us later on and say, actually, I don't want to pitch uh, here anyway, specifically. Johnny Farmello from Centerville, Virginia, the Westfield High School product. And again, behind now, 0 and 2. Peterson dotting that fastball on the inside part of the plate. Delivery swing and a miss. Oh, that was a good change up there. Good tempo, good pace, and good stuff from Liam Peterson so far. It's a higher spin changeup up near 2,000 RPMs, but that's a that's a fantastic sell. Uh, you see just enough movement away to keep it totally off the bat, but great great sell uh, with the arms. Somebody we talked about. send that clip to the pitching ninja because he had his case strut down too. <laughs> <laughs> Went upstairs, ball one. I mean, that was... He threw that pitch with a ton of conviction. <laughs> I'm actually kind of upset the Ninja didn't stop in Tampa on his way back from uh, the West Coast. It's a breaking ball strike. It's one and one. Well, you know, it is on the way. Yeah, that's it's right on the way, as I understand geography, right? <laughs> it's, the, the, it's round. The U.S. is round, so it's actually Florida and that's California right. are next to each other. There, yeah, you just got to go quick across the ocean. Another curveball strike. Boy, Peterson's stuff, I, it almost feels like it has ticked up this half inning. He listened to what we had to say up here, Mike. He heard us saying, let's see some more secondary stuff and let's see it with a little better command. This ball fouled away, first base side. Now we can give him 94. <laughs> now he got 90. Well, he had 94 before, too. That's the second 94 this inning. Now I want to see if he's got 94 and a half. Can he get a 94 one? Can we get a 94 one? <laughs> 94 two over under. <laughs> Pitch. Trying to tie him up, did not go. He's making Winslow, the Hertford, North Carolina product. Let's see how he wants to finish him here. Tried to finish him with a breaking ball and left it upstairs, and the count is full. There's a lot of action on that pitch, a lot of movement, a lot of spin. Uh, it's not quite refined yet into a consistent weapon, obviously, but uh, but it has the makings of one. There's 95, Mike. 95 on the nose. Do we hear 96? Do we hear 96? But Peterson, love his pace, tempo. He's ready to go. Get on that rubber and throw. Spiked up there, and it's going to be a walk. So now I believe has three walks in his two plate appearances. So I like seeing that. He has an idea. He knows what what he's doing with the strike zone. Now, see, TrackMan on the scoreboard says it was 94, but our data on 
Perfect Game TV says 93.8. So do you think they're using SAG cast in the ballpark? Now, this one had 95.0. Yeah. That's why I you know, was so willing. Well, that last it. pitch, though, that one popped up into shallow center and going back to this. Second baseman Bell makes the play for round number two. Just kind of attacking at that point. I didn't really have a choice once uh, the base runner went to first. Obviously, you have to throw all fastballs there. But uh, still, uh, when you're able to get weak contact or when you're able to get a swing and miss when the hitter knows what's coming, uh, it kind of speaks to the quality of the pitch. And we've talked about it. This fastball is a really good pitch. Gavin Gallagher hits. Right-handed inning outfielder takes a strike. North Carolina, his shortstop here is what he's listed. He'll play all over. Pitch, runner goes. Pitch is a ball, throw down to second is in time to get the runner crawling into second service. It's a heck of a throw on a breaker that kind of hung up. He was already kind of standing mid crow hop when uh, when he finally was able to receive the ball. Quick transfer, just kind of got rid of it as quick as he could through a one hopper. Uh, good job by the, the second baseman there coming over to not only pick it, but get the glove back down in a good athletic Tyler position. Minnick tag with the throw and get a look at some of Liam Peterson's stuff. Yeah, I, this is pretty explosive. I, I thought this was uh, probably as loud as we've seen today, just in terms of totality. Uh, we saw a good changeup. We saw a good breaking ball, inconsistent with both, but flashed enough for us to think that there's bat missing future there. And he's throwing hard now, and I think he's going to throw extremely hard. Well, like that, so. that fastball had a little bit of cut to it at times too, so you wonder if his work is going to try and stay behind it a little more. A lot to be to be really encouraged with from there. Christian Rodriguez is going to take over here for. Team Black in the ninth, he should get a pair of innings. This one's scheduled to go 10. Rodriguez, the uh, one of the, the aces of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas team in South Florida, one of the best teams in the country. Uh, I believe they were national champions last year. A number two or number three this year, whatever the finish was, of one of the perennial powerhouses of the last couple of years. He was a two-time PG Select Festival alum. Played in the 13U Select Fest and the 14U Select Fest. Top 50 ranked player in the country. Really explosive arm. Uh, we've seen it up to 94, 95 before. It was 94 last week at East Cobb. Would imagine it will be similar now. Uh, really talented arm. Yeah, as you mentioned, ranked in the top 40 there. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. I'm trying to think. Anthony Rizzo, I believe, right? Jesus Lazardo. Yep. Colton Welker. All big leaguers who yep. went to Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Here's Jaron Purify, who's been a pest on the bases for the Vegas Gold team. Detroit native pops up the first pitch in the shallow right. And that's going to be out number one. It's 91 there, just uh, first pitch of the inning. Challenged him with a fastball. <laughs> Purify felt like going after it. Purify was hustling around the bases and he got to second ahead of the mm. the throw as they were going around the horn and signaled safe and then started <laughs> laughing running off the field. <laughs> he loves playing baseball. Uh, you man. can He's tell, man. Like it's it's great. He has a really infectious energy to him. Here's Tyler Minnick. Slider just yanked across there a little bit. Uh, it's good. It's it's definitely good arm speed. It's good arm strength here from Rodriguez. There's a lot to like. He's a two way guy. Uh, as we saw in BP earlier, he's got some power, uh, pretty solid defender, but uh, I think he's going to, to be mostly a pitcher moving up the ladder. Minnick rolls that one foul up along first. Minnick's made a couple of nice throws behind the plate. Takes a breaking ball low, it's two and one. It's been a good first day so far, Mike. We're, you know, not even close to over, but uh, mm -hmm. seen some good arms. Uh, the BP was loud. Uh, obviously, we'll do this in three sessions for the, so the people know, obviously. But uh, this first session, this first group of four teams, really has kind of set the bar high for the rest of the event, I think, just in terms yeah, of the talent agree. and how they've performed so far today. <clears throat> I would agree. I think there's been, I mean, I think we've seen th 
three or four arms that are going to get pro follows for sure mm -hmm. so far. Swing and a miss. Back down on strikes. That's out number two. And and I think you've seen a couple of bats too. Then you know, obviously we talked about some of the guys at the top of the class that are going to be pro follows, but guys that might be a little bit further down that are going to get more attention as we get closer to next July's draft. That's a really good fastball, just kind of running up out of the zone. Uh, tough to hit that even at 90-91 or whatever it was, but uh, uh, just a good, well-located pitch there to, to get a swing and miss up and out of the zone. This is with a breaking ball there. It's 1-0. and Again, this game is supposed to go 10 innings. Side. I've not seen anybody warming as of right now for the gold team here. These are these uh, sometimes we're going to find out when it happens type of thing at showcases. Well, I've got the names here. That one lined to left coming out and making the chest high catch is the left fielder. That's Johnny Formello, and the inning is over. So an efficient inning for Christian Rodriguez. 95 mile an hour off the bat there from Davis Rivers, the left hand hitting. Catcher committed to Texas Tech, but uh, obviously notable. You hit a ball that hard. We got to talk about it. But Rodriguez, good. I, this is we'll see more of him in the next inning. We we'll want to see more of the the full arsenal. He only threw seven or eight pitches there, whatever it was, but efficient. 90-93 got some weak contact. Uh, we saw at least one decent slider. Uh, we'll see some more in the next in, next inning. All right, so our new pitcher here is going to come from. Team Green, it does appear. That is, uh, I believe his last name is uh, Kim, Q-I-N. Check that here, but that was my understanding. Yep, yep. Zach Kin from where is he from? He's uh, China. China, I believe this is. Uh, oh, I had yeah. heard about him that yeah. he was going to be at this event. Yeah, yeah. six two hundred and eighty pound lefty. Do you know much about him? No, I don't. I, it's been a uh, obviously a focal point of perfect game in the last couple of years to to get more into the international market. Uh, we've been doing quite a few showcases uh, in different parts of the world. Uh, the Czech Republic, most notably, obviously down in the Dominican Republic, but uh, also important in that expansion is, is partnerships with organizations from the Far East, China, Japan, Korea, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and this, I'm sure, is one of those examples of, of somebody that we've established a relationship with. Uh, come to the event uh, all the way from China. Now, I heard some people earlier complaining about being jet lag from the West Coast. <laughs> Try showing up here and pitching from China. That's got to be a, a heck of a jet lag. I'm sure he doesn't even know what day it is regardless. Yeah, he's too tired to be jet lag. Excited. Yeah. Excited to see what we have here because I, I love these stories. I know you do too. You know, and this is a great story, and you get a chance to see the scouts there. And, and what you didn't see was the entire infield coming over to him and giving him a dap, and he looked like he was enjoying it. Everybody there ready to support him, and this is a pretty cool story. So let's... Looked like pretty intriguing stuff just in the warm-ups. Uh, looks like the arm works well. He's got some arm speed. Pitch misses upstairs, 1-0. Now, you, you notice that in a lot of in Japanese pitchers or Korean pitchers, there may be more hesitations in the delivery. This is more of a standard Western hands-over-the-head delivery. and That kind of jives, I think, because a lot of what's happened with Chinese baseball, at least my understanding, I have limited knowledge, so, so please bear with me and, and take everything with a grain of salt, but um, is that it has been a lot of U.S. coaches that have helped with that. Mm -hmm. It's a breaking ball strike. In fact, I think the first time that they were in um, international play, I want to say Jim Lefevre was their manager, if I remember right. So they, they've had a, a number of U.S. coaches that have uh, helped. And you can still see a little bit of it. There, there's still kind of a little bit right as he gets up with his leg, you can kind of see that maybe he used to do it or used to stop. There's a little bit, tiny little bit there, but uh, either way, 87, 88, uh, we're seeing it identified as a cutter on the board. Mm -hmm. There's obviously a fair bit of life to it, and we saw in, in the first at bat there, he was able to land that curveball over the outer edge for strikes, too. Oh, strike 
So Moa sends that one high in the air to right center and moving over and making the catch. He's picking out the center fielder. That's out number two. Well struck ball there, 91 miles an hour off the bat at the exit below reading. I obviously just kind of hit it to the big part of the ballpark where Pico was playing. But still, well struck ball, good swing uh, on a pitch in a good spot to hit. Evan Hager bats. Two outs here in the ninth. Again, this is scheduled to go 10 innings. We'll play top and bottom, regardless of the score. Breaking ball outside. Curveball, a little lower spin rate on what he's featuring, but. Still, it's a, it's a long, projectable body. That we're seeing him very willing to throw that, that cut fastball. It's super low spin on the fastball. It's 1,200 yeah. there, 1,300. Uh, that's usually even down below what you see big league sinkers at. Uh, when, when you talk about low spin rate guys, sinker guys at the major league level, this is even lower than that. This is change-up level spin uh, on, his, on his cut fastball or, or however it's being classified, whatever he calls it. Um, definitely a uniquely heavy pitch, and, and he's showing good feel for the breaking ball too. Yeah, that was a little bit, a little bit more spin on that. Strike. He gets the call on the outside corner. That one at 90 miles an hour. So. That one looked more like, like here's my fastball. Like I think that was, uh, you know, we'll have to have, a, we'll, we'll go talk to him afterwards if you want. But uh, feels like he's he's kind of playing around with multiple fastball shapes and looks so far. Two hopper to short, bobbled. And reaching safely will be Hager. Purify struggling to come up with that one. It's off the end of the bat of the lefty. That's a, that ball was spinning something weird. And he kind of, I don't know if he got it quite off the end, but it was a weird kind of fungo shot. It looked like that had some weird spin on it. Purify, it, it looked like he lined it up well and had waited for the correct hop, was coming through it. It, it was going to make a strong throw, just uh, kind of knuckled on him at the last minute. Owen Martin bats. Vita, California, left-handed hitting outfielder. Team Black leading 5-4, last of the ninth. Keenan falls behind 2 and nothing. He's, uh, he's just kind of grabbing the ball and going. Mike, like, yeah. this is, he's controlling the pace. He's just grabbing the sign. Getting set, here we go, and it's pretty solid stuff, too. Answer to second, throw to first in time, and a nice scoreless inning for. One more, one more, one more. Hope looks like we're going to play, play one more hitter. All right, well, that makes sense. You want to get him out there? I mean, he's not going to go two innings today, right? So might as well get him an opportunity to face another batter. It makes sense. Yeah, usually when you, when you walk a guy and then that guy ends up getting out, uh, so it wasn't really like an, you know, it wasn't an extra batter. He right. was just on the bases, and then that guy ends up making one of the outs. Uh, we try and make sure every guy faces at least three hitters an inning. Josh Tiedemann bats. It's a breaking ball that misses low. I don't know. Well, this is, it, it, I think we've seen enough from him. To, he's definitely going to be on some college radars. No doubt. And listed as a free agent, which is unique, uh, obviously with different places and different eligibility rules and different and so on and so forth that, you know, guys from Puerto Rico have a, a draft year. Guys from Canada have a draft year. Guys from elsewhere, they might be automatically free agents as soon as they're 16 or however that works uh, in the international side. So it doesn't preclude him from coming to play college baseball in the United States, but listed as a free agent, it means he is eligible to sign a professional contract if he were to want to. Still, that's something that's being debated long term right now. There's a deadline coming up next week for a potential international draft. Is that one missed in the dirt? It's two and one. So, you are far more plugged into the mechanisms and goings on of, of Major League Baseball than I ever am. Yes. What are your thoughts? What What, what do you think you would want to do as far as the international draft is concerned? Because that does that is relevant to PG. We're seeing an example of it right now, but especially at the younger levels, our 14U stuff, when we have the top international prospects come to it who are already somehow committed to, to where they're going to sign, et cetera, et cetera. So I have, um, I have conflicting viewpoints in my own mind on it because it's actually a very complicated issue. Mm -hmm. um, this account's run full now. And, and 
the issue is is that you're taking away free agency from those players, and one of the major reasons you're doing it is um, because there is corruption in the international signing period, specifically in, in Latin America. That's the, the rules for Japan are, are significantly different. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but, you know, the corruption is brought on by, in, in part, by the system that the league has allowed to happen. And so it, it's, you're, you, how do you save yourself from yourself, right, to some degree? Um, is that when Mrs. Lowe? I, I, I don't think it's an easy answer. I think at this point, um, whether, you know, I'm not going to, I would never think that the league intended for it to get mm-hmm. this bad or that anybody would want it to have gotten that way. But it has, and at some point you have to regulate. So I think I am in favor of it because of the way things have gone. Snap throw it first, it serves it back. Um, I just don't, you know, I understand why there is resistance to it, but I think at this point it probably makes sense to do it this way, even understanding what the complaints about it are, whether whether that's, um, as Kin strikes out Tiedemann to end the inning, uh, whether that's because you're more concerned that, that you feel like drafts are ways to drive down the cost of amateur players or... Um, whatever you might think is controversial in it. So I think it's probably, it, it makes sense at this point. We're going to look at Kins inning and, and see the feel for the breaking ball, I think, is the thing that stood out to me, Sack. He really seemed to have pretty good command of that curveball. Yeah, it, no doubt. And, and he does it pretty easy, too, Mike. It, you can see it's a projectable body. He's got some room to fill out on his frame. He throws left-handed. He can spin a breaking ball. Uh, and the fastball was unique. It was up to 90 with it. It looked pretty quick arm with some flashes of command Uh, and then he was throwing that little that cut thing at 87 88 or whatever it was with super super low spin uh very unique in and of itself but yeah good building blocks there to be sure so a good outing for zach king as you see walking behind max clark darren sutton and danny wexelman have coverage for you the rest of this weekend as well. Zach and I will have the uh, late game for you today. A little bit later on, I think we're scheduled for a 4.30 start. I'm feeling it's going to start just a touch after that, right? What do you think about 20 minutes between games? Um, it's totally dependent on the ground screw. This is can their we, house. Can yeah. we slip them a 10? <laughs> we, will, so we will wait as long as they would like us to wait because we are in their house and we will play by their rules. They are gracious enough to host us. And uh, we are, we're going to do it the way they want us to. Second look at Jack Bell at the plate. The ASU commit swings and misses. Christian Rodriguez continues his efficient work. He's just going to continue to attack. This is what he does. He wants to attack guys in the zone. He wants to get early contact. Uh, he wants to throw four innings on 38 pitches. Like, that's what he wants to do. Well, he definitely has a feel for pitching. Called strike three. Boy, he made quick work of Bell there. And up to 93 there with a sinker. Well, 92-9. Seeing him uh, come into a little bit more velo, a lot of 90-91 early, kind of seeing some more 92s, 93s. That's just a perfectly located pitch uh, at the knees on the outer third. Tough to do anything with it as a hitter. Uh, Just a a really good pitch and a really good spot. One out for Crosland. Swings and misses. It's 0 and 1. Good pitch at the top of the zone there. Get a swing and miss. Uh, interesting to see how he wants to attack with his fastball, uh, because he is a, a little bit undersized in terms of height. Uh, there's some potential, you know, lower release height traits here in play, uh, and always like to see guys with that how they choose to attack with their fastballs, how they choose to optimize themselves in that sense. But uh, uh, basically, he's just been. Hey, I'm going to throw strikes and get weak contact, and we're all going to go eat lunch. That's kind of what his mentality has been. <laughs> Two and one, the count. And the pitch to Croslin. That one misses outside, and it's three and one. One more pitcher today for the bottom of the tenth. I believe it's Cameron Nelson that's going to throw. Is that one? in the air to right and misplayed in right field. It'll get by and get to the corner. 
Croslin on his way to third, and he'll get there ahead of the throw. Croslin showing off the wheels as that ball eluded Evan Hager in the corner. Ball was hit pretty well. Obviously should have been caught a routine play that Hager just kind of flat out dropped, but uh, still a ball hit pretty hard, 89 mile an hour exit velocity, slicing away, sees the uh, the ball get by Hager and, and it kind of turns on the afterburners. But this is a, a heck of a relay from Chalowski. Yeah, Chalowski. There, yeah, just Hager to Chalowski there to, to third base on to make what probably shouldn't have been a close play, a relatively close play. Yeah, Chalowski showing off the arm strength and the accuracy. He's been impressive today. Yep. Pitch misses upstairs, 1-0. He would have to go in the category of most impressive offense slash defense on, the, on Team Black, I think. Yeah. I had this conversation with Benny, Benny pardon me, earlier a, a couple hours ago. I was talking about, you know, guys in the class, where they're ranked, how they profile, bats versus arms, et cetera, et cetera. And Chalowski, I think, like, there are infielders ranked ahead of him but I think he's the guy who is most likely to be a slam dunk at short while also being in the mix as one of the top offensive guys in the country. And so he might not have the, the explosive power of some guys ahead of him, but those guys are less likely to play short. So I, I think he's got that, that kind of perfect combo. Um, and he, there's a reason he's ranked so highly. There's a reason he's so highly thought of. 2-1. There's a strike. Down 2-2. Two and two. This is our first look at Fernie as a left-handed hitter. And a right-handed earlier. Powerfully built outfielder committed to Ole Miss. 2-2. Ugly swing and a miss. The changeup there that was down to 71. That was more like Ephus than change almost. I mean, he really slowed everything down. We talked about uh, Hewer earlier, or, or whoever was throwing a really hard changeup at 87, 88, 89. Similar, That's the opposite. Similar velocity from the fastball. So that was a three or four or five or six or whatever mile an hour difference. This, you know, Rodriguez is also throwing 91, 92, 93. His changeup is 71, 72. So quite the difference there. Uh, usually those, those kinds of changeups, it's harder to maintain that big of a velocity separation as you get up the ladder because, you know, big league hitters, I don't care how good it is. I can figure out how to wait back long enough on 71, right. you know. So it's unique when, when those types of things continue to go up the, the developmental ladder, but he's got some feel for it. Swing and a miss. One and two. Recent draftee of the Rangers, Brock Porter, had some similarities to that coming up. He would 96, 97 with the fastball, and then the changeup 78, 79. Um, the action that he generates in the cell that he has is what makes it a plus pitch. Well located fastball there from Rodriguez, and outside of the misplay, in right, a very, very good outing, and they're going to let him face one more batter here, I think. Yeah, we need to see more of him, man. He's, just, he's barely been out there is what it seems like. He's going to get the extra perfect. out. Yep, that was boy, just off the plate, but right where the glove was. So Black, Zach Plashard will get uh, another opportunity here. So one pitch is the first time. University of Arizona commit. That's another changeup. That's vicious. That's vicious. He's just kind of bringing it out now. It's got really, really late kind of drop off the table fade there. Swinging and missing over the top of it by a lot. That was another one that went through the five hole. getting the bullpen ready on the first base side. Swing and a miss. There is a day here where we got to take a midday break to let the race come in and actually work out. So I think that's tomorrow maybe. We have to, we got to take a little pause in the middle of the day. But uh, either way, we are very, very uh, thankful to Drop Cannon and the Rays for letting us host this year because Having been to many of the ones we've done outside, yes, boy, boy, isn't this just wonderful? <laughs> it is. The the train runs on time. Yes, when it's indoors, that's yeah. for sure. Called strike three, man. That was another well located fastball that ran back over the inside corner. And Christian Rodriguez two innings of work. Extremely impressive for the right hander. Who saw his velocity tick up understand why he's the ace of one of the top teams in the country. 
Blow a fastball by guys. Get that one running away. See the, the fastball command. Uh, he was in control the whole time out. Uh, but the fastball command really stands out, especially when you're throwing 92 93. He's able to spot it up in the zone for swings and misses. He was spotting it on, on either edge for, for called thirds. We saw a pretty solid breaker from him. We also saw a really dynamic changeup from him. Three pitch mix, lots of strikes, lots of confidence. That was a fun two innings. Cameron Nelson is going to pitch here for the bottom of the 10th inning. He is on uh, Team Black. But he's going to get the inning here as there's a change to the pitching order for the uh, Vegas Gold Squad before the game. And so Nelson, who is mostly an outfielder, also pitches some. He is a Maryland commit. Am I right that he's a Maryland commit? Did I make that up? Wake Forest. Wake Forest commit. He's from Maryland. He's from Baltimore. That's correct. Extra time should be the last Catcher half Mitchell. here, I'd imagine. And, and judging got, by this, is just me making a semi educated guess. I would imagine we will still start the next game before five. Coming up, uh, you mentioned uh, perfect games work in, in Europe. Uh, immediately following our game, we'll have uh, more on that with a piece on, on perfect games work in Czechoslovakia. So that's going to be immediately following our broadcast of this game, and then we'll be back for uh, game two of the day between Team Green and Team Columbia Blue. The international stuff's really, really exciting. A lot of, a lot of cool places that we're going to that hasn't been, haven't been announced yet that, that will be in time, but uh, PG very much going global, and I mean global. I, I think the only place we might not go is Antarctica. <laughs> well, I don't know how many diamonds there are there. You know, Tasmania is close enough. You Let's probably go there, yeah, and there's gonna, probably the some ride. Aussie baseball. Quick boat ride. Like that, yeah. right. Nelson's ready to go. Braden Buchanan will bat. This is the final half inning of this game. And takes a strike, 0 and 1. Now let's talk while. Nelson is working here about some of the standouts that we've seen today. I mean, I think offensively, you know, obviously we, we saw some big moments uh, in this one. A couple of guys on, on Team Gold and Maxwell Clark uh, and uh, Aiden Miller certainly showed out well. You always want to see the guys who take the loudest BP also have the loudest games because then they're, then they're just making it easy on you. Uh, but we saw that from Max Clark, obviously roped a double. Uh, Zach Wattis took one of the louder mm -hmm. keys and then obviously hit the home run today. Uh, you talked about Aiden Miller. Uh, there's a bunch of guys who, who have taken, who took good BPs and continue to take good swings in game, even if they weren't necessarily rewarded. Uh, we saw Andrew Wiggins hit a ball hard, uh, even if it was foul. Blake Mitchell, similar. Uh, you want it to be that way. You want it to be this dude really caught my eye in BP and then hit three balls hard in the game. That's when it's it's really making it easy on you. Count goes full. Three and two. And then from the pitching side, I mean, some of what we've seen here that's been you know, really impressive. I mean, we just talked a lot about Christian Rodriguez, um, Duke McCarron, Mac Hewer, all excellent. And you know, I think in the end, Liam Peterson, too, was the guy that maybe had the most projection left uh, out of that quartet of guys. As Nelson walks the leadoff, man. Yeah, I, we talked about it. I thought Peterson was, was excellent uh, in terms of just, a, like you said, projectability standpoint. Uh, we're checking out prospects. We don't necessarily, you know, I don't really care who the best guy is right now. Who's the best guy going to be in 10 years? That's this whole deal. But I thought he's got the makings of, of, of a real premium arm. Well, what's interesting is when you compare it to a guy like Christian Rodriguez, you would say was the best right now. Like Rodriguez, I think there's enough elements there that you look at and, okay, well, with his feel for pitching as he, you know, he probably had the best fastball command of anybody today. You know, that that's a really good building block, and he has present stuff too. And while he's a little bit uh, – smaller for a pitcher i mean it doesn't seem to scare teams away anymore and the nope. fact that he's got a feel for pitching throws a ton of strikes i think that's you know there are a number of teams that kind of build that into their draft model as to how much they want that and so no one dying down the left field line and foul count 
remains 0 and 2 to Braden Buchanan. Pretty so, interesting, interesting look here. Yeah, pretty interesting look here on the mound. Um, got uh, some whip to the arm stroke. Uh, just, you know, he's 90, 91, up to 92 or so. Uh, lots of angle from an extended slot. Fouled away off to the right. And Nelson, who runs well, you can tell he's a good athlete, very coordinated guy. Like you can see it's, the delivery is pretty good for you know, this being his secondary position, too. Obviously has some projection on the body. Oh, hit in the air to center, moving over. And making the play is the center fielder. That's Farney, and that's out number one. Ball was 91 off the barrel. Uh, didn't quite get all of it, got under it a little bit, but still well struck ball, well hit ball on a, on a uh, you know, firm fastball, 90-91, still something notable. Well, Dan had a base hit his first trip. So the Battle of Marylanders from Poolsville and Georgetown Prep. Retends Georgetown Prep as that one is low. It's 1-0. Oh. Then is committed to Virginia. Count now two and zero. Oh. Got him with his Mets helmet on. It's a two-way guy. Roldan is. He's actually a, a primary left-handed pitcher. We'll see him uh, presumably tomorrow throw. But uh, either way, it's a it was a pretty good left-handed swing with some power. We saw that uh, in, in BP. Um, solid athlete plays corner outfield spot will run probably a sub seven i'd imagine he's a pretty solid athlete but uh but yeah most of the most of it for him is on the mound low 90s lefty with good stuff overall plays with canes national last one ruled foul it's two and one it was right on the line Set and the pitch upstairs. It's two and two, three and one, excuse me. Been 89 91 with the fastball for the most part, kind of in that range. Uh, roughly average spin, maybe a touch below that on average. But I uh, uh, haven't been able to see many breaking balls because he has yet to be ahead in the count. Um, haven't seen much of the, the secondary stuff. Called strike on the outside corner, and the count is full. That's an impossible pitch to hit there. And probably a little bit off the plate, but but great angle uh, to the plate from the from the release there. Spotted up well. Catcher did a good job getting his, getting his thumb under it. I don't think he's a real comfortable bat for lefties because even though he starts on the third base side, he is so closed off. And as long as his arm swing is, that's you're never going to see that pitch. Strike three. Can't do I, anything. I mean, no. it's if you're well, then like you could be frustrated walking away, but hang, hang with him, son, because that <laughs> that pitch is. Like, I'm I'm not sure that you ever saw it get to the plate because of how long it, it from where it came. That's a tough look. Two outs. It's super difficult. Uh, it, you know, you hear the you hear people talk about it like, well, it looks like he's throwing it from behind you. That's a perfect example yeah. of that right there. It looks like it's released from, you know, behind your hip. And then there it is, three inches off the black away, being called a strike at 91. Like tough, uh, tough way to do, tough way to make a living as a hitter there. Mateo Cerna fouls the first one off. I think it's been all fastballs here so far. From we had one breaking ball early. Breaking ball. I think we had one breaking ball early. Uh, didn't quite get that much of a look at it. It was called a ball. Just. Uh, kind of working with number one right now when he's in the zone with it it is a very very tough pitch to square up i can see why this has two-way upside at the next level i you know put some strength on him I, I could very well see this being 93 94 out of the bullpen with that angle uh, from the left side with good spin uh, easy to easy to like the upside of this on the mound too well you may have tweaked something there was trying to stretch out a little bit there's the o2 breaking ball breaker. outside yep yeah. Couldn't finish it. Got ahead 0-2. Yeah, this is another example of kind of what we're looking at. That's nearly 2,700 spin. It wasn't a good pitch. But 2,700 spin with arm speed, 
with some traits here. I, that's one of those things where you circle and go, okay, he has the ability to do this. How can we make it so it's it's better, so it's more usable, so it's more effective at, as a bat misser at this level? And sometimes it's grip. Sometimes it's you know release point. Sometimes it's just something as simple as, as getting stronger in the lower half or shortening on the backside of the arm stroke. But either way, like we know he can spin the ball. The data is telling us that. How do we improve it? Uh, how can we get that better? And that's questions that college teams are asking when they're recruiting guys as well as major league teams when they're in the draft room talking about guys with the player dev system and all that but uh, yeah it definitely has some some characteristics here some abilities just uh, not quite pulled together yet Nelson's 3-2 to Cerna on its way runner goes and the pitch is high ball so it will be two men on and an 0-2 count here for Cerna Nelson's going to go back to that High 80s fastball. Try and get out of this inning without any damage. End this first game of the day. Pitch is bounced foul past third. Just past the three hour mark. Not too bad for 10 innings. We try and keep them moving. That's why you see a lot of these rules built in five hitters per inning. And uh, once, you know, once you walk, you can only throw fastballs, et cetera, et cetera. We try and make it so we can simulate as much baseball as humanly possible in a reasonable time frame. Turner just got smoked with that one. Trying to come in with a fastball and got him on the left arm. Same deal here for hit by pitch as there is with a walk. Uh, you'll keep the fastballs here, and now the pitcher can only throw fastballs. Or pardon me, you'll keep the strikes. Pitcher can only throw fastballs. The runner on second got a free base out of that, so. He moves to third. Straight steal home. Lefty on the mound. <laughs> Will we see it? Boy, that'd be a pretty incredible move. <laughs> Swing and a miss. That ends the game. And the final, uh, Team Black defeats Team Vegas Gold 5-4. to four. It's like we saw some really good performances both at the plate with some power. We saw some good pitching. It's a good opening game for the 2022 Perfect Game National Showcase. No doubt, Mike. I, I think you hit the nail on the head. We saw quite a bit of good pitching, uh, some command guys, some stuff guys, some projection guys, a good mix of kind of all the archetypes. And we saw some dudes at the plate, too. We saw a good, good amount of power. We saw some guys who maybe aren't power guys but showed off the hit ability. We saw a lot of speed on the base paths. We saw some good defense, too. I thought, oh, with you, man. Great first first game of the national. And we've got another one coming up in just a little while. Stay tuned to Perfect Game TV for more from the National Showcase. Up next, learn more about Perfect Game's trip through Czechoslovakia and what they're doing to bring baseball to Eastern Europe. For Brian Skowski, I'm Mike Farron. Back with more from Tropicana Field in just a bit here on Perfect Game TV. Baseball. Domestically, it's also doing its very best to grow it internationally. And the impact can be felt. It's, it's interesting when you think about Australia, we understand that. You think about the Caribbean, we understand that. But then you start thinking about Europe and, and more specifically Eastern Europe, where PG since 2018 has been holding large events, tournaments and showcases, the series combines over there as well. And a product uh, of that, though this is a man who loves the game like crazy, it's not like PG taught him the game. He's passionate. It's, it's family love for the game. Uh, Michael Kovala joins us from the Czech Republic. Michal, if I'm going to say it at home for you, I, I know that's not exactly 100% uh, on, but he is, he is from Ostrava in the Czech Republic. And at the end of this conversation, by the way, he is going to commit to play college baseball right here in the United States. My friend, thanks for spending time with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Mr. Sutan, and I have a hello to everyone who's listening. How did I do on that first name, by the way, if I were to say it in the Czech Republic? Did I do okay? You did amazing, actually. You're one of the very low amount of people who can pronounce it correctly. <laughs> well, I still have your family's name, so hang with me. I'm sure I'll step out of, out of line very, very soon. <laughs> Help me understand your love for baseball. When we, you know, are a little bit innocent to understanding baseball outside of the United States or North America, we all, I think, need to learn the passion that there is for the game in a place like the Czech Republic. Where did your love for this sport come from? I think it all started with my, like, my dad played baseball his whole life. My brother got brought into it through my dad. 
and me as the second child, I just got into it because my brother played it, my dad played it, and we just spent the time together around around the sport. And I think that was the most important thing for me when I was young because I did the sport with the people I love, and that was how I got so passionate about the game. You got Petra and your brother Tomas, uh, obviously both guys and that you were able to play the game with. Uh, help me understand what youth baseball was like for you. You know, what were the fields like? What were the leagues like? Uh, I'm sure you're not alone. I'm sure you just didn't play with three people, dad and brother. So help me understand the landscape of youth baseball in the Czech Republic. I think it's very, very tight circle of people, maybe let's say five, 6,000 people total who play baseball in Czech Republic. And in the youth competitions, it's always like, either t-ball or coach ball until you get to like 12u or 13u where there's actually pitchers thrown uh in the games but it's very i'd say very friendly competition and everybody's trying to play the game uh just to play the game because there's no like professional future in czech republic so everybody's just enjoying their time on the field so help me understand an event, and I, I'm sure with your skill set, and we'll share with everyone where you're going at the end, but you played in the European Championships as a 12U. I'm guessing at that point, and even a little bit before, you started thinking to yourself, I think I can play this game beyond high school or beyond prep baseball. However it's described in the Czech Republic, describe to me the European Championships at the 12U age group and, and what that meant for your journey as a baseball player. Yeah, so the 12U champ European Championship was held in Poland, and that was like the biggest tournament for me at the time because as a Czech uh, national baseball player, you can only go to like European Championship and then a World Championship, and you can qualify to the World Cup uh, by going in the finals of the European Championship. So only two countries from Europe go to the World Cup. And uh, my first European Championship, we managed to win the whole thing against Russia in the finals, where we won 5-3. And But I'd say the biggest game was in the semifinals, where we played France. And it was a tight game, all game. And in the last inning, they uh, changed their pitchers, and we scored like 16 runs <laughs> because they couldn't throw a strike. So, yeah, that was like the big first biggest event for me. So for you, um, watching and consuming the game of baseball, the world is smaller. You know, most of us have one of these if we're fortunate, uh, or a computer. I'm guessing if I'm looking globally, consuming the game of baseball, how do you consume the game of baseball? Are there players, you know, whether it be at the high 17, 18 U level, the United States, uh, college, or even major leaguers that you love to watch that kind of inspired you to play this game? And if so, who are those players? Yeah, I mean, the people that inspired me the most are usually the ones like Dustin Pedroia, Marcus Stroman, because they're not the typical 6'2", six, 6'3", six, six, 215-pound guys who just, like, hit the ball hard and throw the ball hard because they have the facilities for that because their body's so strong. But they managed to stay in the league for a long time uh, even though they're short and that kind of inspired me because my mom always used to tell me that it's not about the size it's about the size of your heart and I and I carried that with me or I will carry it with me for the rest of my life because I think that's very important so interesting so how tall are you <laughs> I like to say I'm 5'11 and with cleats I'm six feet but I, I I'll keep it at 5'11 I like it. I like it. I like it. That's perfect. Hey, an arm like that can, can that can get up 93, 94 miles an hour. You're exactly right. Stroh's a Stro who is, you know, below that certainly yeah. in stature. That's that's a wonderful guy to look up to in Dustin Pedroia. You, of course, were a second baseman as well um, and, and played certainly back in the Czech Republic second base. Uh, for you, it, it's interesting. You made a very bold decision. So we're in the middle of a pandemic in 2020. The world's crazy. And I mean the world, not just the United States. The world's crazy. And about six months into that, you make a decision. I'm going to go to the United States. I'm going to chase a college scholarship. Heck, maybe a draft pick at some point. Who knows? But I'm going to the United States. i got to find a place to play in the middle of a pandemic. And you did it. You ended up at Combine Academy in North Carolina. 
I'd love to know how you reached that point to make that decision what all went into it. It was such a long journey to like making that decision and a lot of things went down that like I guess it was meant to be. So it all started with so in Czech we always bring in like imports from America to like make the league better. And the import from my team knew uh, a guy who just started a summer summer team in Arizona, Med Balo. He, pl- he plays with nomadic baseball, and I went with them to Arizona to play in, like, one tournament for 14 days. And I did really good. And the head coach, Matt Bailo, got me in contact with Adam Aiken, who flew all the way to Spain to see me play and where he recruited me. And, well, basically, he gave us the offer to play for Combine Academy. And I told my mom, told my dad, I was like, Mom, I know this is going to sound crazy, but... I basically just got offered to play in America. I, I actually talked to my dad first because I know my mom would freak out. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I told him the message, and then we got home and figured out all the paperwork, all the money and stuff, and it worked out. Then I flew to North Carolina September 2020. It was crazy. And that's that had to be hard. You've mentioned your mom several times, your mom Pavlina who's uh, a big part of your heart, I can tell. That had to be hard to say goodbye to your family, understanding that they would visit. There are telephones, there is cell phones, but that had to be hard. It was, it definitely was, because I was only 16 at the time, and it was basically a whole new world for me. I had to do everything myself, cook for myself, like make food for myself, do laundry and all that stuff. And it took a while to like adjust to that lifestyle, but looking back at it now, I'm... I'm glad that I made the decision because it made me a better human, I think, I believe. Yeah, building courage. It's it's not just like going maybe state to state. You're, you're traveling around the globe to chase your passion. And, and uh, here in just a minute, we're going to share with people where it's taking you, your passion. But I, I'd like to uh, kind of step outside of my company guy role and almost be a journalist when I ask you this. Um, Perfect Games presence in the Czech Republic, Perfect Games presence in Europe, Australia, um, were you aware of Perfect Game before going to an event? And how much did being a part of those events, you know, the 15U Euro Classic in 2018, how much did that help your confidence, kind of where you stood amongst the athletes in North America? So back in 2018, I had 18, I had no clue what Perfect Game is. And I, my dad just told me there's a tournament in Brno. I was like, okay, look, put me in. There's more games for me. It's good. So we played the tournament, and then I figured I would – perfect game is and i got my first uh write-up on the perfect game site and i like see, seen my like profile on perfect game and it all looks so cool and then i got into it and then i start following perfect game on like social media and i kind of figured out what it is and yeah i knew like i need to be part of this if i want to go get recruited so that's what i shared with my parents and i guess we made it work somehow wow that's incredible. The, the, the role, I think that's the role they're trying to play, if I'm to understand it, to grow the game with, with people like you. Dreamers. I mean, dreamers with the support of your family that, that take it on. So you have played and traveled around and played for FTB, the travel ball, Florida Travel Baseball, the Phillies national team. And um, last couple of summers, you, you've taken on big-time events. What have those meant to you? Now you know all about PG, and you've played in the events, and yeah, you've been an all-tournament team member. You played in the Academy's High School Showdown twice, not just once, but twice down in Hoover and then in Panama City Beach. You touched 93 this summer, and I'm sure you're going to climb from, from there. What have those experiences been like for you? It's been amazing, and I must thank FTB so much because they brought me all into this, and I didn't really know that summer ball has such a big impact on recruiting, and they brought me into it, and I must say like, I'm really thankful because they helped me tons. And... Yeah, it was like the first summer uh, last year. I basically spent with my teammate, Anthony Saliba. They brought me into their household. They fed me. They they basically took care of me. And I'm so thankful for them, too, because they helped me a lot. And then this summer, I stayed the whole summer with Tim Rock. Big shout out to Tim Rock because he let me stay in his house. He let me annoy him all the time. So, yeah, I'm very, I'm very glad that FTB took care of me. And I'm glad that I got under their wing because they helped me tons. Hey, hey, I'm curious. Is your home a bilingual home? No. Uh, well, my brother speaks. My brother speaks a very, very good English. 
my dad speaks just a little bit of English and my mom doesn't speak no English. <laughs> Taking on the English language, you're, you're killing it. Like, it's amazing. Um, Thank you. How quick was your learning curve in that? Because I, it seems like something that was very important to you to do quickly. Uh, well, I started learning English in the second grade in Czech Republic because that's when you start with the English language. And then, of course, I told my mom and my dad, I was always telling them, how, telling them how I want to play in America. So they paid for my English courses outside of school. So I attended those for like three, four years. So that helped me tons. And then, of course, video games. I learned the most from video games, of course. <laughs> nice. Any baseball video games you enjoy playing? The show. The show, of course. Who doesn't? Very good. I always send it. I always send in my resume tape to be the voice of that. But you know, Matt Beskersen beats me out every <laughs> single time, man. Every single time. All right, let's do this. Talented right-handed pitcher from the Czech Republic, uh, Mikhail Kovala is going to t commit to play college baseball. Take it away. You have the floor. I've decided to commit to Georgia Tech University. Wow, that's exciting. Explain to me how you found them and they found you. Beautiful campus, beautiful ballpark in downtown Atlanta. How did they find you? How did you find them? Uh, it started this year at the beginning of the high school season when Combine played P27 Academy and there was a lot of scouts. And I think the scout told uh, the pitching coach, Danny Borrell, I believe, and he contacted me. So we stayed in contact and then throughout this summer he came to see me pitch and... I guess he I guess he liked what he saw and then he got me on the campus. I, I had chills walking through the whole campus. It was so beautiful, especially for me as a kid from Czech Republic. Like it was just amazing. So I told my parents we figured it all out and I committed. Wow, congratulations. Here's the other thing the parent in me thinks that means that you've taken care of your business in the classroom because it's a university with high expectations. Uh, English, your second language, but very, very good grades and, and ready to take on a, a pretty tough academic, uh, you know, a really tough academic challenge. Is that part of it as well? Yeah, I've been I've been trying to keep my grades uh, around the A or Bs because I know you can obviously get like academic scholarship and stuff like that. And especially if you want to go to Georgia Tech, they're not going to let you in if you can, if you don't have the grades. So I knew I knew what it took and I. Like I stayed active in the classrooms and I did all my work. So I had mostly A's, B's and kept my GPA around 3.8, close to 4 almost. So, yeah. Mikhail, I, I am uh, thrilled for you. Congratulations, Michael, Thank you. as I'm sure a lot of your teammates will call you in the States. Uh, I am thrilled for you. It's a wonderful story that you shared with us. I can't wait to see you in person. Um, we're going to stay in touch with you throughout this year. But congratulations on your commitment to Georgia Tech from the Czech Republic. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Welcome back to Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, Florida, home of the Tampa Bay Rays and home for the 2022 Perfect Game National Showcase. As game two begins tonight between the Columbia Blue and the Green Team. Starting for the Columbia Blue is the uh, young left-hander Brian Sikowski. Uh, not, not... Brian Sikowski took a twist. <laughs> Brian Sikowski is with me. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, tell us a little bit about the left-hander Toby Twist. Yeah, he's a two-way guy uh, from Bakersfield, California, outfielder, left-handed hitter, as well as obviously left-handed pitcher. He's an Oregon commit. Uh, good size, 6'2", 200. Ran sub-7 earlier in the 60. Uh, took a pretty solid BP from the left side of the plate. Things to like there positionally. Uh, but on the mound, I, I'm looking forward to seeing him. We haven't seen him in a – I haven't personally seen him on the, on the mound in quite some time. Uh, this was a guy who kind of burst onto the radar at a younger age, was really good as a sophomore a couple years ago. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing what it looks like now. But he definitely has performed with the bat, hit 400 last week at, at the WWBA, a notoriously difficult tournament. Um, and obviously here, we're about to see him on the mound. And a good look at the left-hander twist uh, as he will start Ethan Robinson. Uh, a late uh, change for the green team will start for them. Tennessee is committed to Vanderbilt. So he will start for uh, Team Green. Uh, our first game today went 10 innings. This one is scheduled to go 10 as well. Uh, and, or excuse me, this one is scheduled to go yeah, 10 as well. That's why. You know, it's really easy to count. Mm -hmm. That's always a moving target with the expected uh, innings totals and showcase games. Like It's pretty much every weekend at regional showcases that we schedule them for a 10 inning game day one, a 10 inning game day two. And by day two, there's always, you know, the kid who is a shortstop who said, yeah, I'm also a pitcher who decides, you know what, Mike, would rather not throw. And usually those games end up being only seven or eight innings. And it's the same thing here. It just depends totally on how many arms we have, how many arms need to throw, how many arms we have available. Uh, and 10 is usually the, the round number that we shoot for. All right, we are set to go here for game two of the day. Dylan Cup from Cedartown, Georgia. Top 10 prospect in this class committed to Mississippi State. Takes a first pitch fastball high, and we are underway with our final game of the day here from Tropicana Field. Cup, uh, top 10 player in the country. A, a lot of that on the strength of his glove. He's an extremely talented defender in the middle infield at shortstop. Some of the smoother actions you'll see. Yeah, you see the ball there getting away from the shortstop, Carl Schmidt, from the Texas A&M commit. Struggling on a ball that it looked like you may have gotten a little bit close to him. Tough to read that soft liner off the bat. Yeah, definitely. And, and it, it's true hops here. Obviously, we're playing in a, at a major league ballpark. There's no hop difficulty here. But reading it off the bat, it was kind of a bigger swing that maybe left the bat softer than it would have indicated. Uh, obviously, we 
see that happen in the outfield all the time. Guys fooled on big swings, but uh, can it happen similarly in the infield? So we're going to miss a pitch in the dirt by Dylan Head from Glenwood, Illinois. That allows the runner to go to second. He had an impressive batting practice today. He's one of the more exciting players in the country, period, hard stop. Uh, 80 runner uh, just last, a couple weeks ago in Hoover. He had a game where he went over three with three ground outs, ground outs, but they were all sub four times down the line, so it really didn't matter. Um, has some power. We saw that MVP in a home run last year in Jupiter as an underclassman. Uh, was a Michigan commit who is now a Clemson commit, having followed Coach Backage to Clemson. And uh, for my money, one of the best players in the country. Just the, the excitement, the tools, the explosiveness that he plays with. Very exciting. You can see there just outside the top 50 on the on the perfect game list. Cup goes. He got a great jump in the throw to third, not nearly in time. Dylan Cup stole that one on Toby Twist easily. He was off and running and on first movement there. Cup's one of the, we talk about him defensively, he's one of the more instinctual players in the country too. Just uh, You see it in the base running, the, the jumps he's able to get on guys. And uh, Twist has only been out there for like five or six pitches it seems like. And uh, Cup already has him timed up. He's already got him figured out. So just the, the type of, of heady base runner he is. 3-1 is a strike outside corner. It's probably the best located fastball we've seen so far from Toby Twist. Man, Twist sitting in, the, sitting in the 89-90 range so far with the fastball. One head serves that one fouled on the left field line. Do it again. Need to see someone hit one into the raised tank. It's going to take quite a poke to yeah. get there. I mean, that's, a, that's about a 420-foot shot, I think. No problem. It's well over. Kids four. are strong now, man. No problem. Pitched ahead is ruled to second. That'll get a run home, underhanded to first by the second baseman. Boy, what an impressive time! It's seventy uh, style run time down the line as Kim makes a nice play at second base. Yeah, head head, four oh one down the line there, and that was with kind of a slow get out, uh, even as the swing kind of propelled him around. Um, that's 70 speed on the, on the 20 to 80 scale, four flat for a left-handed hitter down the line. Three nine would be 80, have seen him do that many times. Ty Pete bats, he pops one up on the left field line and that one will slice foul and out of play. Pete's a, a really interesting two-way guy, uh, obviously left-handed bat, middle infielder, uh, maybe a third baseman long-term, whatever it is. But really like the left-handed swing. He's an athletic guy. It's, it's also pretty interesting on the mound. I'm sure we'll see him pitch this week at some point. Another guy who's in the top 40 in this class. As the 0-1. That's a breaking ball strike. That's a good one there for Twist. It's one of nothing at two. Yeah, more of a true curveball, uh, kind of mid-70s. He's thrown a couple at 77, 78, but... Uh, mostly mid 70s there. Solid spin on the pitch, as you're seeing now on, on the broadcast screen. Uh, comfortable throwing it, too. He's started the at bat with it here. Uh, he kind of found feel for it against Dylan Head, and now he's using it to his advantage. Swing and a miss on a fastball as he rushed that one by Pete, and that's out number two. Yeah, it's just, just a well located fastball here, Mike. Like, that's just that's on the outer black. It's belt high. Maybe you want it not in that vertical orientation, but either way, it's a pitch on the outer third. Uh, good spot for it. Two outs for Nicholas Sanders, the Texas commit from Waco. Another guy who took a really loud BP earlier. Yeah, I, had, I believe I had him circled in my card as one of the guys who was pulling double time there. He had a, several long home runs straight away left. He's got, he might have the best chance of, of finding the concourse in left field here of anybody today. And it wasn't just, you know, hitting balls really hard, carrying out of here. It made backspin, lofted high shots, just a, a, a pretty special round here. And there, there have been some special BP rounds over the years that, you know, Dom Hellman last year hit like eight of his ten out or something ridiculous like that. But, uh, yeah, to, to generate that much backspin, that much loft on it, that's – there's a shot here. Yeah. Up the alley, and that's going to be extra bases and one hop up against the wall. Nicholas Sanders around second, and he'll shut it down there with a two-out double. That one almost sounded like it was off the end of the bat, too. Exit velocity just under 100 miles an hour, but I think it speaks to his strength. Yeah, we'll see it on the, uh, the replay here. Yeah, he might have gotten that one a little bit more off the end of the bat, but 
and I still hit it 98 miles an hour to like the deepest part of the ballpark on one hop. Remarkable strength. You know, I think if you notice in that replay, you can see he takes a really aggressive swing, and even his takes were aggressive. Like he is ready to do damage at the plate. It's off talked about less executed but the the yes 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 no mentality of, of how you're supposed to take pitches at the plate and, uh, it's easy for people to say but that is it in action right there nolan souza bats he's committed to arkansas he is from honolulu hawaii great body good left-handed power a uh, pretty good athlete for his size he took a he had some loud swings earlier in bp as well the, the green team may have taken the best overall batting practice of uh, these four teams that we've seen today there was the loudest contact most consistently from this bunch no doubt and it was sometimes it's uh you know when you get locked in and you're taking too many notes that means it's kind of been a little boring mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden when you look down and you haven't written much in the last five or six minutes it's uh, okay <laughs> this has been fun now it swings and misses the breaking ball there from the lefty twist it's one and two He's locating away well. Stark contrast to Hewer of last game, who could really only locate arm side. Uh, Twist is pretty much predominantly locating glove side. We've seen that fastball and breaking ball from him so far. Lefty's pitch, call strike three. Boy, he painted that fastball perfectly on the outside corner and it ends the inning. Green team gets a run on the RBI ground out. One to nothing as we go to the bottom of the first. Twist getting out of that without any further damage. A look at a good tight breaking ball there to Dylan Head. You're seeing the ability he has when he's able to command on that side of the plate. Uh, the fastball has good carry in that direction. Uh, the curveball was sharp. He found it as the inning went on. Uh, I know he gave up a little bit of hard contact there, but still pretty easy to like the fastball curveball combination when he's able to command it. Team Columbia Blue dugout as they get ready to hit, and they will face Ethan Robinson, who makes the start. Robinson, a Vanderbilt commit. He's got a couple of uh, pretty solid off speed pitches with a good breaking ball and a changeup as well, but not the most overpowering guy in this class. Yeah, Robinson's been on the radar for quite a while. Uh, he was a guy who at 14U or, or maybe whatever it was, 14U was, was throwing 90, 91 miles an hour, 6'3", long body. Um, hasn't uh, progressed in terms of velocity much since then. Uh, still can throw a good slider. It's obviously a, a really good body, like we're talking about, long and lean and projectable. Um, and we've seen him perform a lot over the years. Six foot five, 216 pounder. Antioch, Tennessee. This is the top 75 high school prospects in the country. Yeah, he's, uh, he's got some feel to pitch. I'd imagine we'll see some uh, pitching backwards here from Robinson. He's comfortable doing that. We've seen him do that before. Um, but on the whole, yeah, just a, a big bodied righty uh, who's been performing in a big way for a long time in PG events and otherwise. And, uh, Vandy liked what they saw early, jumped on it, and, and now here we are. A lot of West Coast participants on this Columbia Blue team, and Roman Martin, who's a UCLA commit, will lead off. He is a top 30 prospect in the upcoming draft, right-handed hitting infielder. First pitch up over his head with a breaking ball. It's 1-0. Now, we were talking about the green team having a great BP. Martin had one of the loudest ones for this Columbia Blue squad. Yeah, it's kind of an unassuming BP. You, you know, you don't kind of expect him to hit balls as far as he's hitting them. And um, he does it uh, with more of a, it's not like a big drawn back, separated, lifted swing. He kind of just hits balls really hard on a line. Um, it's, it's more compact in that sense, but uh, was driving some balls out to the pole side, consistent hard barrel too. Yeah, he's, he's definitely one of the better BPs from earlier. Takes inside with the breaking ball, it's two and one. This is the final game of the day. These two teams will play again tomorrow morning. As the four teams have played today, will play tomorrow morning, and then their time at, at Perfect Game National will be over, and we'll be on to workouts tomorrow afternoon. Martin hits that one up the alley in right center. It's a long run, and making a sliding attempt 
the outfielders can't get it. It'll roll away onto the warning track, and Martin will be at third base with a triple to start the bottom of the first. Just a, a really good piece of hitting. That's Roman Martin in a nutshell. 93 mile an hour exit velo on a, on a pitch uh, middle away that he was able to drive into that gap. Um, maybe a play that should have been made by someone, whatever, really tough play as it is, uh, and an impressive piece of hitting. Yeah, Latouris Murray, I believe the center fielder there, uh, trying to come over and make the play. Luca Reyes in right. And, you, know, you wonder, again, this is a showcase event, right? It's a little bit like an all-star team. Those guys probably haven't played around each other very much, and communication might be a little bit different. Um, in, during the regular travel ball season. It's uh, Dean West. It's definitely not as easy as people may think it is. Like, it's not a, it's not as simple as, well, someone needs to yell, I got it. You know, like, that's not the case when you come, when it comes to, like, tracking a ball like that down in a gap in a big league stadium with two high-performance athletes. It's not quite that simple. So, yeah, there is definitely something to be said for having not played together. Maybe they don't know each other's range as well as they otherwise would. Maybe that's a ball that Murray automatically is getting because of who he's played with before or vice versa in right field. But there's definitely more to it than simply someone needs to yell, I got it. Dean West batting takes outside. It's two and one. West, another UCLA commit. In fact, I'm assuming that the Columbia blue uh, color for this team is because there are seven UCLA commits. <laughs> on this roster so you got to get as close to the Bruin colors as you can we made it easy on them so they can still wear the jerseys once they get to campus <laughs> yeah that. it's uh, it's about a you know you, you can't really wear anything that's not team color when you're a college athlete right yeah, so what do you do for the easy. Oregon guy like that's you know well that's Toby easy. Twist isn't gonna be is happy <laughs> that's true they don't have quite the same um uh I guess wardrobe for baseball that they do for, for football. So, what is it? Only like ninety-seven combinations? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's ninety-five. When you have more jersey combos, then it's possible for you to play <laughs> games in a year. That's something. Yeah, but the thing is, you got to look good. That's absolutely. I mean, I it's you got to look good around campus. You got to look good when you're running to grab something to eat. St. Mary's debuted all blacks this year, and they were sensational. Down the stretch, they went more traditional, the white the script, but uh, the the blacks they wore earlier in the season, it was kind of like a um, intimidator display getting off the bus, you know what I mean? It, it was mm -hmm. fun to watch, but I like it. I love the alternate unis. I love the, the colors of college baseball in that sense. It's, it's uh, I like the creativity that comes with it. Tarson McIntyre will be the runner at first as with the walk, the count will reset to... 0-2 oh, for West. West listed at 5-9. Got a little something bothering him in the helmet, it looks like. West, a really good player. Uh, obviously, left-handed bat that you're looking at here. Um, good athlete. Has more power than, than maybe you'd think. He showed that off in BP. That's probably a base hit. Probably. Ooh, nice play by the second baseman. Ranging back to glove that one for out number one. Still getting used to the angles up here, Mike. Still getting well, that's a little higher up, so that's E.J. Ewing, who is a really fine infielder, who's playing second base. It, yeah, we were talking about guys that had good batting practices. Uh, Gavin Grahovic from Orange, California, stands in. Top 20 prospect in this PG class, but... Ewing had one of the more impressive infield, just in terms of his hands, range. Runner goes, that one on the ground to third. The only play will be to first, and a one-hop throw. Nice scoop made at first base. Uh, that's by Jackson McKenzie for round number two as the run scores to tie the game, and runner at first, safe at second. Yeah, kind of all you can do there. Runner takes off from first base. Uh, not going to be able to turn it over. He's already there. Not a play you're going to throw home on. Uh, smart to just be able to, to understand, like, all right, I just got to go to first here. And then even better on the first baseman to save him. Trenton Lape, the third baseman, making that play and making the smart decision. Speaking of loud BPs from earlier. Ryder Helfrick batting from Discovery Bay, California. There's a strike. Arkansas will lead to a mound meeting here. We'll cross up. 
Robinson does like to throw multiple pitches, as we've seen already. Uh, he likes to pitch backwards, so conceivable that they might not have been on the same page quite there, quite yet. Righty. Dumb set and the pitch. Misses outside. Slow breaking ball. It's one and one. It's been sitting 87, 88 for the most part with the fastball. A curveball we've seen anywhere from 71 up to 75. Change up 77, 79. Uh, as we've seen, will throw off speed pitches early, will throw off speed pitches multiple times in a row. Pitch bounces away. We'll make it to third now. Well, you can understand why you would think with Robinson that there's some projection there. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, he's 6'5", he's only listed at 215, he's got a chance to fill out. And you wonder if a couple of tweaks with Vanderbilt, the success that they've had with pitching, if there's a couple things that they see right away that might be able to unlock a little bit more in that, that velocity. No question. And he's got, like we talked about, he's got the body frame to do it. Um, you can see maybe he kind of opens up that front hip a little bit early as he comes downhill. It's mostly directional, but opening up that early can kind of lose some of your power base as you, as you get into your drive working downhill. Um, some length to the arm stroke on the backside might have something to do with it too, the timing of it all. But there's, there's definitely some tweaks that could be made, uh, and he's got the, the frame to maximize those tweaks. Yeah, for sure. You can see where he could really fill out both his upper and lower half. So there's a line drive base hit back through the middle for Helfrich, and it gives Columbia Blue a 2-1 lead. Helfrich hustling for second, and he's in there with a head first dive. Smart base running, taking advantage of that ball at center field, and Helfrich hustling all the way has two bases. It's a smart play. I, that's really the only way to put it. 92 mile an hour exit velo, standard line drive single up the middle. Uh, just kind of not a lot of uh, uh, quickness in, in terms of getting it back into the back into the infield here. It was hitting a spot where the center fielder had to move quite a bit for it. Just lots of factors at play there, and he never stopped. I was watching him around first because I was getting his time. And he took maybe one small hesitation step and was off for a second. You know, Helfrich's listed as a catcher, and he didn't move like a catcher in that. I mean, that was very, very athletic as Nolan Stevens stands in. Mississippi State is his potential future. He is a top 30 prospect in this 2023 class for perfect game as he takes a strike at 88. It's the new age of catcher. You have to be athletic. Mm -hmm. Guys throw too hard and too gross uh, and too, you know, not in the strike zone for you to not be able to move back there with twitch and suddenness. And uh, you have to be athletic to be a catcher now. Bouncer foul. The days of Jose Molina, who caught here in this ballpark for a long time, are probably largely behind us. Mm -hmm. It was pretty impressive. I mean, both heads up base running in and speed to get to that spot. He hit a second gear around the bag there for sure. It wasn't a bad time, too. I think I had the turn time at, at 4-7 or something like that, which, which is totally fine. Um, but, yeah, it just. That one gets away, and he'll move to third. Third. may have been a little bit of a cross-up, too, again, as it looked like they were having trouble getting on the same page. That's the Alex Sosa, I believe, is the catcher. And the count one and two here to Nolan Stevens. Left handed hitting first baseman waits. And the pitch. Outside, it's two and two. Stevens listed at 6'3", 215. Physical left-handed hitter with power, uh, has some some hit tool to him, has some ability to, to manipulate the barrel. Um, just a you know one of those left-handed power projection guys that uh, that has now juice, but still has some frame to fill out maybe a little bit there um, with more consistent consistency in terms of the path. Just really easy to envision him having a, a lot of power. Rounder towards the middle to his left, the shortstop has it, slings to first in time to get him. It's a pretty nice play. Cooper Pratt. 
Yeah, Cooper Pratt is the shortstop. The nice play to his left to end that inning. The uh, Columbia Blue team scores twice. We played one. They lead two to one. You get a little bit of a look at Ethan Robinson here. You can see uh, some command on both sides of the plate there with the fastball. Uh, we saw multiple pitches. Um, obviously, we talked about the breaking ball. We talked about the changeup. We talked about the 6-5 frame. Uh, lots to like there still about, about Robinson moving forward in terms of projecting him towards college. Uh, some, some tweaks away from potentially unlocking some more stuff there. What better place to do it than Vanderbilt? Do you think he's sharing hair care tips with Dylan Cup right now, who's sporting that tremendous mohawk? Yes, absolutely. I think they're probably uh, trying to achieve similar goals uh, in their hair care and uh, are, are shooting for, for similar similar end games, for sure, certainly. That's a, that's as impressive a Mohawk as I've ever seen on a high school student. I mean, that's some – he's got real flow. Yeah. You know? it's like not, that's, and plus, it's a, it's redhead. Like, everything going on there, I'm about. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, definitely notable. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure that I can pull it off. But speaking of great hair, not me. I was, I was, I was sorry about Toby Twist. He has terrific <laughs> hair, too. <laughs> More full-bodied, uh, not talking about the hair, I guess, but 2-1 Columbia Blue is twist back to work for the second inning. And he will face E.J. Ewing to lead things off. Another left-handed hitter. We'll see if Twist wants to attack the same way he attacked the lefties in the first inning. That fastball and curveball away, trying to spot up on that outer edge. Ewing headed to Alabama. Six foot tall, 160 pound middle infielder. With more power than you'd think. Uh, hit a ball or two out during BP. It's just really fast hands, really good bat speed. Really good bat speed as he chops that one foul up first. That is a quick bat. from Ohio. Good pitch. That one misses down low. I'll see him play quite a bit next spring, of course. Uh, probably on multiple 30-degree days. A real sense of their commitment to the game when they're playing in the freezing cold in the Midwest. Scouting Outside. in the Midwest, baby. There's nothing quite like it. Two and one, they count to Ewing. Swing and a miss. Fastball, it's two and two. It's a well-located pitch there. We talked about it. He's trying to stay away from these lefties. And, uh, the fastball has enough carry to where that makes it possible. That's a good spot there. Yeah, he is really located well to his glove side away from lefties so far. That's where strikeouts have come, and a number of them have been looking. Yeah, that's just a perfect spot. It's on the outer edge. It's at the hollow of the knee. It's absolutely a strike, and that's just a perfect pitch in a perfect spot. Cooper Pratt I made that nice play at shortstop to end the first inning. Stands in, right-handed hitter, committed to the national champion, Mississippi Rebels. Foul back. How about that, Rob? Congratulations to Mike Bianco, his staff, great Mike Clement, their hitting coach. Terrific job, 7-14 and 14 in conference play at one point. Rally did not just make the tournament as one of the last four teams in, but only lost once in the postseason. Get hot. Get hot at the right time. Let's see Pratt, a top 100 prospect as he takes a strike. It's one and two. I should say he's a top 100 on perfect games list. It does not include college players, but he's a... a Big infielder at 6'4 and nearly 200 pounds. And there's quite a bit of juice there, too, as well as projection for more. It's a, uh, like a talented, big athlete who, you know, it's too early to say, but talk about a guy who might be able to play shortstop and might have really, really big juice. It's a, a really enticing profile. It's an on the ground to short. To his left, the shortstop has it. Throws offline to first, and no tag, says the first base umpire. It was a nice play by Nolan Stevens coming off the bag and trying to get the tag on Pratt, but he's called safe at first. Obviously a ground ball to short there, but that was 96 off the bat. We talked about 
the, the power that he possesses and the body type that projects for more and more as he continues to get stronger. It uh, uh, has the makings of something really, really loud. Carl Schmidt is the shortstop right now for the Columbia Blue team. First pitch to Michael Graziano from Naples, Florida, misses low. It's one, uh, excuse me, that was called a strike, it's 0-1. Schmidt there. Fouled away down the right field line and out of play. It's 0-2. That more of a sinker there. You know, that had more of that two seam, some sink down in the bottom of the zone. And that, uh, perhaps notably, commanded arm side. Mm -hmm. We talked about his propensity to be glove side so far. Here comes the 0-2. Called strike three, backdoor breaking ball, got him. That's out number two. Home plate umpire was ready to call that a strike and looked like before it even left his hand. He, he knew what was coming. And that's a pretty good pitch. It's it's maybe a little bit off the plate, it comes back. It's, it's mostly vertical in terms of its break, but there was a little horizontal that brought it back some, but that's where he wanted to put it. Uh, dare the umpire not to call it a strike in that, in that scenario, and he did. Luca Reyes, the right fielder, stands in. The first pitch is a ball with a breaking ball and an easy stolen base for Cooper Pratt. Nothing like a breaking ball down to run on. Especially one that's into the hitter. It's now the time run in scoring position. The pitch to Reyes misses outside. It's 2 0. Oh. Reyes from Teaneck, New Jersey. He's committed to Miami. Six foot two, 185 pound. Outfielder from Bergen Catholic, swing and a miss. It's a good firm fastball at 88 there, just in a challenge spot. Now with two strikes, uh, I'll be interested to see, or excuse me, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Were we one and one, Mike? I think so. Got a couple different, uh, couple different numbers spitting at me here. Trying to keep track of all of the relevant information is a uh, challenge at the showcase events because players are you know, not familiar to most of us who are not, and for you obviously you see them all the time, but for the rest of us it's to keep track of that height, weight, where they rank, then also what the count is. <laughs> you know, the important <laughs> things, that one misses it, it's two and one now. Back at the runner, a second look from Twist in the pitch upstairs. It's three and one. Velo's been pretty steady for Twist. He's still 87, 88 for the most part. Uh, breaking ball's been 74, 75. Uh, we've seen the occasional changeup, but yeah, kind of pretty much holding this stuff so far. Runner here, I guess that was ball four technically, so count on I never should have uh, uh, discounted what our production crew knew which was that that was ball four the 01 has popped foul now as runner came out that's Ewing and the count now nothing in two again this is a scenario where twist can only throw fastballs Reyes knows he can only throw fastballs I would expect there to be a good swing gotten off here at the very least Runners get their lead. And the 0-2. It's jammed, it pops it up. And the pitcher twist makes the catch near the foul line and the inning is over. It's an error a walk, but a scoreless frame for Toby Twist who gives him just one in his two innings of work. Look at the lefty here again. Saw some good things from Twist there. Uh, we talked about in, in the first inning his ability to command at glove side. There you're seeing the ability to command it at the fastball and the breaking ball arm side, uh, something we definitely wanted to see from him. But um, the, the command of both sides of the plate, the fastball quality, mostly upper 80s, touched 90 a handful of times, uh, and good feel for that breaking ball. Oregon commit with two-way upside. Easy to see him being a very good college pitcher uh, in, in the not-so-distant future. Yeah, athletic, repeatable delivery, it looks like. A little bit of a feel for pitching. He's got two present pitches right now that would work at the collegiate level. Yeah, I can, I'm with you. I think he would be a uh, nice choice in the Pac-12. The 
Morgan Schmidt. Day is done on the mound. And Ethan Robinson begins his second inning of work. Six five ready, gave up a couple of runs in the first. This is our final game of the day. Our coverage continues tomorrow morning. This green team will uh, take on Team Black, and then Team Vegas Gold will face Team Columbia Blue. Tomorrow afternoon, workouts, and we'll be back with those as well. We get 60 yard dash times. And Long week, but a fun week. Yeah, it absolutely, absolutely is. is. It's been the first time I was trying to think. I was talking to Vinny Servino earlier. I think 2017 may have been the last time I was at the National Showcase. It's a Fort Myers one, too. Yeah. That's, I have only been to Fort Myers for it. So this one's already running a little smoother. There's been, not been a lightning delay. Yeah, it? we haven't had six <laughs> lightning delays and four tarp pulls already. Yeah. <laughs> I lost two pairs of shoes that week. <laughs> Each week. Yeah. <laughs> this is Brandon Whitaker who's hitting from Huntington Beach, California. Another one of the seven UCLA commits on this roster. Whitaker had an extremely loud week at East Cobb, uh, playing for CBA last week. Hit uh, OPS of, of north of 1,500, multiple mm. home runs. Uh, there, I think he had like a six for six stretch with like three tanks and three doubles or something ridiculous like that. Uh, as hot as you could possibly be. And he was hitting balls out to different parts of the ballpark. He was wall banging triples in the opposite field alley. Uh, took a good BP earlier. You can see the, the length of, of the frame and he's still got some room to fill that out. Uh, talented, uh, talented athlete, lots of power upside that that's, he's starting to get to right now. 2-1 strike, good breaking ball that time. It's two and two. Probably the best one he's thrown all day, at least in terms of four strike. He might, might have thrown a couple better ones as far as uh, out of the zone pitches, but in the zone there, that was a good pitch. Started at the front hip. Threw another one, and that one had some good bite to it as well as Winokur strikes out. And the leadoff man gone to the Columbia Blue second. We actually almost had a rare three for three on uh, throws around the infield skipping. We skipped it to first, skipped it to short. We, we almost went three for three, but uh, managed to make the last one. We're going to have to take it away from him. You can't throw it around. You can't do it. Dean Curley, one of the top uncommitteds here at this showcase as he takes up and in 1-0. and He's ranked number 48 on Perfect Games Top 500 High School Prospects for the 2023 draft. A really good athlete, long body, lots of projection there. Uh, different tools across different facets of the game. He's, he's a good player, good clay. He's ahead in the count here, two and nothing. Let's see if he, Robinson throws a breaking ball here for a strike. He's been comfortable doing it behind in counts. Well, this is the fastball. And dots it on the outside corner. It's two and one. and delivers down and away in the count three and one now trying to obviously stay away here uh, it looks like he's, he's trying to work exclusively glove side uh, just kind of falling off and missing as a result grounder towards the middle and pass Ewing into center field a base hit Dean Curley with the third hit of the evening for Team Columbia Blue. Solid piece of hitting. The pitch away. Um, you know, kind of had to protect with two strikes there. And uh, did, did a good job of uh, punching one back up the middle. Casey Borba bats corner infielder from Orange Lutheran High School in Santa Ana, California. He is committed to Texas. Texas has made big inroads under David Pierce and his staff into Southern California. And it's something they should do. Obviously, one of the uh, 
most talent rich hotbeds in the country. Why not as a national brand? Tempted down baseball. the plate in a really nice play. That was excellently done by the team green catcher. That is Alex Sosa, really well done. Boy, he got out from behind the plate really quickly, Sack, and made a perfect strike to first. Yeah, it's, it's, it takes multiple levels of athleticism to, to do that play. Like, you have to be quick out of your crouch. But then you also have to be athletic enough to set yourself up to a throwing lane to first while fielding it and then make an accurate, strong throw. It's, it was an impressive play. Cameron Kim bats and takes a ball outside. It's 1-0. and oh. Kim's a well-rounded player. Another guy who took maybe a little bit louder of a BP than I expected. Um, showed off some power uh, to the pole side and, and had a really good infield round, too. Six foot four, 200 pound right handed hitter from Jerupa Valley, California, Norco High School as he takes a strike. UCLA with another good player. No. Yeah, it's shocking that good programs get good players. But you wonder why they're good programs all the time. <laughs> back you will fight off that breaking ball down one and two Robinson could do a couple different things here to try and paint that fastball away which he's done successfully a couple times may try and run a breaking ball out or he could do that front hit breaking ball where he tries to throw it for a strike Two called strike three. Fastball on the outside corner and Kim down on strikes and Robinson completes his two innings of work, allowing two in the first and holding Columbia Blue off the board in the second. It's 2-1, Green. Yeah, Robinson uh, mostly upper 80s with the fastball. You see the breaking ball for a strike there. Uh, he had good feel for it in this outing, especially in his second inning. And the fastball command was better in the second inning too. He was throwing it to both sides of the plate. Uh, he was commanding it down in the zone. Uh, and, and like we said, the breaking ball was the primary pitch in that inning, and, and it was good. A two-plane bite, was able to land it for a strike a couple times, uh, got some swing and miss with it in the zone. Uh, pretty solid outing for Mr. Robinson. A good look at the Rates tank. Uh, the Ray tank out here in right center field at Tropicana Field, home of the Tampa Bay Rays. See them floating around out there. For a swim with them later, maybe. Sure. Let me know how it goes. I mean, I believe that they do. They let the kids pet the rays. Is that part I, of the? I don't know. I truly don't know. Sea life is very foreign to me. There's people who swim with well, sharks like, like on purpose. I mean, thank you. They do. Steve, the our producer, telling us that they, they do let kids pet them. That's what I thought happened. What do you mean like sea life is foreign? Like is this like if it's not a sturgeon, you're not comfortable? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good pull. Uh, I'm more of a downriver Detroit River guy, so I'm more of like a walleye guy if we're doing that. <laughs> but uh, um, no, man, I just like I don't. I've been petrified of sharks since I saw Jaws for the first time. You know that old story. Yeah. I can't fathom like you know. There's so much stuff that it's. Like well, listen, there's nothing to be afraid of unless the mayor says, we're going to keep the beaches That's open. That's what I've heard. That's really what the issue is. I've heard that all shark attacks happen July 4th. Week. That's the <laughs> only thing. It's, yeah. it's two things that are true. All politics are local, and all, all shark attacks happen July 4th. Week. <laughs> it's easy to confirm, too. Anyways. <laughs> Michael Miller is the new pitcher for the uh, Columbia Blue team from Mendota, Minnesota. Right-hander is six foot four, two hundred and ten pounds, uncommitted to St. Thomas Academy. Can you get that one? Sorry, I just kicked. Sorry. Big physical kid. He's got a big smile on his face as he gets ready to go here, so he is ready for his perfect game national showcase debut as he faces Eli Small, the Kentucky commit from Omaha, Nebraska. Swings and misses. 0 and 1. 91 out of the gate. First pitch. Get a swing and miss in the zone. It's a pretty good, pretty good way to start an outing. Foul back. A little bit of 
a unique windup. He's got the very, very high pants up over the knees, the Hunter Pence look. Mm -hmm. and a little herky jerky delivery with the breaking ball in the dirt. It's one and two. Breaking ball spin near 2,900 there. There is somebody whose delivery reminds me of. I'm trying to put a face to a name. That little quick tempo, hands over the head, and then the short, the, the uh, shorter uh, hands to the belt again. Like that, there's, and I'm just trying to figure out who it is. It's almost becomes like a slide step by the time he gets his hands down. Let me take a look at this again. This is really unique. Slap foul past third. He's throwing uh, multiple pitches already. Uh, we've seen the fastball. We've seen the breaking ball. Um, that pitch there at, at 2,500 RPM at 87 was classified as a cutter. I don't know if, if that's what we're going to call it or not, but uh, but either way, there's something unique there as his third pitch. Swing and a miss. That was a fastball that seemed to have some really good movement on it for out number one. Yeah, this is uh, this is something that's very interesting. I've never seen Miller. Uh, this is just it's a unique look already. We've watched one or two hitters. It's been uh, uh, the spin data is, is is very unique already and projectable body, good body. This is you. This is interesting, Mike. I'm intrigued. He is uncommitted when in the air to shallow center, racing in and slowing down center fielder, and it goes over the head of West and it'll bounce behind him. But Terrace Murray is going to end up at third base with a head first dive as it looked like West is pointing up. And I think he either it either got lost in the lights along one of the catwalks here or he lost it in the roof, which happens. It happens frequently. That could have been any of the above uh, lights, catwalk or roof. Um, but yeah, just a tough on a routine play. But now, hey, there's an opportunity. We'll, we'll see if Miller can pitch out of it. Was not hit hard, and I thought when the way West was coming in that he had a beat on it, but it just landed over his head. Luke Lavin swings and misses. Lavin heading to Stanford. Okay. Okay. Six foot four inch, two hundred and fifteen pound catcher. Are there any guys in this game that aren't six three or six four now? Jeez. No. No, 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 sorry. Breaking ball in the dirt. It's one <laughs> one. Did I tell you the story yet? I don't think I told you. I've been telling people about it. I was at the Series 6 and All-Star Futures game on Saturday in, in L.A., and we were going through the National League clubhouse for the game, and the position players in there were just <laughs> massive. And these are guys that are in, like, double A. Pitch gets away, and Murray's going to come home to score. It would be a passed ball in the end, but it's 2-2. Um, and so, like Jordan Walker, who I know you're familiar with, who, who was a perfect game participant, and I believe an All American, right? Yep, and, yep. and Jordan Walker is, you know, six foot five and chiseled. Mm -hmm. And Joey Weimer, who was a fourth rounder in 20 out of the University of Cincinnati by the, the Brewers. No, to Michigander. No, <laughs> even despite that, he's six four. Uh, <laughs> And like 220 pounds and like these guys were enormous the pitchers were getting smaller yeah and the position players are huge now it's and it, and it's funny. starting to trend that way and we noticed it at the pdp all-star game on friday too that it's trending that way in high school guys you get six seven position players mm -hmm. and it's not unusual it's uh, been the name of the game, that, that, like we talked about on the first broadcast, Mike. The secret is get stronger. And these, these high school guys now are taking that to heart, and that's kind of where we're seeing this explosion of tools. That one is crushed to right center, moving over and making the catch that time is West for out number two. That one sounded really loud off the bat. 92 off the bat, so not bad. That's out number two. This is Miller's. This is pretty interesting still. I, it's, there's unique about it, the delivery we talked about already. There's something there. Um, I don't think hitters see the ball all that well. Uh, he's got some length to the arm stroke through the back, but kind of the way he's closed off as he starts, I don't think hitters see the ball all that well. And, and the spin stuff, is the, the spin data is, has been very, very unique. It's a breaking ball at nearly 2,800 there. It's 1-0. and Trenton late bats from... Boys, your city, Louisiana. 
committed to Louisiana State University. Jay Johnson and his crew there. Swing and a miss, it's one and one. Lape took one of the louder BPs of the day. Uh, we talked about the green team already being kind of the BP group that we've seen so far, but Lape was one of the guys of that. Multiple balls into the seats and left. Consistent bat speed, consistent impact. Really good round. Here's the pitch. Liner to left. That one has some steam on it. And moving over and making the grab is the left fielder. And the inning is over. Garmin Grohovic, I believe, on the catch to end the inning. Green team gets a run to tie the game. We go to the bottom of the third. 2-2 two -two is our score. And Michael Miller getting handshakes from his teammates. A little high five there as the Mendota, Minnesota native. Very impressive in his first inning of work here. Yeah, it, like we said, it's interesting. He's a big dude. I don't think hitters see the pit or see the ball all that well. The fastball has really good life to the arm side. Uh, we saw him spin the breaking ball up over 2,900 RPM. Uh, there's something there at 86, 87 that that is unique for him. That classified as a cutter with high spin, uh, which makes it something of an outlier as it already is. But something there's something there. It's very, very unique. It's very, very. Uh, uh, projectable given the body type and, and the, the deception that he operates with but it looks like it's going to be bat missing stuff and as an uncommitted guy uh, I would imagine that he has quite a few suitors uh, for his service number of college coaches that are here too in addition to the scouts that would be able to give an opportunity to somebody like Miller we'll get another look at him and we will get our first look at Alex Valentin Valentin from the ESB Academy and native of Hollywood, Florida. He too is uncommitted. And it's uh, this event is primarily committed guys. Uh, this is rising seniors who we see as 300 of the best players in the country. Um, so most of them are committed at this point. But there are a handful. There's probably, you know, maybe as high as 10 percent or so a year that are uncommitted, and and that's what makes sense for these college coaches to to come watch because there are. 25, 30 or so guys who are uncommitted who can help them, um, even if this event is more for pro scouts than it is for recruiting coordinators. I mean, some, some of that is because they're late bloomers, but mm -hmm. some of them is because coaches move on yep. and they decommit, right? And do you have an idea of just in general how different that is, like where the difference lies? Um, I think there's a, there's a nice mix, but I would imagine that most of the guys who are here who are uncommitted were committed at one point. Uh, whether that's a coaching change, whether that's just simply making a decision, uh, this, that, and the other thing, um, I, I, I think there's probably only a handful of guys here who are uncommitted who have been uncommitted the whole time. Carl Schmidt will lead things off. I don't see, I believe at one point was committed to Miami, right? That's the, and that has, has that changed, or is he now committed there? There have been some changes even to our program since then says he is committed to Miami. I think so. this is recent. I think I remember Vinny talking about this earlier. I think it was maybe like two days ago. Well, sorry, folks. Yep. He's off the market. So. There you go. Compete for the Hurricanes. Pretty good place to end up. <laughs> Royal Blue team stands in. Carl Schmidt from Petaluma, California. He was committed to Texas A&M. Go bat. We saw Valentin warming up kind of with multiple slots. Uh, obviously, a little there. shimmy. Already, we're off to a hot start in terms of the deception. Well, I, now I like this. We've yes. got between Michael Miller and and Alex Valentin, we've got a couple of guys with some crafty deliveries. That's we'll take that. Absolutely. Hitting his timing and pitching is disrupting timing, right? A little shimmy and shake and a breaking ball, a high strike there. It's it too. <laughs> Uh, imagine stepping into the box. Here's here's my plate appearance at PG National, and it's the dude with 12 deliveries. Swing and a miss through the fastball by him. Three pitch strikeout for the first out. Yeah, he's having fun out there already. Just one shake, time. Here we here's go. Here's 91 up in the zone, and, and that's uh, it's tough to hit. Uh, no question, especially when you don't have as much uh, when you when you're not able to time him up given the the different deceptions and the delivery and the timings. Luke Shearer hits from Ukaipa, California. He's going to go play for Larry Lee at Cal Poly. Just the hesitation and then the shake. And the breaking ball 
misses down and in. Now, one thing I'll say is he kind of stops his delivery to get his shimmy in. I wonder if he could incorporate it into his step back a little bit more. That's advanced player depth. We'll have to figure that out at the college <laughs> that, level. It's <laughs> get to the second level here, pitch inside. It's like after you beat the first boss, then you can get right. the shimmy into That's the right. actual delivery. Yep. What is it Coach Woodard from uh, Charlotte called it? Putting a changeup on a fastball and putting a fastball on a curveball, <laughs> depending on the delivery pace or whatever. Two and one the count. Cheers, 6'2", 210 pounds, takes a strike. Two and two. It's a good angle on the fastball, mostly been upper 80s. Uh, I think his peak has been 90 or 91, uh, but good angle on the pitch. It's a little bit of a lower slot. Uh, he's obviously got several moving parts and deceptions uh, working in his favor. Commanding it down in the zone like that will always be effective. Yeah, he gets called strike three. It's a pretty lively player. I mean, he's, he's only six feet tall. But he bounces around that mound. I mean, he looks like he's enjoying himself at all times. It's always so much more fun to watch guys who have fun playing. Himself, did he just punch himself in the side of the face maybe, to get going? Maybe it's a velo yeah. slap. All right. The velo slap. It's <laughs> the first pitch to Brady Reynolds. Set to attend Stanford in the fall of 2023 from Bakersfield, California. He's laughing a little bit. This is the <laughs> top 100 player, 72nd on baseball uh, on the uh, perfect game list. One outside, it's 2 and 0. Yeah, we're seeing multiple looks, multiple deliveries, multiple paces, multiple pitches. Uh, when you're in the zone with that kind of stuff and that amount for a hitter to, to worry about, it's it's uh, pretty easy to be successful. There's a fastball strike. It's two and one. See a little depth of movement on that pitch. and so it Goes horizontally and vertically. Rounder to the left side, and Dylan Cubs throw is offline, and it's going to be an error. Cup trying to toss it on the run, had plenty of time for the out, and just threw it up the line. It's a pretty well struck ground ball, but yeah, it, Cup fields it cleanly. He just uh, didn't set his feet at all. Uh, you know, one of those rookie mistake things. Pushed it. Probably just underhand that ball if he had to do it again. Carson McIntyre bats. Peoria, Arizona. He is heading to Oregon State. That one upstairs. It's 1 0. Let's see how Valentin pitches with a, with a runner on. How deceptive can you be? Swing and miss. Challenged him above the belt. It's one and one. There's a lot of swings and, and misses, it looks like, from anything that's right above the belt. Down low, gets away from the catcher and hustling down to second, the runner, and that one, the throw was offline, but it wasn't going to get him at all, so Reynolds reached second. That's why you back up throws. Yeah, it's a play by <laughs> Dylan Cup to be right there. The throw was offline, and now a runner in scoring position. So we miss two and two. Yeah, you're right, Mike. You called that he's getting uh, quite a bit of swing and miss up above the belt there. Uh, even at 87, 88, which is kind of where he's sitting right now. It's uh, I think there's some low release traits there. He's he's definitely got some fastball traits that uh, that's working well in his favor. Tight breaking ball, but uh, McIntyre must have gotten a very good look at it because he did not come close to offering and the count is full. What do you do here? Fastball up? Um, it's been his bread and butter, I would say. He goes back to the fastball. He did. Got him to 
chase a fastball up above the zone that time, and the inning is over. So disappearing at the top of the zone. Alex Valentin with an impressive first inning of work. We've played three. Tied at two, and there's the little shimmy and shake and moving the ball around. We saw the funk. We saw the delivery. We saw that stuff. But uh, this is also pretty good stuff in general. Uh, that fastball really riding up to the top of the zone. Got a lot of empty swings up there, even at below average velocity. Uh, can spin a tight breaking ball. Has the deception we talked about. Uh, definitely a fun look, but uh, but not just a, a gimmick or anything like that. There's real stuff there and real Batman. Yeah, it seems to me that he's able to get better. You know, he's able to get a look. John Cooper Williams bats the left-handed hitter from Woodstock, Georgia. He's heading to Georgia Tech. He swings and misses its own one. John Cooper Williams was uh, one of the workout warriors earlier, did a lot of things well uh, through the workout portion. It's big arm strength, uh, he's got some power at the plate. Um, one of those guys who we've seen a ton over the years. He's listed at 5'10", 180 pounds, but he's a presence that's bigger than that and really fast with a strong arm. Ran a 6.53 earlier through 95 from the outfield, 92 across the infield. The 10 yard split of 147 stands out. Generally speaking, anything below 1.5 on those is pretty explosive, your first few steps. Uh, but yeah, a guy who uh, has lots of tools, uh, good physicality to him. There's power in the left handed swing. Uh, just probably needs to be a little bit more consistent, hit tool wise, but, uh, but definitely has the tools. Bouncer up along first and foul. I mean, they can be set for a lot of the mm -hmm. players here, right? No doubt. Just finding, finding ways to manage the strike zone. Very f few of these guys are close to being finished products in terms of swing decisions. And you know, you've talked a little bit about you know, the way that they're able to, to manipulate their swing for different pitches in the zone. Called strike three. It was a curveball that dropped in there, and Miller gets the strike out. So uh, the first out here in the fourth. Yeah, it's just a, a, you know, a pitch that's probably off the plate away, uh, comes back just enough to get called uh, strike three there. But this is well above average spin on a pitch with some shape and some bite. Uh, yeah, it definitely has the makings of a hammer pitch uh, in time. First pitch is to the screen. It's one and zero. Oh. Alex Sosa bats the catcher. Heading to North Carolina State. Upstairs, it's two of them. He's kind of rushing through his landing point right now, uh, struggling a little bit to stay timed up. We talked about the arm stroke having some length to it through the back, and, and obviously there's been a, a, a movement of, of creating more efficient arm paths over the years. You mentioned Giolito earlier. He's a, a great example of that. Um, but yeah, this is probably just uh, just not quite timed up coming through at foot strike, and that's what's causing him to miss. There's a strike. That's about 90 on the outer edge. It's two and one. I'll look at Sosa's bona fides. It's just outside the top 350 for high school players for next year. Pitch bounce foul. Is that slider at 84? It's a firm for high school guy, especially throwing a fastball right around 90, 91. That's one of the things the teams are looking for is that velocity on secondary pitches. And try and close the window for decisions for hitters. So you're going to miss it, a pitch in the dirt. And the catcher uh, clears the base runner, makes the throw to first. I was going to say that looked like number 12. I don't think that that's Schmidt behind the plate, though. That is not. <laughs> I can tell you now that it's not. It's Colton Wombles behind Wombles. the plate. Wombles, yep. okay. Thank you. Really good catch and throw guy. Two outs for Jackson McKenzie. Pace, Florida. We're seeing a lot of, I, you know, I, I'm sure the, the folks at home are obviously seeing it on the, the broadcast here, but the curveball and the slider are two distinct pitches, and he's spinning both north of 2,800 at times. And, and 
we talked about this earlier, raw spin doesn't mean a whole lot necessarily, but it still can be an outlier. And this has been an outlier today, mm -hmm. his spin quality, the, the spins that, that he's able to create on both of his breaking balls. I mean, even his fastball is right around the major league average, even at 90 miles an hour or so. But, I mean, fastball spin, you don't want to be in the middle, really. Right. Unless you have other traits with it, which have to do with you know, the way your fastball plays from release, how flat the angle is on it, or how steep the angle is on it, whatever it is. But there are a number of factors that go into that. Kelly, have a runner ready. Rounder foul pass first. It's these guys are guys like him, like Miller, unique spin, big body, quick arm, some things you could point to that maybe need to be cleaned up. Doesn't throw all that hard yet at 88, 91 or whatever he's been. But big league teams now, it's, you know, there's not one org out there who isn't confident that they can build velocity on a guy. So this becomes more of a, of a sought-after profile than even maybe five years ago when the velocity explosion was really happening and, oh, if you don't throw 97 in high school, blah, 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 blah. Nowadays, that's, even to this day, it's not that big of a deal because we have the delivery, we have projection, we have arm speed, we have command, we have spin quality. And I'm not speaking specifically to Miller here, but just in general, like we have those boxes that we check. We can build velo on it. And that's kind of becoming where you see the, these projection mm -hmm. guys valued in the draft. And I think Jacob Zibben's a good example of this, who just got 1.2 mil or whatever it was from Cleveland. 17-year-old right-hander, taken late, planned to be an overpay. Um, but either way, that's one of those guys who doesn't throw all that hard yet, but confident we can get there with it and makes that profile even more appealing after, as something unique just happened. After a check of the count, <laughs> uh, I think we've learned that that was strike three. So... The inning is over. Usually go with the players. Whatever the players do, I usually trust. Uh, but, yeah, interesting stuff from Miller. Go over it again. The, the fastball is is very interesting in, in the movement and the quickness of the arm. And He can really, really spin the breaking ball. Uh, the curveball was mostly mid-upper 70s with spin over 2,900 at times. Slider got up to 84 with, with similar raw spin. Um, big body, fast arm, definitely some things to like there for sure for Mr. Miller, who, again, notable, is uncommitted. Two strong innings for the right-hander. We'll see if that lands him a college commitment. Lending him a conversation with Vinny Serino. Vin's over there asking what he was throwing to. We couldn't figure it out earlier either. Valentin goes back to work. That's interesting. In his warm-up delivery, you don't see the little shimmy from him. Maybe it's not even a purposeful deception thing. Maybe it's like Sean Casey had to pump the leg, you know, every time he stepped right. in the box. Maybe it's just something like that where he has, he's got to do it to feel it. Team back to work. 2-2 two -two game here in the bottom of the fourth. And the leadoff man for the Columbia Blue team is Owen Egan from Yukaipa, California, UCLA commit. If you're just joining us, seven UCLA commits just on this roster. Yeah, they're pretty good at the old recruiting thing. <laughs> Big Ten bound UCLA That's Bruins. Right. That one down low. It's two and zero. Oh. That's still the right. most in, some of the most incredible sports news of the year. That UCLA and USC are heading to the Big Ten. I can't wait to watch a Lincoln Riley USC team play Penn State in November. I'm very excited for that. You know, um, I can say this now as somebody who grew up in the Midwest and no longer lives there. Midwesterners like to say that all the time about teams from the West. You know who doesn't get bothered by the cold? The teams from the West. That upstairs, it's a leadoff walk. Do they really? I wouldn't have guessed that. Signed Chicago Bears fan who watched the uh, like coldest playoff game or second coldest playoff game in history where the 
Niners beat the Bears 28 to three at Soldier Field. So at least your team goes to the playoffs sometime. Yeah, I mean that was a long time ago. That was in like 1987. <laughs> You've been to a Super Bowl in my lifetime. The Bears have. That's. <laughs> It's more than I got, man. It's more than the playoff appearances that your team has been in your lifetime, right? So My bar is low. <laughs> Go Lions. Just hoping for six wins. That's all. all right. Just positive progress. I don't think struggling to throw okay. strikes here. Now Egan ahead 2-0. and oh, The courtesy runner at first already for the first free pass. Gets a sign, the 2-0. That's a strike on the outside corner. I don't know. That was a so it was strike three. It's out number one. It's thrown off by the both the scoreboard and the score bug. And I thought he hadn't thrown a strike before. Oh, I know what happened. I know what happened. Okay. He never turned his clicker from the last half inning? No. Um, I think he might have thought that. Every time a, there's a walk, you automatically go. Oh, two. go to two strikes. Okay. Yes, when it, the case is you, you just keep as many strikes as there were previously. I had, Okay, I see what happened. I get it. I'm not mad at him. That's easily confused. Yeah, you have understood. For you. Yep, <laughs> that makes sense. Actually, automatically going 0-2 may quicken things up sometimes, too. So <laughs> we can consider that. It's 2-1, and one, and the pitch is inside. And so now it's 3-1. and one. Lindsey and Jeopardy were having another base runner. That one swung on a miss, three and two. <laughs> runner at first with nobody out to pay off. Swing and a miss, Ian down on strikes. And that is the first out of the fourth inning. Good job by Valentin to come back there. It was just 87, 89, fastballs. Uh, outer third located more up in the zone. Tough to hit. Uh, he did a good job of coming back and commanding three pitches there. Egan Bell hits from Rock Hill, South Carolina. He's heading to Wofford. Belk, a really physically strong kid, took a loud BP. Uh, there's some orthodox, unorthodox traits about his swing, but uh, kind of consistently on the barrel in an authoritative way. Uh, was hitting some balls really hard earlier. Strike, it's one of one. Offered in the tomato right there in the SoCon? That sounds right. The Wofford Terriers, I believe. I, that also sounds right. Outside. Good pull. There's a lot of dogs in that conference. Mm. The Sanford Bulldogs. Interesting in Big South and SoCon. Sunbelt, that's all changing again next year. So now that I learned everything. The fun Relance. That's the fun of it. The fun belt, yes. Yeah. Do you prefer fun belt or Atlantic fun? Ooh. The A fun conference. Ooh. Mm. I don't know, man. It's a good question. They're both fun. The A fun is, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> the fun belt. The count is full to belt. Not quite as sharp in this inning as he was in the last one. Payoff way outside, ball four. And that'll force a runner down to second. We'll have a second courtesy runner here. So now the count resets to 0 and 2. And Egan, who struck out, now gets a chance to run. He's just the dude who stole at his helmet on, I think. <laughs> he also. Earned a walk earlier, so might as well give him a chance to run the bases. Swing and a foul tip into the glove of the catcher. Belk is down on strikes, two outs. Fastball kind of right down the middle, knee high. Good life to the arm side, but uh, another fastball in zone swing and miss from Valentin. to Colton Wombless. Strike the Auburn commit from Phoenix City, Alabama. Really fun to watch behind the plate. 
Wobbles is. It's really quick release with good arm strength. Uh, he's been a guy who's been fun to watch over the years, just throwing people out from behind the plate. Valentina ahead of the count, 0-2. And the pitch. Oh, back. Wombles has some power in the right handed swing. He's a strong guy. Uh, as you can see there, he's physical. He's, he's well built, kind of filled out. Um, but there's some power in the right handed swing. And, and like we talked about already, man, it's it's a really fun, quick release behind the plate with a strong arm. It's a, it's a weapon to watch him throw behind the plate. Here you go, Wombles. 0 2 again. Bounces it foul. He's able to stay alive. And here's the 0-2. Upstairs, one and two. Just kind of struggling with that fastball release this inning. Uh, just hasn't really been able to repeat it, missing up and away, missing arm side, glove side, uh, not really something specific to point to. Swing and a miss there. That one tailing away from Wombless, and the inning is over. So Valentin and his funky delivery completes two innings here at Perfectly National and the Showcase. And you get a good look at the run on his fastball. You're right, Mike. Away. You're right, Mike. It looks like it plays kind of like two different fastballs depending on where it's located. It, down in the zone, it's got that that sink, that arm side movement to it, that heaviness, and and we've also seen him miss bats up in the zone with what looks like more of a true four seamer, uh, maybe with a little arm side to it. But uh, either way, a, a productive outing for Valentin. Good fastball, um, has some uniqueness to him, has some funk with the delivery, some deception. Uh, need, we'll need to improve command. We'll need to be more consistent with the break ball. We can say that about every pitcher here for the most part, but uh, definitely an interesting young lefty from Florida. New pitcher for the Columbia Blue team is right-hander Justin Lee from Notre Dame High School in Los Angeles. You're not going to believe where he's committed. Tell us. UCLA? <laughs> is it UCLA? <laughs> Team USA alum. Yeah, Lee's another guy who I have not seen personally. Looking forward to getting a look at it. Uh, just in warm-ups, you can you know you can see the there's projection to the body. Uh, he's got noticeable arm speed. Uh, just you know, looking forward to seeing what the stuff looks like. Tends to be high 80s, low 90s with his fastball. Breaking ball and a changeup. Then we get conversation with a number of his teammates behind the mound before we get the fifth inning started here. Dylan Cup leads things off. Back to the top of the order for the green team. Cup bats. You mentioned Cup's defense is a big calling card for him. So it runs pretty well. So there's a strike. Yeah, Cup's a good athlete. Uh, it, you can see the the athleticism obviously present in everything he does. But uh, but yeah, very balanced, very athletic defender at shortstop with the arm strength, with the hands. It's one of the guys who, who looks like he's going to be able to play there for a long time. Inside, it's two and zero. Oh. Six foot two, 190 pounds, heading to Mississippi State. He's from Georgia. And he takes a strike. I want a 93, one and two. Been up to 94 already a couple times. Kind of sitting 93, 94 with above average spin on this fastball. It looks pretty electric coming out, too. This is pretty easy. Swing and a miss. Boy, that was a nasty right on right changeup. Route number one. That, that thing looked like a fastball most of the way to home plate. Get a look at this again. Be still my heart. Wow. That's dynamic. That's a 84 mile an hour. I, 
what would you even describe that as? Absolutely falling off the table. It looked, almost looked more like a splitter. It was incredible. One out for Dylan Head. Swing and a miss. Fastball at 94 and a half. Yeah, this is a whippy, whippy arm. Uh, we're seeing the, the arm speed, obviously, on, on display here, but you're seeing it in the velocity readings, too. Foul back. Nothing in two. Well, he's in a position that had had laid on a couple of fastballs. I don't know that you want to go to the changeup necessarily here, but his seems to have such a dramatic change of direction. Maybe it's the right move, pitch. Just went right back to the fastball and had fouled it back. That last one was 95 with over 2,700 RPM or 2,600 RPM. This one obviously close to 95 or 25. This is something pretty fun here. Uh, that much velo, that much arm speed, that much spin on a fastball from a high school guy. Uh, and then with that change. I mean, there aren't that many <laughs> big leaguers that run up 2,500 RPMs on a 94 mile hour fastball. There's the changeup again, down to 687. That one dropped into center field by Dylan Head. You see, that's the fear with the changeup, right, is that you speed up the bat a little bit. Yep. And if he wasn't touching the fastball, why give him 10 more miles an hour to work with? Yeah. So Head dumps one into center field to reach with one out, and here's Ty Pete. Just want to see another changeup. Skipped one in front of the plate. Yeah, very good pick. Ryder Helfer doing the catching. The already had a hustle double in this game. I Pete is strike out victim his first trip. Swings and misses. And count one and one. To, to our score in the top of the fifth. Look where Pete is ranked in this class. Heading to Georgia Tech. You know, doing my notes for this tournament, there were a lot of Georgia Tech commits. It mm -hmm. seems like Danny Hall and his group have had a really good group they've, of players coming in for next year. They've done a good job in the last couple of years of, you know, Georgia Tech's always been a destination for baseball, but now it's like, you know, I don't know what the, the right way to describe this is. Like, it's kind of more popular in that sense. It's become more of a of a destination for guys. It, obviously, the academics play a big role there, but James Ramsey, the recruiting coordinator, yeah. Danny Burrell, the pitching coach, uh, obviously Danny Hall, who's been there forever, but... Swing and a miss, and now the throw down to second gets away, but head with a stolen base. That's on number two. On another change up there, swing and a miss. Uh, but yeah, Georgia Tech, it's, it's become a cool place to go to again. Uh, it's popular amongst the, the guys coming up. They're doing a good job of, of identifying and recruiting at an early age group as well, uh, which is not easy to do. Uh, but yes, things pointed up there in Atlanta, no doubt. James Ramsey, former first-round draft pick out of Florida State, who is the recruiting coordinator there at Georgia Tech, and now the, I believe the associate head coach has been promoted to that, is Nicholas Sanders, who doubled his first trip bats. Should be a good matchup here. The fastball called a ball, I think in part because Alford got out of his stance. Alford did a great job back there today. Moving really well. You can see the athleticism. We talked about it on his hustle double earlier with the speed, but you can see that twitch back there evident when he's trying to receive this. It's swing and a miss. Boy, that one almost looked like it was cutting away from Sanders. One on one. Yeah, you can see Sanders asking, was that a fastball? And at 93, when you ask, was that a fastball, that means it had some movement on it. I mean, this is an aggressive heater. This is down the way. It's two and one. Take a good look at Justin Lee here. Yep. Heading to UCLA. The 
2-1 pitch on its way. Called strike. He's got six swings and misses in 15 pitches. Mm -hmm. Sending pretty good uh, percentage there. Mostly on the fastball, but a couple of those change-ups as well. Two and two the count. The powerful Nicholas Sanders from Waco, Texas. Which takes up and away, and the count is full. Had it second, can really fly. Will score on a base hit, no question about that. He's going, the pitch is called strike three on the outside corner. And the inning is over. Just a Lee showing an electric fastball in the top of the fifth. We go to the bottom half, 2-2, two -two. Team Green, Team Columbia Blue. The, Lee, this was excellent. I, you know, maybe a little bit of a looseness with command in the middle there, not any sort of, you know, detriments or anything, but dynamic changeup, fastball arm speed, a lot of 92, 94, uh, was up to 95. Talk about the changeup already. Projectable body, really fast arm, and perhaps most notably, the fastball spin was elite. Uh, we talked about it already, Mike. There's not many big leaguers who spin the fastball like he was. Uh, that's extremely loud. I'm very excited for his second inning. Well, he threw one changeup, right, where it was the, the spin rate was in the 600s, right? So really, really taking enough out of it to allow it to dive. So very impressive. We didn't see much of a breaking ball from him in that inning. I'm curious what we, what we see in the next half inning or the next inning for him. So new pitcher is Tate McGee. Two is heading to Georgia Tech. Several Georgia Tech commits. In fact, they've got, I think, four on this roster. McKee, an East, East Cobb Astros player. Uh, I've already seen him a couple times this summer. Um, it's athletic. It's projectable. It's a quick arm. Uh, it's low 90s for the most part. Uh, he continues to perform really well. This year in PG events, he has a 0 0.50 ERA in 29 in the third innings, 43 strikeouts against only nine walks. And for his career in PG events, which you might imagine East Cobb plays in all of them, uh, dating back five years now, so dating back to middle school, he has a 0 0.30 ERA in over wow. 200 innings with 262 strikeouts against only 69 walks. Consistent performer, consistent strikes. Stuff continues to tick up as he grows. Uh, this is a guy with the developmental trajectory arrow pointed straight up. First pitch to Toby Twist. Foul deck, starter on the mound for Team Columbia Blue. Gets his first at bat. As Brian mentioned earlier, he is a two-way player. Committed to Oregon. Side corner strike. It's 0 and 2. This is a wide strike zone today. This is what we call a showcase zone. Swing the bat. Love it. Call it strike three. Out on strikes is twist. One out. That was just. Uh, we found what worked and stayed there. Fastball off the outer edge. Uh, three straight times called strikes. Sitting at 92-93, pretty good way to do it. I think the Georgia Tech coaches might want to get, get him to change his socks, though. Those are some Auburn-ish <laughs> socks. First pitch misses away, what at all. Those are East Cobb socks, my friend. Ah, I see. Roman Martin bats. He's the leadoff man of the Columbia Blue Order. It's jammed, it pops it up. It's the pitcher who'll make the catch in foul ground. Nice job by McKee. Two outs. McKee working quickly, attacking the strike zone. This is who he is. This is what he does. Uh, this has been him all the way up the ladder. Been a, a gradual progressor in terms of velo. Uh, kind of, you know, how are you supposed to draw it up? He's performed and thrown strikes in, in big events on big stages throughout his career. Uh, and now kind of 92-93 at the National. Athletic with a quick arm. We're seeing it on display. Dean West hits. Swing and a miss. It's 94. 
swing and a miss. Nothing at two. Boy, a lot of swing and miss and fastballs here. Definitely. In the zone, too. In the zone, too, these fastballs getting whiffs. Up to 94 there. That's his new top for PG. Always like seeing that happen progressively for guys. He's back to work in the 0-2. Off the plate. That one just a little too far from the edge. And the count one and two to West. Just a little too far off, like you said there, Mike. See what uh see what he wants to do here. It looks like breaking ball. Check swing out of curve ball, and it's two and two. Well, let's see more of that secondary stuff probably in the second inning from McGee, but he's had a very good fastball so far. Both he and Justin Lee in the last mm -hmm. half inning have impressed with their heaters. Two and two. Called strike three. That was a breaking ball that caught the inside edge of the zone to the left-handed hitter. And boy, that was a clean, crisp hitting for McGee. Yeah, he saw the arm side command with the fastball. Umpire giving him some on the edge there, taking advantage of it and staying there, commanding the pitch there. Up to 94, a lot of fastballs at 92, 93. Uh, with good life to the pitch, like we talked about, got some swing and miss in the zone. And then later on in the inning, brought out that, that power slurve almost is what the shape is. 82-83 with, with good sweep, good horizontal action to it. With some tilt as well, landed it for a strike. I'm sure we'll see that more in the second inning. Well, Justin Lee is going to go back to work as you get a look at the Team Green dugout having a conversation with McGee. And Ty Pete was in the middle of that, and we are here at Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, Florida. And there is Justin Lee, who was very impressive in his first inning of work. Ninety-four plus miles an hour from the right-hander. Want to see him spin it? We didn't see him spin it in his first inning. It was fastball with elite spin and plus changeup. Not that he needed to spin it, but now to you know sort of complete the look of what a two-inning stint is here at National. Would like to see him spin a couple. Let's see what it looks like. But uh, could not have possibly been more impressed by the first inning. Yeah, it was a really good outing. We get a little bit of a look at what the, the slider is and. I'm curious to see how he is able to command it going forward. This is the second and final game of our day here today from Tropicana Field. Tomorrow, games in the morning as Team Black will meet Team Green and Team Vegas Gold will meet Team Columbia Blue. And then we'll have workouts tomorrow afternoon. Danny Wexelman and Vinny Servino will have the call on the broadcast tomorrow morning for the games and then David Ronsley and I will be with you for the workout tomorrow afternoon excited for that the legend David Ronsley and a chance to see Rons between games you can see Rons well actually it looks like he may have gotten, gotten up here <laughs> see where that red thing is above <laughs> the perfect game TV that's normally where Ronsley's face is <laughs> Nolan Souza leads off. First pitch, swing and a miss at a fastball, 93, 0-1. Souza started that swing like 98 was coming. Yep. Like that's that's the way that fastball seems like it's yep. playing. And I'm sure those guys on Team Green are talking about it. Yeah, it's just quite frankly taking off. It's it's playing much higher than the the perceived velocity is is more so than the raw velocity. And uh, there's a slider there at 85. Uh, with with solid spin on it. So now we know we can throw an 85 mile an hour slider, Mike. Well, what we saw a little bit in the warm up was that it's it's got a lot of lateral movement to it. It it is definitely his third pitch. Mm -hmm. There's some refinement that's going to need to come with that, but there are building blocks here for a really good starter. I'm going to add a little bit more run on it it seemed like. That was a good take. Yeah. That was a good take. 2 and 1. That's a tough pitch to take with the way the pitch is working. I would I probably Justin Lee doesn't need me to give him any advice, but 
I would stick to that four seamer. <laughs> <laughs> this is away. It's three and one. I I, th I think with the way his fastball plays, if you try and create that movement with a two seamer, it has a chance of flattening out and staying on a left handed hitter's barrel. Now I'm not an expert on that, but like I just think his his fastball might be the best one we've seen today. I agree with you on both counts. A swing and a miss. There was the f oh, there. that was yep. really good. Yep. Just a little bit more on top of it at release. And it might just be that he, he was getting around it, or yep. the grip was a little bit, or could have been his delivery. But like, so it may not have been that, or maybe he's been throwing a two seamer the whole time, and it's just that it, mm -hmm. with his delivery, it straightens out. But whatever he does with that fastball, man, that is really good. Foul back. There's another one there, and it's similarly very high spin on the fastball, but with different action at times. So it's unique in and of itself to be able to, to have multiple fastball looks while maintaining superior spin on the pitch. Three and two, the count to the leadoff man in the sixth, 2 2 game. Up and away. That's a walk. It's <clears throat> seemed like that change of got stuck a little bit. And it's a leadoff walk. He's mad at himself. Yep. Ooh, he had him set up. He'd shown him off the fastballs, the one slider. So the automatic runner is John Cooper Williams. Count stays 0 and 2. The way the infield is set up behind Lee. Runner goes, swinging him in his throw down to second on one hop, and not in time. It's just that same painted fastball over the outer edge with some run on it, with some life on it, 93, uh, 92.8 to be exact. But uh, you get the point. Just a really impossible pitch to hit. A.J. Ewing bats. Man at second, one out, 2-2 two -two game. Top six. And he watches the runner dancing off second, a long hole in the pitch. Outside corner, a strike. That's about a 91 out of the stretch. Left hand hitters. They're talking to talking to each other in the dugout for sure. They're saying, hey, extra room on the edge, like extra room on the edge. So these guys are going to the plate aware of the fact that they have a little bit more plate to deal with uh, on the outer third than maybe they'd be used to. But uh, either way, it's something that uh, this is the way it's going. So you're going to have to adjust to it. There's really no other way around it. No balls and two strikes the count. He was still dancing off second. He had a huge secondary lead, and that pitch misses outside. One and two of the changeup. It's remarkable the differentiation in spin between the fastball and the changeup. It's 1,500 RPM at least, uh, which is which is substantial spread. Pitch in the dirt. The count two and two. That makes me think it's a splitter. Yeah. That action on the first one we saw, that swing and miss, that looked like a splitter. Just fell off the table. And, yeah. I mean, that's generally what you see is that the, you know, like a circle change is going to run a little bit closer to sinkers. Runner goes, swing and a miss. No throw to third. The stolen base. And it's Ewing frustrated that he struck out, and that's out number two. Yeah, just another well located fastball that was waved at. Uh, impossible to do anything with that. Commanded. Uh, that close to the edge on the outer side, outer edge of the plate, just impossible to do anything with that. Now a right-handed hitter appears. Let's see if the plan changes it. Mm -hmm. he certainly doesn't have any problems throwing his fastball to right hand or his change to right-handed hitters. The first pitch is a strike to Cooper Pratt. That one away from the righty. That's certainly a good sign as he's able to locate there. Pitch way outside. I'm count one and one. 
holding the velo here, still a lot of 93s and 94s, still really, really high spin on the pitch, uh, maintaining the, the general stuff of it. One, one. Outside, it's two and one. Pratt batting from Oxford, Mississippi. So he will stay at home for school as he goes to Ole Miss. Not to be homeschooled, but to stay in his hometown. Lots of good players have come out of there over the years. Swing and misses. School. And the slider that time, it looked like it's two and two. It's a pitch that like almost looks a little soft, but that's just because of how explosive his fastball yeah. is. The slider's still thrown in the low mid 80s. It's not a, a soft pitch by any stretch. Let's see him throw another one here in the pitch. Pratt swings and hits it high down the left field line, racing over in the corner, and that one just foul. That was only foul by a couple of feet. Went up and got it, too. I was having to cheat on that one to get there, but that was a long, loud foul ball that was over by uh, what used to be called Longoria's Landing. That's where Evan Longoria hit that home run in uh -huh. the final day of the 2011 season. I call it the 162 lounge. Swing and a foul plate. 92 mile an hour exit velo on that foul ball from Pratt there, that foul fly. Uh, impressive to get the barrel on that eat. It's uh, tough to, to get barrel on a pitch like that way up in the zone uh, with life at 94. Uh, to, to even get barrel at all on that at all kind of speaks to the bat speed here from Pratt. Here's the 2 2 upstairs. The count is full. Yeah, you're seeing with that slider, it's kind of a uh, more of just a horizontal mover right now. There's not a lot of depth to it, there's not a lot of snap to it yet, but uh, has feel for it, has feel, no doubt has feel for it has a chance to become another weapon of a pitch for him in time. Foul back. I mean, there's plenty of guys that are, are fastball changeup guys that that third pitch breaking ball isn't necessarily a big swing and miss pitch. I think Kevin Gossman a lot with that. You know, Gossman has the terrific fastball changeup combination and he's worked enough on a slider that he can kind of use it to steal a strike here and there, but it's really not his bread and butter. I mean, he's 90%. I would guess, that without looking at the, the info on it, around 90% probably fastball and changeup. He's got both a circle change and a splitter. It's nice to have something moving away from the righty if you can, but pitch. Swing and miss. Boy, you to chase a high fastball at 94. That is explosive. Justin Lee, really impressive day for the young right-hander committed to UCLA. Yeah, this was uh, this was nothing short of explosive. The fastball was taking off. Uh, it sat 93, 94, 92, 94, up to 95 uh, with as good a spin rate as you'll see on a fastball, and it matches the eye test. Explosive up in the zone. Um, showed some feel for commanding it to both sides. Flashed a plus changeup, absolutely a plus changeup, or a splitter, excuse me, we'll, 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 that's what we're going to classify it as. Um, enough feel for a slider. It's, it's a projectable body. It's a really whippy, fast arm. It, the makings of extremely high-end guy there. Nice work for Justin Lee. Terrific outing. UCLA adds pitching. That's they do, but Justin Lee is going to be moving up the top 100 and the top 500 list, it certainly seems. The Rays are even impressed. And then right center field swimming around. Here at the drop is uh, T. McGee gets ready for his second inning of work. We saw a very efficient, quick inning from McKee in the, in the first inning. A lot of fastball strikes at 92-93 for the most part. Uh, threw a couple good breakers towards the end of the inning, but still only like a 10 or 12 pitch inning. It's par for the course for him in his career. Uh, we'll see what he's got here in inning number two. Gavin Gravick bats uh, Texas A&M, or excuse me, committed to Texas A&M from Orange, California, Southern California guy. Somehow not a UCLA commit. <laughs> pitch upstairs. He didn't get the memo uh, about 
playing for Team Columbia. Swings and pops that one foul just off to our left. And count one and one. See McKee not wasting a lot of time. This is what he likes to do. Grab the ball, go, throw strikes, get home in time for dinner. Swing and a miss. That was a really good breaking ball. One and one. I mean, when you see a hitter take a fastball swing at a breaking ball like that, that is really, really nasty. Especially guys as accomplished an amateur hitter as Gravick. Swings and hits one into shallow center. And it's a shortstop, actually, that's out there. A.J. Ewing showing off his good glove. A little catch and backflip for out number one. It was another breaking ball slider at 81. Uh, this time, Gravick uh, was able to see it a little better, was able to wait back long enough to make contact, but still a uh, good pitch in a good spot. Got weak contact out of it. One out, Ryder Helfrick bats. Helfrick has a hustle double in his plate appearance today. He swings and misses that high fastball. That one at 93, 0-1. Called strike and count nothing in two. It's pretty good bite to the breaking ball uh, from McKee. It's not been necessarily consistent in terms of its shape, uh, but every one he's thrown has had some level of sharpness, some level of bite to it. Just really good feel to spin the break, the baseball in general. Six foot, two hundred and eighty pound righties pitch. Called strike three on the outside corner. Uh, that's out number two. Yeah, just a, a well-located fastball, a little bit off the edge on the outer third of the plate, but that's very much been in play all day today. Um, yeah, well-located pitch, well-executed pitch from Mr. McKee as he continues to work quickly and work efficiently. Nolan Stevens bats. Slugging left-handed hitting first baseman. First pitch to him. Good ball misses outside. It's 1-0. Good idea to just try and slow McKee down a little bit. Take command of the at bat if you can. There's a strike. It's one on one. Stevens is really trying to do that. McKee's not letting him. He's ready to go. Swing and a miss. Breaking ball, and it's one and two. We've seen him add and subtract horizontal movement to the breaking ball. We've seen him throw something resembling more of a sweeper. That one was more true vertical uh, than anything. So just the ability to manipulate the shape of the breaking ball here coming into play. I mean, two very impressive innings from Lee and two very impressive innings, on both an inning and two thirds to this point from McKee. Swing and a miss, boy, that was tight. And a really good curveball and a, an excellent one, two, three frame for Tate McKee. I had a feeling that these two pitchers are going to be moving up that top 500 list for the prep players for 2023. Incredible work from Justin Lee and Tate McKee. The command of both, uh, the fastball quality of both, the, the feel for secondaries from both, McKee lead they both pitched up tempo they both attacked the strike zone that was fun that was quick too i wish we could have that pace all day it's been pretty well paced i will say overall i mean we've seen um as you get a look at mckee running out to back out there and here at tropicana field purchase an orange and put a strip on it only it actually works to get juice out of the orange you could probably get like a little bit, right? I tried when I was a kid. Did you? Yeah, it didn't go so well. The problem is the plastic straw doesn't really penetrate the, That's right, the, yeah. the rind. You need one of those form. steel straws. <laughs> probably need more than a steel straw to go get 
<laughs> to be able to get the juice out. If you could emulsify everything inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But keep the outer. Well, blenders keep getting smaller, right? So, so just put a blender in the middle? A little like, blender. Just a little blender yeah, yeah, that, yeah. yeah, goes in. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. So you're like, you're just almost like a drill, right? Yeah, 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 exactly, there. exactly. Yep. James Elwanger is the new pitcher committed to Dallas Baptist from Magnolia, Texas. We are figuring out the mysteries of the universe and watching baseball all in one afternoon. I was going to say, I, I've been, imp and I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely going to jinx this. I have been impressed by the pitching today. We have not to this point seen an inning that has had to be rolled. I don't no. think, right? Nope. Nope. And so, um, you know, normally after five batters, if there's the, and, and I think it's pretty common at showcases to see that you don't want pitchers to throw too many pitches in an inning this is this is not a, a game competition this is uh you know showcase yourself for scouts and for college coaches and so you want to put them in a position where they can be their healthiest but um man that's this has been pretty good so far through what 16 innings of baseball today to not seen that no doubt we're pretty pretty fortunate and we want to see you know there's not a inherently built-in fail-safe or anything for pitchers. If you're going to struggle, we want to see you struggle because we want to see how you respond to it. Uh, and we want to not get, you know, cut out hitter opportunities or, or whatever, anything like that. But uh, but there are some limits in place as far as pitches guys can throw in a certain inning or uh, if the same guy's been up there hitting for 20 pitches or something like that, we'll probably just roll it to give everybody a fresh start. But uh, you see that a fair bit in showcases. It does tend to happen, but uh, to to your point, not so far to, uh, today at the national. El Wagner works from the stretch, even with nobody on base. That's a good breaking ball there. It's 0-2. Michael Graziano from Naples, Florida, bats, heading to Georgia Tech. back sitting 93 here to start from Elwanger good sized righty uh, you can see that body still got some room to go uh, as far as filling it out and uh, pretty quick arm pretty strong durable looking build already throwing 93 well, my understanding is he's got two different breaking balls and a changeup too so I mean already a four pitch mix that he can go to that was the uh, slider, slider there. there, yeah. That was a little bit harder than the curveball we saw before. The curveball seemed to have had a little bit better bite, maybe. But he's committed to Dallas Baptist, and, and I think there's this reputation with DBU for how they work with offensive players and what, they, what they're what they able to get the most out of. It. Man, they, they get some arms there, too. Absolutely. The third. And thrown out easily is Graziano, out, out number one. And so, like, they're able to help as Grover gets the ball back to, to the pitcher, Ellinger. Like, they're able to add velocity to guys. So when you see a guy that has this kind of physical ability, like if he gets to campus at Dallas Baptist, it would not be surprised to see everything tick up with him. And that's a really strong mid-major program. Definitely. For years and years and years, it was Dan Fitzgerald doing the recruiting there. Who, yep. Obviously just spent one year at LSU and is now the head coach at Kansas. But uh, really finely tuned machine there in terms of both evaluation, recruiting, and development all around there. It's it's a premier powerhouse type of mid-major place. That one hit him. That was a breaking ball that hit Luca Reyes, and so he'll get a runner. Walk around a little bit. I think that's just the second hit batter we've had today, too, which is pretty incredible. Man, this is our 17th inning of baseball today, and Reyes is going to get a little extra time here, I think, to try and work that out. So he'll get a plate appearance in just a little bit. And that'll bring up Eli Small from Omaha. Him. One and oh. Sinker. They're sinking fastball. Uh, a little bit lost a little bit to the arm side. But yeah, it's 
Looks like pretty good clay here from El Wenger. Pretty good, you know, multiple traits that, that has the upside of a seriously power arm. Winner goes. Pitches the ball. Throw to second high and into center field. Uh, runner heading to third, and he will get there just ahead of the throw. You see the quickness of the release back there from Wombles. Uh, obviously a little high on the fire. I had it 193 to the glove. Uh, not a not a playable throw though obviously being up but you see the quickness of the release what I'm talking about there how quick he's able to to get into throwing position transfer being a good you know have the arm in the right place get rid of it with arm strength it's a it's an impressive uh, arm behind the plate for sure pitch outside it's three and oh. Brandon Winokur's in center field. I thought Winokur made a really strong, accurate throw to third, too, swinging a miss. That was another quick release, too. He didn't load up for it. He, like, grabbed it, flipped his hips, and, and threw it. And put it right on the money. And, you know, a lot of times in that, that instance, you see a center fielder wanting to come up and make a throw to show off. And you know, he didn't. He just made a strong, accurate throw. He made the throw that most likely would lead to a potential play at third base. And that is not often the, the sexiest thing to do, but uh, definitely the, the correct fundamental play and with some natural ability. Like he got some, some good juice on the throw there from not an ideal throwing position. Stairs, that's ball four. And so it'll be another base runner here for Team Green. It'll be Cooper Pratt that's running at first. Count now resets to 0 and 2. And high at 89. A little more velocity out of the windup than the, the, or at least with nobody on base than there is from the stretch right now. Runner goes, that one slapped to left, right at the left fielder, makes a catch, runner tagging, coming home from third, and the throw will be cut off. It's a sacrifice fly, and Team Green now with a 3-2 lead here in the seventh. Solidly hit ball and a fastball away, runners in motion, 85 mile an hour exit, Vila just stuck the barrel out there enough and, and was able to, you don't want to say slap it because that sounds negative, like he hit that ball okay. Uh, but a deep enough to get a run home, and, and here we are, Green taking a late lead. Brady Reynolds, the left fielder on that play. Now here's Luca Reyes getting a chance to hit. He was hit by a pitch earlier in this inning. And give him a little extra time. Again, it's a showcase, so you're trying to get to see him actually hit at the plate. Definitely, it does us, uh, we want to see guys walk because obviously that speaks to plate discipline. It tells us something about them as a hitter, but at the same time, this is a showcase. If somebody comes in, comes here and just walks in every at bat, that does us no good. We want to see these guys swing the bat and what that looks like too. It's tied up with that fastball there, it's one of one. Runner goes, pitch is high, a ball. No throw down to second. Almost couldn't get a handle on that one. And the count two and one. I think it was just a little too, it was not dissimilar to the stolen base before where the pitch was so high that it was tough for him to be able to get a handle on to make a strong throw. When you have to leap out of your crouch, it's, it's gonna be a tough pitch to throw on. You don't have your feet underneath you. You're not balanced in the way you wanna be. The transfer is going to take longer because of how extended your arm is away from the other one. Uh, it's just, it's really tough to throw on those pitches. Two and one now, the count to Reyes. Excuse me, two and two now, the count, the pitch. Foul back again. A pretty good pass at that fastball. It seems like it, Reyes gets something on the inner third, it tends to tie him up, but the middle away pitch, it looks like he can cover pretty well right now. That definitely looks like the path the swing is taking right now. It's not necessarily compact inside, but uh, he likes to get his arms extended a little bit, and he can do damage in that direction. Well, he's a little bit of a, a pitch up and away. Count for his full. I, 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 don't, I think this gets used as a pejorative sometimes, and I don't mean it that way, but 
He's a little bit of a diver. If you see, he's so far off the plate, but he's coming at home plate with his first movement, and that's going to let him cover the outside part. That one misses high, ball four, and so for the second time in this inning, Reyes has led to a base runner, being hit by a pitch and now a walk. But I think it also can lead to, if there's something that comes in, it can tie you up because you're trying to get your barrel to that outside part of the plate. Absolutely, and unless you have, you need to have really premium bat speed to be able to get to the inside plate, inside part of the plate when that's your approach. Uh, and he does have good bat speed. Foul back. That was a pitch that was up and in a little bit, and that was probably a little bit better better swing than what we had seen before on, on pitches that were in. You saw him still able to, to attack. That was an mm -hmm. attack swing. 0-2 again. On the ground to second, routine play. First, and the inning is over. Green gets the lead on the sacrifice fly. Six and a half, Team Green leads Team Columbia Blue three to two. Yeah, Elwanger showed some solid stuff. Uh, wasn't as, as in command as I'm sure he wanted to be, but fastball was up to 93 early, kind of sat in that 89, 90 range once he had to work in the stretch. Big body with some projection on it. Uh, saw a good slider at 84, saw a breaking ball with, with some more bite to it at 78, 79. Good ingredients there. Uh, looking to looking forward to seeing what a fresh start for the next inning is going to look like for him. So we head to the bottom of the seventh inning, and we have a new pitcher for Team Green. So we're getting a little water between half innings. I have to think, too, that there's a little bit of anxiety for guys when they come in their first inning out here. I mean, it's a little different than the other showcase events that they've been at. Here you are in a big league ballpark. Right. And here you're not one of that best handful of guys. Here right. you are one of the best 300 in the country. So it's it's a little bit different environment. Uh, there's no gimmies in any lineup. There's no gimmies on the mound. There's no... Uh, exploitable weakness in the field necessarily. This is much like you said earlier, in, in some ways very much an all-star game. Bo Rudy is the new pitcher from Chickamauga, Georgia. Mm. Gordon Lee High School. I believe he is uncommitted. Chickamauga, the home of Cole Wilcox, maybe? Sounds right. Let's take a look. Indeed, Chickamauga zone. I don't believe that's where the Battle of New Orleans song started, was it? it was young boys from Chickamauga. <laughs> What's a Chickamauga? Don't, don't worry, it's it's all right. The grown-ups will get it. Yeah, that's all right. It's, I, I do enjoy because uh, I I feel myself growing older, like in real life. You know, obviously. You know, it happens as, to all as of us, right? Yeah, passes. we all get older. But I always like coming to these events where I'm one of the young guys. It makes me feel good about myself. So I appreciate that. You got about three years left. Of <laughs> I will cherish them. <laughs> uh, well, you get a look at Bo Rudy using the top 350 in this class. Yeah, big physical 6'3", 220 right-handed pitcher. He's a good athlete for someone as, as physical as he is. Um, we've seen him up to 91, 92. Uh, this is another East Cobb arm that we've seen quite a bit. Consistent performer. Uh, throughout the course of his career. Good numbers so far this year in PG events. Good numbers, again, throughout his career in PG events. But, uh, yeah, would expect uh, a pitchable 90-92, maybe a little higher than that. Uh, should be a good battle here with Winokur. Winokur played center field last inning. As he takes a strike on the outside corner, 0-1. Boy, that was a high spinning fastball at 2,700 RPM, swing and a miss. That one at 28. Winokur just, that's a defensive swing there. He needed to, to resettle himself. That uh, I'd imagine that That, that ball did quick. something. Yeah. That ball did something that yeah. I think there's some cut to it or something because that, that was a swing of, that ball didn't end up where he thought it was going to. Called strike three. That one a little bit off the plate, but Winokur a little frustrated there, but. Rudy gets a strikeout, one out. Is he throwing 2,800 RPM cutters, Mike? I mean, Jesus. Well, I think he is. Yeah. I mean, if you That's look fantastic. at if you look at the yeah. horizontal break on the screen, yep. it's got a negative number, right? And yep. so, 
positive numbers on that are going into right-handed hitters. Negative are going away from righties. And you're right. I think there's a little, I think there's cut to it. Um, as that breaking ball misses low. Now we can talk about that as as you know there are benefits to that. There are also all th- are things that can be a detriment as you move up levels. That was one of the issues that Corbin Burns had yep. early in his career is that he would get that crazy spin on his fastball, but the problem was that he was getting on the side of it. Mm-hmm. And so it was causing it to, he was throwing 94, but it was in the middle of the plate and it was just kind of spinning. Now that he gets behind his fastball more, he's a Cy Young Award winner and what fifth in the majors in ERA again this year. And you know, that there's some changes that can be adapted there, but it's got to be a delicate balance. You don't change it until it doesn't work. And right. Right now, I can see this be this is going to his fastball is going to give a lot of people fits. Swing and a miss. I mean, there's another one there for Curley who who had a pretty good bat his first time and. And again, that's just like 89, and it just like it's disappearing on guys. Absolutely a unique fastball here. It's been fun it, because even the even the on time swings are not comfortable swings. You know, it's been very very fun so far. Nice play by Pete and shallow right there, backing up on it for out number two. It it looks like a pitch that if it's above the thighs that it's going to give more trouble than if it's down. I mean, you're going to, now obviously there wasn't good quality contact, but guys might have a chance down there. But that's, you know, I'm really curious to see what else he has to offer because that's, you're right, it's a unique pitch. We saw him spin a pretty solid breaker, I thought, 76, 77 miles an hour, kind of a, a sweeper, sweeping curveball that had some bite to it, but I agree with you, I want to see more of it. I mean, if you're going to throw that cutter like that at 90, and then you can run a breaking ball off it. And, and I would think that one of the things that he'll look to do is try and improve the velocity on that pitch. And there was a, a curveball in the mid-70s that missed. But if you can try and, and have you know almost like change-up separation between the two where that, that breaking ball is maybe more in the high 70s or low 80s, I would think it's just that I mean, the – anybody's not going to have a chance. Right-handed hitters would have no chance against that because basically everything's moving away and one's going to move more slower and you don't have enough time to react. So I'm 3-0 and here to Casey Borba. And swings 3-0 and and pops it up. Left side of the infield. It's a shortstop fighting the roof. Makes the catch. Nice play by Dylan Cup, and that was a very efficient inning for Bo Rudy say about that man. pretty that special <laughs> stuff here mike i you i thought you did a really good job of, uh, of explaining it i won't go too far over you or anything like that here just a lot of rear back and chuck it but at the same time it's 88 91 with over 2700 spin with a with a fair bit of cut there purposeful cut this is not one of those accidentally inefficient cut fastball types of things i think he's trying to do that um, and that's pretty nasty. That's absolutely nasty. He's just taking off and disappearing. Yeah, I think. I mean, and, and it's probably just a four-seam fastball that's cutting on him. And, and you know, he got a little bit of benefit to a wider plate there. But that was, that was really impressive stuff. So a breaking ball, a little bit softer, maybe a little bit too much depth. Maybe you'd like that to just, like you said, Mike, kind of hold that cutter plane firmer with just some tilt off of it rather than trying to go uh, too big into a curveball shape. But uh, either way, it has some feel to spin. It was, was spinning the breaking ball at above average spin, too. I'd be really curious to see him. You know, he faced three right-handed hitters there. I'd be curious to see what he looks like against lefties with that because – that cutter could be a bat breaker, yes. too. You yep. know, like that's something that could get in on the hands of left-handed hitters and really do some damage in there. All right, hoping we see a little bit more command from Elwanger this inning, uh, a little bit more opportunity to, to show off the secondary stuff because we know he's got it. Um, but got to work ahead a little bit more. Uh, the fresh start of the inning sometimes helps guys with that. We've already seen it today, in fact, guys who came out and had much better command in their second inning. Um, so hoping to see that, but but we talked about it in, the, in his first inning. Lots of upside here. There's David Ronsley. Yeah, Ronsley with his homemade radar gun holder. <laughs> Thrilled by our broadcast today. <laughs> David, nothing like day. like. I guess Ronsley must not have known we were talking about him. He would have been very excited by that. <laughs> 
Oh, we caught him at the perfect oh, moment. That's that elite just by golden. the production crew there. Thank Shouts you very out. much for that. <laughs> <laughs> Ronsley knows we're full of it. He's <laughs> the first pitch. Who do you think to taught Lateris us to Murray. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. There's Murray, who tripled in his plate appearance earlier on a ball that uh, was lost in the roof by Dean West. Now, I don't think the roof is quite as much of an issue now at 7 o'clock. That's a good break of ball big there. Big leaguers there, too. So. Good breaking ball there from uh, uh, Elwanger to start to, or second pitch of the at-bat there. But, hey, th we need to see more of it. If you need to use it to get ahead, do it. Uh, kind of adopting that. And there's another breaking ball for a strike there. Well, Terrence Murray uh, committed to Oklahoma. He, he is such an Oklahoma player. He is such a, uh, I mean, be a great fit for Reggie Willits and his offensive plan there. Very physical, very athletic, has power. Uh, we've seen him run some balls down in center field. A uh, good mix of tools and, and ability, obviously, also. Six three, two hundred pound right-handed hitter. Takes low. It's two and two. You know, it's funny. It's call me crazy, but physically, he reminds me a little bit of Peyton Graham. Mm -hmm who you know, was the shortstop at Oklahoma, was just taken by the Tigers. and Great pick. Second round, terrific pick, especially when you consider that he cut his strikeout rate so significantly in the second half. Swing and a miss. That was a really good breaker there. Murray's down on strikes, one out. Now we're able to see this breaker more on display from Elwanger because he's using it to get ahead. He doesn't walk a guy early and therefore is forced to throw only fastballs. But, yeah, a bit of a sweeping curveball here. We, we saw him throw a harder slider early on in the first inning. Uh, 2,400, 2,500 spin or so on this curveball. Uh, good tilt to that one there. But definitely has feel for the pitch, and that, that was three good ones in a row. Here's Luke Lavin. Lavin off the end of the mat, roller to third, charging, setting the feet and throwing across is the third baseman for out number two. That's grabbing. It's a change up there, 85, 86. I believe that was a change up, but uh, uh, with relatively high spin for a change up. Anyways, but a good pitch there, good location, got a left handed hitter up, uh, knew he wanted to execute a change up off the black away, and, and that's exactly why. A pitch like that early in the count can get you early weak contact. And to keep executing that pitch against lefties, we'll continue getting him early weak contact. Two outs for Trenton Lape. The Louisiana State commit from Bossier City. There's the slider, 84, a harder pitch, a little firmer. Not quite as much movement, maybe not quite as much bite, but a different look. Lape, we talked about it earlier, had one of the louder BP rounds of the game. Um, hit a ball hard in his first at bat, if I remember right. This is low. It's 2 and 0. Oh. 2 and 1, excuse me. Yeah, lined out to left field in his first at bat on the screws. Swing and a miss. That was a really good breaking ball, but he's gone very breaking ball heavy here, and you can tell there's a full complement of pitches for him. We get to see pitches two, three, and four in that four pitch mix. Delivery, that one chopped to the left side. Charging ground, and throws on the run in time again. Boy, what a strong throw and an excellent play by the third baseman to end the eighth. We've played eight. This game's scheduled to go 10 innings. Green, three, Columbia Blue, two. Yeah, much better inning here, able to get ahead with the curveball. You can see the the bigger shape to the curveball there, uh, something of a sweeper. Uh, he added a little bit more vertical to it later in the inning to get a swing and miss. That's a sharp one down and away from Murray there. We saw the slider at 84, firmer and shorter, thrown for strikes. 
Um, and we saw a pretty good changeup too to, to get a, a weak ground ball early in, early in account. Um, needs the fastball command to come along. That's something that can come as he continue adding strength to his frame. But four pitch mix definitely has feel for all four. This isn't just a oh I throw a slider two thing. He definitely has feel for all four with a projectable body. Easy to like that moving forward. Yeah, I think it's the I'm with you and. and I think the feel for the curveball to be able to throw for a strike, too, to get ahead in the count, really impressive. We had just seven hits in this game, I think. It's a six point. Yeah. It's been uh, pretty well dominated by the pitchers. And showcases are, generally speaking, more advantageous to the pitchers. They only have to throw two innings at a time. They only have to get everybody out once, if that hitter's you got to see a new guy every time you step up there. That, that makes it a little bit more difficult. Chances are you haven't seen him before. So it does tend to skew a little bit towards the pitcher in terms of advantage. Uh, but that's why we put those things into place like we talk about, where if you walk, you stay right there, but you only see fastballs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but, yeah, it's been, it's been a pitching-heavy game, uh, but in a pitching-inherent environment anyways. Oh, Rudy, back to work. His second inning. Brady was pretty impressive with a collection of right handed hitters. And last inning, and now he will face another righty, Cameron Kim. Looks like we've got a righty on deck. Maybe a righty in the hole, too. That's yeah. unfortunate. I wanted to see yeah, him face I a lefty. I did want to see him face a lefty. I think Nicholas Sanders is now behind the plate. And it looked like he and Rudy just had to introduce each themselves to each other a little bit. Boy, Sanders can catch a little bit. That's impressive. He's shown a good bat so far. This yeah. is his primary position, I know. But Cameron Kim, the first pitch to him is a strike. With a, that was a slower curveball at 75 0 1. Okay. That's the strike stealer. There's your early in the count. Mm -hmm. Kim fouls it away. He apparently got the memo in the last half inning that there was going to be a couple inches off the <laughs> outer edge. He's throwing cutters and he's getting a ball with. Go up there and, and good luck. Get, it, get on the plate. But that is something about a cutter guy, everything moving away, everything moving glove side. Right-handed hitter, you can conceivably eliminate the inner part of the plate. You can potentially just kind of focus on the outside zone until you see him able to command a fastball in or something like that. But uh, you can sort of, sort of eliminate the inner third. Called strike three on a fastball, outside edge. It's out number one. Just well executed here. It's a perfect spot. It's just off the plate away. It's been a strike all day. Uh, you know, thigh high, but but in a perfect spot. Tough to tough to pull the trigger there, and tough to do anything with it, even if you do. Some K sign there before. From lights up when Tampa Bay Rays pitchers strike a batter out. My bad. Did he just say my bad? Did you hear that? <laughs> he faces Carl Schmidt. Oh, my bad. It's another thing about showcase environments. There's not thousands of people here. You can usually hear what is said on the field. Carl Schmidt batting, top 100 player on the PG 2023 list. Falling behind three and zero. Oh, oh, strike. It's a call there. Fastball. It's three and one. Whoa! And that's the first base runner he's allowed. Let me see him work out of the stretch. It's good. Uh, you know, you want to see. It's always nice to see a guy go six up, six down. But now, okay, base runner on. Let's see how he pitches from the stretch. Let's see how he pitches with somebody on base. Let's see if there's any adjustment made, and if so, what, et cetera, et cetera. You can glean more things by 
uh, by having a runner on base here too. So the count sets to 0 1. Pitch swing and a miss. See, there's thought about throwing behind the runner at first, but that's West. Count is 0 2. Blue down a run here in the eighth. Again, we're playing 10. Probably like Cutter here, especially if you think he's going to run. I don't know if I try and spin a breaking ball. Up and away. One and two. Seemed like he may have rushed it a little bit. He's quick to the plate with that slide step. It's doesn't come way down the mound. It's not like he gets crazy extension down there. It's a short and deliver. And the dirt and gets away from Sanders. Allow the runner west to get into scoring position. Sanders will have a quick conversation with Rudy about <laughs> well, what was that? Where was that supposed to be? That's a, <laughs> Fastball, I think. We, we talked about this. Just strike him out. <laughs> <laughs> and throw that magic fastball pitch again. Yeah. I'll set up way off the plate. We'll get it there. It looks like it may have, when Sanders was acting, I think that may have caught him on the chest protector on the left side, but also dinged him up a little bit. So he's, he's okay, fortunately. Two and two, the set. Runner goes, pitches way outside. No throw, and West gets third, and his Columbia Blue teammates cheering hard, and West getting a kick out of the encouragement. Now are they going to encourage him to try and steal home? Pitch, swing, and a miss. Foul tip, actually, into the glove of Sanders, two outs. That'll silence the dugout real quick. Full count. Everybody's excited after the steal. Fastball down the middle, swing and miss. Well, they, they're getting close to hour 12 in action today. Remember the workout started at 8 a.m. So it's hungry, yeah. it's getting to the point where, I, I mean, at some point, somebody's gonna put a bucket on their head. <laughs> First pitch, that's a strike on the outside corner, 0-1. Luke Shearer from Kaipa. Cal Poly commit. It's nothing in two. That fastball's just on you. It's just, it, it explodes. It's a different exploder than what we saw from like Justin Lee, for example, a totally different pitch, but uh, uh, every bit is effective in this setting. Absolutely just getting on guys. That one at 91, a lot of uncomfortable swings. Some of it's his release too, I think. Broken bat, floater foul, first base side. Boy, he, I, that's the first broken bat we've seen today, and he just absolutely blew it up. He got in his kitchen. Saw one in BP, which is not what you want to see necessarily. But in that case, it's, I mean, I don't, I don't blame, sure. I mean, he's looking for something middle away, right? Yep. There's been nothing that's been in, and so he gets something that stays in there, and it's going to tie him up. I mean, that's, there's, not much you can do about that, I think, as a hitter. Absolutely. That's what we talked about earlier, like conceivably taking away that side of the plate if you're a right-handed hitter. Uh, but when he shows the ability to come back on the inner third, you're you're screwed there. You can't right, really do right. anything. Yeah. Ready back to the windup with the man at third. And the 0-2. So a foul out of play. 92, I think that's been his best today. Rudy's going to end up walking out of this event with a commitment, I would think. I mean, yeah. Based on this performance, somebody's going to end up getting him to join them in, at a four-year. That one outside, it's one and two. I mean, this guy's got outside two and two. This guy's got like closer written all over him. Yeah, absolutely. And probably relatively quickly. Uh, that fastball with the command of it, uh, 
that should play out of a, out of a college bullpen relatively quickly. Bouncer back towards the middle and through past Pete into center field. The base hit and the game is tied. Let's give some credit to Luke Scherer. That was not an easy at bat against Rudy. He had his bat broken early on and just staying with it and guiding that ball into center field. Fastball pounded into the ground in front of the plate, but hit it hard enough for a base hit to tie the game. And now we are going to see this cutter against the left-handed hitter, which is what we wanted which all we along. We wanted, yeah, here's Brady Reynolds from Bakersfield, California, heading to Stanford. Fouls that one off to the left and out of play. And one. Upstairs, it's one and one. You know, if anybody knows something about serving a cutter into the outfield, it's probably Luis Gonzalez. I've seen that a time or two. Somebody yeah. retired his number because he had one hit. They didn't have exit velocity tracking back then, but uh. <laughs> served down the left field line and foul. And the count wanted two. I like to say that 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 celebration is Luis Gonzalez is here visiting a booth and he doesn't have a microphone so I can just torch him as much as I want. That was his big earn McCracken moment from mm. Kingpin. Of course. Of course. I am above the law, <laughs> right? Like <laughs> That's what he's thinking. Of. He's on the field celebrating with his teammates. Says, I am above the law. <laughs> Iconic movie reference, of course, Kingpin. Hey, thank you. One and two. A more iconic maybe than his moment. But. <laughs> the guy didn't even get 600 doubles in his career. <laughs> Former Tiger great, of course, Absolutely. Luis Gonzalez, who's here in our booth. Proud adopted Detroiter, of course. <laughs> the one, two. The Tigers didn't retire his number, though. They still got a couple more to retire that they're slow on where they get to God's us <laughs> two and two now the count pitch that one tap foul probably didn't feel real good either back yeah. there for Sanders yeah they got him he getting beaten up a little bit in this inning but he looks like he's okay I like Sanders energy a lot behind the plate too it's he, he bounces yep Bouncing around, always in communication with his pitcher, not to mention the substantial power. Yeah, he's pointing out where, right where he got it, on the instep it looks like. So two and two the count, two outs man at first. Already set and the pitch, that one to hit in the air, foul down the left field line, a long run and not able to get it. Falling between the third baseman and the left fielder. Pretty athletic play by uh, the left fielder there just to avoid contact with the third baseman. It's John Cooper Williams and Nolan Souza who are going after that. And so the count stays two and two. He's trying to run that ball away from lefties a little bit more than what we'd seen before. And time to try and blow him back up in. inside yeah, the fastball, you know. He's going to go up top here, the pitch. Now in line, it's off liner into right, and that'll fall for a base hit. Over to get it, the second baseman, Pete, runner heading to third, and the throw gets airmailed. And now racing home is Scherer. He will score. It's a single and a throwing error. And now Columbia Blue has a 4-3 lead in the eighth. Commanding lead. Just uh, that's what we wanted. It was up and more in and just got enough bat on it to, to sneak it into right field there. And uh, then we played snowball fight in the infield. Sanders is going to have a quick conversation here. We are joined now by Luis Gonzalez. What's up, guys? The legendary Close, uh, outfielder. Not enough baseball for you guys today, huh? Not at all, man. <laughs> when did you get here? <laughs> I, I got here earlier. I've been listening to your soothing voices down downstairs <laughs> all all morning long. What you got, Gons? Anything stand out to you? 
No, it's just exciting to see the top 300 plus players in the country out here this weekend or this week. Spending some time with the kids. Everybody excited to try to get that roster down for the All-American game. This is Carson McIntyre from Gonzo's Neck of the Woods, Peoria, Arizona. And the 0-1. That one misses away. Actually, swing. This is the fifth hitter of the inning, so should we not have an out here, this will be the end of the inning, just to trigger that rule. Now, uh, Steve, our, our producer told me, Gonzo, are you the first player to ever hit a home run into the raised tank? I have two first here. I have the first homer ever in a game here. And the first guy to trip over first base? Or? No, no, no. <laughs> and I hit the first homer in the raised tank. All right. So, it, and what was your reaction when you hit it into the raised tank? I didn't even know. I didn't even know there was a race tank out there, to be honest with you. But they came up to me in the locker room after the game. What was that splash out there? Did you guys see a splash? <laughs> they go, hey, you hit one in the race tank. I said, what? What is that? Was that a that bar? Is? Yeah, yeah no right. kidding, right? Yeah, man, I used to hang out in the race tank all the yeah. time. So I was in college. Two and two, the count. The pitch to McIntyre. Swing and a miss. The inning is over. I'm telling you, Gans, the, the, as the Columbia Blue takes the lead here at the end of eight, the pitching in this today has been really impressive. There have been a couple of guys that just seem like their fastballs have exploded yeah. on hitters. Yeah, there's a lot of great arms out here. It's been pretty fun to watch. You know, obviously, you know, when you got guys throwing this high velocity, it's been uh, – it's amazing to see how how much younger guys are and how how their velocity and they're much more mature. I mean, these guys are, you know, they're they're moving up a lot quicker in the minor league systems to get to the big leagues nowadays. You know, the other thing we Sack and I were talking about earlier was that just physically how much different these guys are now. And I was saying, you know, it's just the futures game. Yeah, guys are enormous there. The high, I saw the a number of these players playing in the PDP All Star game on Friday enormous like it, it's the, and the, the pitchers are getting smaller the position players are getting huge like yeah. big tall strong physical like they look like football players almost. yeah and there's so many great training facilities all over the country i mean everybody's you know trying to find you know how to get bigger and stronger and faster and better and i mean you could like you guys talked about here i mean the, the faces are still baby faces but the bodies are just mm -hmm. unbelievable i mean I walk by them and I'm like, oh my God, these guys are huge. I mean, just their their height, their size, their builds. You, your son Jacob was a big was a perfect game all American. Right. That was kind of I think how you got introduced right. a little bit to PG, right? So well, I, I mean, we were playing PG tournaments. Yeah, and yeah, as gradually as he got older, yeah. But I mean, it was a big it was a big deal for him to be a PG all American. It helped him lead to be yeah. a second round pick, right? right? Right. Yeah. I mean, this is a great opportunity for these kids. I mean. Just to get the exposure, I mean, walking down here today, you got scouts from every major league club here. Um, you know, there's only very few guys that aren't really committed. I think most of the guys have already committed, and you're seeing that a lot earlier in their careers. So uh, it's, it's, it's just it's more exciting for these kids now to see how fast they mature. The new pitcher here is Hudson Maddox from Kirk Academy in Mississippi. He's committed to Ole Miss, 6'3", 205-pound righty. It's John Cooper Williams fouls it away. It's one and two. I gotta ask you because you, your son Jacob now is with the Pirates and he had, he's having a terrific season. Um, he's made it uh, up to what high A now. He's in Greensboro. But the thing that stands out to me that's the biggest difference from him as a prep player is that was a terrific play at shortstop and the throw to first is late. But the thing that stands out to me about him is as a prep player, there were big concerns about how much swing and miss there was. He was a powerful guy. I just looked, and his strikeout rate's down to about 10% yeah. in the minors, and the walk rate's gone up. Like, what did he do to work on that? And what, like, what suggestion would you give to young hitters? Because that's a big concern that teams are looking at in the draft now is trying to, to avoid swing and miss and chase. Right. I, I think the big thing is, I mean, kids are set in their ways a little bit early, and you can't be afraid to make change. He was able to capitalize throw hits the umpire didn't even flinch either and he didn't barely gets flinch. away and Williams will make it to third so 
That's pretty impressive. You that see that? Yeah, it's, it's like it didn't even happen. Is he wearing shin yeah. guards out there? <laughs> Look at oh. this. I was like, what did that hit? Because he didn't move. Yeah, the throw was offline. It hit him on yeah, the knee. It squared him up. Yeah. That was like playing pinball then. I think it may have hit William's foot, too, before it bounded into center. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. That was right outstanding. There. Well, umpires have a workout in the offseason, yeah. too, I guess. Oh, yeah. Look at him. He's not even feeling it. Uh, into left field, a base hit, and this game is tied. Alex Sosa from Vieira, Florida, with the game tying base hit here in the top of the ninth. Good piece of hitting, just taking 89 the other way for a single, 86 off the bat, got it on the barrel. That's all we needed to do there. You were talking about that line, though, between the stubbornness of players and like trying to to you know, be able to adjust your willingness to adjust and, and that that can be a tough line right it is and i think you know because all these kids have been successful right now all these you know these guys have won major awards and you know right now they're they're trying to finalize their way into the all-american game and but as you start moving through the minor league systems and you get drafted or you go to college i mean all these other kids it, it starts to the playing field starts to level out and you're going to see some kids that are really above average and those are the ones that are willing to, you know, give in the extra time and the work and the effort to get better. And not only that, but they're they're not afraid to make change in whatever it is, maybe their mechanics or their swing or something like that. You you constantly realize that they're trying to get you out and they're trying to figure out ways to get you out. And you have to keep continue to make adjustments. And it doesn't matter if it's in the minor leagues, major leagues, or even now at, at you know at this high school and college level whatever it might be so i mean for these kids the, the faster they learn it uh, the better they're going to be and, and how they can minimize those long slumps swing and a miss jackson mckenzie actually a foul tip count two and two and luis gonzalez a five-time all-star is with us here at tropicana field and talking a little bit about development I, th I think the other thing and we've been talking you brought it up in terms of the velocity like that has to speed the learning curve for hitters some, right? Because you, your decision window is closed really quickly with the way as hard as these guys are. I mean, it's, we've seen a lot of 95s today. We haven't even seen the hardest throwers in this class necessarily, but I mean, it's been 95 with life. It's pretty impressive. And not only that, but these kids, and you guys know, you see it more than anybody up here. They start to see their velocity, the ticks start coming up. You know, they start seeing their velocity get a little bit more and then they they get back home after this, and they just amp it up even more because yep. they're like, "Oh my God!" You know, because you're playing the best of the best out here in this, yep. in this, uh, in this, in the Nationals here, and then they know what they have to work on a little bit more. That one foul away off the left. Hey, Guns, you're you've always been so involved in charities, and now I know and I know the the PG All American Classic is going to be in Phoenix, where we both live, um, and you're so involved in PG Cares. Um, what can you tell us about your involvement with that, how important that's become to you? Well, it's been awesome. I mean, just the fact of trying to make an impact, and, and, and that's what we try to teach these young kids now that are coming through perfect game, and then, you know, you're, they're going to see it uh, with the All-American game that, you know, we spend a day going to the hospital and spending some time with some kids. And you know, I always say uh, you could play your, you know, five, ten years in the major leagues or college, whatever, the impact that you're going to make is in people's lives, touching people's lives somehow, some way. And Perfect Game Cares tries to do that and, uh, you know, it teaches these younger players how to give back and, and uh, just being a part of impacting people's lives. These guys are all stepping up now. You want to go ahead and make that call? Swing and a miss. I mean, you could have. <laughs> Like, it, this isn't the first time you've been in a broadcast booth. I know, booth. I know, but I, I've stepped on you before in a booth, and then you get all mad at me, so. I once had Gons. I, I was this close to getting him convinced to buy this thing. They have a thing in Cincinnati called Redzilla. Remember that? Yeah. That has, like, it's basically it like a Gatlin gun that fires T-shirts into the crowd. <laughs> and I was this close to getting him convinced to buy one to strap onto the back of his truck and we drive around the neighborhood. Looking it up. And fire T-shirts all over. <laughs> it was Cincinnati. I mean, he was like, he was like the, the, the checkbook was out. And I thought better of it. Nice play by Schmidt. He'll go to third. That's his only play. And the ball gets away. Oh, that was a really heady decision by Schmidt, who's made two good diving stops in this inning. Ball was hit pretty well. Uh, was that Dylan Cup? 
Yep, Dylan Kapo was sitting. Uh, we talked about earlier with him, really talented defender, really talented athlete. Want to see him continue to develop with the hit, that with the hit tool, with the offensive impact. That's a ground ball is short, but still 92 miles an hour off the bat. Uh, we're showing the bat speed, and I think he projects really well for power. But good things from Dylan Cup today, as expected. There's head now he takes a strike on one. And I think what's what's exciting is the, the tracking that you guys do for these guys. Like right now, and then you'll see them five, six months down the road, and just to see how much better some of these kids have gotten because they know, you know, playing with some of the top talent in the country right here, you know what you have to work on to get to be one of those top picks. Chop back to the mound, little play to the plate, out number one, throw to first in time to get him. Boy, what a play. Ooh. Got to be quick to turn one, on, turn one on head there. That was impressive. Ryder Helfrick with a absolute bullet to first base to turn the double play and keep this a tie game as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Get another look at it. And that is impressive. He didn't have much of a lane on the inside part of the bag and just did get at it first. And you get a little look at Maddox here and some of what he brought as we've been visiting with our friend Luis Gonzalez, the five-time All-Star. and. Um, so with PG Cares, you mentioned the kids are going to be involved uh, with that and Make with the All-American game, Make-A-Wish. And obviously, I know you've had you've been involved with Phoenix Children's Hospital for years and all of that. So um, that'll all be part of the All-American Classic weekend coming up the last, what, the last Sunday in August, yep. right? Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. I mean, it's, it's going to be exciting. I mean, for the opportunity for those kids to be able to play at Chase Field, not only that, but just the hotel. Everything is so close and the proximity and everything. It's going to be so nice for everybody. And super excited to have it in, in – uh, in our backyard, and Mike Farron, thank you for inviting everybody to your house for the house yeah, party. Yeah, I was happy to you know, do it. I mean, it's, I was told earlier today, you know, that everybody used to go over to Trevor Hoffman's for the party, yeah. and now they have to come to mine. I'm like, yeah, there's a little yeah. less beach at Hoffie's <laughs> than at Hoffie's. So similar amounts of storm. sand. Yeah, you can have a dust storm. storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dust storm no problem. So I get the four grills in the backyard. Everybody can come over. Just everybody don't in Phoenix feed the has dogs. a pool, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we've got one. No problem. No problem. You can just come over and swim. That's it. All right, guys, I'm going to take off. I'm going to let you guys run it home. I'm going to beat the traffic home. Sure. <laughs> I've been waiting with you, you, Gonzo. Thanks, man. Good to see you. See you, Gonz. Luis All Gonzalez, right. five-time All-Star. The Perfect Game All-American Classic will be played under his retired number at Chase Field, which I'm sure he will remind everybody of. But that number, see that number there? That's mine. Not 51, 20. <laughs> He is one of the most generous human beings I have ever met. Don't, I know he's not listening, so I, I can say that now. That's right. Just a terrific, terrific person. I'm excited for, uh, I, I know this unique being the All-American game not being at Petco. And, and obviously the one year with COVID, we had to do it in Oklahoma City. But that notwithstanding, it's been at Petco. And it, to be at Chase this year, and, and obviously we did the National Showcase at Chase a couple years ago, and it was outstanding. Uh, just really excited to be there again this year. Jack Hembry is the new pitcher for Team Green, left-hander. 6'1", 192-pound lefty from Hiram, Georgia. He's committed to the Bulldogs. There's a strike. It's 0-2. This is Owen Egan at the plate from Yucaipa, California. 4-4, a score in the bottom of the ninth. I'm super excited that it's coming to Chase Field, um, not just because it's 15 minutes from my house, but I think it's a great venue for it. I think it's, you know, when I think of Phoenix as being, in a lot of respects, the center of the baseball universe because it's spring training, there's amateur ball, you've got the Pac-12 there with ASU as you can take strike three. You've got the WAC with, with Grand Canyon. You have both the WAC and the... Pac-12 tournaments for baseball that happened there. So um, it's only fitting that Perfect Game National would be there as well. And very excited to have it be, be, be in Phoenix. And I know everybody with the Diamondbacks organization and PG is excited about it as well. But this is something they've been working on for a number of years. And for it to, to come to fruition is going to be really great. And if you care to listen to the game on the radio, guess what? You can hear it. You can hear Mike and I. We will be doing the game on. MLB Network Radio that night. Shot to first. First baseman has it. 
Nice play. Underhand to the bag in time for out number two. Well done by McKenzie. Jackson McKenzie, Mississippi State commit. Perfect lead to this pitcher covering. Hembry showing some good stuff so far. Uh, it's not overwhelming velocity, but the fastball has uh, good movement to it. Been a lot of 88, 89, up to 90. Uh, showed a change up with some good dive to it, good late dive, and, and obviously that was a breaking ball uh, most recently as well. Swing a fly ball to right center. Moving over and calling for it is the right fielder and making the catch is Michael Graziano, and it's a 1-2-3 frame for Embry. Nicely done. Yeah, again, good, good, uh, good life on the fastball here. You can see it working up and in there. And then there's once he showed that uh, more arm side to it. Uh, pretty substantial life given the metrics. Uh, threw a couple good change-ups there too. Good angle uh, at, at release. Good, turns it over w with good fade on it. There's Vinny Servino uh, making sure to find out the specifics of his changeup release because it was a pretty good pitch. It looked pretty unique. Um, that's just the intensity of the evaluation we do here. We'll straight up go <laughs> ask the kid when he does. I, Vinny's reaction was pretty good. I was like, man, that's okay. <laughs> well, you, how do you combio? <laughs> Tenth inning, last inning of the day, tied at four. Not get a whole lot of time in the last half inning to talk uh, about the pitcher Hudson Maddox. Showed a good breaking ball. He had a couple of really good spinners in the uh, low 80s, some depth on them, some good bite uh, over the top release with it. Uh, lengthy arm stroke, good body that projects. There's some spin characteristics here that are good. It doesn't throw all that hard yet, but it hasn't really mattered. Mostly upper 80s with the fastball. I think he touched a 90. Uh, we've seen that we've seen that that biting breaking ball as well as that fastball and uh, we'll see if he's got a change up kind of want to see that want to see him a little bit more in command uh, but either way looks pretty solid in the first inning you know he's he's also been a third baseman coming up too and, I, and we have not seen him uh, hit here today I don't think but has he decided to focus on pitching at the next level that seems to be the case yeah I, I think he's uh we would have we would have seen him work out we would have seen him take bp like he would have done all that if it was if it was a, a, a two-way type of player all right so maddox will be back to work after team green tied the game against him in the ninth four four as we start the tenth final inning for the day again our coverage here Tropicana Field will begin again tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Danny Wexelman, Vinny Servino will have play-by-play -play for you of Team Black and Team Green. And then uh, immediately following, they will have uh, Team Columbia Blue and Team Vegas Gold. We'll just go in inverse order tomorrow. Game, game, workout instead of workout, game, game. Game game workout again on Friday. David Ronsley and I'll have your coverage of the workout tomorrow. First pitch to Ty Pete. Lined into right field, coming on and making the catch is West. Nice running grab. Round number one. Pete with a 90 mile an hour exit velocity there. Uh, just got a pitch in a good part of the plate. Not afraid to, to swing early, 87 miles an hour on the fastball. Good swing, but a uh, really nice play out there in right field running it down. One pitch, one out. Here's Nicholas Sanders. Sanders had a extra base hit his first trip. Up the alley in left center field. First pitch to the right-handed hitter. Inside, moves him off the plate. It's 1-0. Sanders nodding, talking to himself. We both really just like watching him play. I, it's just like, <laughs> it's, I mean, this is 12 hours into this kid's day, and his energy is fresh as a daisy. Like, it's incredible. 2 and 0. I just love, I love the way he carries himself on the field. I love the, I love how aggressive he is at the plate. Like, he wants to do damage. There's a strike. It's 2 and 1. Very much having fun playing this. Yeah, game. We've absolutely. About it as well, man. Like, just, how much more fun it is to watch guys play who have fun playing. Wrapped on the ground to third. Throw 
first in time to get Sanders. He was busting it it's down a hard the line, 90. too. It's a hard yep. 90. Two outs. I get the sense he's the kind of guy that, he, you know, he noticed him having conversations with pitchers, not just on the field, but as they've come off it. And he's a guy that I would not be surprised if his teammates gravitated towards a little bit. It seems like there's some leadership qualities with him, too, just in, in watching him. He's a pretty impressive kid. See if Souza can get around on one. Kind of want to see him get loose with the bat. Uh, he's got so much power. He's got you know so much some so much physicality. Want to see him really square one up in game. From Honolulu, Hawaii, committed to go play for Dave Van Horn at Arkansas. I would normally say there's no way anybody came to this event from further away, but we we had somebody literally from China. Yes. So I he, I think he's probably going to win this one. Foul off to the left. I mean, it's not an, uh, a short flight from Honolulu to here. No, sir. So it's probably. If they go direct? I don't know if you can get direct from Tampa probably to not. Honolulu. I know you came from New York, but I would say that it's probably, if you were to get a direct, it would be about 11 hours probably. It's too much. Man. Tack, tack on another 12 to come from China, so. That's too much. I don't want to go the other way, I guess. Maybe. China, yeah, maybe. Two and one. It's a two hopper to second. He is retired and a one, two, three inning for Maddox. We go to the last of the 10th, tied at four. They're gonna let, we're going to do one more. We're going to do one more batter. Well, Maddox doesn't think so. Maddox is done, bro. <laughs> He's like, really? It's like I got my three outs. Oh, maybe, maybe not. It looks like everybody's heading back out. Uh. And Maddox is like, all right, I guess I'll... Face another hitter. Oh, no. Nope. Vinny it. has decided that we shall be moving on. I wonder if they, they lost track of how many hitters. Yeah. Because there was three in the inning. So. Yep. That must have been it. But anyway, Maddox set, pitched pretty well. It, it's upper 80s fastball. Um, has some heaviness to it. He showed the ability to get some weak contact with it, move it around the zone. Um, flashed a couple pretty good breakers as well. It looked like maybe a slider and a curveball. Either way, even if they were one pitch and, and blending together. Um, has some field of spin. Uh, it's a good body. He's projectable. He's got some athleticism and arm speed. Uh, easy to, to like the upside there for him long term, especially with the pitching development under Coach Lafferty at Ole Miss. Maddox day is done after two innings. We go to the bottom of the 10th. Embry is on. I wonder if we might have another. Could we have another half inning under us? We've got a maybe that's playing some long toss. We might. That is some long toss, too. He is playing from center field all the way to the right field. Foul pole. I think that might be Nolan Stevens, who I believe is a two-way guy. Sometimes we've got to play ten and a half. A secondary pitcher needs a needs his inning or whatever it might end up being. We don't know that to be the case, but that does seem to be trending that way. And you see Hembry there getting loose for his tenth inning. Hembry's got some deception to him. Uh, we talked about how well it looked. Uh, or how good it looked, excuse me, uh, in the first inning, just kind of the, the deception of it, throwing strikes, uh, pitching off the fastball, getting some weak contact, uh, moving the fastball around. See what it looks like here in inning number two, but expecting more of the same. I think we are going to get Stevens for an inning here coming up. So we will have, I think we would have, uh, we will play an extra half inning because we would have had Zach uh, Quinn in this game who, who pitched in the first one, pitched the last inning, or one of the, the final two innings in the first game. Uh, we would have had him for that if at least looking from the chart here. So we will get Stevens for an inning, it looks like. That was some long toss, though. Yes, it was, was. I mean, he was getting loose. Like, <laughs> legitimately out by the 404 sign in center field with his catcher at the right field corner. Like, it's 
he's getting ready to go. He's airing it out. So, what's the Alan Jager saying? Long toss, long career. Yeah, yeah. The long toss master, Alan Jager. Okay, Toby Twist will lead off for Columbia Blue here in the last of the tenth. He was the starting pitcher for Columbia Blue today, two innings. He allowed a run. And he is a two-way guy committed at Oregon. And he faces the lefty Embry at a very efficient ninth inning pitch. Ball strike on the outside corner, 0-1. Sweep a breaker across the zone for strike one to a lefty. Now you can. Now everything's in play. Probably fastball in is what it looks like. Down low. Count one and one. Steven's still warming the outfield. We haven't seen him take the mound yet. Chopper towards the middle to his left shortstop. Pete has it. Throw to first. Just in time to get the hustling twist. Twist was really motoring it down the line. Definitely hard 90. We're seeing it, man. We're late in the day. We've been here for 13 hours, 12 hours, whatever it is, and these guys are still playing hard, still playing with some pep. You love to see it. Absolutely. One out. And we're back to the top of the order with Roman Martin. Pitch outside, 1-0. And this is a showcase game, so it can end in a tie. Mm -hmm. and now Steven's getting loose on the mound, and I think we will see him in the top of the 11th. There's a strike. We'll just play an even 10 and a half. Ties go to the home team, is that it? Absolutely. Ties go to the runner on the home team. Home team automatically wins because it doesn't matter. <laughs> Does that improve uh, the green team's all-time record if that happens? Or, the, or the, I guess the Columbia Blues' all-time record if that, that happens? That would actually be a funny stat if we could somehow <laughs> find a way to find out, like, which color jersey it has the best all-time record in PG Showcase history. Then match it up and compare it to the, the color uh, that the knight wears at medieval times. Yes. See if it jives. Yep. Like, yeah, That absolutely. would be good. Absolutely. We're blending worlds here. Cosplay, <laughs> ancient times, and baseball. That's the way that song goes, right? Yeah. Cosplay, ancient times, baseball, Apple here in Chevrolet. Chevrolet. <laughs> right, yeah, that's it. <laughs> baseball cosplay. That's it, yeah. That's it. Olden times in Chevrolet, yeah. Thanks for hanging with us here at Perfect Game Natural. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day for the broadcasters as well, and we are not in as good a shape. <laughs> Three to the count. Roman Martin. And the pitch. Called strike three. Never did get a name on our home plate umpire, but he has an emphatic called strikeout. Absolutely. Love to see it. It's just a, a pretty much a fastball down the middle, maybe on the inner third. I don't know what Martin was maybe looking for in that scenario, but... A perfectly executed, well-placed 88 from Hembry, and he continues to, to be efficient and pitch quite well. Two outs for Dean West. Left-handed hitting outfielder. See his speed on display earlier on the base paths. Takes a breaking ball outside, 1-0. Oh. Love to see these at-bats of lefties against quality left-handed pitchers. And the count two and nothing. I see Sanders back there still being emphatic with his pitcher, leading him. There's a strike, two and one. Yeah, I mean you you wouldn't I think even if you're scouting, you wouldn't fault a kid for dragging at this point of the night. But, man, when you see somebody that is still engaged like that, it 
has to get your attention. No. College coaches, it gets your attention. That's what we talk. It's talked about with on-field makeup, which can be, you know, a, a catch-all term. But really, it's just that, like, there's, like, you could tell, like, th those are things that people notice and are willing to commit to a player, even when they maybe don't have the biggest tools. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not the case with Sanders. He's got real power, too, but fouled away. It's just great to see it when it happens that way, too. Dean West, known to be a good approach guy, controls the zone well, uh, has always been an on-base threat, uh, understands you know wh where the strike zone is, where the plate is. That's a 3-1 a pitch in such a perfect spot that he had to take a battle swing. Speaks to command, speaks to the deception Hembry offers here. And here's the payoff. Breaking ball outside, and that's a walk. That's the first base runner that Embry's allowed. It's a great take. Would be easy to chase that pitch, especially after seeing five or six straight fastballs. Whitaker, the runner at first. Embry gets the sign. And the 0-2. Fly ball. Shallow left, racing over, diving, and not able to make the catch of the left fielder, and it will roll over into the bullpen. Scoring is Whitaker on his way to third is West, an RBI triple, and Columbia Blue has the 5-4 lead. Could not have put it in more of a perfect spot because the, the left fielder was closing in a hurry. Uh, good speed, good athleticism out here, just, just beyond the reach of a fully extended glove. Rolls all the way in the corner for a triple. And we are no longer tied. We are not. And Dylan Cup, I believe, is the left fielder, and he is still down a little bit. Is that? Not, excuse me, it's not Cup. It's um, John Cooper Williams still out there, and I think he, he dinged up his shoulder a little bit, reaching back for that ball. Another guy continuing to play very hard. It's going to take a little time here on the side, and we're going to get a. It's like cramped up. Left. Is it cramp? Looks they're, like he just looking? cramped up in his calf. Yeah, I saw him grabbing for his big toe when he was laying there, and that's usually a pretty good indicator of trying to stretch out a cramp. All right, you get a good look at Williams there trying to roll it out, but and I was worried when he went down. I thought he kind of reached back, and then it might have been his shoulder, but it's good to see that it's just a cramp. He has a I wouldn't say a smile on his face, but he looks like he's going to be okay. Yeah. That's certainly good news. Here's Gavin Gravick. Swing and a miss. High fastball, 0 and 1. Walk in the bloop. Triple have given the Columbia Blue a 5 4 lead. We're in the bottom of the 10th. We will have one more half inning, it appears, as Nolan Stevens continues to get loose, pitching down low. One and one. Hembry's delivery. That one is over the inside corner. A strike, it's one and two. Dancing down the line at third. Trying to distract Hembry if he can. He's got a huge lead halfway down, and Hembry steps off and licks it back. <laughs> no one there, Cup. Yeah, no one was coming behind him. Cup is the third baseman, and he was there. Inside. Now, time is called. Time before that pitch. Check swing and high fastball. He did not go. And the count now two and two. That's still racing down the line. Embry not focused on him, and he gets a strike out there to end the inning. 
Columbia Blue takes the lead, 5-4 the score. Looks like they're not even going to flip up sides. They might just flip up batteries here. Yep, that's what it looks like here, is I think. They're going to clear the field. Embry yep, getting high fives. Right yep. yep. Embry was good. Uh, back to that, as we're seeing uh, great replays here, it's it's solid fastball quality. He's got some funk to him. He's got some deception. He showed good command for the most part. Uh, there's enough of a breaking ball to project on it, but uh, a lot of fastball quality strikes uh, in good spots. Move the bat, move the pitch around. Got different variations of life on it. A good performance from Hembry. He was pretty efficient for the most part. So you get a look at Hembry there, who's walking down the line here towards the bullpen. And Nolan Stevens is going to start getting loose here. two-way commit to Mississippi State, Franklin High School in Elk Grove, California. What a baseball hotbed Elk Grove is. Is that um, Nick Madrigal? Derek Hill, Madrigal, Dylan Carlson's from Elk mm -hmm. Grove, right? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. That's Dylan Carlson's dad is the head coach there, right? Is it out? Something like that. It's one of the high schools. I think there's here. multiple high schools, right? It's just that city specifically yeah. has, has churned out a lot of talent over the years, regardless of whatever high school it was. We're just talking about Elk Grove. Let's see, Elk Grove High School is where Carlson, J.D. Davis, David Hernandez, Nick Madrigal, Buck Martinez, Rowdy Telez. Like, that's a right there in Elk Grove. Yep. Quite the high school, yeah. So a number of players that have come out of there and some, some pretty good big league careers. I'm pretty sure there was somebody just in the Futures game who was an Elk Grove product. Dom Nunez, that's another name from mm. Elk Grove High School. So uh, Ryder Helfrick will lead things off against the lefty Nolan Stevens. And the uh, first pitch from Stevens. That's a strike. It's 0 1. First pitch breaking ball there. First pitch of the outing. Breaking ball for a strike. You love to see it. Helfrick could have been the rotation mate here. Is that one nearly 94? Outside corner, it's 0 and 2. <laughs> this is our last half inning for this game and for today. As Helfrick bounces one foul to third. As Kep knocks it down. And so it's still 0 and 2. Stevens a, primarily is a physical left-handed bat with a, with a ton of power who can hit, uh, but he's always been able to to be a left-handed arm, something unique, something interesting in that sense. But uh, I don't know if I expected him to kind of sit 93, 94 with a good curveball, and, and we're early in his outing. But either way, that's a step forward for him on the mound, um, something to pay attention to. This is outside. Tried the change up there. You could see him drop the arm slot, kind of change the whole delivery. Take a look at Helfrick, who has worked hard and been dirty today as he takes a breaking ball for strike three, one out. Just a good pitch. Uh, thrown with a two plane bite, uh, threw it for a strike, kind of right down the middle, just down in the zone, uh, especially after fastball and changeup had worked away, away, away. Uh, it was a good look at it here kind of over the outer third of the plate down in the zone. Great pitch, great spot. One out for Brandon Winokur from Huntington Beach, California. Athletic right-handed hitter takes a strike on the inside corner. It's 0-1. Stevens kind of got that pitch up kind of look. Uh, it's a little bit lower of a release height. Uh, makes it look like that fastball is playing even higher up in the zone. Inside, they got him on the elbow. 
unfortunately is wearing one of those elbow guards. That'll put a runner on. Browns crew already working on the bullpen mound. It's for tomorrow morning, bright and early. Get it ready now, because 8 a.m. things get started again. Mm -hmm. Courtesy runner gets the lead from first. Pitch outside a ball, 1-0. Hit by a pitch, you get the count reset. That's the benefit of it, all right? So, chop to short, or to third, excuse me, gloved on a short out by Cup, and his throw is low at a second, and everybody's safe. Cup made a nice play to get to that one and then threw to low to second, and it just eluded the backhand of the second baseman. This is a great play coming in on the charge. Comes and gets a short hop, picks it. That's a pretty accurate throw. It's right on the bag. Ideally, you'd like it to be higher, but uh, that's a play that needs to be made by Souza. Yeah, he got handcuffed. It looked like a little bit on it, but puts a couple men on for Dean Curley. And here's the delivery. There's a strike. He's been good at landing that slider uh, kind of over the, the arm side edge there, starting it off the plate and just letting it have just enough break to, to get back over, uh, but commanding it well on that arm side edge. The 1-1 one, one bounced in front of the plate and that will get away to the screen and the runners will move into scoring position. So now Stevens has to deal with two men in scoring position and a two and one count. Lomblis, the pinch runner at third, or the courtesy runner, I should say. Looks like another change up there. Just doesn't quite have feel for it now. Uh, whole delivery and arm stroke changes when he throws it. Hasn't been particularly close to the zone yet. I think he'll probably try and stay fastball, breaking ball. 2-1. Swing and miss. Boy, he blew the heater by him there. 2-2. Two two. It's 91 with some rise to it. Decent bit of uh, arm side life as well, but that's mostly vertical. And a look at the uncommitted Dean Curley, and he bounces one to first. Taking it to the back himself is the first baseman McKenzie for out number two. And I think Stevens, they make ball uh, is that going to be it? Yes, Stevens sir. gets his three banners, and that is it. And so the ball game ends. I guess it's a walk off ground out then, right? Yeah, absolutely, it was. 6-4 <laughs> the final in this one as Columbia Blue uh, beats Team Green. And that'll do it for our day here at Tropicana Field. Get a little bit more on Nolan Stevens here. And, Zach, you mentioned the velocity, a little bit of a surprise. Yeah, I, we've known, I, we've seen him 87-91 before, uh, but 94 was new for our looks at him. He threw 94 a couple times. Pretty solid fastball up in the zone with that angle, with that ride. Uh, and he showed a solid slider, too. So a pretty good look there at a two-way guy with two-way talent. Ten and a half innings in the books. The final, 6-4. Uh, Columbia Blue wins our coverage of the National Showcase. Our perfect game begins tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern with games. Danny Wexelman and Vinny Servino will have the play-by-play -play for you and then workout coverage all afternoon as well here on Perfect Game TV. Now for Brian Sikowski, for our entire crew here in St. Petersburg, I'm Mike Farron saying so long from day one of the 2022 Perfect Game National Showcase. We'll talk to you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. here at Perfect Game TV. So long.